Oh, oh. And that'll do it. The Golden State Warriors win this one 192, and they have the nine spot at the moment in the Western Conference by virtue of their tiebreaker over the Lake Show, thanks to this eight point win over Portland. Oh, baby! What is happening on this payday Friday? What up, Bay Area? That was a good one. Oh, man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good right now. Come on, I'm feeling good. Playoff go. juices are starting to flow. Zion. They're starting to flow. I'm telling you, man. Let's go. Warriors are now in ninth place. Nothing to, nothing to hang a banner about. But they had the tiebreaker over the L.A. Lakers. <laughs> the, Sacramento the, the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> there was no beam oh, lit up in the sky last night, baby. Because they got roasted by the Pelicans for the fifth time this season. Come on, so here's where we're at right now, Roasters. Here's where we're at job. as we head into this monster game tonight at up. Chase Center. Kings, if they lose tonight to the Phoenix Suns and the Warriors win, the Warriors will jump to eighth place. And they'll be in that 7 8 bracket, and all they'd have to do is take care of business Sunday against the Utah Jazz. So, how am I feeling? I'm feeling like I'm in playoff mode, Roasters. YouTube wow. Twitch, brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal first class money market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we, as we have added the QR code on both pages. Good morning to everybody getting off the graveyard shift. Good morning to everybody out there on, in, on the roadways, getting ready for work, all the overnight dances. I hope you, I hope business was booming last night. I really do. CHP officers, cops, firefighters, homicide detectives, students, cops, ushers, teachers, whoever out there. I told you guys in the motor center, it's going to be a little, it's going to look uh, a little clunky last night. Man, you were right. And you know what? Just get the W and you get ready for the Pelly so, Pels tonight. Can we start here and, and, and allow me to lay this out because I know we've been talking about ping pong and a little better. There are people in your lives who you don't take for granted. It's not that you take them for granted, but they're just so reliable and you realize how important they are to you. And they're just they're just great people. Great people. I got my buddy Rocco. You know, anytime I need something, he's there for me. He's there for my family. He's there for my mother, helping fix a light for her at the house. You know, there there are certain people that are there for you no matter what. And it's not that you take them from granted, but I don't think you can tell them you love them enough. You know what I mean? You just have these yeah. people in your lives. Kavon Looney is one of those people. And you've been on this, Bonte, about Kavon Looney. Is at some point, they're going to utilize him and they're going to use him. And I, I say this with the utmost respect. With all of the shenanigans that have happened the last couple of years, when I look at somebody who represents class, dignity, respect, and playing the game the right way, I know that the NBA has this, this image that I yeah. think is very false, that everyone acts like James Harden. And I don't think that's fair. No. I don't think everyone thinks that, but but I think there's a large segment of people who think that all these guys are entitled babies. Kavon Looney acts more like a hockey player in terms of respect and dignity and class and, and like an average Joe more than any other guy in the league. And I think there are more guys who act like Kavon Looney and what he symbolizes than we give credit to. And on a night where the, they don't dress Draymond Green, Clay Thompson has to sit, obviously, because he's he's logged a ton of minutes. And, and things were stagnant. It was the two-man game, old reliable. Steph Curry going back with Looney said that they were down six. I know. 85-79, 907 left in the game. And, and Steph hits the three, and then they hit the little two-man game, and then bang. And everything started to take off. Now, there's defense, there's screen setting, there's just the way he plays the game and just what he represents for this team. Look, man, we cannot talk enough about Kavon Looney, and I just wanted to say, Kavon, I forgot about you, and I'm <laughs> sorry, and Dub Nation as a whole, we love you, and when we look back at this generation, you're going to be one of those guys that whenever somebody brings up your name, we're going to smile ear to ear, and you're going to get a standing ovation in every room you go in, because there aren't any titles during his tenure without a Kavon Looney. I love you, pal. Team high 11 rebounds last night in 21 minutes off the bench. 11 time this season and fourth time off the bench, he's recorded 10 or more rebounds. And it was funny, right before we went to the crossover, we were breaking down DeAndre Ayton, right? Fezzi's breaking down DeAndre Ayton. Molly's breaking him down. And they bring, up, they bring up, you know, this is going to be a great test for TJD. And now you got Sarge available. And I dropped in. Don't forget about Looney. Mm. This may be a game you have to dust off Looney. And we've been discussing this all season long where You've been saying people are saying, hey, just cut Looney. No, 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 no. 
You're gonna lead. You're gonna need Looney at some point. Mm -hmm. You may have to run into the Joker. You may have to run into Nas Reed and Rudy Gobert. Mm -hmm. You may have to run into Chet Holmgren. You may have to run into Anthony Davis. You may have to run into Demonis Sabonis. Mm -hmm. You may have to run into Zion Williamson tonight and Jonas Valanciunas. Looney has a role on his team. It's not going to be every single night. But boy, I don't know. I, I happened to be wearing a Loon shirt it, yesterday. Didn't even know. Maybe that was an omen. But yesterday, when omen. he came on the post game show, we interviewed him. I said, "The ultimate. You are the ultimate professional. Absolutely. And you are the quintessential teammate. Always stand that's ready. Great and that's that's an upbringing from his parents. Yep. I love his parents. His mom and dad, the Loonies, they are awesome, awesome people. And they stick with this guy. And they stick with him. I told Dub Nation to stick with Looney. He's a trusted agent. Mm. He's a three-time champ who's gone through the wars with Draymond, yep. with Steph, with Clay, with Steve Kerr. So in a game like that last night where you don't have GP2, you don't have Draymond Green, you don't have Clay Thompson, it was going to be a bit ugly. You weren't going to have your your normal rhythm and flow. And Looney in that fourth quarter, down six, 85-79, 9 left. And I know what Dub Nation was thinking. Are we really going to lose this game to the Portland no, Trailblazers? My head was going to explode, but continue. Yeah, but, my head was going to explode. But the two-man game, as you laid out there, Shasky, this great screen setting by Kavon Looney, rolling to the basket, Old laying reliable. it up, screening for Steph Curry to get loose for a three-point shot. And that's thing you know, the Warriors go on a 16-1 run, and they win that game going away. And now it sets up a monster shutout tonight <laughs> at Chase Center against the Pelicans. And they're waiting right now in the Bay Area. They whooped, they whooped up on Sacramento last night. They slapped them around. There was no beams lit up. CJ McCullough went crazy, 9 to 12 from three. Trey Murphy the third went crazy, 6 to 12 from three. Zion Williamson had 31 points, six assists, and four Fly rebounds. Pelicans They're coming Fly. down here. And you got to remember, that was one of the lowest moments for the Warriors this season when the Raptors and Pelicans back to back <laughs> slapped the Warriors around and dropped over 70 points and a half on them. They beat the Warriors by 36 points at Chase Center back in January. So. Payback is there. There's a tiebreaker implication here. This is a monster game, Dub Nation. I'm look. I'm a, I'm a plead. I'm a beg. I'm a beg. The playoffs start today. All right. The playoffs start today, Dub Nation. And you know what? I've been hearing a lot of people rip on Chase Center. Oh, the crowd in San Francisco. It just the the, 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 the oh, energy God. in the building. Blah blah blah. Well, oh. you know what? I need that energy tonight. My mom Inject will be there. Yeah. Well, tell her to come by the gate. She's ready. Tell her to come by the gate house. They need to rise as one and get behind this team. Because I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating Clay and Draymond being back tonight. And, and GP2 to defend CJ McCollum and Jose Alvarado, who's hit threes yesterday. It's a big game tonight. <laughs> but you had to do what you had to do last night. And you know what? It completed a great road record this season. A great road trip for the Warriors all season long. Listen, away from Chase Center, they finished with the sixth best road record in franchise history. This, that, team, this team has been around for 76 years, Shasky. They just completed the sixth best road record in franchise history. I, I'm kind of jaw dropped, and I'm not doing this as some bit. Right. This is like I, that. No, no, this is, I don't even believe you. Franchise been over, been around what for was their record? 25 and 16 on the road this year, and they've won 17 of their last 21 away from Chase Center. They don't win those games away wow. from you know. We could wow. be we could be eliminated with the Houston Rockets and it, talk about what could have wow. been. Can you believe that? No, I can't. They're no, seventeen no. to four in their last twenty-one games. They're twenty-six wow. and eleven in the last thirty-seven, and I don't even think they're playing great. They fought nine in their last ten, and I don't think they're playing great. You know, B, uh, I, I want to get back into Loon because we can talk about the team as a whole, but I do want to get back into Kevon Looney. Looney, Looney, man. No, because wow. I, I was telling Joe Spadoni, I'm like, if I said to, to Niner fans, so like, you know, name your all like guys, class and respect and dignity personified, Patrick Willis, Frank Gore, they're. They're all-time players, too, yeah. right? Kavon Looney sits in an area kind of by himself. There's very few athletes that I can think of that we give class, dignity, respect, and, like, they're not Hall of Fame-level type Look players. Out. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 O'Donnell Foyle. When I yeah. think of O'Donnell Foyle, I think of a guy class personified, ready to go, um, just respected his lot in life and was graceful at every single turn and everybody who meets him feels like they're better for it. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, yep. and Kavon Looney's one of those guys and I just, I find him to be such a unique, lovable guy. No one is sitting here saying he's one of the top 10 no. warriors of all time. But like he's clearly important to what a, a real well, roster needs in every sport, and you know you've been talking about him all year, and for him to step up last night, because I'm going to tell you right now, both hands in the air, they were down six, 
And and shots were going up for Portland, and that I thought we're going to go in from right. three point land. And I'm saying to myself, they lose this game, I'm coming in, and I'm blasting Draymond for not playing oh, in that boy. game. <laughs> Clay, you logged a ton of minutes. No, because I'm like, dude, you've been out all yeah. year. But you we know what? Though, you. but I I get it though. The guy's got a bad back. The knee is the knee's got some bruising. Sure, I, I, you know it, you don't have to believe. But it would have been it. Nobody has to believe it. Loss. It would have been a devastating loss. But it's the Portland Trailblazers. Steph, CP3, Kaminga, Wiggins should be enough to beat that team. That's not even trying to win games. So I get Fair it. Enough. And you're gonna need you're gonna need Draymond Green tonight to get Zion Williamson. <laughs> you need a full night's rest to get ready for uh, that, that bad boy. That, that, so that I not, don't I'm, deny. I get why. And he was on the injury report early. Clay Thompson was a late addition to the injury report. I get why some fans would be a little ticked off about a plan, but I get it. You need to rest these guys. Three games and four nights. You gotta find a way to figure something out. You stole one against Portland. You didn't play well last night. Let's face it. Steve Kerr said it. The execution lacked last night. It really did. Portland took 20 more field goals than the Golden to State Warriors, but they can't shoot. No. So that helped the Golden to State Warriors well, last no, night. Well, no. One guy can overs. shoot, but he didn't shoot well last night. Well, Murray. Yeah, but Curse Murray could be. I like Curse Murray. I like uh, him a lot. But you know what? Because Kevon Looney made a great play yeah. with his left. Yeah. No, keep going. Sorry. No, no. CP3, what about him oh. contesting a Chris Murray shot knowing he's left handed? Trippy Nathan. Dude. Big time. Kavon Looney with the steal. Yes. To start a fast break to Steph Curry and give it up to Brandon Pajewski, who goes high off the glass for a layup here. The turnovers, though. There's a concern for me, oh. and it's the turnovers. How about the first, the first like, two minutes of the game, they had, like, 8,000 turnovers. Dude, first five minutes, half five. It's <laughs> unacceptable. It's unacceptable. So, they'll clean it up. But you know what? I want to get the roasters out here. 888-957-9570. It's a monster game tonight, folks. It's a big game. You want to get to the 7-8? You got to win tonight. It starts with winning tonight, and you pray to God that Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal show up at the Golden One Center and shock the Kings and make sure they don't like the beam again. I just, I, I, I can't get over Kavon being ready to roll Kavon in that moment. Is, like honestly, be like, pro. think about think Harrison about this. Barton. Like I'm thinking of guys that are oh, beloved, Harris, Harris beloved Barton. under the radar type because he, he's give he has an offensive lineman mentality. Harris Barton. Um, guy McIntyre. Uh, 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 what's our guy? So uh, Mikey, uh, Mikey, Mikey Ayupati. Oh, Mike Ayupati. Underappreciated. Yes. Jonathan Goodwin. Jonathan Goodwin. Center. Love Jonathan Goodwin. He, when he left, the Niners offensive line with the crap. But you like, know what I'm saying? But we're talking about a basketball player, and I think the majority, of, again, I'm not saying we're wrong, but like we have this image of what a basketball player is. Yeah. He's not that. No, he's not. He's everything that's right about the well, NBA. I, I think about Looney some of the similar moments in the last three years. Huh. <laughs> I mean, Game six against Memphis, where he grabs over 20 on, rebounds. Man. Game two against the Dallas Mavericks, where he carries the Warriors in the third quarter and helps them rally from a 21-point deficit. How about that? How about him against Boston being the one big in game four in the pivotal game, which could have flipped the series, and he's down there down the stretch where they bitch Draymond Green. Kavon Looney is one of my all-time favorites. He is He worse. really he is. is. I worse. love him, though. And it was just like, you know what? Just let him rest. And in a way, this was a blessing in disguise. Let TJD learn. He's been tutoring TJD. Agreed. Looney's made out of a rest, get his legs back. He's going to be fresh going into the playoffs because of all the DMPs True. he's racked up. There's going to be a role for him moving forward. It's not going to be every game. But tonight, you got Yonas Valachunas and you got Zion Williamson. It's a tough one. They're going to need somebody. Yeah. And they got one of the best road records. We'll break this all down, man. Vic <laughs> came. I'm fired up, My man. favorite part is when you, like, morph into Mad Dog. <laughs> Again, you're turning into a seven-year-old white guy. I love it. How about that? How about that? You're like when you hit me with the how about that? Because that's his like his, his catchphrase. Yeah, I don't phrase. know what's going on. I, mean, I, I love I, you so I, much I, right now. Even Dave Bursey, the NBC Sports, our manager over there, he goes, "What was wrong with you this morning, man? You're all one." Awesome. I'm just feeling good right now. What do you mean? It's playoff basketball. What do you mean you were? Because you were saying one? like he was just like yeah, you're you're being goofy. You were saying it. And I was I was like, man, was I that goofy yesterday? I'm just fired up. So with the damn playoffs is around the corner. Did you appreciate my talk, performance? Like, you know, no, I loved your performance no, yesterday. It was a one. Oh, he didn't bring you up. Oh, he never brings you up. Okay, Sorry. Because everybody forgets about peanut butter it's, when it comes to jelly. You no, know, it's all about I mean, me here. He's talking to me, not you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody, you know, all the all season talk and <laughs> who's going to be here. Who's I don't give a damn right now about that. <laughs> I care about this season. There's something to salvage. What, what, do, what the hell do we start just overlooking playoff performances and start talking about the all season? I went 14 years of my basketball life with oh. no playoffs with the go to say where hell after the game yesterday I was talking to Bully about what happened with Chris Webber mm -hmm. and traded and bitch and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Warrior fans, we gotta get behind us, man, because these things aren't guaranteed every single look at the Portland Trailblazers. Look at the Houston Rockets, look at the Utah Jazz. They're gonna be at home and they've extended the play in tournament. The hell with that. Playoffs started today, man. Let's go. You know what? My spirit animal's on the line right now. Nick and San Jose. Nick and San Jose. What's happening, baby? Talk hey, to Nick. me. 
Boys, I've taken a sabbatical a little because I really wanted to make sure I was as fairly accurate as possible as I can give you my win prediction in a minute. But I want to say this, first of all. I love you guys because you have had tough situations in your life. You come from us. You come from the neighborhood. You are not athletes just writing your careers here. You are us. You are us. And you have the pulse of us. I love you guys. I love you like Fratellos. I love you like Fratellos, number one. And number two, I love you because you are keen intellect. You understand the game. Make no mistake about it, Ponte. Tonight is a playoff game. And Chase Center is going to rise. It's going to rise. Now, I just want to say this last thing. We get 47 wins after Sunday. We get one at 48, and we go four, 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 four. A little more than Moses Malone said in 83. Yes, I'm saying 64 because we are a holistic team. We are a holistic team. And make a mistake about it. Jokic is our biggest prize because the Celtics are frauds. And I'm telling you, Draymond is going to bring it, and we're going to run people at him all day long. And Denver's bench is not like it used to be. And I'm telling you, boys, this is going to be five. And Curry is going to be talked about at the same breath as Irvin Magic Johnson. And enjoy this ride, baby. And we bring Clay back three years, $75 million. We get uh, We bring Chris Paul back for about 12 to $18 million, And we keep rising. I love you, boys. I love that. I love the Warriors. 64 wins. God bless you both. Thank you. God thanks it. I you know what? Him. I love that. That's Rack the type him. of energy I'm talking about today. How about that? He gets it. He gets it. He gets it. It's in the playoffs and it starts tonight. You know what? You got a team coming in here well, what, that is wait, rolling right playoffs, now. If it's the playoffs, play your song. We ready. Hold on, we, we hold that. We hold that. Hold on. I, we're gonna, I was thinking about coming in with that on the drive home as I was playing the new Future Metro Boom and, and the first yeah. song came on and it's just, it had me going today. Oh. I'm telling you, Shasky, there's something about this team right now and it's something that Bay Rob said on Stiney and Guru. Oh. He flipped my mindset. I don't know what it was about that call. Bay Rob gets to me. He called that show and he goes, so if we Brian get in, also. he does. He really can. Well, he gets to me in a different way. <laughs> he's like, he's tweeting me about Kamiga trading him or whatever. I'm not even going to get into that. We'll get to Kamiga. Can we'll Kamiga talk about get him. a call? We'll, we'll, we'll talk can about Kamiga in just a call? second. But damn it, Bay Rob called the other day on Stiney Guru and he said, boys, I don't know what the hell y'all talking about, but if we get in, if we get in, nobody's going to want to see us. Nobody's going to want to play us. And I heard Jokic in his post-game interview after they beat the Minnesota T-Wolves the other day, and he had the Warriors and Lakers on his mind. He goes, you know there's a chance we may play the Warriors and the Lakers. So he's thinking about Golden State. He's thinking about Steph Curry. He's thinking about Klay Thompson. They're thinking about the Golden State Warriors. If they just get in, if they just get in, you think Oklahoma City wants to see the Golden State Warriors? You think Minnesota wants to see the Golden State Warriors? Do not let this team get in. I'm not claiming, I'm not guaranteeing championships, but I'm saying... These jokers are going to be one tough out. They're going to be one tough out. I'm telling you, if they get that eight spot and they get to seven and they get OKC or Minnesota, watch out. There are certain watch days out. when I come in here and I feel like Michelangelo, the <laughs> artist, is across from me and he's painting the Sistine Chapels. Like, I really feel like that. Today's one of those days. I'm going to back off the no, microphone no, 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 no. You and I want microphone. you to just keep wax poetically. No, 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 no. You, you, you keep on the microphone because this is a big game today. Best road records in the NBA. Now, the Warriors have the sixth best road record in the NBA. That's an accomplishment. Uh, yes. 25 to 16. After, after what one, happened last yeah, year. 11 road wins. Now, the Pelicans are coming 11. down here. The Pelicans are coming to town. They have the second best road record. Tied with the Boston. Actually, tied with the Celtics for the best road record in the NBA. 27 to 14. And they're getting healthy. And Zion is rolling. And Trey Murphy III is rolling. So you got to be on your P's and Q's here. There's some things they need to clean up with the turnovers or points off turnovers. you got to be a lot better. Stephen Curry struggling with the shot. I mean, yeah, he fought, he's fighting it. He's fighting it, and he probably needs another day off. But you know what? He ain't. He's not taking tonight off. He knows how big this is. You don't want to be in a nine ten game. And you know what? Do we know if Ingram's going to play? No, he he said he's coming back Sunday against the Lakers. So for sure, for sure, that's what he said. He said he's aiming Sunday for the Lakers. <sighs> okay, so Ingram won't be back. But Trey Murphy, Herb Jones, those guys oh, no, are long defenders. Be ready. I just they'll put, be but ready. It makes it more difficult yeah, if no you got doubt. Ingram. Willie Green, those Warriors, you know that all that stuff. But damn it. 
Let's go, baby. The playoffs start today, Shasky. Well, I, I thought they started with the fourth quarter of last night. Yeah, they I did, actually. losing my mind when you're down six to the Portland Trailblazers. Hey. And then all I kept thinking was, all I'm going to hear is, I told you, Shasky, the Moda Center, I told you. You know, when you broke down the 22 games remaining, this is a game that was had trap written all over it. <laughs> had trap written all over it. Scoot almost had 10 turnovers. <laughs> Dude, did. Scoot, I mean... Yeah, Scoot, no, Scoot will foul you all 80 feet of the way guarding you. He's going to, hey, but Sacramento, ARJ Fairfield, how, how nervous are you right now? I want Sac to drop. <laughs> yes, I do. Kitty Caraway, how nervous are you feeling? King Kitty, D-Lo, Natson. How guys, how you, hey, Mr. Hey, you don't miss that break, bro. All right. Shout out to our friends at Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call it to the roast, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed, especially today. We're fired up here. Playoff basketball started. Brought to you by Flowing Water, Plumbing and Drain. What's coming up in the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, Full Service Banking, No Compromises. Your calls, 888-957-9570. Shameless shout-outs to 745. We got Fezzy Fell coming on at 920. He'll get you fired up for tonight's game at Chase Center. Warriors and Pelicans, a lot is on the line, folks. We're coming up in the roast. Odyssey presents...
Steph collects left side of the floor. Pull up from 17 is good for Steph working off the loony screen. And we're level at 86 as the Warriors try to 86 the Blazers here tonight. This is Stephen Curry, and you're listening to the Morning Rose with Bonte and the Butcher on 95.7 The Game. All right, Steph Curry, solid fourth quarter for you. 8 of 22 overall. He admitted last night he missed some shots. He did, no doubt, 5 of 16 for the three-point line. But he helped with the eight helpers, eight assists, seven rebounds, 22 points in all, had the two-man game, rolling with Kamal Looney down the stretch. The Warriors going a 16-1 run to flip that basketball game. Down six, 85-79 with 9.07 left in that basketball game. The Blazers nearly went six minutes without a field goal. You could call it good defense, you could, could, could call it bad offense, whatever the case may be, but the Warriors stepped up in that fourth quarter. Steph Curry stepped up in the fourth quarter, 3-5 from the floor, 2-3 of three from the three-point line, Eight points, two rebounds, and three assists. You know, we all forget about the awards after the season. De'Aaron Fox last year won the Clutch Player of the Year Award for all his heroics down the stretch for the Sacramento Kings in the fourth quarter last season. Well, Seth Curry's going to be the runaway winner this year for the Clutch Player Award. And it's pretty ironic that at one point there's this narrative that Steph Curry's not clutch. Why are you laughing? He don't show up. Why are you smiling? You know, because it was all hogwash for so long. Hogwash. Like, and I got to hear people talk about my guy, my guy, and my market, on my team, talk about he's not clutch. Who? What the? Not everybody was doing that. A lot anybody of locally? Everybody. Anybody locally? I hope not. If they were, shame on them. What the hell have you been watching all these years? Well, I mean, there's a lot of haters. There's a lot of haters. I mean, Jesus had haters. Yeah, exactly. You know? Still do. If you don't have haters, you ain't pop. Pontius right. Pilate. Is that They're what pos- they say? I don't like haters. I want everybody, I guess, you, if what, you don't what, have like, haters. like timeout? I, I guess you, I, I, I know I got a lot of haters. I see them every day. I see them every day. And it's yeah? all good. Because the haters listen more than the players. They do. Like Howard Stern? <laughs> the haters Your listen more. Your average Howard Stern right. listener listens for 20 minutes. Right. Your average Howard Stern hater listens for three and a half they hours. They do. They do, because they are... Hanging on every word to catch you slipping. They want to keep receipts. They want to hang on every word to say, you said this. You said this. You said that. When you guys got problems with listening, listen. Listen to this. God, I, I can't get over how happy you are. No, I'm, I'm fired. The last two days, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. It was tough getting out of bed this morning. I'm not going to lie. Late night, you know, it was an ugly game, but I was scoreboard watching. <laughs> When I was scoreboard watching, I saw the Pelicans jump out to a 33-11 lead against the Sacramento Kings. I said, oh, Sacramento, mentally, they're done. I want Sac to drop. Yeah, and they are dropping. <laughs> and they are dropping. There was no beam. Push the beam. <laughs> there would be no purple beam tonight either. There were some Pelican droppings in Sacramento. I'll tell you oh, that. there was. Come on, now, Pelican. It's, now, you admit you love that drop now. Come on. It's so funny. It's all now, time. Now, the Pelicans probably drove down to the Bay Area last night after leaving Sacramento. Quick road trip. Maybe they stopped by in and out. Maybe they didn't. You know what's Zion's order? At well, yeah, they, wow. they said he loves the animal style. He four loves by a, four. Yeah, he loves a four by four. He loves the animal style four by four. And there's a couple in and outs on the way from Sacramento. Maybe they stopped by Vacaville. I have no idea. But they're playing on the back to back. They got young, fresh legs. And we remember what they did to the Warriors back in January, beating them one forty one to one oh five. Now I'm imagining Zion Williamson waiting it in and out like all of us wait, where we hover <laughs> around where the drink thing is. Yeah. You know, the little yeah, it was like oh, the yeah. drink kiosk. The drink, the drink fountain. It's it, it, the it, little tongs for the yes. women. He's like, I just like yes. water, yes. water, water, water. And now I'm imagining him in like his crocs or his Birkenstocks, like every young athlete that I see with the tube socks up high, just sitting there waiting for their order come on it's great that's great uh the in and out hack, the paper hat i'm not gonna lie we're gonna place an order this morning i i, I think i'm ready for chick-fil-a as I'm we're about, talking about I'm out on that we're gonna I, do I'm some chick-fil-a that. breakfast I, 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 well, I, I, joey you in I'm call, in. call susan uh call susan no, well, i'm just gonna place the order no, call online. susan i'll text susan and say hey the boys want some chick-fil-a yeah we'll, 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 well, we'll let me know i'll text you susan know? i know i'll call her yeah. she'll hook it up yeah, so hook it up. I, I'm ready for I'm ready for some fried chicken. It's a fried chicken kind of morning Is after it? that kind of win. Because I'm going to be honest with you, B. I'm watching that game in the fourth quarter, and as they're losing by six points, I'm saying to myself, they lose this game, they lose this game, and they end up bowing out in a one game scenario in the nine ten. We are going to talk about that game for a long time, and we're going to talk about all the missed games. We're going to talk about all the suspensions for a long time. That's what we do. Okay, that's what we do in sports. And I and I, I'm saying to myself, the absence of Draymond Green on a night like that, where where Aiton was looking good, and Aiton's the turnovers, well. 
the turnovers were killing them. And Draymond is one of their ball handlers. And so they needed someone else to facilitate when they didn't have shooting. And and they needed someone else to help space the floor for Steph Curry. I, I was going to say, we got ahead of ourselves. We, we rested guys in getting ready for this Friday night matchup. And you got to win the Thursday night matchup. And... All I kept thinking was Bonte's going to come in here. I told you the Moda no, Center. No, I, wasn't I told you it. Portland's fighting for I, yeah, their lives. I mean, I, listen, Chauncey Billups was listen. having them defend 75, 80 oh, feet of the floor. It was very it was smart. Very smart. Because they were it could, very physical. They couldn't get to their offense until exactly. there was like 15 seconds left on the shot clock. It was Kaminga was completely flustered. Yeah, he was flustered. It Even though the him. numbers you know, aren't as bad as people thought that the, the eyeball showed. Right. No, no doubt. I mean, look, man. Kaminga was over penetrating last night. Uh, he's got to slow down just a little bit. But, you know, part of that is due to not having Draymond Clay and the natural rhythm of the offense that they bring. GP2 not out there. So, look, he got to start alongside Chris Paul. He was obviously trying to force it and show that, hey, I'm back. I'm ready to roll here. Look, he's still in a bad game. I thought it was a yeah, well, a, a C-minus game for Kaminga. And he still finished 19.6 rebounds. And he was in foul trouble. And he was 7 of 11. So if that's a bad game for Kaminga, I'm taking that raw production. Yes. I'm taking that all day yes. long. Yes. You know, so I, you know, people need to lay off of Kamiga a little bit. I've seen too many women fans am with jump you. on Kamiga and say, oh, get rid of this guy, blah, blah. Shut, calm down. Yeah, I You totally weren't saying that when he started 29 games and was helping his team go to another level. Calm down. I'm, I'm with you 100%. And the guy gets one of the worst whistles in the NBA. I know everyone wants to complain about Steph Curry's whistle. And he doesn't get a good whistle. Th that's no, undeniable. The Steph Curry thing is it's a decade in the making. Kaminga gets zero love offensively. Yep. Bonte, he gets zero love. Who was the guy who was going at it with him last night? Wagner? Oh, no, Jabari Walker. Walker, excuse Even me. Even Fitz says something in the fourth I quarter. I said, my God. Yeah. The Fitz guy's in the fourth hacking. Quarter. He goes, and there's Walker and uh, Kaminga. It's getting a little personal there. It Stop was personal. It. He was all over Kaminga. But they, all over They him. were hacking all night. How about Chris Paul with a big three over his former teammate, DeAndre Ayton? Well, Sunning him. He no pun him. intended. He picked his pocket, too, underneath. <laughs> yeah, he did. And Chris Paul, I didn't think it was even the best Chris Paul game. No, it wasn't. Um, but no, no, it was just with the doctor. Like that, that that Portland team, they looked like they wanted that game back. They wanted it bad. They wanted to play Motor spoiler. Center looked packed last night. I was surprised. It looked packed. Maybe. It was probably all Warrior fans. Yeah, was it the last home game for them of the season? Uh, I don't know. By the way, meanwhile, the Sacramento, they're out there with chicken wings on the court. <laughs> what do you mean? They were throwing fried chicken on the court in Sacramento. Uh, why? Oh, I got the sound from Kevin Harlan in just what? a second. We'll play it on the other side. Why would you do that? I don't know why they would do that. But the Sacramento was frustrated. Somebody threw a chicken wing on the court. <laughs> is that going to be like the new, what is it, the octopus or the rat? What do they throw uh, in hockey? Oh, well, so it depends on the team. The, the Red Wings throw the octopus. The Marlins, or not the Marlins, the Panthers, Florida Panthers throw rats on the uh, ice. So, you know, you got, you got something like that. If there's a hat trick, you throw your hats on there. Yeah, right. I'm not throwing my hat. Not, not doing it. Do Come they get the hats back? back? No. No, you do not. What no. do they do with the hats? Love they, they donate them. Do they really? Because you go to all the hockey. You used to go to all the hockey games. Oh, it's been a while. But yeah, no, I think they, they donate, donate those hats. Yeah. I, always, I always thought maybe there was a, a, a place like a lost and foul. You go get your hat back. Uh, who, don't throw chicken wings. Chicken wings are delicious. Um, dude, the hardest calls Why are we throwing all chicken time. wings? Chicken phones. We'll play that on the other side. Are they like eating chicken wings? No, nah, I don't know. They, th they threw the chicken wing <laughs> on the court. Just the bones <laughs> out there. They were throwing chicken on the court for some reason. They were frustrated with Sacramento. Now I'm imagining like a cartoon where you like eat the drumstick, where you, you rip the whole tendons, everything, and you just throw just a, a bone. Let me tell you, Sacramento's down bad right now. Bad. Evil Bonte is a great character. <laughs> a, as you get arrogant <laughs> and evil and you, you you look across the NBA landscape laughing at teams half a game behind the Warriors for the night. Uh, I'm not getting arrogant. It's pretty I'm, funny. Uh, no, 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 but I'm locked in tonight. I'm a little nervous about tonight. I'm not going to lie. We know about the Warriors struggle at Chase Center. Steph Curry struggling with his shot efficiency-wise. They're going to throw Herb Jones on them. They're going to throw Trey Murphy for the third. It's going to be a grind tonight, folks. Pelicans are good. They've got as much talent as anybody in this league. I don't say that. I don't. It's not hyperbolic. Look at their roster. Well, they're wholesome. This seems tough. Is this the first real Zion game at Chase Center? No, he played last time at Chase Center. I know, but I'm talking about with some actual stakes. I remember last time at Chase Center, the boos started to come the down. The boos did come down. That was, was the back. Chase Center boo game. Because was they were it? Smashed by like 50 points well, in yeah, that game. No, because... The game before, they lost to Toronto, gave up like 75, yeah. 76 in the first half. Then they gave up another 70-plus in his half. Zion in that game, 8 of 12, 19.7 assists, 5 rebounds. They just cooked. Valachunas, 21 points, 9 rebounds. Look at off the bench. Trey Murphy, third, 16. Jordan Hawkins, 14. The young man out of UConn. Nick Marshall, 12 points. Pelicans are coming down here with a lot of confidence.
So get over to Portland Trailblazers. You got the win, and it's got that survive in advance type of feel tonight. Survive in advance. Survive in advance. It's playoff basketball now, man. So we forget all the offseason talk. I'm not grading Steve Kerr's regular season. I'm not talking about what's going to happen with Kimmy in the offseason. It's about the now, damn it. These are four-time champs. The hell with the offseason. We'll get there when we get there on the roast. It's about the night. Yeah, I'm fired up, man. American rock and roll band in history. Aerosmith. Presents.
They can run another seven seconds with 1.10 to go. Chris Paul gets the screen from Pajemski. Left wing, pull up, triple. Bubba Knights! This one's over. 190. It's a left wing three for Chris Paul. Brandon Pajemski. Brandon Pajemski. Hey, Dub Nation. It's Brandon Pajemski, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonte Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. Pods play it well. CP3 with the dagger. And how about Kevin Dad on the call right here at 95.7 game? Give it to me one more time. That's the type of energy I need today. Paul has to hoist over Aiden. Tries to bank it in. No, off the rim in the offensive rebound to Pajemski. Oh, that's a backbreaker if you're Portland. They can run another seven seconds with 110 to go. Chris Paul gets the screen from Pajemski. Left wing, pull up, triple. Bullet Knights! This one's over, 190. It's a left wing three for Chris Paul. That's Boop, what I'm talking about. Boobanoich? What, what did he say? I don't know what Dana said. Maybe you could text it to us. Tweet us. Kevin, what the hell did you say there? But I'm here for it. That's the type of intensity I need for my broadcaster. That's the type of intensity I need for my players. And that's the type of intensity I need for my roasters today on a Friday. The Pelicans are in town. They're ready to roll. They want that six seed. They want a week off. They go chill in the Big mm-hmm. Easy, eat a couple pole boys, and get ready for a 3-6 so, matchup. So last night, Pelicans handled business. We needed them to. Yep. Tonight, we need them to lose. Yes. To hey, we need to start it, But we also need the Kings to lose. Okay, so 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 give me give me the, the spreadsheet, go. the Bonte Hill <laughs> evil master plan to take over the world for the Warriors. What has to lay out? Let me write it down. Okay, okay, computer. So if the Warriors lose, if the Warriors lose today, and the Kings win, the Warriors would be eliminated from the 7 8 game. They would be locked so in the 9 Kings game. win. And the Warriors lost. Warrior, and that's an and, not an or. Yep. And it's an the and. Warriors loss equals 9 10, no matter what. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Warriors win, Kings lose. Warriors are in the eighth spot, and they control their own destiny for the eighth spot with the Kings loss. Let's say the Kings lose that game. Warriors win that game. We still need the Kings to continue to lose out? No, no. All the Warriors need is one more Kings loss, and the Warriors would have to win out. They need the Kings to lose one more, because right now they're tied. They're tied with 35 losses. Lakers, Kings, Warriors right now are all tied. But the Kings get the tiebreaker due to the better division record. They were better against the Pacific Division. That means the Clippers, Suns, Lakers, Pacific Division stacked, by the way. All five teams got a chance to be in the playoffs. Think about that. So now, no one, no one in sports is thinking about how thinking about the that. entire Pacific well, Division is going to sort of but it is, it is there's, there's no dumb. dumber thing in sports hey, listen, than no. the division. West Coast is the best coast. That's West I mean, Coast Jesus. is the best coast. It's the best basketball, right? You got the Suns, you got the Lakers, you got the Clippers, you got the Warriors, you got the Sacramento Kings. Whatever. <laughs> right? <laughs> what and mean? the plucky Trailblazers. But what about the, I was just going to say, what about the Trailblazers? They're on the West Coast. They're, they're, yeah, they're not the, good. They're in the, uh, I think the North, what is yeah, it called? I know the that, but they're, they're in the West Coast. I know, they're on the West Coast. They're a tough team, you know? It's tough, tough going up to Portland. Think about the games Curry's had up there. Last time his three-point streak got snapped because he went 0 or 8 for the three-point line. Yesterday, 8 of 22. You know, 5 of 16 for 3. The Motor Center's no joke, man. I'm trying to tell you guys. Stand in room only. They were fighting for Chauncey Bullis last night. They didn't fight hard enough. <laughs> oh, that's a back breaker. A back breaker. I love how he went no R. He went straight slay. Kevin Denna, you are my spirit. You're, it's my guy. That's the type of energy that I'm looking so, for. So who do the Kings play? Kings play Phoenix tonight. <sighs> Kevin Durant, Riley Bill, Devin Booker. And they need to win. They're not playing well at all. They need to win. All right. Let's go, Kevin Durant. You know who he is. Yes. And we will be scoreboard watching. I love how NBC has added a score bug oh, we going to the G1C. Yeah. They actually had a typo on the score yesterday, third quarter. They duped Fitz because Fitz was like, oh, the Kings are up six. And it was actually the other way around. Oh. Pelicans controlled that game, controlled that game. The Kings did cut it to three, but they don't have enough firepower without Malik Buck. Fitz has been in playoff mode for a couple weeks now. Oh, he's ready to roll. You believe Fitz is bringing his A game tonight against the Pelicans. So what? <laughs> this would be a devastating loss if they lost. He heard this. it last night. He was feeling it. They were down six. This will just be a disastrous, disastrous <laughs> loss. <laughs> and then the sixty-one run happened, <laughs> and they got the win, and they got a happy flight. They finished with the sixth best road record in franchise I, I, history. That is the most they've unbelievable won, thing. They won time. seventeen of the last twenty-one road games. They're twenty-six and eleven in the last thirty-seven 
Who's playing better ball right now than the Golden State Warriors? Does anybody out there believe that if they could just sneak in, they got a shot? Do, 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 Steve Kerr's right. Hmm. They get in. You get the right matchup. Hmm. You got a chance to do some damage out west. They've got it. You think Minnesota and OKC right now are I'm, thrilled to play the Golden State Warriors in the first round? Bonte, I'm looking at it right now. There, There is nobody in the NBA playing better basketball there than the Warriors uh, outside of the Dallas Mavericks. Yep. So you got a lot going on here with the tiebreakers. Both 9-1 and one in their last 10. <sighs> and I don't even think the Warriors are playing all that great last night because the turnovers are no, starting to get to them. No, they didn't play well at all. What happened in the first quarter? Was that just we're going we're gonna to play CP3 and then everybody – because there, there was a Steph turnover. Oh, my God. Yeah. He was going to the lane, and he, like, threw it up to TJD, and there was just no – there was no play for that I, I, I whatsoever. And they went down the other way, and they banged down a three. And I just – some of the careless turnovers are driving me insane. And then points in the paint, points off turnovers. At one point, there was a huge disparity. Dude, at halftime, the Blazers led the points off turnovers 11-0. I think it was 19-3 to at one point that the yeah, graphic Yeah, then it was 19-14. They closed yeah, the gap they, with the big fourth quarter. They finished quarter. really right. well. But look at the turnovers committed, period, yeah. in the last five games. 21, 16, 18, 13, 15. What is it? Are the live ball turnovers? Live are ball these... turnovers are these athletic teams are getting out on the break. Houston did it. Houston had 27 points off turnovers against the Warriors in that game a couple Thursdays. What was that last Thursday? Yeah, they can't get back in time. They're just not. They're not. But it's just enough. clueless turnovers in the backcourt. Now, all of a sudden, you're committing turnovers around half court. Teams are going in for easy dunks and transition layups. They've got to clean that up. You cannot play like you did last night against the Pelicans, or you will get your ass blown out. Of all the teams in the West that does not have a winning record over their last 10 who are competing for a playoff, it's Sacramento. Yeah. so They're, they're leaking oil. Is boy, this Phoenix-Sacramento game, I mean, I have multi-view. Going to have to have the multi-view on tonight. You know what? It's a loony appreciation day. Let's hear from Pod. Oh, let's Bobby. hear it. Yeah, he's a pro's pro. Obviously, he hasn't been in the rotation uh, because of Trace, but he does what he's supposed to do. He's been in the league for a while now. Speaking of being a pro, he, you know, he's playing the, the low minute games with, you know, Pat Gee, Jerome, Lester, Usman, all those guys. He doesn't complain. He just goes about his day. And the thing I, I love about most about Loon is you know what you're going to get from him every time he's out there. Um, he doesn't need to take a shot to impact the game. You know, he's going to get his how many ever rebounds. He's going to play the right way. He's going to set solid screens. You know what you're going to get from him. And I think that's what I see as a rookie, and that's what I want to become. And Steve knows that as well. How about Steph Curry on Kevon Looney? You know, Looney was unbelievable. You know, securing the paint on defense, finishing at the rim, giving Aiton a little bit of problems down the stretch. You know, he, he's going to get his shots up. But we just competed, and that last six minutes was... Hard nosed basketball, and it was what it took to win. Kavon Looney, the two man game with Steph Curry. We interviewed Kavon Looney last night. He's the ultimate professional. He's one of my favorites all time in the Bay Area. As nice of a guy, plays hard, never complains. He is the moral compass of this team. He is. And he takes his, and it's not easy sitting on the bench game after game after game after game after you've been in the starting lineup for championship teams. I mean, starting with the Toronto Raptors when he's playing hurt. And then you go win a couple championships, and then you win the championship in 2022. It's not easy, not easy for a veteran like Kevon Looney. And he hasn't had his best game this year. He has struggled. And Steve Kerr mentioned that, hey, man, we tried to milk the 2022 team, but we figured out that we had to pivot and go to TJD. Well, they went to TJD. But at some point, and even in the future, like Kevon Looney may play today, then he may not play for a week. It's true. But he's got to be ready. And Steve Kerr knows it, and his team knows it, and his fan base needs to know it. That Kaval Looney will be needed for critical stretches. It may not be 21 minutes. It may not be 15 minutes, but it may be a four minute stint here. It may be a four minute stint there that flips a basketball game and spurs a run for the go to say where. So, how about Kaval Looney yesterday? Give him his propers, folks. 11 rebounds last night. Off the bench, could have had a double double. Big time two man game. Roll it to the basket in the fourth quarter. It is a Looney appreciation day today on the morning roast, man. I'm proud of Loon for his performance last night. Yeah. And, um, Here's a couple of little nuggy nugs for you on Kevon Looney. Team high, 11 rebounds in the 21 yep. minutes, 11th time this season, and four time off the bench. He's recorded 10 or more in a yep. game. I mean, the guy has been available for them at every single turn. Another nuggy nug, did you see what hallowed record Trace Jackson Davis broke? Uh, there was something with the block shots. Something with the block shots, right? I'm going to give you a name that you haven't heard in forever. F.K. Udo, right? How did you know? 
Brooks. I know everyone. Now that's a name I've not. So what that K Udo. Long time. He had four block shots yesterday. Twenty multi block yeah. games for Trace Jackson Davis, the most by a Warrior rookie since F K Udo out of Baylor, who was traded for. Uh, he was in the uh, Iguodala deal, right? Was, no, he, was he in the Bogut deal? Was he in the Bogut deal? Did he go to Milwaukee? I thought he was, was he in the, the Bogut, Bogut deal. deal. Uh, yeah, I could be confused. I'm going to have to look that up. No, no. You know what? It was uh, Beedrins in the Utah deal with Brandon Rush for Iguodala, correct? I think, I think he was in the... Beedrins uh, went to Utah, Utah to yeah, create he was in the deal space. to create space for Andre Iguodala. Yeah. It was Beedrins and Brandon Rush going to Salt Brandon Lake City. Brandon Rush. Yeah, he, he, before he blew his knee out, he was nice. He was nice. He was nice. So on March 13th, 2012... Udo, along with Monte Ellis and Quam Brown, traded to the Milwaukee Bucks for wow. Bogut and Steven Jackson. Mm. I forgot Steven Jackson was a part of that deal. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, they immediately flipped him over to the Spurs right after that. Yep. For there you the go. draft pick that became, I believe, Festus Azili. Look at you. Wow. Who will join us today at 920? Oh, it all nice. Comes full circle. Fezzy fell. Fezzy fell. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> by the way, the Warriors 25 block shots the last two games. Smallest team, in, smallest team in the league. But TJD, the block parties he was having yesterday. And the athleticism. And then also, I believe that, like, for example, Clay Thompson, uh, Steph Curry had multiple blocks, second yeah. time this year. Yep. Um, but Clay Thompson has had a few blocks at the rim. He's done a really good job understanding, okay, if the guy gets by me, I'll slow down, back up, and get him from behind. I, I just think he's done a really good job defensively around the rim. Well, the Warriors have had 17 back-to-backs. They're 13-4 to four in the first game of a back-to-back -back this season. Wow. So they set the total of these back-to-backs. 13-4, and four. wow. And, that's, and they've won their last six on the front end of a back-to-back. -back. So he's got the, all these little ducky duds. What, huh? what about the back end of the back-to-back? -back? Well, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. I'll have that stuff for you after the game. <laughs> Let's see if they win it or not. Uh, it all depends on if they're resting guys or playing guys. Who knows? But... Listen, man. Schedule watch back to back. TJD. It's like a buzzword. TJD. Those block shots yesterday. Rod Adams told us last week. He goes, think about him blocking shots. Is he doesn't block it to the fifth row. And uh -uh. ever since he said that, I've been really watching that. Yeah, yeah. And he's absolutely right. He keeps the ball in play. Like he had a couple blocks moving his feet, just stuffing dudes. Stuffing TJD. But then he, he <laughs> gathers the the, yep, the, the, the miss rebound. and then yep. Quickly pushes it up court to the right guy. Like I think his passing is way better than I thought. And then the quick dribble in traffic when two or three guys are, you know, like it's a loose ball and he grabs it and you get the small guys yep. getting their hands in there. He does a really good job getting rid of it quickly to the right guy. You want to hear something funny going on to Sacramento? <laughs> 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 By the way, the segment's I don't know, Pinky in the brain. You want to take over the world? Let's do it. the Bay Area for three generations. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit go to statelumber.com. By the way, <laughs> Bart, it's time for you to do the league. You are listening to 957 the game, KGMZ FM and AC1 Sacramento. It's like a cartoon character. And don't forget that you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams, all Sacramento. Just log on and search 957 the game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you are there. Brought to you by First North Cal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First North Cal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have decided or we have added, excuse me, the QR code on both pages. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile. Shout out line. to you, because if you Why? were a pro wrestler, you'd be a heel right now. Yeah. You'd be Bonte the Brain Hill or something like that. Like you, I need an evil Bonte nickname uh, for you as this superhero who hates, or not super, super villain who hates the Kings. Uh, you know, they're the lovable losers, right? <laughs> it was a cute story last year. And if they got a 50 burger chopped out of the game seven, right? So now <laughs> they may not be seeing no game sevens anytime soon. And the price is going up for Malik Buck. Believe that. Believe that. So Sacramento. Now look how happy you are that Malik Monk's price is out of their range. And you're just, it's just, <laughs> God. Big city, here I come. That's what Malik Monk's is saying in his head. Uh, listen, man. I know they got t-shirts of me on the beam, and it's all cute. Me praying or me laughing. And I, I got a lot of love for Sacramento. They got a lot of love Explain for me. Explain to people who have no idea what you're talking about, because you so, just say it flippantly. So my guy, Serial Connection, I think he's in the YouTube chat right now. He created his t-shirt. Because... Remember Sacramento, they came back, and they beat the Warriors coming back, yeah. and I was like, and I, it was did raining. Video. I did a video in the rain, I was like, we lost to Sacramento, and they, they annoyed me up there. Was they that really when you do. were doing BART for that week? No, that was that was, <laughs> that was the NBC Chronicles, the BART was done after that. Somebody asked me yesterday, you still catching BART at work? I said, dude, that lasted two weeks, because I thought 
Dude, there's some dudes walking around me a little bit. I was like, all right. Oh. I, I get, no, 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 oh. no, no, no. This is what happened. Uh -huh. Bart asked me. They said, hey, if you, do you think you're going to need security at all? This was like the third day. Oh, Bart I didn't tell you king. this. No, they yeah. asked me. He's like, are you going to need security? Do I was like, security? Need a valet. Are you kidding me? But there are some dudes moving it's around funny for a few car. days. I and told I said, you, you know that. What? I felt like you were. My uncle hit me up and was like, Mon, tell Monty to be careful, man. With them videos, people know where you're at. I, I, realize, a target. I, I, I realize I'm in a different lane nowadays. I, I get it. I get it. I'm in a fast lane. I'm not oh driving a slow God. lane right now. So anyway. Fox hit the brain hill. So, so when I walk in and they screech out of my face like D-Lo and all them, they had a lot of fun with it. They put me on T-shirts. In sack. With the beam. In Sacramento. Yeah, I know you're big time. And then the, the, the praying, what up, Chris and Marco? And then the praying hands, <laughs> then the praying hands, they put me on a t-shirt, right? So they ain't been having fun. They made sh they made uh, sweaters out of the shoulder, 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 shoulder. Remember you're describing some Do bonus? I get royalties? No. And then they put empty calories on the, look at, on look at, the sweater. Look at, look at, we I, get no royalties. I will stand by my my take. The hollow man will oh. make an appearance oh. before it's all said and done. Oh, the hollow man did last night. Oh, that's what he does. That's what he does. Because it's an important game that What's matters. The, of course he's disappearing. The hollow man last night, the modest of bonus. Oh, Mr. Double Double. What did he do last night? <laughs> the emptiest. And I say emptiest. 18 points and 10 rebounds and four assists. No impact whatsoever. No impact whatsoever. My favorite is when they're like, Willie's out, Kevin Herter. It's like, Come on, <laughs> Dude, dog. you guys quit on Kevin Herter eight months ago. Kevin so. Herter was just like, every every minute Kevin Herter played in that series last year against the Warriors was a win for Listen, us. Listen, Bogus, we know what time it is with him. We know what time it so is. So what happened in SAC? So it was a TNT game, national television. TNT, Pelicans, Kings up at the G1C. <laughs> Go to one center. <laughs> and they're just getting destroyed. I mean, the Pelicans started clowning. Alvarado was on a one-man fast break. This dude put up from the corner. Jose Alvarado put up from the corner and sucking three on their ass. I said, damn. Y'all got Jose Alvarado cooking you? Now, let me be careful because the Pelicans are playing the Warriors tonight. And it karma's a you-know-what. So, trust me. I am weary of the Pelicans. They got the best home row record in the league. This is a big game for the Golden State Warriors. They cannot play like they did last I, night. You are just an unbelievable listen, this morning. But listen. I'm just, I'm enjoying this. Sack is down so bad. Uh-huh. We all love our fried chicken. Uh, we I, all love our chicken wings. I'm trying to place an order and this is listen, it's not available listen, currently. we love our chicken. We don't waste chicken no, around these no, streets. No, no, Well, apparently we Sacramento. try to stack our chicken. Yeah, exactly. Sacramento, that's a four. Listen, <laughs> Sacramento is so distraught that they're throwing chicken wings on the court. Take it away, Kevin Harlan. Pelicans hold on. Driving into Murray. Somebody's throwing something on the floor. 46 <laughs> seconds to go and a whistle blew. It's a chicken wing. <laughs> Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? <laughs> It's crispy, yes. it's warm, Yes. and I almost had to go out and I'm so hungry. Uh, I hear your stomach over here growling. What's that guy? I hope he eats it. Two seconds. I'm going to save it for and put it in that little heater over there. 46 seconds to go. It's Murphy with the ball and Fox, the quick foul. Dot, anything that man does is excellent. Kevin, Kevin Harlan is a genius. <laughs> I, I I need him at my own funeral, just like narrating my life. I mean, geez, Louise. Uh, <laughs> and Chasky goes to the restroom. <laughs> Listen to the way he just said, it's warm. It's crispy. Why would you throw something away so delicious? <laughs> they're out there. They're down so bad in sack. They're out there wasting chicken wings. Would you eat a chicken wing that hits the hardwood floor and it stayed for less than two seconds? Like the two second rule, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll grab it. I'll be eating it. I probably would, too. Yeah, two-second rule. When we first brought the baby home, it was like, wash your hands. You know, sanitize this, sanitize that. Now I'm like, dude, I'm changing his diaper in the dugout. <laughs> fried chicken, man. So, I, yeah, I'd eat the fried chicken yeah. right off the ground. Yeah, right I have no court. problem with I don't that. care if Zion slipped on it with all the sweat. Mm -hmm. He's got the back sweat. But what I won't do is touch a public toilet seat. Yes, I won't do that at it's all. total difference. So what if Zion slipped on a spot and that chicken wing fell on that spot? You still eat that piece of chicken, even though if it's... Well, I mean, if Zion... Zion doesn't slip anywhere. <laughs> Zion, as we saw earlier with the exploding floorboards, the Zion crushes floorboards. <laughs> Would he crush that chicken when he got the ground? I mean... But the camera... The, see, I'm listen, so sick of TNT, the chicken slander. No, but no, Chicken's listen, excellent. No, but listen, Zion, TNT's so cold and so Who's ruthless. Who's slandering chicken? What? Nobody's slandering chicken. Well, apparently well, Sacramento talking they about are. about how Zion likes chicken, but, like, I I'm going to defend Zion. I love chicken! No, we all love chicken. Well, I love chicken. Fried chicken. I love these fried, fried chicken's listen, the best. Listen, no, but Zion, 
What's so cold about TET is Kevin Harless described me the chicken wing. It talked about the chicken wing and the camera pan straight to Zion Woods. <laughs> no, it didn't. Yes, it did. I swear to no, God. No, it didn't. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> that's, that's not just, fair. That's not right. He's lost a lot of weight. Well, I mean, if we're being honest, the Zion commercial where he's drinking, what what is the Mountain Dew? Mountain Dew. Him and Zach Levine. And there's just snacks everywhere, and they're playing video games, and they're sitting, they're sitting on the couch. I mean... If I was a part of Zion's life, I would be like, you know, Z, maybe not the best look as we're looking for a two hundred fifty no, million dollar extension. Not at all. And, and your weight has been an issue, dude. I still take Zion. Your right shoe now. exploded, young man. I, I'll still take Zion. Oh, we all would, man. But the chicken wig, sacks down bad. They're throwing crispy, warm, fried chicken wigs at the G one C. That's how distraught they are. Is that the modern tomato? That is the modern tomato. That's the modern empty cups. That's the you modern know what? peanuts. They probably threw the chicken wing out there because all the shoulder, shoulder, shoulder <laughs> action from Demonis Simonis. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I tapped the ESP 1320 <laughs> yesterday. Some guy named Jake was here for Kyle Batson. Yeah, I heard it was raining in sack. <laughs> Dude, he, the guy brought up, you know, we had some guy who was talking about they I happened to tap in, oh. and the guy goes, shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. So they're still thinking about it. Of course they are. I'm in their head. I mean, rip free in Sacramento. And now they got a big game against the Phoenix Suns. I will say that if you were to go around the entire country and they were to do a likability poll regarding different stations and hosts, we are absolutely the most hated <laughs> duo in Does sports radio, and it's not even close. I don't think it's close. Seattle hates us. <laughs> they hate us. Across the street hates us. I, well, but, that's, yeah. <laughs> some. Some. Uh, Dallas for show hates us. Uh, as as a speaker into the microphone. No, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. They love us. He actually loves us. A thrower us. of the football. He, 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 he loves us. Um, but RJ Shot, apparently RJ Shot went up to Guru in Las Vegas and ran a row said, that bot take gets <laughs> under my skin. Like, well, serious. Well, if I us. was from seven different states and I had to pretend to be a Cowboy fan, I'd be a little upset, too. WIP hates us. Well, that's... I smoke with Mike, though. Yeah, I mean... They hate us. Who else hates they, us? Well, they hate us. Well, Cataldi likes us. Cataldi likes us. But he's no longer in the game. Yeah, yeah he, he had to play it up. Yeah. Evan Roberts, I think we're cool. Eskin likes you guys. Yeah, Eskin does like us. Evan Roberts is cool. I don't think Eskin likes anyone. W-E-I, well, I, those I guys... Well, the one guy who I saw the W-E-I doesn't <laughs> like me. Could Steve Kerr win championships with that? Without that, without talent. Well, what is about our Red guy, Arbach? <laughs> Jermaine Wiggins is our guy. <laughs> he is our guy. He is. He is our guy. All right, we're coming up on the morning roast. We're cooking right now. <laughs> Mike Bassick's <laughs> cool with us. Yeah, he is. He is. Sacramento throwing chicken. Wings, I do believe man. we're hated though. Sacramento <laughs> throwing chicken wings on the court. Monte, make sure you don't miss that break, bro. <laughs> All right, more coming up. Shameless shoutouts brought to you by Crystal Guys. Their natural alpine spring water. At Crystal Geyser, we're committed to using recycled plastic in all of our bottles. So when you enjoy our natural...
Hey, Dub Nation, it's Chris Paul, and you're listening to The Morning Roast with Bonta Hill and Joe Shasky on 95.7 The Game. Chris Paul, can you believe that he went from one of the most hated non-warriors to one of the most likable warriors if, in just a short stint? If we had said Chris Paul, 888-957-9570, one year ago, Oof. it would have been 50 callers waiting to get in about how they hate him. Oh, I remember when you threw him out there, you were like, you know, what if you go to go Chris Paul? I said, hell no, it's not going to work. Are you out of your mind? Chris Paul, I remember I shut you down so quick. Shasky did have a point. No, well, did the trade happen? And I remember being at La Petite with Baby Chaz, swim class, and my phone's blowing up. It's three missed calls from Shasky. It's a couple missed calls from Bully. And I'm like, what's going on here? I'm thinking something like that happened. Oh, Baby Chaz, she's like, Papa, Papa, what? I call Shasky's, Chris Paul, I'm just like, what? <laughs> I was distraught, And man. the power of Bonte to pivot, not panic, and go, Chris Paul, great game tonight. You're live with Chris no. Mullen, the Hall of Famer, and Festus Zilli, the NBA champ. What a game, floor god. Hey, no, no, no. This is this is what yeah, I pivoted. Point god, excuse well, me. This is what I pivoted. I stood out it for about five hours. I said, you know what? This just might work. <laughs> I just need to get out of my emotions, get out of my feelings, and just sneak basketball. Well, then you started to visualize yourself as Cliff Paul's, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, cousin in well, all of the State Farm commercials. Well, I know, you know, there's going to be a day or two where I may have to talk to him. But no, I pivoted, and you I was guys, like, you know what? This would work. And you guys did a commercial together. We did a commercial together. He's actually a really good dude. Yeah? Chris Paul's a really good dude. Did he recognize you from uh, being in the locker rooms over the no, years? No, hell no. They don't. They don't. Well, maybe. Ru Russell maybe, Westbrook knows who maybe, you are. Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes they Draymond do. Russ told Chris are. about uh, Bonte ahead of time. Wait, say that again? Russ was probably telling Chris about Bonte ahead of time. <laughs> no, hey, look no, out no, for that no. Guy. Well, you know what's crazy? Yeah, no, Big Dog City uh, was roommates with one of his best friends when Big Dog attended Morehouse for a year. Small world. Small world. So when we did the commercial together, I said, hey, man, blah, 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 blah. He goes, yeah, that's my good guy. And it was a good icebreaker. We did the commercial. Oh. What did it be for the commercial? No, we did what it be for the commercial. I have no idea. We won uh, an yeah, Emmy I, I, I'm, I'm kidding. for the I'm commercial. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm do they kidding. do Emmys? No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't pay attention to awards. That's why when that well, you that whole, don't pay attention to awards until no, you win one. No, 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 no. Seriously, like when I, I won some awards, most in clutch post and pregame performer. <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm surprised he's shocked to talk to me. No, listen. <laughs> I don't. Talk like I, I really don't. I really don't. I got nominated for some award, and they threw it up on a post game show. And I was like, I don't well, do like well, what all was the all, award. It was something for like broadcaster the year, or broadcaster the year in California, wow. and I'm on a list with John Miller, Mike Curricles. Like, wow. yeah, to be mentioned with those wow. guys. Like, stop, stop. And I know the person who nominated Fake me, and humility. I was just like, and I was just like, dude, stop. Like, I, it, I, no, on, that's man. awesome. No, it's great, but I don't. We don't do this for awards. I don't like whoever does this well, for awards. You know what I'm saying? If you want to give me one, I mean, sure. I mean, like, I was I was some awards at junior college, right? For like best written game story. Or for the journalism conventions mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. California for all the JUCOs, right? Like comes those awards straight to my mama. It's like yeah, I don't That's know what cool. to do with these. Yeah. Like here, I got. I'm not. Yeah. You know, just it is what it is. Just want to have some fun and laugh at the Sacramento Kings. I'm gonna be <laughs> humble with this one. <laughs> I'm gonna be humble for Sacramento. No, you're not. Y'all wasting. <laughs> y'all out there wasting. Hey Traper, man, Kyle Traper, why y'all wasting chicken wings, man? Take it away, Kevin Harlan. Pelicans hold on, driving into Murray, somebody's throwing something on the floor, 46 seconds to go, and a whistle blew. It's a chicken wing. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? <laughs> it's crispy, yes. it's warm, Yes. and I almost had to go out and eat. I'm so hungry. Uh, I hear your stomach over here growling. What's that guy? I hope he eats it. He's going to save it for a put it in that little heater over there. 46 seconds to go. It's Murphy with the ball and Fox, the quick foul. Hey, up there, wasted chicken. Shame a shout out, 745, by the way. If you want to shout out the chicken weed that got thrown and wasted in Sacramento, go ahead and shout it out. Let me shout out Reggie Miller. Somehow he's gotten worse as a broadcaster. Oh, oh I didn't God. even know it was possible. I, Reggie's one of my all-time favorites. I legitimately love Reggie Miller. I just He's just so bad. It's like cringe. He's like the uncle that says like things inappropriately in yeah. settings, and you look at him, you're like, "I love you, but shut up." Well, and I love, I do, I legitimately, no, B, well, he's, he's one, one of my, of my all-time favorites. Yeah, no doubt. 
Love he's Dom. one of my all-time favorites, but he's really bad on air. You know, unfortunately, his job is not to shut up. He's got to talk. And he just had an extension with TNT, so it's going to be around for a while. I, I just... Uh, I think we're sleeping on too because... His sister's Chris, better than well, him. Chris Webber was not the best, and I think yeah. we all were Chris like... Chris Webber was we horrible. Need, we, I know, I was trying to be nice. Horrible. We needed someone else in there in the worst way, and we're like, ah, Reggie's fine enough, because at least we don't have to listen to Chris Webber. He was he was really bad. I mean, old Kevin, or uh, uh, old, um, who's my guy, Marv Albert, too. It was tough. Oh, Marv Albert. He, Marv Albert's last great series, I believe, was the 2016 Western Conference Finals. Warriors Thunder. That was like his last great series. Uh, I'll like, take your I word just, for it. Yeah, like, I had Clay even Thompson about, went yeah. crazy in game six. Uh -huh. You just hear Marv Albert. He was incredible. And Clay Thompson with that same tone that he had for Reggie uh, Miller in game five against the, the same fake yes. hair piece. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Clay Thompson again. Speaking of yes. Emmys in the background, doesn't Dibley have like an Emmy in the background of, of some of his Zooms from time to time? Dibley won an Emmy? Yeah, I think he did. What? A local one, I, I believe. Oh, for radio? Yeah, something. I, I swear, during COVID, I remember in the background of his Zoom shots, there was some sort of an award. Yeah, I, I could even, be wrong. I don't even know how you qualify for awards in his business. Like, do they have award shows? I, I have no idea. No idea. Nor do I care. We get the weekly or yearly mass email that KCBS just dominates it, apparently. So it must, be, it must be a huge deal. Well, when you don't have competition. Don't do that. They're our sister company. We're so a family Why would you here. do that? Why would you do that? Don't be a hater. Well, I, I would love to, you know. Don't be a hater, Shasky. They do great work over there at KCBS. Of course they do. You see the we way they're Stephen grinding Lake over there? I love Stephen Lake. Thanks, guys. Stephen Lake for so, man. They're out there. Eric opening, Thomas over there grinding his ass off. Opening day, I'm going into the stadium. I, I got the baby Bjorn on. I'm walking around with the little guy. Random people coming up. What's up? What's up? What's up? Love the show. Blah, 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 blah. Who's this guy coming down looking very serious? I mean, he looked as intense as I've ever seen him. Nice guy. Nice guy, Stephen Lightford. He was trying to get um sound of the fans and just get the atmosphere and all that. So yeah, he's he was grinding. That's good. He needs to grind. He quit. He quit the show on us. He, he left. quit. No, he upgraded. Nah, I know he upgraded. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The man has never been happy. Of all the people to go at and going at I know. I know. So he quit. Hey, it's listen. personal. He quit. It's personal. Oh, nice guy. Hey, he nice guy. He Marcus Mariota. You're no longer. I can't look at him the same. You're no longer nice. Marcus when Vontae came in here and was destroying Marcus Mariota because of the quarterback, Doc. Oh. It was one of my I favorites. I can't believe you guys like Kirk Cousins now. Dude, he was so oh. mad. America, what is wrong with you? Dude. Just because he shops at Walmart. Dude, dude. He does doesn't work on Tuesdays. I have zero respect dude, for him. It, Me and Mike Florio were hugging each other. Dude, we were. Guy says, I'm taking Tuesdays off in the NFL. Do you want to uh, be great? By the way. To hell with your family. You got to be great out there. But by the way, and then baby Chaz knows, hey, Pelicans are in town today. Do not bother me. I pulled that on my wife last night. I go, I got to watch this game. She's like, they're trailblazers. Yeah. I remember. Turn the volume dude, down. Listen, listen, like six years ago when Ed and I first started dating, it was like within like the first seven months. It's like, all right, babe, I, I got to cover this King Scorchers game, man, Thursday night. Like, I was just trying to, like, just go to Oracle. And she's like, no, it was something about the weekend. She had plans. She goes, babe, the Kings are no factor. Like, really? The Kings? I love how she knew that they weren't a factor. She knew the Kings were no factor. God, I love Anna. I want Sack to drop. Well, they are dropping. And they're dropping chicken wings. They're dropping basketball games. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? No idea. Dude, he is, is that, no idea. That man's brilliant. No idea why they're doing that. And by the way, so hungry. The beam. Will they even like the beam? Like, what if Sacramento loses tonight and they win Sunday against Portland? Are they going to like the beam for a win like that to beat a nine seed? <laughs> they're losing tonight. Now, they may lose tonight. The Warriors got to handle their business. I'm telling you, man. The, the Pelicans, look, man. Their three point percentage, three uh, their defense right now, it gets a three, first in the NBA this season. They're legit when it when it comes to defending the three point line. They are number one in the league. They give up thirty four point eight percent when it comes when it comes to opponents shooting the three ball. When it comes to two point field goals, you got to get to the paint. They give up about fifty five percent, which is twenty first in the NBA. So uh, you got to be a bit better here against the Pelicans tonight. Monte, this is the opinion that I have about tonight's game against the Pelicans. You can agree or disagree. But if you want me to take you serious as a team that can do damage and go on a run, you handle business tonight. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how ugly. 
you win tonight. You cannot be taken serious as a factor in the playoffs if you can't beat the Pelicans. No doubt. No doubt. It's very simple to me. You don't. Win tonight. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care who's hot. I don't care who's not. I don't care what lineups are out there. At the end, all I care about is beating this team Yep. tonight. And winning 10 out of 11. That's it. And you got to have a play. And you know what? I'm, I'm asking for the fan base. Look, I don't usually do this, but I'm begging for the fans tonight to show up on the Friday night, be loud, be proud, and let's get ready for another playoff run, damn it. You know what I'm saying? We don't know how many we how many of these we have left with Steph, Draymond, Clay, Loon, Wiggins, who, by the way, is playing some really good basketball right now. Kaminga's trying to find his rhythm. And then a bad game for J.K. I thought it was like a, a C minus game for him. He still finishes with 19 and 6. He had a dunk baseline. I don't oh know if it was gosh. Pajemski or somebody threw yeah. him a baseline pass. Odds. And he just flew he just over two dudes. It. Flushed it. And that's like. <sighs> I mean, we had the flag above the rib highlight package. If Fezzy Fell loves saying Eric Congo, that Eric Congo was baby. It was louder than an old baby. Eric Congo. I do get a kick out of it. I that. do get a kick out of it. Eric Congo! I do get a Get kick back out. in there. Should have had 19 to 6. So, any concerns oh, about that Blazers game? I totally what? forgot to tell you. What happened? Prior to the game yesterday, guess what me and LJ watched? What? Hardball! Did you finally watch the movie? I did! Oh, my God. Come on. All right. All right. Because I saw Oreo Cookie tweet about it on the Xfinity Mobile text line earlier. All right. Give me your thoughts. You got okay. It. I'm, I'm standing back. All right. All right. Give me all two right. minute summation of Hardball. All right. Well, number one, I streamed it on Amazon Prime. And it was free, but it had commercials. So that broke it up a little, which stunk, but whatever. A, the soundtrack, hilarious. Strike one. Strike two. I was dying. Uh, the kid, I love it when you call me Big, Big Papa. Papa. With the headsets on the mound. Loved it. But they're omitting some of the chorus. Not sure it's as family friendly as, you know, again. Yeah, no doubt. But 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 whatever. Lo- love that. Keanu Reeves is hilarious. Unintentionally yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And Diane Lane, Diane yeah. Lane, uh, Superman's mom, as Keanu Reeves' love interest in it, very interesting. Sad as hell, though. Like layers of sadness. Yeah. Number one, I know that Chicago has some very yeah. rough, rough, rough areas. But like the way they laid it out, and I know it's it's laid on thick, but it's not laid on that thick. No. To see that young man who wasn't allowed to participate, and I guess that's Michael B. Yes, Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. It turned into a thug. Look, you know I volunteer a, a lot of my time to youth sports, yep. and I truly believe this to my core. When you have one you know, parent or whatever, or older parents, or both parents are working, Having safe activities for your children to participate in after school is a real thing. Yep. Kids will find trouble even if they're busy. Kids will find trouble even if they're playing multiple sports or doing multiple activities, whether it's dancing or band or acting or whatever, like the chemistry team, like whatever it is. So you have to provide infrastructure. And I think I just think society as a whole, we've yeah. let the kids down by not having free alternatives after school. Like, we, we, we just need more programs in place. To see that kid a part, like, that broke my heart. And then to see what happened to little G or baby G, excuse yeah, me, at the end. G. It's horrible. That was after baby G had the game when he hit. When Keanu Reeves. You see baby I, G with the jersey? It was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. But, like, when Keanu Reeves is walking him home and they're in the projects and yep. he's like, can you come in to, like, walk me in? Yeah. And he goes, why is everybody sitting on the ground? And he's like, well, because of the gunshots. Yep. And then he says, well, what do you do for fun here? He's like. I play baseball with you, coach. I teared up. Yeah. Like, legitimately. I do. you like this movie. I, I, I legitimately teared up. For as cringe as some of the, the baseball coaching from Keanu Reeves was, the metaphor was like, it hit me, dude. It yep. hit me in my soul. You know, and I'm holding my little yeah. boy told you while that's good, going dude. on. Hey, dude, it is. It was really G deep. G-Baby, when he first did have the jerk. What about G-Baby's language? G-Baby's language. When G oh, baby's language. <laughs> he was talking to the commissioner. And then the, just the yeah, hater. He, the commissioner. he cursed out the commissioner. And, and, and when the other coach, because yeah. there are coaches like yeah, that. Haters. There are tons yep. of coaches. And he like sizes him up. He's like, oh, yeah, you can let him hit. Yep. It was just like, man, it's, it, it encapsulated in its own awkward yep. way. Everything that I love and hate about you sports you all in I one. I knew you love that movie. I really did love it, and I got to watch it again and again right. and again. Um, and, and the bookie, and, just, and, and the bet. What and, about the bet they be, made to just stay afloat? Look, as as and again, my buddy Jim and Brant and I and my buddy Cheese and Scott, we put together this baseball program, and we've got 
We've got Asian American kids. We've got Latin American kids. We've got uh, white American kids, you know, from all ethnicities. And we've got black uh, young black kids on our team. And when we go play other teams, I don't see a lot of young black kids yeah. playing baseball. And I went up and down the coast this summer. When I saw every single player playing baseball in that in that movie that yeah. was black, that was powerful to me. Yeah. As we see the drop yep. in, uh, you know, black Esports. American kids playing baseball. Yep. Like, it was very important to, to see that. And I just... Southside Chicago, too, man. Keanu the reason. So it, it tugged at my heartstrings, yeah, B. I knew it would. I knew it would. I told you to go watch it. I'm glad you watched it, man. Look, I'm I, surprised you didn't watch it. Well, dude, like, I, I, I have a picture... like over 20 years old. I got pictures where it's me, this kid Duncan, and this yeah. other kid. It's three white boys, and the entire team is black. Yep. That's good. That was my baseball experience growing yep. up at St. Mary's Park, right? And so to see an all black league like that, that was freaking awesome. Yeah, no, it was. I, we need more of that, it man. Was, and it, so it was sad, the G Baby stuff. It was sad. It was heartbreaking. Did you see him win a chappy chip it was and enjoy that. I, I remember watching that movie at the Kabuki. Incredible. I watched that movie at the Kabuki. Oh, I was crying. I was I was like, I was trying to like wipe my tears away. I was like, dude, I'm only twenty years. Well, twenty two thousand one, I was twenty one. So yeah, I was like trying to be tough, like, oh well, man. But like, and then I started thinking of all the park directors that really like volunteered their time yep. for me um, in the city. Reggie Milligan, uh, Reggie Gage, Racer, you know the Schneider brothers, like all the different people. Thatch, who, simil Coach Thatch. thank you. Similar to to Keanu Reeves, like I don't know, man. Like we missed that era of San yeah. Francisco parks. Like we, no we, it's not like it was back in the day where the gym would be open and yeah. all the kids from the neighborhood would just go to the gym. Uh, no, I'm glad you watched Hard Knocks. So Hard thank Ball. you for recommending yeah. that yeah, yeah, movie no as doubt. I go on my soapbox no here. No doubt. It was great. It was great. Um, uh, we got Shane shout outs coming up in 10 minutes. I just saw something here. I just figured it out. This guy, Benny, he likes to tweet at us and okay. he says some outrageous things. Like, you know, Ponte Fib went out anytime Zion scores at Chase. It's all on site. Well, not only does he go into YouTube, but he also uses his Sunday Mobile text line and texts the same thing. How much of a loser... Do you have to be the text the Xfinity Mobile text line and text the same thing in a YouTube chat? I mean, you're working too hard, son. <laughs> you multitasking? That's what you think you're doing? You dummy. Let's go to BPA. Brian Apollo Alto, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. Hey, Mark. Morning, guys. Morning. Uh, I, yeah. I agree with Chapsky that you, you got to win this game. I mean, if you can't win this game, you know, <laughs> you're uh, probably not getting out of the plan, so... Um, I'm going to keep beating this drum. <laughs> uh, I, I see a player in regression with Jonathan Kuminga. Um, outside of wide open layups and dunks, there's really not anything that he's doing right now that's really good. He's not rebounding. He's not playing good defense. And I would have said a month ago is that he's like basically the second untouchable on the team. And I'm going to say he's not. I'm going to say there's a chance that he's he's he is moved to get Steph the second star that he needs uh, this offseason. But I, I don't I don't like the signs I see with him. Um, what don't you I don't like? Know what you guys think? But it, it's, it's been three games since he's um, been back. He had the double double in his first game. Now it's it in was, Utah. It's it a Salt Lake. I, I saw it, and I said this before. I saw it before he went out with the tendonitis that it was it was regressing, not like a full on. You know, retreat, but regressing. And then he went out, and then the team played the best basketball of the season without him. What are you doing? I'll put the code red on. <laughs> Did you the code, the code red? red on. You ordered a <laughs> I mean, code red? Code red. We're so in sync. He just had to give me a look. And yeah, I, I just gave him a look. I mean, come on, man. You can't handle the truth. Uh, shout out to our friends at Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call into the roast, you better bring it. What did it. he do? Because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. Come on. What did he do? <laughs> I mean, come on. He's, he saw him regret. He started 29 straight games, and we're like, oh, we can't. Dang, what's wrong with Kaminga? I just come back for three games. Had to double double against Utah. Look great against Utah. Not getting this Utah. <laughs> They're not trying to win. Okay, fine. Struggled a bit against the Lakers, but it was part of that pivotal 16 5 run against the LA Lakers. It played well into the fourth quarter with Draymond and the Stars and Steph Curry. And then last night, I don't think he had a great game. But I think you know he sat on the foul trouble and you look up. All you plus minus geeks who love to throw that at me, he was a plus eight, which was third on the team, right? He's 7 of 11. And we're not talking big gulps and slurpees. We're talking ducks and middies. 
19 points, six rebounds. You really want to give up on that guy who's 21 years old? Well, there was a possession at the end of a quarter where I would have I would have liked him to be able to throw the ball to Chris Paul and then, you know, play off that. Right. He tried to hold the ball himself, and then he ended up turning it over, and they went the other way, and they had to take a take foul, and well, it, it wasn't great, but that's one play. I only flushed him because I felt the YouTube chat, the City Mobile text line was chatting. They were like, flush, hip, flush, hip. Oh, flush, so hip, you, you did flush, the gladiator, hip, thumb flush, up or hip, thumb down? Flush, hip, I did the gladiator. And then I looked at Spadoni, and Spadoni gave me the head nod, and I said, you know what? Off. Oh, snip snap. Head. Snip snap. Quite a heart snap. Yeah, snap. Did he, now, now that, is that three flushes in a week for BBA? <laughs> No, three in the last two weeks. Yeah, three in the last two weeks, I think. Well, also, too, he had it He's coming. a high-volume shooter. Well, he had it coming because yesterday I did see his tweets he hit my timeline. had it coming. You see his tweets hit the timeline? Nah. You didn't see it last night? No, nah, what'd he say? Oh, man. All right, so uh, he had one tweet. Vontae Butcher, but he tweeted both of us. Okay, he does that. That's fine. The Kim Bigger regression is total and full. I'm done with him. The total and full. <laughs> he said he's done with him. Then he had another one. Oh, that was earlier in the day. That was about OJ. <laughs> um, what are we doing? By the way, OJ dialogue. Oh, boy. <laughs> People. Kyle Brent, do you see what he did? No. I did. I knew he was going to. I thought I showed Sam. I guess I didn't. What did he do? But he quotes like a two seconds. Like, my thoughts on OJ Simpson. Murderer. And that was it. And it was like three seconds. And then he deleted it. Of course he did. And then... And then he posted like whatever he was wearing, the same thing. All right, my take on JJ McCarthy, and then people clipped it and just my take on JJ McCarthy, <laughs> murderer. <laughs> and it was, oh, and it was, no. it's, he's turned no. into a meme. Oh. He turned, so you're gonna be seeing that on a bunch of replies yeah. going. I forward. mean, he should have known better. NFL Network, just leave it alone. Didn't we say someone was gonna yeah, do something? Of course, stupid. they can't help themselves. BPA had another tweet April 9th. All of Kamiga's progress is gone. Totally fine pack packaging him for a second star this offseason. Now, BPA, if you don't think he's good and you think he's regressing, what do you think GMs in the league who do this for a living think? You think you're going to get a second star for Kamiga? If you feel like that about Kamiga, come on, man. I'll worry about the offseason and the offseason. Yeah, who cares about the offseason? I'm focused about tonight. Yes, it's a huge game tonight. Let's go to Kurt in Oakland. He wants to talk Kamiga. By the way, shameless shout-outs. Line him up, 888-957-9570. 888-957-9570. Let's shout-out some people here on a, on a payday Friday. What's up, Kurt? What's happening? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, great win last night, and... Um, my X-Men choice for Kaminga now is Banshee Ooh. because whenever he drives to the lane, he tries to yell to try to get a call <laughs> and he's not getting the call and you know, they're going to pocket the whistle on him and he's just got to go play through it. And yep. he's, he's starting to play through it a little bit, but he's still yelling too much and he almost does it like five or six times a day trying to drive to the lane. And it's like, come on, dude, you're not going to get the call. Quit staring down the refs. Just play. You're going to get frustrated. It's okay. It happens. They're going to play you physical because they know they can get into his head. But, yeah, he's Banshee. He just yells too much when he drives the lane trying to get a call. Well, I will say this uh, about about just the foul calls and, and his reactions and everything. He is shooting 10% better this year from the free throw line than in years past, right. which is, is an upgrade. He attacks the lane on a team that doesn't have a lot of guys that attack the lane. Yep. He is going to draw a lot of contact. Yep. He has to be able to be demonstrative to get those calls. It does take time. Where I'm frustrated on his behalf is that he gets mauled. Yeah. I mean, Walker, is that his name, Walker? Jabari w Walker. Was mauling him, him yesterday. All over him. And it was all 80 feet. And so I, I understand his frustration. No doubt. I agree, though. He's got to taper it back. But yeah, he was over penetrating yesterday. I, I agree. He was getting too deep into the paint, and he was forcing some things, and he had to lay up there, went out on the backboard, and he was like, hey! And he just stopped. Hey. No, he stopped you know, He's just like, you know, so he was a little frustrated yesterday, no doubt. He's trying to find his rhythm. Yes. Because you got to think, man, he started for 29 straight games, and he hears Draymond say, he's a key factor. He's our second best player. You hear Clay Thompson. You hear Steph Curry. They're all empowering him. Then he misses six games due to knee tendonitis, and they've got a whole different lineup. But he accepts it. He was a professional after that mm -hmm. game against Utah, saying, this, this is roller right now. I'm okay with that. He's going to see his minutes. He got the start yesterday. I thought it was a C-minus game in 34 minutes for JK. And the raw data tells you, damn, 
if you just look at the box score, if somebody picked up the box score, they'll look at Kaminga and say, wow, 19 points, a plus eight, six rebounds. Wow, he had the four fouls. One or two from the three-point line. Wow, four four from the free throw line. Perfect. Seven of 11 from the floor. But we still watched the game. It was clunky for him. But when you don't have three guys out there, you got to find yeah, the rhythm but, and flow. I expect Kaminga to be a lot better tonight. But there is a, like a, a segment of of the fans that's like the tolerance for any mistake for Kaminga. It's getting crazy. It's really unbelievable. after after two months of praise. It took him to be hurt to start, and we saw this coming. We saw saw it coming. But let's just empower this guy. This young guy is a baller. He actually helped save the season. I thought Wiggins was eh yesterday. Right, like bye bye Wigan standards, and and I just feel like he's not a lightning rod for right. criticism in the same way that J.K. is. No, it's not. I it's mean, not. the J.K. mistakes have zero tolerance for certain fans, and then I just think it's it's completely unfair. It, it feels like there's a lack of patience with the young guys with all of these teams, whether it's Luciano or Ramos or Matos, whether it's, it's the Niner yeah. young guys, Trey Lance or, or whatever, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy or whoever's young on the 49ers. And then, of course, the young guns with the go to say, like, think about Pods. I'm happy he with went, Brock Purdy. <laughs> he went through a mini slump. Pods. Now, over the last six games, he's shooting nearly 58% from the three-point yeah, line. Way better. Yeah, he's been way better. But he better. went through that mini slump. And think about the rhetoric around that. He went through a mini slump and all of a sudden, oh, why does Kieran live Pods and Pods this and Pods that? Pods play fine. Pods has been excellent. TJD. You know, <laughs> so I I don't know why we're so impatient with you guys. We know you guys are going to make mistakes. That's how they get better in this league, by playing through the mistakes. Well, and we act like the greatest player in Warrior history, Steph Curry, doesn't have some of the worst turnovers we've ever seen I in know. our lives. Now, he offsets that with being how magical he is. But, like, Steph's ball security is atrocious, and he makes... Horrific decisions at times. Yep. We love him for it, like, but he, but he's allowed the dignity and grace, right. and I just feel like we we don't allow it at all for Kaminga, no and we uh, we completely overlook any contributions he has. No doubt, no doubt. All right, and, and it, I just think it's like, what are we doing? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But Kaminga, look, look, they're gonna need Kaminga tonight. Trey Murphy the third, you know, CJ McCollum. I mean, Jose Alvarado. You got Herb Jones. Teams. Pelicans are coming to town, man. They are legit. So you're going to need to bring your hard hat tonight. You're going to need J.K. in any role that he plays in. All right, let's get the shameless shout-outs here on the Morning Roast. Yay! Come on, Pelican! I got a joke for you, Bonte. Uh. But hold up, I got to defend my guy Shasky because I, I understand huh? the complete what you're saying about Steph Curry making mistakes. And then all of a sudden, people on the YouTube chat, don't compare J.K. to Steph Curry. He's not doing that. He said Steph Curry makes some of the most egregious mistakes out there. And Steph will admit that. But he's worth it because he's put in the work and the resume and he's an all time great. Yeah. We get it. But early on in his career, he made mistakes. Oh, you got a career he's turned the ball over? Everyone does. Everybody does. There are a thousand decisions in a basketball game, and you're going to make some mistakes. It's going to happen. He's I'm just saying, like, old. the guy's positivity has far outweighed the negativity, right. and I think we act like he's all a net negative, and he's not. No. All right, let me give you my first shout-out. Right, go ahead. Uh, there's a man who created a bat company. His name's Bill Carley. It's called Bill Co. Bats. You can find him on Instagram, B-I-L-C-O-B-A-T-S. And he's going to be out here Memorial Day weekend. Uh, the big rage now for all the kids, whether they're 10 years old or they're in high school, is, you know, hit off the cage with a wooden bat. It makes you stronger. It's a little heavier. You know, it's just, it's it's a lot of fun. And we all love that the feeling of a good ash bat. And I'm telling you right now, you can get the bats at Bill Co. Bats. My boy Bill uh, is going to hook some people up. We're going to work with him down the line. Nice. Try to give people who maybe don't have the means uh, a brand new baseball That's bat, cool. and we're going to work with him. So, Bill, shout out to you and your company. Check them out right now. Bill Go Bats. They got great stuff. Spadoni, love it. What do you guys got? Who you shouting out today? I want to shout out all the people who, like me, have still yet to do their taxes. So, shout out to all you procrastinators out there, and in case you forgot, you got until Monday to get your taxes in. There you go. There you go. Get those taxes done. Get your money. Shout out Tiger Woods, who right now, I think he just hit it into a crowd here on the fifth hole in his uh, second round here at the Masters. But I'm shouting out Tiger Woods because you know what? There is still a part of me that whenever I see him and I see Augusta, I think of watching on Sunday with my pops. So shout out the Masters. I feel that. Shout out to Dub Nation. Shout out to Dub Nation. It's a big night for you tonight. Pelicans are coming to town. 
Very biggest game of the season. We keep saying that over the last two weeks, but this is the biggest game of the season. You have a chance to move up to eight with the Kings loss. You have a chance to just continue to build your your rhythm, build good habits, build a good foundation. I want Dub Nation to show up at Chase, and I want to be loud and proud tonight on a Friday night. Let's make let's turn this into a playoff game and send a warning shot to the Western Conference. When it comes to Chase in the postseason, it's night night. That's what needs to happen. And it's been a rough year at home. I get it. They've been a lot better on the road. But Chase Center's time to stand up. I'm going to shout you guys out because I expect a big night from the uh, fan base tonight at Chase Center against the Pelly Pels. Let's go to Stan in the city. Stan, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Roast Man. Hey, this is Stan out of San Francisco. Uh, first, I want to give a shout out to you, Bonte. My wife, Cynthia, and I was watching your show last night, man, of the game. And, man, you look good, man. That soda diet's been really working, man. We <laughs> a shout out, Bonte. I, I appreciate that, Stan. I like how you said that, man. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I need some more soda, dog. Stan, I'm getting some weight, man. The season's been long. I got to get some workouts in. I need some more soda packages. What's Dan Dibley? He's got a weight loss program, right? Does he? Yeah. So I heard the commercials, yeah. Okay. I don't know what it oh, is. Oh, I thought sorry. you were going to elaborate. All right. I'm going to read a couple for the so need a mobile text. Like, go ahead. 888-957-9570. Get them in, uh, Roasters. Shameless shout-outs. Shout-out your dog. Shout-out your volleyball team. Shout-out oh, your soccer me, team. Me, I gotta shout-out your baseball yeah, yeah. team. I, Zucci man. I, I, he wants to shout-out himself today. Oh, nice. This is not my style. But today I'm closing on my new place, and it's been hard work and oh, discipline. Yeah. My God is good. Zucci man. Good for Congratulations. Shout-out to the facilities yeah. and maintenance workers. The workplace would be what it is if it wasn't for those silent heroes. No doubt about that. The yeah. Piedmont, Piedmont High School softball team. Big game today against Silver Creek. Nice. Let's go Pirates. Peabot Hills, yeah. Pirates, TJ and Saddles. Can we shout out the federal government? Why? Well, you know, I mean, there's so many really pressing issues. And for them to go right to the Otani interpreter fraud thing and just have it closed up in a week. I mean, just, I mean, not like we have, you know, huge deficits, homeless crisis, housing shortage you know it's not like there aren't serious legitimate real world problems i'm so glad you closed the otani file wink wink nod nod so quickly and found out that yeah otani had nothing to do with the wire fraud that was happening as they were giving money to an illegal online gambling site i just thank you federal government really appreciate our tax dollars at work as we're all are sending you our IRS and tax stuff over the next two weeks. Just thank you. Thank Surely you. Really appreciate that. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I want to shout out to Chicken Wing that got tossed in Sacramento. I mean, the Chicken Wing. You deserve to be devoured. You were crispy. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? It was a fresh Chicken Wing. Are you eulogizing the Chicken Wing? I am. You got out there and tossed it aside by a grumpy Sacramento King fan who probably spent $20 on those chicken wings. So hungry. And we know $20, man. It's it's a lot of money these days. Or actually, it's not a lot of money these days. Cost $20 for a burger around these parts. But look, man, that chicken wing did not deserve to die right there on the court and be thrown away without being bitten into. That was cold. Shout out to the chicken wing, man, up in Sacramento. Yeah, I'm going to throw one more shout-out in there. It's a shout-out to our midday producer, Evan Giddings. He's not been in this week because he's calling games for the Stockton Ports this wow. week. And doing that. I guess he gets to... Uh, Spadoni just told me he will be calling Walker Bueller's rehab start today. Wow. So, wow. In Stockton? In Stockton, I believe, yes. So, so he's in Stockton. In Stockton yeah, yeah, one of those plays. Yeah. So is he always oh, traveling with the team? He is traveling. Oh, wow. Yeah. Evan so Giddings. good for you, Evan. Uh, shout-out to you for getting it done. Evan Giddings is a star. Him and Mark Grady, they're, they're the future. Spadoni as well. He's Love a it. very serious broadcaster. Very serious. Very serious. It is Evan Grandy right here. And uh, uh, guys, I Evan just combined Giddings. two guys. Evan Giddings. Uh, I just Mark Giddings. Up. Hey, our, our, our bitch is deep here. It and is. if you want to dust off Sam Lutman in case of emergency. Emergency spot start. <laughs> as long as we're not talking Giants. Because that gets you riled up. Giants, by the way, in Tampa Bay. Does anybody care? Boy, the Giants. The chicken wing falls on the floor. <laughs> Does anyone care? If the chicken wing falls from the catwalk. Oh, real, uh, real quick, another shout out. I don't know if you guys have seen this closer for the A's. Mason Miller no. might have the filthiest stuff currently in baseball. You're right. Really? Has all no, of the legit. highest velocity so pitches. So when's he getting called down? Well, no, no, well, no that's... <laughs> yeah, I, hey, I know. Hey. I know. Hey, I know. You know what? But they just won a series against the defending champs in Texas. They won back-to-back -back series. Beat the Tigers. Tigers are good this year. Texas, 
By the way, Astros, no pitching. They stink. They stink. Nine spot yesterday in the first inning against the Royals. Hunter Brown, not getting it done. Baseball's been... Baseball's Alex Bregman contract year pressing. Oh, you want to get a, you want to bring him in orange and black? Well, well he we, can't play third base. We, Another we, aging third baseman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, his best days may be behind him. But it's okay. He's had a great run. He's an all-time Astro. All right. Who knew Dusty was the glue all along? Who do? Let's go to uh the injury report here on the payday Friday. He's <laughs> he's the gum, the nicotine gum. Ow! 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 Awesome. No wonder Spinotti's in a good mood. The Lakers are taking on the Memphis Hustle, a.k.a. the Memphis Grizzlies, <laughs> a.k.a. the Memphis CVS receipts. 16-point favorites. Yeah, because their injury report their injury report is longer than the CVS receipt. Go look at their injury report. So, the Memphis Hustle, the Memphis CVS receipts, the Memphis Grizzlies, whatever the hell you want to call them. AD is probable today with the left eye contusion. Also, the big man, he's been dealing with headaches and nausea this week, though he is not entered into concussion protocol. However, LeBron James is questionable with left ankle tendonitis. We'll monitor that. We'll monitor the Kings and the Suns. And we got a big game of chase center today. 888-957-9570 is a number dub nation. Is this, is this the game? If the Warriors win this game. Will this make you a believer into them making a deep run in the playoffs? Because I, I feel like Shasky, real quick, I feel like Dub Nation is kind of in wait and see mode. They wait and see mode to see where they finish up, to see how they're playing. I feel like Dub Nation's on the fitch right now when it comes to this basketball team. You're probably right. I have a question in particular for everyone on this show. Uh oh. On the other side. Uh-oh. And and it's a non sports question. Oh boy. About travel and vacation. Oh gosh. I already know where this is going. No. I'm don't. out. I, I kind of know where this is going. I lost. I'm out. I'm <laughs> the injury report <laughs> brought to you by Boxer and Kirsten. Northern California's <laughs> premier workers compensation law firm. Maintenance Lumber. day. Helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's well, coming up on the game brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. I'm going to ask he's got cooked up. It could go in many different directions. But you know what? It is a Friday. And things get wacky around these parts. We're coming up on the road here at 95.7 game. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? The greatest American rock and roll.
is happening? What is happening? What is happening on the roast? It's a Friday, a payday Friday, as Goo always likes to say. First go Friday, Bay Area Friday, as we are rolling here. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Warriors get the win last night. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Xfinity Mobile text line. Shout out to our friends at Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. If you're going to call it to the roast, you better bring it because if you don't, you will be flushed. Brought to you by Floyd Water Plumbing and Drain. By the way, secret here, 8 o'clock. I know Baby Chaz is running around. I like to FaceTime her because she loves the old baby. Oh. She loves the old baby. Oh. That's adorable. Yeah, it is adorable. So she gets a kick yeah. out of that. Did I say bye bye? What time up. does she wake up in the morning? Uh, it depends. Depends. She spent the night at her grandparents' house. Oh. Uh, she's been sick. Oh. Uh, so she spent the night last night, but you know, she's just swimming in. 8 30. She does not want to get up. Oh, she's like me. She's definitely her mother's child. And then baby Chaz, they don't like getting up in the morning. Don't run her over. God bless both of them, because six o'clock for your boy every weekend. <laughs> Five thirty oh, is like sleeping in. Oh my gosh. Right? Am oh. I wrong? Well, it no. used to be like that. But baby Chance has been sleeping in, man. On the weekend, she wake up about 8, 8 30. I'm like, whoo. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, well, why would you look at me like that? Because I just love you so much. What, 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 what? Tonight's game is humongous. It is. Humongous. Humongous. Warriors Pels. I think we can get into that 7-8 side of the bracket. That's the side we want to get into. We want to get into that 7 seed. Avoid Denver at all costs. And I'm going to be watching the game with a full cabin tonight. Oh, you're going up to the cabin? Yeah, so we have Who's our family golf there? tournament this oh, weekend. Oh, the disasters this week. Why yeah. you haven't said anything about it? Because it's it. not as big as we've done in years past because of yeah, everything yeah, that's I happened. It. I didn't even get an invite this year, Well, because, man. again, it's kind of, we're kind of throwing it together yeah, last night. Nah, I hear you. I hear right? You. And I so, well. point being, we're going to do something bigger for my dad in July. But, like, we did this big golf tournament, family golf tournament. So, we're going to have a full house tonight watching so the Warriors. Who's in the house? JP Money. Oh, boy. Fresh out, you know, like Rabbit Forte. Yeah, off the roll. Did you say you came out of Gatehouse? No, yeah, he did. You know what I told him? I said, hey, JP, you listened to the show today? He goes, no, I was out running around. Yeah. Which I don't believe. I think yeah. he was listening well, to the show. Well, he's playing golf today and then going out yeah, tonight. Uh, well, you know, actually, I had to pay somebody on Vimbo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't like how it shows everybody's business. I, hate I go it. private. hate that. But I saw JP Buddy paid you for something. I was like, it was like the first thing. I was oh. like, what? That's weird. Yeah. But then I start following JP. Like, it's, I, I hate Vimbo for that. Yeah, I'm with you on that. But I asked him if he liked Star Wars. He goes, Pff. Please. His dad ran, like his dad was. I know, which like is one insane. of the biggest Disney execs. Anyway. I know he's JP Buddy. I know Lucas Films, excuse me. They, but but anyway, my point being, JP so Buddy. JP Buddy's gonna talk to you. My off. brother, my cousin Jack, my cousin Mike, my cousin Joey's coming down with his son. They're all gonna be there. Um, the Bolognas will be up so there. So you guys are all gonna fit in this one cabin. Well, so this is where I'm going with this. So we've got X amount of beds. I've got some air mattresses. We've got sleeping bags. I got some mattresses that I brought up there over the years, and so. My dad had this camper, this pop-up camper. Now, do you know what a pop-up camper is? No. Is this, it's up, is this something you see by Lake uh, Merced? Uh, yeah, but this is one, instead of like an RV, which is like a camper yeah. that you drive around, right. it goes on the back, and so you have to attach oh, it so to you, the hitch. So, it, so you attach it to a truck yes. or whatever. So or here's a, a photo of yeah, it. I, I sent it, it right. to the group. Yeah, and it's all, it we right posted now. on our socials. Well, yeah. So at Morning Row. So yeah. if you're on YouTube, I'm showing it. And you have to crank this thing open. And so it looks like a big box that you would drive with your truck. So we had to hold this thing out yesterday from my mom's basement because my brother is going to stay in the camper because it's got a couple of beds. So him and my cousin, Jack, who live for camping, the Schindler side, they live for camping. They, My dad yeah. loved camping. I eh, yeah. don't love camping. My, my camping experience, um, my camping experience was I got pink eye at Camp Mendocino. <laughs> Never would have had to camp. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to know what you're doing with your pillow, but that's not here No, there. I think what oh other guys God. are doing with my pillow. You know, if you're around 10, 11 years old. There's a lot of things going on with young boys, man. You know what I'm saying? Like dudes are putting toothpaste in their shoes and all that stupid stuff. Who knows? Point that I'm anyway. getting at right, is sorry. that my brother was jacked yesterday because it works, the camper, the public. I mean, it looks like it's from the 70s or 80s, right? Does it not? Does it? Like, it looks like that. Yeah. And you crank it open and it takes some work. And then my dad's got it rigged because Pops, 
you know, he kind of kind of a tweaker love him dearly but he would have these different little like compartments and he he, he basically configurated the pop-up to fit all his needs and my brother's so excited to use it Is and he? he's a big camper he loves going That's to good. scott's flat and here yeah. and there and he's all excited so we popped it open right. and we cranked it up and it looks good and it it does not smell as like what you would think it would smell like. And I was thinking dusty and nasty and moldy. No, no, no. It's it's clean. It's nice. It's good to go. But even then, I'm just kind of out on camping. Yeah. And I'm not hating on those who enjoy it. My cousin Jack camps up and down the entire city. He goes to Oregon. So, he goes to Bend. So you don't like this pop-up tent? I'm just... You're just weary of it? I'm just kind of out on that. Like so if you're, I'm going to go so on vacation... So listen... In a family full of plumbers. Yes. And hard workers. Yes. Guys who have calluses on their hands, like mm -hmm. Deli Boy. Yeah. And Papa Shasky. Yeah. And Papa Papa Shasky. Yeah. And all your and uncles Uncle and Mac. everything. You're actually just as bougie as I am. Yeah. And so is so Michelle. So it's coming full circle. Yeah. You like soft hands like me. You know, <laughs> like just well well, Moisturizing your hands. I do. Yeah. You like Neutrogena. You know, you had Neutrogena. I know. And we got flowing plumbing. Water a flowing water plumbing drain uh, as a sponsor here at the Water Rose. And we don't like to get our hands dirty. No. Now, I did have to unplug our kitchen sink last week. We had a bunch of crab in there. I was like, oh my God, it's going to stink and had to do some things. And I got it done. The key I is am the freezing handyman. the crab shells. Yeah. And then throwing them in the garbage. Yeah. The last I, I just throw them off. I know. Right yeah. Then it's just going to smell. It's, it's, if you don't yeah, have the garbage do disposal either, either, it's so, No, you don't use it. I, I predicted accurately on this show. And I know we got Warriors and Sons. And we're going to watch that in the house on the 70 inch TV that I just mounted to the wall. Wow, well, I'm you. fired up. We're like, we're going to fired gonna, up for this game. I'm so pumped up is for this is game. Is John Porter fired up for this game? Is oh. Come on, are you kidding me? Was JP he fired Money? up for the Blazers last night? Dude, he's the biggest Draymond fan Listen. ever. <laughs> he loves Draymond. So he liked Draymond checking yeah, me. Yeah, he's huh? an enforcer. Did he enjoy know? Draymond checking me? I, I ran into somebody at the club whose name shall be unnamed, and Porter ran over him in a game the other day. He was on people. crutches now. Oh, my God. And Porter is saying he did nothing wrong. So Which did, I I agree. Did, Porter's did, just big. He's strong. Did Draymond guy. enjoy that situation with me and Draymond? <laughs> yeah, everybody thought that you handled it very well. No, even JP Money. No, yeah. JP Money probably thought I got punked. But in the but world no. of media, you're not in the cabin. No. You're in the camper yeah. outdoor. <laughs> so of course, I sent it so, to the group thread and I ask everybody, guys, are you in or out yeah, on the pop up on trailer? If it's hey, I'm in. A, I, give me a blanket. Give me some pillows. I'm in. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. You got, you're going to be right next to the cabin, right? Yeah, it's going to be in the driveway. So yeah. that we have more room for everybody. You know what? I'm, I'm cool with that. You're in? I'm in on that. So if I said to you, Bonte, I don't have room in the house. You have to stay in the camper? That's cool. I, I get peace and quiet myself. You know? If I got Wi-Fi, I'm chilling. Then. Yeah, I'm you good. do have Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm that good. matters. You don't have yeah, Wi-Fi. Wi I'm chilling. I'm good with that. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. I'm good with that. Nothing wrong with this. Boy, you're you're more bougie than me. I don't. I mean, I in a do family it, of hard I blue collar it. workers. I'm very particular about my sleeping arrangements. No wonder you're a walking injury. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder everything is starting to make sense. I know. So of course, without fail, I knew Sam Lubman would get giddy when he saw the pop up tent. <laughs> Sam, you're a big Why? camper, aren't you? Oh yeah, I love camping. And when you saw, growing up, when you saw the pop up tent, what'd you think? <laughs> I was like, that looks pretty nice. I mean, the first thing I asked, obviously, was how clean it is. How well, you know, it is how clean. It smell, it's immaculate. You know, the, the, the carpet looks like it needs a little bit of cleaning. But other than that, no, that looks like a great camper. I understand why why I, Deli Boy's excited like about it. I do like that camper. See, King Bate, I'll talk. We know he's not sleeping in that camper. No, 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 no. A hundred percent, you're not sleeping. No, in that I'm camper. definitely. Sleep, I probably can't fit in the camper. But you know, if I do, by the way, Steady with some great knowledge about Evie Giddings, you know where he's at right now. He's in Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, nice. This game. Till next Friday. Yeah, I didn't think Rancho. <laughs> yeah. I thought Rancho Cucamonga for the longest time was a fake city that next Friday yeah. made up. And I know Stiney knows nothing about the Friday series. Ice Cube, Mike Epps, yeah. Pinky Records, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Chico, Baby Chico, yeah. Baby Joker, whatever his name yeah, was. Yeah. Rancho Cucamonga. Evans out there with Uncle Elroy and Mike Epps. So fair or foul, Bonte, I go, hey, come up to the cabin. And I didn't tell you ahead of time. And I go, yeah, we got a full cabin this weekend, but y'all are staying in the camper outside. That would be kind of a weak play. Well, and it would not go for it. <laughs> it's like, I put the nearest hotel right now. We're going to stay in California Hot Springs or Indian <laughs> Springs, whatever it is. Yeah, you're going you're yeah. to go to Geyserville. Yeah, we're, going, we're out. Yeah. <laughs> we're out. She would not go for it. Uh, we personally uh, wouldn't chill. Well, I told my brother, since he's my brother and he stayed in the cabin many times, he's sleeping in the camper. Damn. 
Well, they're not right. Was he, he happy it. about it? Oh, he yeah, he's excited. Yeah, he, he's ready to take the boys. Oh, he's a big camping guy. You know, he likes yeah. camping. I'm not a big camper guy. I'm just, I'm just Boy, not. I, I thought. All I'm going to do a Costco run today. I'm going to have all, everything ready in the house. All the talk. I know. All the talk. All the years about you. I'm so disappointed in you. Well, no, but in not. a way, I'm, I'm embracing yeah, it. Exactly. I used to be a blue collar worker. I did. I used to load fifty four foot trailers at UPS, and you should get down and dirty doing all these that odd jobs. That chapter's closed for me. Oh, it's big time closed. I never want to go back to that chapter. It's like ten chapters ago. Feel me? I never want to do a hard day of labor. Like when we move under our condo yeah. in the future, I'm hiring movers. Yeah, I'm not doing that stuff myself. I feel you on that? I'm hiring people to do that yeah. now. All right. Oh, Deli Boy's so excited. He's going to have the thing attached to his F-250 or whatever he's got. I mean, and the lights are working, now, the blinkers, everything. He's so pumped up. Now, here's the other thing. And I don't fish, if people are asking. Now, here's the other thing. I just don't have the patience. Why? Well, I've never fished before. I played a little gold fish with my daughter. We got the little... No, no, no. The, the, the gold fish is fishing. not fish. I mean, um, I mean, I know it's not fish, but we got the little fake reels and we do it. And I'm yeah. like, huh, maybe I'll take baby chance fishing one day, even though I've never fished a day in my life. Just never have. Just throw a line in the water and wait. Now, we're, we're too loud to fish. Yeah, we're probably We'd talking all day. Yeah, all we're the scared fish. all the fish. No, no we live can. shows while we're fishing. Well, we yeah, definitely no get up early enough to where we could. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Very true. That's true. Now, there's probably a good thing that Deli Boy is in this camper because now that I'm thinking about it, JP Money don't shut up. <laughs> I love <laughs> you, JP Money. I that's love you. That's not fair. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just imagining being in the cabin with him. He's talking all night long. Well, you know what? He's okay. talking through the game. I'm like, dude, I'm trying to hear Fitz and Buki. And he's just chirping, 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 chirping. Well, you're going to have Warriors Pels. We'll have our eyeball on multi-view in the other bedroom because of Sacramento I, and the Suns. Absolutely. And then you got the Giants and Rays. And the Masters. Oh, yeah, the Masters. And I almost forgot about tomorrow, those. UFC 300. You know what? It's a great sports it, weekend. UFC 300 is a stack card. I do like it. I, I I will be locked in on UFC 300 tomorrow. It's a day off. Um, I don't think we're going out the house tomorrow. Retro Cucamonga. I just can't get over it. Being in Retro Cucamonga. I never thought that place existed. But this camper, it's a good thing Deli Boy's in that camper. So, you know what? I'll stay in the camper. Now, the question is, would you stay in that camper if it was parked next to Lake Merced? Oh, no. No, no. I'd call the I'd call the authorities on myself. <laughs> oh, Are stop, you kidding me? Stop. Get out of here. They added this new bike lane, which eradicated oh, a ton of spots for the RVs, and I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Look, dude, I just paid property tax in the city, and I just paid my IRS, you know, whatever, federal income taxes. I don't want anybody getting free rides anymore, if I'm being 100% <laughs> candid. Oh, I feel like I'm getting raked wow, over the coals here. On, why? Just because you're getting taxed. Are, look at, why are you hating on everybody else getting free rides? Out. Don't there, hate on there, their hustle. There are people who truly need the money and the support and the infrastructure. And it feels like, to me, too many people are exploiting it, and it's not going to the actual people right. who need it. You hey, know what listen, I mean? The government exploits us all the time. No, I agree, but like, <laughs> this is America. it bugs me. <laughs> this is America, man. Come on. Don't be hating on people trying to get over. I'm always trying to look to get over on city politicians and the <laughs> government. <laughs> Why not? Why wouldn't I? Come on now. Anyway. I had enough. Who is the least likely? Is it us two? Is it us to just to sleep in the camper successfully for one night, it, oh. like as as a, of the radio Who? combinations? No, 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 forget that. Who are the warriors would sleep in that camper? Come on, Looney, Clay, 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 Thompson. Clay. <gasps> Clay's a boat guy, so I think he's fine with the wilderness. Yeah, he, that's yeah, a good he's point. Not, he's well, he's probably outdoors. camping on a lake. GP two, you know, load the boat in. GP two would have some fun with that. Yeah, I think he'd lean into it. Draymond, I actually think GP two would wake up early and cook eggs and bacon for everyone. <laughs> He's the cook. Yeah, because like, because he's got that smell. Like I've been cooking all morning. They make like, the rookies do it. Yeah, I just think that he's got that kind of attitude. He make he make TJD and pods crack the eggs and everything. Yeah, for like sure. That. What about uh Chris I Paul? Can, Chris Paul could probably. I can see him doing that. He's like no, what, North, he, no, North he, Carolina no. guy. No, he's hold a on. facilitator. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, he would be set the, that up. Yeah, set that yeah. up. Yeah. He's telling hey, everyone what to here, do. You're here. You're here. I got the best suite. You need one of those though. Yeah, he's a guy like that. That's true. What to do? Steph's getting the suite. He's sitting in the. You know, he's chilling. Draymond, too. Draymond, he's, he's Draymond's got that bougie right. lifestyle. No, Tr Draymond's in the outhouse. No, nah, he's not. <laughs> That's a joke. That was a joke. That was a joke. No, no Draymond. <laughs> no, Draymond. <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah, Draymond's out there. Like, he's, you know, I'm telling you, man, once you get out the hood, because I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. Yeah, you don't want to go back. OJ stuff. You never want to go back. I was talking to somebody yesterday. It's like, dude, 
I will help out the hood. I will do all that. No problem whatsoever. But I ain't going back to the hood to live there. Uh-uh. <laughs> we live in the hood. They grow up in the hood to get out the hood. That's why you see all these rappers with all these big houses. Yeah, they'll go donate and come back here and there. But nobody wants to live in the hood no, no more, man. No. Because in the hood, they'll rob from you if you stay there. Seriously. A lot of haters in the hood. I, I love the hood. It's, but when you're camping in the woods, is that the hood? No, it's not the hood. It's just outdoors. Now, being from the hood, we watch all these movies, and you see what happens outdoors, especially with African Americans and minorities, and you end up dying in these movies. So you got the bears, you got the deers, you got everything. Yeah. I, you know, I may have to be in the cabin. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, I want to be inside the cabin. Sounds like a setup being outdoors in the camper. We we have very nice beds. I made sure to spend extra money Watch on the, the greatest excellent, beds. Yes, yeah, <laughs> excellent match. The greatest motor, tremendous home. beds. Okay, did you see him show up to Chick Fil A in Atlanta? Oh my did God. anyone <laughs> see that? It was layers of comedy, and I know that people get so triggered, but can we just laugh, people? It was so funny, and he ordered. Oh my God, I was dying. Was I not the only one who was laughing? I, I, I he mean, was wearing slim fit pants with a. I'll Huge take two coat. chicken deluxes. <laughs> it Dude, it's, the greatest it's, chicken sandwich. I mean, that guy was our president. And people <laughs> and he mad. might be again. And, and listen, and listen, and people get mad at so again. many other things. People get so mad at so many other things, <laughs> just, and that guy's our president. It's insane. In America. It's insane. What I'm country? Just, I'm looking at the picture of it. He's <laughs> like, he's talking so, to the whole staff. He's doing his little hands thing, like he's eyes. sermoning them. It's, oh, my God. I swear to God, everybody, there's like, wow. <laughs> it was an incredible it, photo. It, you know, it, it's just too oh much. Oh, my God. The guy's too much. Like, we don't, like, that's the sad part about this country. And you see all the dialogue about OJ yesterday, which was just wild and off the charts. Um. This guy, we don't have better presidential candidates. No, at and it's all. disgusting. Like it's, it's oh, by the way, just on, on both sides. By the way, Susanna from Chick Fil A is calling. Oh, is she? Yeah. Here, what? you better answer that. Yeah, answer why right don't you now. go off the air? And hey, I'll, no, and no, I'll, no. I want to. Hey, Susanna, how you doing? Do You're not on swear. Speakerphone. We're doing. Do not swear. We're on the board of Russell right now. How you doing, Susanna? Hi, Monte. How you doing? Hey, hey, my Hi. boys. Shh. Shasky, Lutman, and Spadoni are hungry. They've been, I don't they, pay. I got my credit card right they've here. They've been craving Chick-fil-A since 5 in the morning. Because of what happened oh with the God, Kings. Today. Yeah, yeah, because of what happened with the Kings, where a chicken wing was thrown onto the floor, we got to have fried chicken this morning. Okay, what time are you coming by? I what don't know. What time are you coming by? I'm going to probably come by and get off around 10. Uh, I'm going to go get Chick-fil-A. You guys are going to yeah, be kind of stuck here. Yeah, they're stuck oh, here. Oh, they're not happy. Chick Shasky will be around there at 10.30. <sighs> I will. I will. I will. Sounds good. This is incredible. This is like captivating. All right, so radio. Susanna, Susanna, say, come by. You have her number. Come by. At I will. She'll be ready to rock and roll. Hell yeah. You, she'll give you a spicy deluxe. Oh, oh that'd be she me. Knows I think I like she knows. That. She knows. Yeah, 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 like yeah. Susanna, you know it's too well. Hey, Susanna, I'm on a diet. Don't be. Don't be busting me out here. <laughs> Hey. I'm saying you come by. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not like I haven't been by there in the last <laughs> yeah. week or two. Don't be busting me out, Susanna. All right? All right? See you soon. All right. Chick-fil-A sauce on the side, please. <laughs> all right, Susanna. Oh, my gosh, come by. All right, all right we'll be all there. Right, right. Chick-fil-A ceremony. All right, there we go. That's the spot. You know you got you know you got problems with a man in your Chick-fil-A. It's calling you back. <laughs> we, we got problems, too. <laughs> We got problems. We got issues. Well, I, I had a special parking spot due to my uncle last week, and I felt very special because he gave me the business card to present to people when I was trying to park near the giant right. stadium. We've got Chick Fil A owners. We've got Proposition Chicken. Prop Chicken, yeah, it's your we've got, yeah, the whole crew at Prop Chicken. We got Jacks. We got Jacks. I mean, we've got so many hookups now. I know a homicide detective who I coach with who so, will help us out. I, I mean, well, I wouldn't want to need help in that particular yeah, I mean, department. We, we all you know where I'm going because if my kills a cop. I mean, you know, I got caught for a, uh, oh, this guy, I was driving down to the strawberry farm on the way to Cal Pop, or on the way to San Luis Obispo uh, four years ago at Anna. This guy, I'm a patrol officer. He was a brother, too. He said he saw me make an illegal turn, which was, he was lying like crazy. Uh huh. And then he starts walking up in the car very slowly because I had the tinted windows. So I make sure, like, whenever I get pulled mm -hmm. over, I put my hands out. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm just, yeah. hey, I got nothing. You know, it's just yeah. the way a black man has to live okay. when you get pulled over. Yeah. It's not funny, but it's kind of funny when you've gone through it your whole it, life. It's not anyway, funny, but yeah, well, you I get, get what, what I'm saying. saying. So then he gave me a ticket. It's like, you know, your windows are tinted. I was like, you really saw my tinted windows? He goes, yeah, but I also saw you made a turn, and I don't want to get to that. It's like, okay, buddy. So, you know what? I got off of that because you know people.
<laughs> law enforcement in. You turned into TV, Bonte? No, I didn't. I wasn't on TV yet. Do you know who I am? I wasn't, I wasn't on TV know? yet. Do you I wasn't know? on TV yet. I'm Mo Green. Do you was, know who I am? Yeah, I wasn't on TV yet. So I want to get back to this real I wasn't quick. On, I wasn't on TV yet. I was a, I was a little bad on the Of the Warriors staff and coaches and players, at the campfire, if I was going to pick my top three, who I want to spin a yarn, Steve Kerr, Ron Adams, who's the third? Because Ron Adams is there, you got to have the You're old. You're talking like, like telling sto like yeah, stories, yeah, like telling stories. stories. Oh, Kitty Atkinson. So they're all coaches. No, no. Uh, Ron Adams, Steve Kerr. Kenny right. might just be chuckling in the background. Oh, yeah. Kenny's a good can guy. Can I get Joe Lacob there? Can you do a visit There's real no quick way to Lake Lake is camping. Just if we're doing all Warriors, okay. I'm taking the owner. He's probably more of a glamper. He's got some what's, stories. What's, this is where you need Bob Myers just to come show up. Like, hey, our family friend Bob, come on Bob, back. Honestly, you need Bob Myers back. Bob. I was going to say, I can see Bob. a little too quiet. I can see Bob Mike Dudley is a little too quiet. Oh, no. You know who it is. You get Steve Kerr. You get Rod Adams. We're sleeping at the wheel here. The third person would be the great Raymond Ritter. Are you kidding me? You know how many players and teams I don't he's even been know around? Where you're going with this? Do you think he's still wearing a suit when he goes camping? <laughs> That's right? what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying. <Did> <laughs> the most well dressed camper Dude, ever. <laughs> I love I love at halftime when you see him on the he's court. In swim chunks in a vest. Now, in case people don't know who Raymond Ritter oh is, oh my god, Raymond Ritter. He's the PR Cesar uh, Cesar the Golden State Warriors senior vice president of communications, Golden State Warriors, four time NBA champ. He's been around forever with the LA Lakers and all that stuff. Raymond Ritter. Yesterday, you watch him at halftime. He's got the suit on, yeah. and he's looking at players. Yeah. And, see the, and he can just grab CJD. You're doing a halftime interview. <laughs> right at halftime, TJD puts on the headset. It's great. Raymond Ritter can tell great stories. Are you kidding me? I, I'm not. I, I love Raymond. Raymond, if you're out there. You don't there, think he can tell stories? I still want all the guests we can get, but no, I don't I don't think I'm going to go with someone else. Chris DeMarco? No, I mean, I want Draymond. Yeah, I know you're big time. I would want Draymond. There. Okay. Yeah, Absolutely no incredible. I want to hear Absolutely about all. Incredible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you I mean, might invite LeBron. Plus, exactly. And then if we had the transistor radio and we we're playing, well, we don't have transistor radio, but if I was playing my Ultimate River Jams mix, which I have yeah. on my Apple Music, I would want to be there because I think Draymond's a karaoke guy. Have he you seen that, no. that photo of him no. and LeBron no. dancing? He said it, Whitley. By the way, Whitley said, I was doing these videos, the big three. Uh, do we got a read for that right now today or no? We don't have a read for that. What'd he say? This next, oh, next segment we have it, the big three unplugged. Draymond said he's a great karaoke that singer. That doesn't surprise me. And we got the video. Go look for it on 95.7 game right now. But don't you pull it up. And then Whitley tried to get him to say, well, what song? What's this? He goes, I can't give that away. Well, if we were doing a survivor game where the two, like the uh, a pairing, Monte and me, Steiny and Goo, Willard and Dibs, had to stay in the camper, the little pop up tent that I have, for the most amount of time, and like once you like you guys are fed up with each other, you leave. Who could last the longest between who? Steiny the pairings. Or, oh, I think we last longest. You think? Nah, you 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 we're have, pretty bougie. No, dude. no, no, no. You have no. You wouldn't survive at all. Because you're, I mean, your bugs. Your OCD yeah. kicks in just around this show. Yeah, you can't exactly. sit still. You can see true. fidgety. So you would be gone quick. Yeah. You'd be done quick. In terms of Stiney Guru, I think they would be fed up with each other after. Oh, Stiney be gone. He'd just minutes. walk off. He'd just walk off and wouldn't care. He wouldn't care. <laughs> Guru would by default. Just, I don't he know where leave. he went. He's just gone. He's just gone. I, I can just imagine him waking up in the morning. I mean, what are we going to do today? Goo says he's outdoors. Goo has. Go? Who has claimed that he is shot down deer and hunting? He's a hunting legend, apparently. I don't know. And then Willard and Dibs? I don't know. That's a great question. Is Willard and Dibs? Sure you don't miss that break, bro. All right, we got a break. Sorry. Do, do we do well, Caller I, of the Week? I, if I know, right, if I know Willard, I bet Willard right. fancies himself a good Wait a camper. minute. Caller of the Week is a guy we flushed twice? Really? <laughs> BPA. What's <laughs> happening? Hey, pal. Uh, no, not much. Just watching some uh, clay shooting highlights right now. That's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> was inspired, I was inspired to call it. Hey, he's shooting great. If he shoot, continues to shoot like that, they really are a threat, right, in the playoffs. <laughs> uh, by the way, Vivek, Vivek gutless, feckless, juiceless character. I mean, you talk about a founder with many, many mil in, in Silicon Valley, billionaire, who has absolutely no juice in the valley. <laughs> <laughs> That's Vivek. <laughs> so he's uh, no one gives a damn who Vivek is in Silicon Valley. Uh, just let you know. And, hey, and, you I, know are you? Way, so. I've actually heard. Are you a mover and a shaker heard, down there? I've actually heard. No, I'm not. No, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. Shatsky, I'm just a man. <laughs> 
How did he weigh color of the week? After all the flushing we Because he's out. just a man. That, that was, was color of the just week. Just a man. He that sounded was. like a superhero or a villain who's trying to take someone out. I'm just a man. Oh, BPA's man. just well-rounded that way. Oh, man. Call it to the board. You know, I'm just well-rounded. <laughs> <laughs> call is better than that. I'm just a man. You could be he, named you know that caller of the week, too. He's your Newman to your Jerry Seinfeld. I could see that. That's a good call. That Isn't is he? Call. Hello, Newman. Newman, Newman got the last laugh. That freaking snitch on the last episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> that snitch. All right. Foreshadowing for the end of the morning roast. <laughs> more coming up. It's brought to you by Safeway. This week at Safeway, get more savings when you buy more with your Safeway membership. Buy one, get one free on mix and match berries.
Now, back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. Now, was, when you look at me. I was bumping that future of Metro Boomin this morning, and the first song on the track is We Still Don't Trust You. And all he says is like, you're such a super freak. Uh, like, they only say like two things, and it's like four minutes long, but the beat is amazing. It is amazing. I can't get it out of my head. I really can't. Gosh, they're coming out with hits. There's so many good songs out right now. I guess J. Cole jumped on this album, but they're all clouded J. Yeah. Cole because he's flipping and flopping. Yeah. No longer, nobody's on Team Drake. They're on Team like Kendrick and Future and Metro Boomin. I don't know. Well, I, don't I know hope the Warriors don't Morgan. back down to the Pelicans tonight. I don't think they will. It's a huge game. 888 957 What does this game mean to Dub Nation? I, that's what I want to know. Like, I'm kind of sleepwalking this week. You know, I know a lot of people believe that if they get in, they could do some damage. But how much do you truly believe that? Because last night's performance, Steve Kerr said it after the game. He said, man, it was a tough night. Here's what Steve Kerr had to say about the win. Yeah, it was a tough uh, night for us. We, we did not uh, execute very well. But, um, you know, these are tricky games. We were obviously uh, resting, you know, Clay and, and uh, Draymond, who, who were, you know, banged up. And with the back-to-back, -back, you know, we're hoping to take care of business tonight. And Portland, I give them a lot of credit. They played really hard, and they made things uh, much more difficult on us. But we, uh, we pulled through in the end. So, yes, they didn't play well. But how much can you take away from that game last night in terms of the execution when you don't have Clay Thompson, you don't have GP2, you don't have Draymond Green? Two of the big three. And going into that game, this was a wild, this was a wild stat, uh, cause I do want to get back into the camping and I, I think that is a lot of fun. But the Warriors had a record of 19 and 36. Or whatever, whenever they play without, uh, whenever Clay and Draymond are not playing, right? They're 19 to 36 in the regular season when both Dre and Clay are out. 19 to 36 all time. Wow. It's kind of crazy, right? It's not, though. It's I not. Mean, you're talking about two all time legends. Exactly. So. And it, you could see they missed the shooting of Clay Thompson yep. in terms of space. And they clearly missed the defensive presence in the paint. And they missed his offense as well. Yep. Like just being able to facilitate. I think that their transition game slows down when you don't have Draymond Green out there. There's just a lot of missing when, when right. both those guys are out. And then also factor in GP2. Yeah, who's going to press Scoot Henderson 94 exactly. feet. So 17 road wins in the last 21 games. I don't know what to make of Scoot, but keep going. 26 and 11 in the last 37. The Warriors. They've won 9 to 10 games. Do you believe they're playing their best basketball right now? I can make the argument that they were playing better during their 14 to 4 stretch. But when you got to have these games with Steph being fatigued and he's missed a game due to rest. And... Draymond Green dealing with the lower back injury. And Clay's had the tendonitis in the knee. And Kamiga's missed six straight games with the tendonitis in his knee. All of a sudden, you look up and the Sacramento loses tonight. And you beat the Pelicans, which will not be easy because they're tied with the Boston Celtics for the best road record in the NBA. Even better than the Golden State Warriors. Despite the Warriors having the sixth best road record in franchise history, which is insane, right? Yeah. All the years they've been playing basketball with the Golden State Warriors over 75 years. They have a chance to steal that eighth spot. And all of a sudden, they fall into the seventh spot. And if they're playing OKC or Minnesota, how good are you feeling, Shaz? I'm feeling great. And you would be the second hottest team in the NBA over the last... Like, then you get to the playoffs. So right now, they're 9-1 and one in their last 10, right? Yep. 10 out of 11? 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Okay, I just want to make sure I, I got this down. Yep. They win the next two. It's 11 out of 12? Yep. I mean... Outside of the Dallas Mavericks, name another team who's hotter going into the playoffs. Right. Name me. another team that has the synergy of winning and the resume of winning like the Warriors. Mm. Name a better coach, X's and O's, with playoff pedigree in the West better than Steve Kerr. Not many, if not, not at all. And you have the most clutch player in the game currently yep. based on the metrics, Steph Curry. Yeah, I like my no. chances. Now I don't want to get ahead of myself because you still have to play in the play-in game. Yeah, but you got to win tonight. And you got to win the seven-eight game, but you got to take it a game at a time. So you can't look ahead. You're right, Shasky. You got to take out a tough team that is rolling. And the last time the Pelicans walked into the Chase Center, they walked out with a 36, 36 point win. Yeah, and, and they, last they can't night, do that. And last night they lit up the Kings, lit up Sacramento to the point where they were throwing chicken wings out on yeah. the court. They were so frustrated, sack they started throwing their crispy fried chicken that you spent twenty dollars for on the court. So, 
The Pelicans right now, they're rolling. They were 22 of 40 for the three point line. And you know CJ McCollum. You know CJ wants this game bad. <laughs> for all the nightmares the Warriors have given CJ McCollum, he was 9 of 12 from three last night. He had it rolling. Mur Trey Murphy, the third, who's a very good player. This kid can play. He's a good defender, good two way player. He is the future. 27 points last night, 6 of 12 from the three point line. You got Zion rolling. He's lost a lot of weight. He looks spry. He looks athletic. He had a steal on De'Aaron Fox. Did had a breakaway duck. Almost broke the rib. Almost ripped the rib down. Damn. Zion's got power. 31 points, 6 assists, 4 rebounds. Who's guarding him tonight? It's got to be the Jerry Green assignment. Now, you're probably going to see TJD. That's a tough one for him, too. Yep. You're going to see a little TJD. Lefty on lefty. You're going to see a little bit of Kavon Ludi. I think you dust him back off. Mm. And Ludi, Ludi dog, he gets all the love today. What a performance. The ultimate professional. Can't get enough of Ludi. But it's got to be Jerry Green, right? Yeah. You got a day off. Yeah. Rest that back. Rest that knee. The greatest defensive player in Warriors franchise history? Come on, let's go. So to me, it starts on the offensive end where you can't have the turnovers like you had last night or just in general like you've had this year. And I want to get Zion into the action all day long. I want to make him exert as much energy on the defensive side to take away from the explosion on the offensive side. Now, are they still experimenting with him as like a point forward in the second unit they, area? They are. They're, they're putting the ball in his heads a lot more because they don't really have a true point guard. And that's where I would pressure him all 80 feet, mm. all 90 feet of the court. Wouldn't you? Yep, absolutely. And make him put the ball on the floor with his right hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, do you try to steal a couple possessions with Kaminga on them? That's, I don't know. Well, that's where I think the full court press, as he right. when he's the point guard, I would get up into him. And I would it, even double him, too. And you got Jonas Valanciunas, who's been a problem for the Warriors, going back to his Memphis days. For some reason, he's just a big joker. Now, defensively, you can play him off the floor because you get him into high ball screens, the high pick and rolls with Steph Curry, and whether it's Draymond Green, whether it's TJD, whoever it is, you can get Jonas Valanciunas in the action. And you can play, and he just drops dead. He cannot, he cannot stay. He does not. He drops dead on that pick and roll coverage, and that gives Steph Curry wide open shots from the three point line. He was hitting a lot of deep shots the last time the Warriors played him. What's uh, did TJD play a lot in that last game? No, here, let me pull it up here. That last game, I mean, I know it was a blowout. Warriors, so the Warriors totally were so different. They yeah. were so different. So in that basketball, what game, was the starting lineup? TJD played twenty two minutes. He actually scored 19 points, had five rebounds. It was 9 of 11. But that was toward the blowout end of it? it probably. So it was very different. They were down 19 after the first quarter. Yeah. They have 46 points w in that first what quarter. What was the starting lineup that night? Kamiga, Looney, Curry, Clay, and Pajipski. Wow, that's way different than what they're going to go with now. Exactly. They're going to go, you know, Wiggins Steph was Clay. Dude, Wiggins came off the bench that day. This is when he was in a deep funk. Two of eight, five points. Yeah, they're so different. I mean, they're so different. What date was that? January. It was after the Toronto Raptors game. This is mid January. I think January 10th. I'm so three not months mistaken. ago. God, so much has January changed. January 10th. January 10th. So much has changed. So you got a lot going on here. Pajemski over and then, Clay. And then, are you a little concerned about Steph Curry in the shot? No. Uh, okay. I mean, look, he's still Steph Curry. I mean, he went nuclear against the Lakers. He was just as efficient as we've right. ever seen him. So, no, not really. I just think yesterday was one of those. Like tougher well, games than it needed to be because of the opponent and where you are, and then resting two guys. Well, think about this. And they stuff. doubled him a lot. We'll go to the calls in a second. I see you guys lining up 888 957 9570. Steph Curry, last 25 games, shooting 38% from three. And that doesn't include last night. So that would be 26 games. And last night he was, what was he, 5 of 18 from three? Five to sixteen from three. That's a lot of threes. Five to sixteen from three. He took nine shots in like the first nine minutes. You never see Steph do that. Well, they also turned it over right. like eight billion times. It did. But uh, the the three he hit in the fourth quarter to uh, when they're down six, it kind of got him going. He shut up in the fourth yeah. quarter, yeah, like he did last Friday against Dallas when yeah. he was struggling. He scored fourteen points in the fourth quarter, gave him a chance to win that game. Five and ten from beautiful the floor. assist to Looney. But the efficiency has been down for Steph, no doubt. And Steve Kerr was asked yesterday, you know, are you going to rest Steph Curry tomorrow? And he goes, no. Hell no. But Steph does look a little tired. He does look a little tired, but he's going to gut it through it. He's going to play. You know, he'll get going. He'll get more space here tonight, but he's got to have a big game. Boy, I would just, just, if he can win tonight, you know, if you can win tonight. And you need the loss from Sacramento. And then, you know, maybe you play like two good quarters against Utah. That's all you need. You know, that's all you need. Wink, wink, nod, nod. 
Yeah, Danny Ainge, he will fire people if they win that game on Sunday. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Danny Ainge. <laughs> How many tanks has he been a part oh, of? Dude, so many. So many. Hoarding all these draft picks. Man. Uh, let's go to Jan in Mountain View. Jan. Hi, Jan. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, what I was just going to say was that uh, I think that, okay, they have TJD that starts. Well, uh, I think uh, based on his performance last night and how he closed the game, Looney should be uh, in the closing lineup going here forward because he uh, helped set good screens and he helped uh, Steph Curry last night uh, get that you know winning shot. And uh, I believe uh, he should be... Uh, in the closing lineup, period. Interesting. Interesting. Now, it depends on the game, Jan. It depends on the game and the personnel. Like a game like tonight with Jonas Valanciunas and how big he is, how strong he is, and you get Zion Williamson, Looney will be needed tonight. He will be needed. I knew there was going to be a point at the season where you're going to have to dust him off. This is where the strength of numbers and the depth of the team, this is where it comes into play because you can play particular guys in a certain matchup. Like, moving forward, it's not about feelings anymore. It's about team ball, and it's about winning games. So if the matchup is not advantageous towards, say, Jonathan Kaminga, or if it's not advantageous towards Brandon Pajewski, well, those guys are going to sit. They're going to play other guys. Now, you may play Pajewski a little more to CP3 one game. I have a hard time thinking CP3 is going to be left out of the equation when it's all said and done down the stretch. No doubt. Of, of a game that has do-or-die implications. Because yep. of his ball handling. IQ, yep. you know, how he can bait fouls. Like there's, there's a lot that gets cooked into it. I mean, look, I don't think he's the greatest defender, but he's like so cerebral. Yep. He makes up for it with uh, in, incredible instincts. Uh, you know, again, I go to the DeAndre Ayton. He gets the ball so deep. He's just going to go up and dunk. And here comes CP3 out of nowhere to just strip him. Yep. I mean, he knew right away he was going to put that ball on the floor. Uh, Chris Paul has been shooting so well, too, uh, since he's got back from that left hand fracture. The three point shot that he hit over Ayton. To seal the game. You love Tough that, shot. didn't you? I, what about the hierarchy big race jumper that he has? He kind of does the dribble. Yeah. What does he do to God, Sham God? Yeah. And he just fades away the old man game. I kind of like it, man. I kind of like I, I've warmed up to CP3 big time. Big time. He's been such a pro in helping the young guys. Helping them, picking them up when they're struggling. You see it with Podge. You see it with JK. You see it with TJD. Well, he got frustrated with Kaminga at the end of that quarter. And mm -hmm. he, he, was, he said to him, you know, like, okay, not only did you turn the ball over with five seconds yeah. to go, then you then you fouled him. Right. And he's like, I would have got you the ball. Just give it to me and right. we'll run a little pick and roll right. action. And you know, but that's a growth moment for for Jonathan Kaminga. He's always on these guys. You see TJD, he's always talking to communicate. Yeah. Need to do this. He's always facilitating point figures left and right. But his three point shot has come around and pull up the numbers in a second. Computer's running slow. So let's go to what is this? Savala? Savala? Savala. Savala in Richmond. Savala. What's happening, Savala? Hey, good morning to y'all. Enjoy the show as always. Thank you. Um, so, a lot, thank you. This show, I mean, you guys are just great. And after the game, the next morning, I love it. Um, last night was another nail biter for me, and it just like took me back to the first half of the season. Just a feeling of like discombobulation and people being out of sync and out of sorts and missed opportunities. It just felt like kind of going back in a time machine in a not so good way, even though we won. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it also like, as I was watching the game, I was just like, dang, like the difference when we don't have clay and Draymond is like so huge. Yep. Just like the, the, the gravity and the groundedness that they bring to the game to me, we missed it last night and it really kind of erased any questions I had about how important the core three are moving forward over the next few years. So that was just a surprise takeaway for me. It was like, oh man, when we're missing these like centers of gravity, mm -hmm. this team it struggles. Yep. So it was interesting to see that because I've been skeptical about the big three, you know, the whole season basically. Can I ask you an off the, the, the board question? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm a relatively new fan, so okay. you might not get a very good answer. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you will not get flushed. <laughs> in or out on the okay. pop in or out on a pop up camper. Um I'm gonna go out. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. This is We're why you're a roaster. Good good call, Savala. Good call. Good takeaway with the big three and the gravity that they create. She paused. Yeah. Um Yeah. Mm. Now Chris Paul, twenty four games I'm since out. he's come back from the left hand <laughs> fracture. 
Since come back from the left half, fracture in 24 games. Chris Paul, 47% from the floor shooting, 40% from three. 40% from three. So the shot has been around. He's hitting some big shots for the Golden State Warriors. Let's go to Mike and SF. Mike, what's happening, man? You're on the road. What's up, Mike? Hey, what's up, fellas? I love the show. Um, cracking me up all week. Thanks for that. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. what we're here for. Hey, so Chris Paul, you know, I'm like Bonte. You know, we're not wrong on uh, personnel too often, but... I admit that I was wrong on him. I, I had a big text group with my friends early in the season, and I'm like, man, we're going to regret this Jordan Poole. We're going to regret leaving him. He's too good. And then all of a sudden, Chris Paul, with his bad luck body language, you know, with his faces, with his all of his nonsense, which we love kicking his A down when he's with everybody, he has become a great warrior this year. I can't believe I'm saying that, but he has. No, you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. He's important. He's very important to this team. I've yeah. learned to appreciate all of his nuances, and yeah. he's been. I think he's been a seminal part of the youngsters being able to contribute this early. Um, Nikki Diaz chiming in. How much do you believe in the Warriors? She would say, coming up from the 10 seed, creep up and winning a championship is unlikely. But it would, it would be such a Warrior thing to do. I would never count them out. They have a real opportunity to do something really special. Do they? I think you're forgetting the village, Chask. I could see it in your eyes that if they just get in. They just have to win tonight. They win, win tonight, tonight. I'm all in. I, that's what I was going to say. Are Warriors fans like the majority allowing themselves to believe in this team? Well, this because is with what fans, I, with fans, you, yeah, you have guarded. Right. You don't want to get hurt. So, like, where's the line? Is it championship? Is okay, it, A, so. I'm just going to be happy if they get a first round. But if they get into the first round, you'll be very disappointed if it's against, like, a T-Wolves yeah. or a Thunder squad, right? So... Are fans allowing themselves to police? I think a lot of fans are like me. And I'll go camping analogy with you. <laughs> oh boy. There, there's like a giant rock or a swing that everyone goes off, you know, into the river, right? And that first time when you stand at the top and you look down and you're just a little hesitant, it takes a little while to take that leap. And then once, once you start getting in the air, now you're in. You're all in. And I feel like we're right on the edge overlooking the cliff right now, about to jump in the river, and I just, I want to see them beat the Pels, and then I'm, I'm I'm on the rope swing, and we're jumping into the river. <laughs> How many rope swings you, you've been on? Uh, rope swings? Yeah. Ropes course. In the ropes course Never done a rope swing into the river? No, nah, I don't, you know. No, I don't brothers, know. That's why I'm brothers, asking. Brothers of water don't I'm really out. get along. Well, we can get you floaties or that whatever like Brothers and Waters don't get along, man. <laughs> Not doing that. Not doing that. I'm trying to live, man. Don't, don't, don't talk about that. Don't, don't talk about Swimming? that. Swimming? You trying to live? What are you? What the hell are you talking about? I, 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 I'm trying to live. I'm just saying, man. It just it sounds dangerous. It sounds like a dangerous thing to do. He's no. never done a rope swing? No, it's in the water. No, I've done the blob. You know the blob thing where no, you sit on the edge of a mat? Uh-huh. And I can't believe it was really cool. Uh-huh. And this guy's jumping from the top. <laughs> He's sitting on the edge Wait. and he jumps. Oh, boom. like one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, I've never done, done that. that. That's scary. That sounds fun. It does sound fun. It and was scary, And then you though. went flying? Went flying. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was... <laughs> Uh, I've done the zip line into the water. That was pretty cool. Oh, so that's close. Yeah, that's, you know, but the whole rope zip line and, into a into a wow. yeah, you know, Now I'm imagining I, I, I'm a young I'm a cautious Bonte. dude when it comes to life and heights and jumping. I'm, and, like, I'm never dude. skydiving. I'm not doing that. No, I'm good off that. I'm good off that. I'm so uh, I'm good. Straight. I'm straight. I'm good. I'll I watch no your problems. GoPro of that, but I won't do it. I may not even watch your GoPro. I'll just say, hey, give you a thumbs up. Sorry, hey, that's so cool. Now, now, promise me one of these summers we're going to do the rope now, swing. Now, I'm not. Let me not speak for all the brothers because I know a lot of black people swim. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a joke, guys. It was a joke. But I will get you a life vest. And I'll have the kayak right there so you can, you know, drop right on into it. What if that rope don't, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, no, man. I, it's just a little dangerous. That's all. Okay. If the Who's rope, tying the rope? Who's tying the knot? It's just up there. You just, it's you just, up, trust there. It's you, just up there. You, you just got to trust You just got to trust, dude. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, I, trust, I don't trust easy. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds this is absurd. You're, you're, not, you're not Mark Ingram with uh, Lamar Jackson? Big trust? Yeah, what I'm not big trust. I'm not big trust. Oh, my God. Yeah, deep sea diving? Yeah, I'm good off that. What, what's the point? I could just watch the video. Watch the uh, nature channel. You know?
National Geographic. National Post Geographic. Star. Discovery. Pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not asking you to, to rope swing into a, like a shark-filled waters. <laughs> We're talking about the river. Well, he's a big guy. If it's on a tree, it might like snap. I, I have seen some hefty dudes try to come off this. Yeah, all the takes is one time. time. All the one time. All the takes is one time, dude. Spinotti feels me on that. Not doing it, man. Don't you seek a little thrill? I mean, I've cliff dived before. And that was cliff cool, dive. but you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm not trying to work when I'm out, like on vacation. Like that's the thing. People say, like, I need to work to like live. It's like, no, not on vacation. I'm trying to chill. Okay, well, you're chilling. going down the river in the kayak. You see the rope swing off to the side. You jump off the kayak. You swim over. You climb up. You get up to the top. You're holding it, and you see like 15 kids go in front of you because there's always like a waiting, you know, as everyone's coming down the river, and you just boom, and you just go. Well, well I remember. And we're so heavy now, you just kind of drop into the yeah, water. You well, don't even you don't even swing like well, the kids do. I remember going to Tahoe one summer. We we're in the lake, and the inner tube rope connected to the boat. <laughs> It snapped, and I'm just in the middle of the lake, and I'm just waiting on them to come get. And I, it was the scariest thing ever. The Larry David moment. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm, I'm dude. I'm, Were you I'm wearing good. a life vest? I was wearing a life jacket. Now I'm. I'm question. Do you need to go to La Petite with your no, daughter and I'm learn good. how to swim? No, I'm, I'm a good swimmer. I'm just you know, I just fear. I've seen some things. <laughs> I, you know, I just see. I like to play it safe. I like except, to say. except when it comes to my sports teams, I'm ridiculously arrogant. Bonte's right. You should always, and I tell this to Benny, have a healthy fear of the water. No, that I agree ocean. with. Never turn your back on it. That right? I agree with. Always. And and the current can <laughs> take you away. Mm -hmm. I just got a text from Colts Buck. Poll question of the day. What is it? Ask any of your black callers. I don't yeah. know who's black or white when they call them Colts <laughs> Buck. I don't know. Also the Screen same. them appropriately, <laughs> Sam. Hey, are you black? I'm actually Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. I knew that drop would come in handy. That's from like five months ago. <laughs> what the hell was that from? What was the context of that? <laughs> what is going on? What the hell? <laughs> they even rope jumped, they even rope jumped oh into the water. God. Oh, oh, man. You imagine Rob and oh. San Bruno? Nah, man. I didn't do all that, man. The downfall. Bonte at the top of the cliff. The downfall is near. It's coming I'm hard. always thinking worst case scenario in this stuff. Natural disasters, man. <laughs> I control what I control. The downfall right? is near. And it's coming hard. <laughs> That's what I think when I hold the rope. Oh, the downfall's coming. It's coming okay. hard. So, so you, 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 I don't even know if Raging Water still exists. <laughs> Raging Water? Oh, I loved Raging Waters. Okay, so you that do was that. Cool. That was fine. It's more dangerous going down one of those things, no, I bet. No, it's not. Not one of those tubes. No, no chance. Haven't you seen Action Park on HBO? Kids were dying, getting stuck in there. It was insane. Oh, well, not maybe, at Raging maybe, Waters, maybe, but at like Action Park. Where was Action Park at? Well, Action Park was like straight ghetto. It was, well, yeah, in, it was in New York. Oh, well, it's got to be and ghetto, people were man. drinking and smoking. Why just be no, it was ghetto. <laughs> like Literally, they didn't have any like real engineers building the rides. It was insane. Did I do something? Oh, never mind. Uh, I'm saying the chat. I, I didn't. I didn't drop an F bomb. I didn't no. do that. Uh, anyway, uh, let's let's go to Parker. We didn't have pools in the projects. None of us swim. But the jacuzzi, that's Oreo cookie. <laughs> so the Bonte would have jumped off the rope. No, he would not have. No, he would not have. No, he would not have. <laughs> I'm joking, 925, about the black people not swimming, all right? Relax. He's full of baloney. We should joke about that early in our kid childhood, all right? Relax. Can't we all just have fun? It's a Friday. There's a great movie about black swimmers, matter of fact. What is it? I forget the name of it. Uh, who was in the movie? Uh, I think Terrence Howard was. Oh. Like, so maybe it wasn't Terrence Howard. I forget what the He's movie was. He's got great hair now. He does have great hair. But like, black people are swimming. Like, I think of the on. Cuba Gooding Jr. one where he's a diver. With oh, Robert that Nero. one, yeah. That one, yeah. one too, yeah. yeah no, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. Don't be offended. I'm joking. Can we just joke? Gosh, don't be so sensitive Why about Why does everyone Friday. have to be offended by everything? Everything, we Can do. we just laugh a little? Just laugh it. You reap what you sow, brother. I mean, we've been pulling our hair out about minutes and rotations and wins for the Warriors. We've been scratching and clawing to get to the eight seed, and we can't make some jokes? Guess not. Let's go to Parker in the city. Parker, what's going on, man? What's up, guys? Uh, Fonte and Butcher, I've been listening to you guys forever. I know you guys are both legends. Um, I personally think that there is a bunch of holes on this lifeboat, the tire swing, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I don't think we even get out of the, the play-in. I think what's going to happen is literally the entire year I've been watching this team. We blow leads. There's no second score for the team. If you want to tell me that Andrew Wiggins, Kaminga, or Clay Thompson is going to win us a huge game because they're going to sell out to take steps just like what happened last year. 
I just think we've just been beating up on bad teams, and yeah, they've been playing well, but the lifeboat is it's sinking for me, and I'm, I'm waiting for the inevitable loss in the plan, and I don't have any faith in this team. All right, what if they win tonight emphatically, okay, and then they get that 7-8 matchup against the Phoenix Suns? You really fear, fear the Phoenix Suns that much? I don't. I guess that's fair. The Phoenix Suns. You know, I'm not going to fear them. But I, I think the main the main issue is like, there's what what is the optimism like? If you have Steph Curry on your team, shouldn't the expectation be an NBA title every season? Like, is I get what happened this season hasn't been great, but the expectation should be like, hey, we're winning the title, and you know we're fighting for the playing spot right now. And even if we beat the Suns, then you know, do you do you guys really think this team has any chance of winning a title? And is that is that a good season well, with? with I- you know, Steph Curry on the team. Quite honestly, I don't, I don't. I'm trying to remember about 2022. I don't know if I thought that was a championship team. If I'm being 100 percent candid, because Phoenix did. was the better team during the regular right. season. Yep. Though I didn't believe in them in the playoffs, and then everything shook out the way it did. Yeah. Um. You know, the expectations for these guys inside their heads: Joe Lacob, Steve Kerr, Steph Curry, Draymond, Clay Thompson. Their title or bust. That's that's their yes, mindset. Yes. Now, how do you get there? How do you do that? Um, you know, oh, I gotta send something <laughs> to the chat. I just got something there. Uh, so I, I mean, it's it's good to have those aspirations. These guys are four time champs, and like, does it matter for seeding for a team like this? Now, you want to avoid no. Denver, obviously, in the first round, and I get it. It's going to be a tough road to try to win a championship. I'm not even going to go down that road. Try to win round by round. But their expectations, what should our expectations be? I guess that's a better question. Should our expectations be first round? No. It wasn't like that before the season. It wasn't like that last season. Now, the championship year, which you just asked, they got off to the 18, the two-star. We're like, oh, there's a vibe. Yeah, but then there was a And then there was a rut yeah. because of the injuries yeah. and Steph and Draymond. You didn't know what Steph was going to look like. But then they went into the playoffs winning five straight games. So I don't know. But here's the other thing, and, and this is what I would tell the caller, like, I hear him on the, shouldn't you be a championship-level team with Steph every year? Okay. Who are some of the greatest players of all time? Just just in, in the NBA. Was Kobe in the championship or bust? Like, what was his team a championship contender every single year of his career? They were not. No. no. Like, even San Antonio, right. which was farther along when Duncan got there, because right. remember, they had Sean Elliott, they had Dave Robinson. They weren't championship every right. single year. Right. I, I LeBron mean, LeBron James has been very close. Michael Jordan, very close to that. And it is diluted. And I would say magic as well with the nine finals. Prince. It is diluted, realistic expectations. Most people's careers play out more like Dirks of the right, great players right. where they fight tooth and nail and they fall short. And then eventually they, they, they break through and he had two finals appearances. Right. All right. Um, I Reggie just, Miller, who we were just talking about, one of the greatest, I know we forgot about, one of the greatest players ever. Look at Steph's contemporaries. The only guy who even comes close to his is LeBron. You know. Everyone else falls short. I just, say it's time for you to do the legal. I just don't get. Like, I, I just get don't the, get the whole conversation. I never subscribe to this. I, I just don't. I can't wrap my head around it. You're wasting Steph's pride. You think Joe Lacob's trying to waste seasons <laughs> spending the money he's spending on his team? No. Now, you could disagree with the way he spends his money. We could disagree with the way they drafted players. Mm -hmm. You could disagree with some of the veterans they brought in. But what, when you have the most expensive roster in the NBA year after year, and you're in a tax year after year, Mm -hmm. and the NBA changes its rules because of you. Like, we've got two teams in the Bay Area that's changed the cap. Eddie DeBartolo and the 49ers changed the NFL. And you got the, and you got Joe Lacob changing the tax and the way we look at the first apron and the second apron and all that stuff. Anything, like, that to me screams they're trying to win. Yeah. I mean, they made the Kelly Oubre deal, and even Joe Lake admitted, you know what? Some of the moves we made that season probably wasn't the best. But that move screamed to me is like, he's not trying to waste the season. He's trying to maximize Steph Curry mm-hmm. and Clay Thompson mm-hmm. and Draymond Green or whatever else here. So I don't, I've never subscribed to I don't get that. Like, we're wasting Steph Curry's prime. What? Like, the team does things that screams we want to win at the highest level. Now, it may not work out. I, I just, just don't. I don't so, get it. No, but I don't, I don't it, get it, that dialogue it, at it, all. Well, I think I think it's it's perpetuated by the first take and social media era that we live in, right? Like again, LeBron has been to nine finals, ten finals, mm-hmm. right? Whatever it is, 
Steph has been to how many finals, Ponte? How many finals has Steph been to? Six. Okay. It's pretty damn incredible. <laughs> All right. How many has Kawhi been to? He's been to one. He's been to three. Okay. Paul George, zero. Okay. Yeah. Chris <laughs> Paul, one. One. Yeah. Russell Westbrook, one. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, three. Three finals. Okay. Oh, four, 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 four. One with OKC. That's right. Forgot yeah. about that one. Um, Again, look at his guy. How about James Harden? He went to the one when he was winning OKC. Has it been back since? Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown. How many one. of the Yeah, exactly. Okay. Jimmy Jimmy Buckets has been to one. All right. Two now if you want to come yeah. to bubble. You know, but so like, look at the contemporaries. He, he dwarfs all of them. I would subscribe to that if he had never been to a finals yep. or they only went to one. Mm -hmm. They've been to six. Right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't subscribe. Like social media will have a dialogue. That, oh, Joe Lake is wasting Steph Curry's prime. No Warriors are wasting his prime. I, <laughs> the Yankees right now would die to be as successful as the right. Warriors were. The Yankees. And they're spending the, all this money the and they're Dodgers making trades. Absolutely. would die. To be as successful. I, I the just, New England Patriots, the last however many, even though they have the and, three championships, and, would die to be the Warriors. And if any teams out there, like we always talk about this with the Niners. Boy, if they get into the playoffs, they're going to wreck shop in the NFC. They match up with anybody. Why can't we say the same about a Steph Curry led go to state Warriors team? I, I that is one championships have been through all the wars. Down 3 1, up 3 1. Game you. seven was on the road. Pivotal game six is clinching championships. Steph being on the hurt, road. coming off the bench. I mean, come on, man. If any team. Deserves the benefit of the doubt. Why wouldn't it be the go to state Warriors? Now I get it. Jonathan Kamiga hasn't played big time minutes in the playoffs. There's going to be a learning curve. Pods has never played in the playoff game. There's going to be a learning curve. Same thing for TJD. But you do have to trust the agents in the big three, as well as Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins proved in the playoffs you can count on the guy. Well, Patrick Mahomes is being compared to Steph Curry, correct? Yep. All right. At any point this year, did anybody think that the Chiefs were going to be the Super Bowl champions during the regular season. Everybody was doubting them. And what I keep saying, I, I'm not going to... You asked Spadoni. <laughs> Spadoni was like, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, I'm not taking him in them. every matchup. Not betting against them. They had their least successful regular season with Patrick Mahomes, got into the playoffs, and went on a run. And won two row playoff games. Which has been unheard of. In Baltimore and in Buffalo. And then won in overtime. Yep. Against a team that was favored. So... I put them in the same category of the Kansas City Chiefs. Until they get knocked out, and until the, right. the stake is through the heart, don't count out Dracula. I mean, last year was a horrific year in terms of team chemistry, and we've heard Jeremiah Green say he, he didn't even want to go to work. By the way, did you guys get find a 95-7? I'll send it to you guys. Uh, and they still made the second round and took the Lakers to six. And you look at game four. They tied a series in game four. Now, I get it. The Lakers were a better, they were a better team in that series. No doubt about it. And they all said they maximized that team or whatnot. But still finished up in the final eight because of the Steph Curry effect. What was so, that? What and was, now he's got better talent guy? around him. What was that guy's fourth quarter? What was his Lonnie name? Walker Lonnie fourth. Walker. Jesus Had the fourth quarter of his life. Where is Lonnie Walker playing this year? Wasn't he in Brooklyn? <laughs> Unbelievable. The Lonnie Walker game. Unbelievable. So if anybody deserves a bit of felt benefit of the doubt, why not? The, we're giving it to the Lakers. They won the bubble championship, but why are we doing it? Because of LeBron James. And Anthony Davis. Right. And that's it. And so Steph Curry's not getting that same respect? Uh, well, Steph and Clay, and Dre and CP3. And Looney? And Wig, Wig, say what you want, Wiggins is the second best player during the championship was. run. He was. And now he's starting well, to pick up his defense. I mean, if you look at Anthony Davis's playoffs, I mean, really he had the one bubble run that right. was his best run. That was it. Equivalent to Wiggins' title run. Right. And we're still giving AD all that all that love. Although I believe him to be the superior you're, player. You're right about Chris Paul. He's been through a lot of wars. Dude, a lot just, of wars. Look, he's lost, but like... He's been in Western Conference Finals, yeah, Game 7s, so, I mean, Finals, he, up 2-0. Beat the Warriors in a Game 7 with the Clippers. <laughs> yep. And lost to them. Where so he there you go. didn't play. He didn't play. So, it is what it is, man. I, I don't know, man. I, I feel good. If they can win tonight, just win tonight, get into that 7-8 game, and you get that 7 seed... You don't think OKC or Minnesota is going to be like, damn, we got to play the Warriors? Like, there's a little, they're going to see Steph and the Warriors, and they grew up watching these guys win championships? SGA and and Chat. I mean, they're very young. Very young. What behind the ears? And those those seven-game matchups are just difficult. They're very different than the regular season. All right, here you go. You don't know Jack. It's time for You Don't Know Jack, presented by Jack's Restaurant and Bar. This week, Stan Van Gundy does not know Jack about who the best offensive player in the NBA ever is. Steph Van Gundy? Steph Van Gundy, really? Luca? Best offensive player ever? 
I huh? think actually the best offensive player now that I have ever seen is Luka Doncic. Okay, so we've gotten there. Did you see MJ? I no, mean... no, hold on a second. <laughs> wow. Stan, I did see Scott. MJ. Uh, I did. Okay. Stan, let's, uh, Stan, sure. let's yeah. go. Stan, you got to give me the take. Let's hear it. Well, listen, I just don't think there's anything the guy can't do offensively. He's absolutely huge, first of all. I mean, he's 6'8 and big. He shoots the ball from deep. Now, I wouldn't have said this even a year and a half, two years ago. He's become a more consistent shooter from range. His range is incredible, and he's been very efficient shooting the ball. He can drive the ball from the perimeter. He can score in the post, and he's one of the best passers we have ever had in the league. There is literally no one who can match up with him, and when you bring the second defender, he can pick you apart. Could never Kevin Durant, Michael Jordan. LeBron James, Steph Curry, like what? Kareem? Nikola Jokic? Kareem? Larry Bird? Look at the best offensive player ever, huh? Yeah, I'm going to disagree with that one. The West? And, let, and let the career play out, first of all. Did you see MJ? It's the greatest. <laughs> right. Look, keep that on our board forever. I mean, when he goes, he goes, he's the greatest offensive player ever. Stugatz, without hesitation, the same thing I was thinking. Did you see MJ? <laughs> That's what we were all thinking. That was You Don't Know Jack, what? brought to you by Jack's Restaurant and Bar with locations in Pleasant Hill, San Bruno, San Mateo, San Jose, and Newark. You could also order on DoorDash. Learn more at ilovejacks.com. Stan, I know you're from Martinez. You're one of ours. It's a bad take. Dude. It's a bad take. It's a very bad take, and by this, the way. this thing about Michael Jordan, if he grew up in this era, do we all not think that he'd be an over 40% three-point I mean, shooter? On, dude. Are we come kidding? On, Are we kidding me? Stop. It's just it's ridiculous. Let's move on. You're listening to 9570 Game, KGMZ FM and AC1 San Francisco. Don't forget, you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube and Twitch streams. Just log on and search 9570 Game. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel while you're there. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Union, up, upgrade your savings dividend. Open a First NorCal First Class Money Market today. You can now download the Odyssey app directly from our YouTube and Twitch pages as we have added the QR code on both pages. Shout out to the Xfinity Mobile text line. Fezzy Fails going to join us. Fez is Azili because it is a Warriors game day presented by Xfinity at home or on the go. You get the fastest internet to all of your devices. As I just mentioned, Fez is Azili. He's going to get Dub Nation hyped. Maybe he'll scream Air Cargo for us. Maybe we'll get that on the board. Fezzy Fail coming up on a roast here on 95.7 Game brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. Did you see MJ? I'm what you might call very good at hide and seek. This one time, my parents...
Now, back to the Morning Roast with Bonte and Shasky. Weezy F, baby. A million here, a million <laughs> there. He had, he had an unbelievable run in the rap game. Gosh, in the 2000s. It was him and Jay-Z battling. Weezy Bay won that battle. I don't know. Warriors, Pelicans tonight. Of course, it's all coming up. It's Warriors game day. Um, by the way, every Friday for the rest of the season, we bring you the Big Three Unplugged. Oh. Check out our social media platforms. Each Friday is our very own Whitley Sandretto gets the Big Three talking about the non-basketball topics like, who's the most pa- famous person you have on your phone? Who is that? Who is it? Who is it for you? Most famous person in my phone? Probably Joe Shasky. It's the Big Three Unplugged. Brought to you by Alameda County Probation die, Department. Die, die. Are you ready to make a lasting impact in your community? Visit joinacpd.org to start your journey today. Together, let's make a difference. Your community needs you. Such a cop out. Here's what we're talking about when it comes to Whitley and the non-basketball topics with the Big Three. Probably uh, either So Sick by Neil or Don't Stop Believing. Mm, got some journey vibes in there. Can I sing a little bit? Uh, yeah, see, you got to come to my... I, I'm a big karaoke guy. Like, you come to my sessions, you'll see a different side of me for sure. Casey and JoJo are my life. It's a good one. It's my favorite song of all time. Can I sing a little bit of it? I cannot give the world <laughs> that for free. Probably I Want to Love You by Akon. It's a good song. Yeah. I'm, I'm an A-list artist. <laughs> I got to pay high ticket prices for that. <laughs> All my life. Oh, you got vocals? Waiting for the one oh. like you. Well, our next guest, Fezzy Fell. Fez is Azili. He's an NBA chat. It's my co worker at NBC <laughs> Sports Bay here at pre and post game. And I'll start this off, Fezzy Fell. Good morning. Glad you got your ass out of bed this morning. How are you? I hear you. Hey. I hear it, man. Uh, what what a what a dream! I say he can sing yeah. all my life. All my life. I, let's sing it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. No, Do no, it you right got now. it. Cause Come all on. my life, <laughs> I've waited for one <laughs> like you. I'm messing it up. That's <laughs> Joe Shasky. Come on, Fessy. I know you tear up the karaoke machine. I've heard you sing on the show. Hey, Give us something this yo, morning. What's your favorite song? Yo, my 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 highlights of this season so far is nothing that has to do with the basketball court. <laughs> it was me. It was uh, Bob Fitzgerald, Kalena Zubuki, and myself singing karaoke. We were singing, uh, what were we singing? We were singing, uh, I think it was Suspicious Minds or Shallow. I can't remember which one. But we were singing karaoke for Kalena's birthday, and that was the most amazing moment. So, yes, that's that's one of my highlights. I got you, Bonte. Fezzi has vocals. Underrated vocals. The guy could have been a singer. Maybe he picked the wrong really? profession. Really? Maybe he picked the wrong. Fez, he may have picked the wrong profession, well, man. Well, let's let's ask him. You sound like a very well-rounded Renaissance man. Have you ever slept in a a trailer camper, pop-up camper, like a tent? Have I ever? You just said like three different things. Well, trailer, like there's like a pop-up pop up tent. Camper, yeah. In a tent. Yeah, a, pop up tent. A camper. A camper. camper I don't know what that. It Come goes by many names. Vanderbilt, man. You got to come correct. I apologize. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not really a camper. My brother is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have. So I went to. Uh, I went to a Grand Canyon. Uh, oh. Uh oh. Oh man, we're losing them. We're losing them. Get him back on the line. Get him back on the line. Got to get it back. That's this a tease right there, Grand Canyon. This is a tease. I know. Grand Canyon's I, I, sick, by the way. I've, I've never, never been there. Shasky's I've never jaw been. dropped. I've never been there. Yeah, me either. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never been there. Yeah. All right, we got I went back. To the Grand Canyon. All right, I'm back. So I went to the Grand Canyon a couple years ago, and while I was there, I, I slept in a tent. At this point in my life, I was not an outdoorsy guy, but I barely fit in this tent. I had to sleep starfish. Both legs <laughs> were on. Never seen anything like it before. So that's that's my camper tent story, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff right there, <laughs> sleeping like a starfish. All right, man, uh, look, uh, last night it was an ugly win, but you got the win, and it sets up a monster shutdown tonight against the Pelicans at Chase, and I'm really hyped for this game tonight against New Orleans, who's tied with the Boston Celtics for the best road record in the NBA. But how much did last night's game highlight the value of Clay, Dre, and GP2? Because I think a lot of people, we just had a caller, uh, Savala, uh, she's a big, she's a big-time fan, she goes, I didn't understand the value of the big three until last night. I think Dub Nation needed to see that last night. They, they need Clay, they need Dre, they need GP two. You 
absolutely need the big three. What, what are we talking about here? This is why we have a, da- a dynasty of the Golden State Warriors. You've seen the importance of Draymond when he was absent this year. You've seen the importance of Klay Thompson when he was absent with his knee injuries. So, and, and Steph Curry, I mean, I, I don't have to even tell you that the offense for the Golden State Warriors is built around Steph Curry. So, Absolutely, you need these guys. And I heard you say GP2 as well. Well, remember a couple of years ago when the Warriors won in the finals? GP2 was out for some of that playoffs. And during that time, they missed him. So when he came back in the, in the finals, he really gave the Warriors a big boost defensively to help mm-hmm. them win the championship against the Boston Celtics. So you need all these guys. You need a full squad. And the, the really beautiful thing right now is if you look around the league, a lot of teams are dealing with injury issues. The Warriors, for the most part, they are pretty complete right now, knock on wood. And so that is one of the best things for a coach. The best ability is availability. And from there, you can work. And the Warriors, they, they, all they need is a puncher's chance. And right now, they got that in the playing tournament. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, Fezzi, you played in the league, so you have a good feel for this. You know, I think there's a misnomer by a certain segment of, of sports fans. Oh, the NBA, you know, a lot of these guys act like James Harden. No, the backbone of the NBA is more class and dignified, like guys like Kavon Looney, who are just always available and ready and don't say a peep and are consummate professionals, amazing teammates, and then when they are called upon, have a game like they had last night, which, I mean, they don't win that game without Kavon Looney. I Speak to how hard that is to stay on the bench for as long as he has and then be ready to help this team win a must-win game in the way that he did yesterday. Being a, being a role player in the league is, is, an, is it's an amazing job. But it's one of the toughest jobs because it's it's kind of thankless, right? Like you come in and out of the rotation, out of the lineup, and your job is to stay ready to impact the game whenever they throw you in. Kevin Looney, who was a starter last year, and we praised him all last season long for the way he's taking care of his body to be able to play all the games. I think he played, what, two seasons in a row, Bonte? Yep, yep, yep. Two seasons straight in a row in the league. So one of five players to do that in the NBA. That was incredible last season. This season, we asked him to to take on another role, which is come off the bench. And he's kind of been out of rotation, not because of anything that he's done necessarily, because he's always going to be constant. It's just because of what Trace Jackson Davis has been able to do for the Warriors. He's a lob threat. He's athletic. He's those things that the Warriors need to compete against the likes of Anthony Davis and those big guys that the Warriors are going to face in the playoffs. But Kevon Looney coming off the bench last night was really a testament to his leadership skills, his ability to stay locked into the game. I've done yoga with, with Kevon. I didn't say it wrong. I said it right. Joga. Yoga is what he does every game day to make sure his body is strong and ready to, to come and compete. But his IQ is unmatched. You see him on the boards. He really stopped the, the trailblazers who are going, getting, going crazy. They got 20 more shots yeah. than the Warriors last night because of second chance points, because of turnovers, the offensive rebounds. So those, that's what Kevon Looney did. He came in the game, shut that off, and the Warriors were able to go on their run. Yeah, a great two-man game in the fourth quarter. Fezzi with Steph and Kevon Looney, him setting screens, him rolling to the basket. You, you bring up a good point about the second chance points. Portland, 28 second chance points to the Warriors, 15. And that's something they have to clean up tonight against the Pelicans. Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, Zion Williamson, you brought up last night, because I know you love your bigs, and the Warriors had 13 block shots last night, but another test for Trace Jackson Davis. He got a test last night from DeAndre Ayton. He's getting a trial by fire against these big teams, and tonight he has to see Zion and Jonas Valanciunas. So what will be the key defensively for TJD against these bigs for the Pelicans? I mean, TJD has been doing a great job. you got to give him credit. It's not necessarily a test that he has to prove himself, but I think it's getting him playoff ready. And going against Last night, DeAndre Ayton, a big guy, a seven-footer in the middle of the lane, rebounds, block shots, can hit that mid-range jumper. Tonight, it's kind of similar, but Jonas Valanciunas is a very physical big. Kind of unlike DeAndre Ayton, he's going to come at you. So for, for TJD, it's not letting him get into the body, not letting him get, into, get you into foul trouble. He's going to be on the offensive boards. He's going to be a little more tenacious on the glass than, than uh, DeAndre Ayton was last night. So you got to make sure you put a body on him at all times. And when he goes off to help, because TJD is a shot blocker. He blocked four shots last night. That's incredible. Having a, a rim protector for the Warriors is going to be really key in the playoffs. When he does that, the guards have to do a good job of being in communication with him so they can go put a body on the big and not let him go crazy on the boards. So I know Bonte's all over this, and you're with him, you know, during the, the pre, the post, and everything in between. 
How's he feeling this King's collapse from afar? <laughs> What's it look like watching him watch King's games? Yo, yo Shasti, I, I, so first of all, I'm from Sacramento, right? So I got to go home. So I can't talk bad about Sacramento. <laughs> but the way Bonte, the way him and Kyle Draper, who's one of the, the announcers for the Sacramento Kings, the way they go back and forth, you know it's personal. It's Sacramento versus, versus the Golden State Warriors every time. And if we have that matchup, my favorite part would be watching both of them go at it, and Bonte is so excited to tell them that the beam will not be lit. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. Is that, here's the follow-up question uh -oh. to the camper. All right, you can pick three people, uh -oh. okay? Three people okay. where you would have a okay. weekend with them in the woods, in the camper. Who from the NBC family and who from the Warriors would you pick? Oh, I, I got to go both Bonte and Draymond. Those are my two to start <laughs> for course. reasons that I'm not going to disclose Kumbaya, right now. My Lord. Oh, my God. So you said, you said me and Dre are going to make s'mores together, Fezzy? <laughs> I think, you know, it would be a great bonding experience. I'm with you. And the I agree. person would be... Who would be who's good in the woods? Who would be somebody I would trust? To, That's what I'm. Clay, I feel Clay, like Clay would be the I, guy that I feel like he's somebody that you would trust to just know see, random stuff about making a fire. I yeah, everybody's been saying Clay because I, of him on the boat, him in the outdoors with Rocco. Clay's a great outdoors yeah, guy. See, I, Fezzi, I think it's GP two because he'd wake up super early and you'd already have bacon and eggs ready for everybody <laughs> with a laugh. <laughs> right, right. I like that. You need some hustle out there yeah. in the woods. <laughs> Respect. Oh. I like that. I just was going based on survival instincts. I, I feel like Clay is one of those guys that just yeah. knows a bunch of random That's things. Like you should listen to him in the locker room. Like, he would just know, he like, oh, I just know how to start a fire, fire with wood sticks. I'm like, wait, where do you even learn that? He's like, yeah, I just, I read that somewhere. I'm like, what? What are you reading? But, you know, one of those guys that's like super worldly, understands a bunch of things about a bunch of things. And, uh, yes, I, I would love to see the first two people just on the on the boat on the in the woods making s'mores together. So that's that's incredible. Uh, that's incredible. Take, that's, take take me into the players' perspectives today. Yeah. So you you just got back from Portland. Um, you're getting ready for the Pelicans. How does this day go down? I mean, do, does somebody have to tell everybody in the locker room to like lock in, or is it just known? I mean, this is a battle tested group of guys here. Like, what, what's what, what's the locker room vibe going to be like pregame here? Here's what I what I love about the season so far is that you've seen a steady improvement of the Golden State Warriors. Mm -hmm. So it's a back to back for both teams. So there's not going to be any shoot around. We just get we're going to meet at the arena and we get to go through our warm up routines and everything. You don't need to tell anybody at this point in the season to lock in. Like this is the playing time. I think the young guys. This is their first time, right? Trace Jackson Davis yep. and Brandon Pajemski. Yep. This is their first playoff you know, run that they're going through. So you have, you got to have older veteran guys keeping them accountable, but from watching them play, they haven't needed, they have not needed any words of encouragement or anybody to tell them to come out there and play hard. They have really come in and put the imprint on the game. So the Warriors right now are getting better. That game against Portland last night, you could call it a throwaway game, but Portland does not just lose by a lot of points to a lot of people, right? Even the Pelicans, they only beat them by 10 points. So you got to understand that these games were games that the Warriors were losing earlier in the season because they were kind of letting their ground down, playing down to the level of competition. Yesterday, shots weren't falling. Clay and Draymond were not playing, but they were still able to get production from other guys to yeah. get the win. I love the fact yeah. that J.K. is coming back in the game. There's a lot of things that you can see in the game that's just getting better for the Warriors. Tonight, you're going to have Clay and Draymond back, hopefully, and they can start building towards this this being a well-rounded team for the playoffs. And you know, Fez, you brought up J.K., and I love when you say Eric Congo. You had a long one yesterday, flying Eric above the rim. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Congo! But you brought him up here because this is really his first real playoff run because he didn't play a lot last season in the postseason, and as a rookie, he got a lot of DMPs. He's got an important role this season. And look, last night, I don't think he played his best. But you look at the raw data, 7 of 11, 19 points, 6 rebounds. He's that talented. So what would you tell Kaminga as he goes through this role adjustment from starting 29 straight games to coming off the bench? How do you keep a young guy like that engaged in his third year to tell him, hey, you're still important to us. Whether or not you're starting, you're still going to see 25 to 30 minutes a night. And for you to say that J.K. didn't have a good game and he still had 19 points, that it's is crazy. scary. Scary. Because 
you see him making adjustments in the middle of the game. One of the things, the one of the reasons last year you felt like he was not playing, and you hear Steve Kerr say that he wasn't thinking the game. Now he's doing that. So it, just the way that he continues to get better in the basketball game, in the middle of the season, in the middle of the game, making adjustments, that for me is incredible. And last night was one of the one of the ways you see him driving to the cup, getting wide open layups at the rim. Matter of fact, not wide open layups. He was shooting layups over seven footers, three guys at a time. He's an athletic specimen. And when I yell Eric Congo, it's just because I'm just so excited whenever he takes off in the middle of the rim. Yeah. If I was a big man and I had to guard J.K. in the middle, I, 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 there's no way. What, what are you going to do, jump and get dunked on every time? That's what you see when you have Jonathan Kamiga coming down the lane. But his aggressiveness is going to be really key. And his ability to make plays, especially in the playoffs. In the playoffs, the game slows down a little bit. So, him being able to get out in the fast break is going to be key when you get stops and get out there because he's so fast. That's going to be one. But if he can get by his man and know that the help is coming and be able to see the next man to make a play to that guy and really hit Steph on the weak side, those plays are going to be really crucial in a playoff type atmosphere because then you can't, you can't, you, you, you can't just have these wide open shots all the time. Defense is going to be much better. It's going to be the best teams in the playoffs. So these are the time where you need your best athletes to come out and shine, and J.K. is definitely that for the Warriors. Got to be hyped up for the night, Fezzi. Oh, Festus always has me hyped yeah, up. Hyped. <laughs> Festus, Festus, Festus. How often does this guy throw me under the bus and make fun of me behind the scenes? I mean, it's, All the time. it's ridiculous, All right? the time. It's ridiculous. All the time. I mean, I feel like everything he says is true, Shesky. Oh. <laughs> Damn! Damn. <laughs> But you know, you know, one of my favorite things, man. Bonte is really the guy that brings us together. For sure. You know, obviously, Chris Mullen is a Hall of Famer, a guy who played in the in the previous generation of basketball, where you know there was the Bad Boys, there's Michael Jordan. You know, and he was dream team, and then I played in this generation with Steph, Clay, Draymond. We got to win a championship here. So, just the knowledge of a Hall of Famer mixed with my knowledge of the defensive presence is always a defense versus offense with me and Chris Mullen. Yeah. But Bonte is the point guard that brings us both together. He's got a shooter on the wing. He's got a big man for the lob, and he definitely distributes the ball very well. It's a great crew. Ooh. It's a great crew. Damn. It's well said. I mean, Fezzi, checks in the mail, man. I'll hook you up today uh, in the J.P. Morgan Club. I, definitely time on me today, Fezzi. Definitely time on me. But no. It, hey, but you know, it's a really good crew, man. I have a lot of fun there. Zena Kate has done a great job. Kareth Berg, yeah. Dalton Johnson's back, back. Money yeah. Pool. Uh, I mean, it's really... An, it's easy. I throw a lob to Fezzi, and he just goes off. I'm jealous of Dalton's, uh, you know... Uh, Petalubus Fidus? Well, I mean, he took a, a leave that I was jealous of. <laughs> yeah, he was out for a while. Shasky's going to leave me soon, because you know he's going to be father too, Fezzi. Well, uh, yeah, well, not yet, but I, I just became a an uncle, and my nephew is the most amazing kid, man. So he's made me... Really excited for fatherhood someday. I can't wait. Yeah, Fezzi definitely has that baby fever. No doubt about that. Fezzi, go get some rest, man. Get, thanks for coming out today, man. It's a big game tonight. We're hyped up. Pelicans, last time they came in on January 10th, beat the Warriors by 36 points, 141 and 105. But this Warriors team is a completely different roster with everything happening with them. They've won 9 and 10, 17 and 4 in their last 21 road games. They're playing some good ball. But tonight, I expect a big time playoff game at Chase Center. It should be rocking. Hell yeah. We're going against Diane Williamson, who really has been playing incredible basketball. He's done a good job controlling his weight, which has been the, the big topic. But you know his talent level. C.J. McCollum, my only worry with the Pelicans is the fact that they're missing Brandon Ingram, who is an all-star. And so they have to put a lot of stress on Zion and C.J. McCollum. At this point in the season, at the end of the year, you really are trying to get your guys a little bit of rest, like you see with Draymond yeah. and Clay last night. Trying to get them some rest so that you can go into the playoffs and shoot off and, and really and, and go off on a run. But those guys are dangerous. The New Orleans Pelicans are playing very well. They're deep. They got a lot of shooting on, on the wings. It's going to be a good game tonight, man. And it's the box. Come on, Bonte. The box. The preview for the box. The box. The box. We don't even look at the top of the standings no more. Bully's locked into the box. Fezzy's locked into the box. Even Shatsky Fezzy <laughs> is talking about the box? the box. He's loving the box right now. We all love the box. By the way, you, you, I know you're from SAC and all your fans <laughs> in Sacramento. I want you to listen to this, Fezzy. And then we got a question for you on the other side before we let you go. Kevin Harlan last night on all TNT. Right. Check this out. Pelicans hold on, driving into Murray, somebody's throwing something on the floor, 46 seconds to go, and a whistle blew. It's a chicken wing. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? <laughs> it's crispy, it's warm, Yes. and I almost had to go out, I'm so hungry. 
Uh, I hear your stomach over here growling. What's that guy? I hope he eats it. <laughs> He's going to save it for put it in that little heater over there. 46 seconds to go. It's Murphy with the ball and Fox the quick. What's going on with you folks in Sacramento, man? They're so disgruntled throwing chicken wings on the court, man. All that good chicken going to waste. Why would they throw a chicken wing on the floor? I love that. He's like, yo, I, I'm going to hustle and go get this chicken wing before somebody gets it. Why would you throw something that good on the floor? I don't know what's going on out there in Sacramento. I know Whatever you can do. I, Maybe you can slip, make the make the opponent slip uh, or something. Maybe uh, that's what they were trying to do. Get uh, some chicken uh, grease on the hollow uh, man. <laughs> that's, that's, this is what's going down. The hollow man's making his annual disappearance come playoff time. Demonis Sabonis, that's what's going on. Uh, hey, man. Don't you come at my bigs like that? No, I'm not. I'm not gonna have that on this show. We can't come at. I, I always stand up for the bigs. I don't care if they're playing for the Warriors. I don't care if they're playing for the Kings. I stand up for my bigs all around. We, we're a part of the Cold Coalition. I right? big man. All the big man for you. Now. Uh, I love it, Fezzy. I love it, man. Thanks for coming on. I'll talk to you in about 20 minutes on our Zoom. Then I'll see you later tonight at Chase Center. Sure. All right, all see right, you, buddy. Bro. Thanks for having me. Anytime, right. man. Fezzy Zazili, man, really a good dude, man. Like. Like, really, former NBA player, NBA chap, uh, obviously our Warriors pre- and post-game sh show. And look, his career was cut short due to the injuries yeah. to his knee or whatnot. But as genuine as a guy as I've ever met in my life in this industry, man, he is really a good dude. He just calls us to check in on baby chairs and, yo, let's go do yoga. Let's go do this. No. Fez is a really good dude. You want to do yoga with us? Um, I mean, I just did a foam roller for the first time the other day, and I'm still sore. Like you're a LeBron and Kobe on the court? Bro. I'm out. I'm out on the foam you, roller. You ever seen Kevin Durant with the foam roller on the court? No, it's really helped him in his career. Do you worry about being injured doing doing yoga? Well, first off, yoga, it yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys were setting me oh. up for a missed injury report. I was like, wow, yeah, really? what, two hours late? Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing? Oh. You can tell the boss man's not in this week. <laughs> Matt Chapman, by the way, swears by yoga. He does it every single day. Yep, there you go. Yoga's big for baseball. So did Zito. Oh. There you go, World Series champion right there, Cy Young Award winner. I can't throw oh. because I can't uh -oh. surf. Here we go. Tonight's uh, referee's assignments. Draw, bro. Number 16, David Guthrie is your crew chief. Ugh. John Butler, number 30, is your referee. Man, he sucks. And your umpire, Brett Nansel, Don't number 44. Him. Don't know him. But oh, David Guthrie. Give me David the profile. You want the profile? You want the profile mm -hmm. right How now? How many of them like going to Italy? Oh, wow. This photo This photo is rough. Uh, 19 seasons for John, for David Guthrie. I'm going to say John Goble. Uh, before joining the NBA, he officiated in the G League and the CBA. He ref the G League playoffs from 03 to 05 and the G League finals in 04 and 05. He's worked in the ACC, the SEC, any NCAA tournament. He, he has a played. very non-trustworthy face. No, hold on. He does. He does. He really does. Guthrie played minor league baseball in the Reds organization oh. with stints in Princeton, West Virginia, Billings, Montana, Charleston, West Virginia, and Chattanooga, Tennessee. All right. Next wow. one. He's got two sons and a daughter. <laughs> Fun fact. Favorite TV show, The West Wing. The West Wing. He loves Good The show. West Wing. Good show. Favorite movie, The Shawshank Redemption. Oh. Good movie. Favorite musician, the Eagles. Why do we have to know all this? Favorite book, the match. Oh, favorite the match is a golf one. How about his favorite meal? Ha ha ha! He's like Anthony Slater: steak, whip potatoes, and broccoli. Big mashed, mashed potatoes, potatoes guys. Guy, right? yeah. Such a white person. I was going to say, has the whitest the white. Like, I mean, I, come on. Favorite, it's better that you guys say it to me. I mean, it's uh, I mean, good, but it's just. I mean, I yeah. love how steak how and potatoes this? too. But come on, his favorite app, the PGA Tour app. Oh. Saskia's winning you over. Most likely place to visit. Hawaii. Bucket list. Play golf at Augusta in Cypress Point. Hidden salad. Hitting fungos. Ooh, Cypress oh, Point. That's a, that's a tough one to get into. Yeah, it is. Another so you, know, you kind of like it, this guy. David Guthrie's warming up to you, Shaq. Well, You're mean, warming up to him. It tells me right. that he's in on a bet. Is he invited to the camper? If he's a golfer, that means he <laughs> likes to, you know, throw a little money down. All right. John Butler from Mississippi. Went to Grand Canyon University. Went to high school in San Diego. Officiated five seasons in the G League and two seasons in the WNBA. His interests include traveling, visiting museums, reading, cooking, fitness, video games, collecting sneakers, incredible. movies, music, and sports. Doesn't seem like he's married because there's no family data here. But his favorite TV show, The Spell Show. Yeah. Spell Show. show. Oh. 
Favorite movie? Do the right thing. Oh, he's really a brother. <laughs> Favorite musician? Jay-Z. I'm glad you said it. Favorite book? <laughs> I mean, Chop wood, carry water. What is wrong? Oh, with you? you know he's black as hell. He's from Mississippi. Favorite meal? We all love red beans and rice, baby. That's his favorite meal. Today. Oh, my God. His favorite application? Ah, uh, Nailulia. The Bible. Most likely place to visit? <laughs> Africa. Oh. Wow. The whole continent. It's like opposite ends of the spectrum with both these refs. Continent. <laughs> not Madagascar. No, not just not Africa. South Africa. Oh not God. Egypt. Not, not Tunisia. Yeah. Just not doing Nigeria. a full Africa tour. Oh not my Nigeria. God. Not Sudan. You guys are just, <laughs> dude, just Africa. All 35 countries at once. <laughs> all right, last right, We better means. enjoy this last 16 minutes because it might be our final 16 <laughs> it minutes. Be, it Forget final be. five. Final 16. <laughs> oh boy, I love Fast this. Bill. Red beans and rice, man. That is unbelievable. Jeez. Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Last but not least, Brett Dan Dansel. Okay. Dansel. Dansel. This might be our, my new favorite thing we do on the show. All right. <laughs> well, how about this? Okay. Cheers, uh, Dansel considers his most memorable NBA assignment uh -huh. to be a game between the Warriors and the Indiana Pacers December 5th, 2016. You know what happened that date? Clay Thompson scores 60 in 29 minutes. Oh. That's his most memorable moment. So when he sees Clay Thompson, he's going to be in awe and he's not, he's going to swallow the no. whistle and not call any fouls on him. My That's favorite would have been like when Draymond cursed out Wiseman in a silent <laughs> arena <laughs> and I slapped him with a technical. It always comes back to Dre. Uh, Nancy enjoys <laughs> hunting, <laughs> fly fishing, and spending time on a family farm and cattle ranch with his wife <laughs> and three children. Jock Purdy of, of referees. Yeah. He loves fly fishing, hunting, which Shasky doesn't like. No, I'm good. Spending time on a family farm. All right, fun facts here. Favorite TV show? Anything on outdoor channels? Oh my! He God. sounds like, now. He sounds like someone who would sleep in the camper. Straight white. Favorite woman. movie? Top Gun. Favorite musician? Alan Jackson. Favorite uh, book? Who's Alan? Wooden. Jackson? I have no idea. You know, you asked the wrong uh, guy yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, favorite meal? Barbecue ribeye steak. Alan Jackson might be the most country-looking country singer <laughs> oh I have gosh. ever seen in my life. Oh, my gosh. This mustache I need a song. I need a song. Oh Jeff, God. definitely it's, born with a cowboy it's hat. It's Jeff Foxworthy with the hat and everything. <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. <laughs> Barbecue ribeye He's steak. worth $150 million. How about this? His favorite app, the NFHS Network, the high school app oh. that we have here in Canada. That's awesome. So I watched my nephew, Jay Jefferson, De La Salle. Most likely to visit, most likely place to visit Australia the down under just all of Australia <laughs> that one makes more sense <laughs> I mean I, I always wanted to go to Sydney and uh, I was going to study abroad in Australia Melbourne Australia okay, Open tell, me, tell me you've seen the, the commercial with Brock Purdy and the corn I have the pioneer corn I have seen it I thought it was a joke all right here's this bucket list bucket list catch a grander which is a thousand pound marlin that's his bucket list dig I mean, we got his talent he loves the saxophone can play the saxophone. Oh. So, anyway, you got a who's who of referees tonight. That is your scouting report for the NBA. I think we do this the rest of the season. <laughs> well, we'll say here. Clearly. This is the last game of the regular season before Sunday. So, well, yeah, no, this true. is the thing, though. Like, on before the game, when the re referee assignments are leaked, people, people talk about this. Of the three referees, which one is most likely to be in the camper? Oh, it's, uh, it's the third guy. The third right? guy yeah. Brett Nansel. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, it's not even close. He's, he's a country guy, you can tell. Though the yeah. saxophone boy, threw me off. Yeah, my boy John Butler from the <laughs> hey, don't play hey, saxophone while you can't. Bill Clinton, God. famous saxophone player from That's Arkansas. True. There you go. Clinton is there's just a lot. Like I I'm said, not getting into that. I'm just I saying know, he played the I saxophone. Know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm sure he likes camping with cigars. Damn. Well, I know he likes Highlands. <laughs> <laughs> Monica. <laughs> did you see the it's text from Jordan Watkins? Did, did you see the text from Jordan Watkins? No, it's please, please open it up. <laughs> Tom, don't read it because, like you said, it could be the last <laughs> six minutes we ever have <laughs> on these airways. <laughs> Boss man said, look, look, look. Lumen on Monday. I got the white guys talking about white culture. I got the black guys talking uh, about black geez. culture. What's going on? Uh, the racial divide right now on the uh, morning roast is too unbearable. And he just had OJ tie yesterday. I mean, just opened up a can of words. The racial divide on the road. Somebody's calling me from Washington, D.C. I'm not picking up. That's definitely a spam call. Oh, or Odyssey man. Corporate. <laughs> Odyssey Corporate. <laughs>
<laughs> Stacy on a three-way call. Hey, Bonte, pack your bags. <laughs> and don't think you're going to the gay house tonight because we'll make the call to NBC. Uh, oh, my, oh my stomach hurts. Oh, my God. Oh. All right, so I want to get back to this oh, camping hey, thing real camping? quick. Did you see Jordan Watkins' text? Yes, I did. It's hilarious. <laughs> I want to get back to camping <laughs> in here at the station. Oh. Oh, somebody said it's Jordan Poole calling. Why would he call me? Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, you're forgetting about me last year. Oh, um, I just got hot, the man. Slander. I got to take off my jacket, dude. So, like, he wants I, to go camping, oh. too. I'm now envisioning <laughs> Willard and Dibs going in the camper, the two of them, and Willard, like, Willard trying to tell Dibs how he's doing everything wrong in terms of the setup. I'm now envisioning Steiny saying he's very indifferent to the entire camping situation. No, I asked him. He said not really. That's what, he's not into it. He's not into not it. Not really. Diva. Just, yeah. There you go. Dude, I'm seeing some of the text here. I bet. I bet Guru is low key fun for camping. Just the like, he'd be all in. I think he'd be all in. And also, I, I believe that we've underrated some of his experiences oh, in life. Man. I, he sounds like someone who Let's I think has done John it before. Butler, you know he's black. He loves to do the right thing. It's his favorite movie. That's not fair. A lot of people love to do the right thing. It's a movie for all cultures. Come on. Oh, man. My stomach is hurt. All right. We got Pelicans. Warriors today, it's a big game. <laughs> Jordan Huge Poole calling game. you. It's, it's pretty just, funny. It's, just it's pretty funny. Uh, we got uh, three minutes until Fast Five. The phone's ringing and it's money time! <laughs> money time! Wow. Well, that's the ringtone. Remember that drop? Oh, so good. It was so good. In Denver, we were all about the pool parties. Money time! Denver, he hit those threes. That's when we started believing. Some would Wait, say this that's could not be a the drop run. they think of when they think of Jordan Poole. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's a four. What? He slipped all over the floor last year, dude. I had not oh, seen. I was of a different drop. Uh, what? Oh, that's you, not me. That is true. Just like Filmo said yesterday, you feel how you feel. Is that what he said? Yep. He oh. urged everyone to feel how they feel. I do love Filmo. Oh, my ass. Oh, that. He said some things. I, I actually need to text Phil Mike. Mike. This last 20 minutes, my, my I, ADD's been off the hook. Some are saying I, it's the greatest segment we've ever no, had. I've got a call. Tremendous segment. I've got a call for Mike because the thing he said yesterday, I'm like, dude, I want you to keep that job over at 106. <laughs> That's something you shouldn't admit out loud. It's like John Lynch, right? When he said, you know, I was down at Petra Mahomes Pro Day and I called Kyle Shanahan and said, hey, maybe we need to rework our whiteboard <laughs> in the NFL draft. It's like, you probably should admit so, that out loud. Uh, all right, so Phil Mike, Mike, what he said yesterday, I'm not going to repeat. It's like, football, you probably just want to keep that. Do you think Phil Mike would go camping? Oh. I actually, honestly, yeah, I, I think he would. Absolutely. He would, dude, he'd be cracking jokes He'd all be day. hilarious. Be hilarious. Hilarious. See, he'd be perfect around the campfire. Oh, man. To play off referees? To play in tournament referee segment? Oh, my God. All right, we we get to Fast Five yet, man. Who are the Giants playing this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Oh, man, that, that last 15 minutes is something else, man. It was something else. You know, there, there was a Friday saying show. back in the day, Bonte, Bonte found out LeBron wasn't there, and he said, no LeBron, no Bonte. <laughs> well, my mom is going to the game tonight. <laughs> and you know it's a big game when mom's going to the game. Wow. Her favorite player is Clay Thompson, and wow. she's always loved Clay oh, Thompson. Oh, so she loves me the way I defend Clay Thompson. She, it's always been her favorite so player. So she must be really disappointed in you. Well, you know. It, it, she tears into him constantly. No, my mom has watched hundreds of thousands of NBA games with me. The Warriors, she's always loved basketball the most. Um, and uh, she's really excited. I don't. I think she's only been to Chase Center a couple times, and the big three didn't play simultaneously. Uh, so she's really looking forward to this. What time is she... Uh what time is she coming to the game? Is I don't know. Who's she coming with? I don't know. I don't know who she's coming going with. Coming with Marianne? Uh, I know Marianne and her going out this weekend. I mean, God, they're going all over the place. Yeah, no, I saw Marianne I got John yesterday. coming up to the golf with Richie and we got Bob Orzab. We got a whole crew golfing. So I don't know what they got planned, but I'll, I'll talk to her. I'll let her know. All right. Yeah. Make sure she comes by. I will. Love to see Mrs. Shasky, a.k.a. Noreen. She's, she's, been, hitting it, she's been hitting the town. Yeah. Having she fun. told me, you call me Noreen, Bate. I'm sorry, she loves Bob. You. It's like, I'm she's sorry, so proud Bob's. Of you. I'm sorry, Bobs. Uh, no, I can't wait to see her. Can't wait to see everybody at Chase Center. By the way, the Giants do play the Rays this weekend. They play the Marlins. The buzz with the Giants has dissipated so damn quickly. I think when they get back home, my final thought is you got to bring up either Ramos, Matos, or Luciano. 
You gotta bring some sizzle back. Especially if you struggle on this road trip. Can we They've never done run? well in Miami. Can we hit a home run? Oh my god, yeah, it's having done a home run with seven games. I, mean, it's just, I just I just would like can we just hit a home run? All right, man. Please. Yeah, I agree. What's your final thought? Is you, you already my final thought part. is my mom's gonna have fun yeah, at the Warrior game tonight. There you go. I can't wait to see All her. All right. Make sure she comes by. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be watching on the 80 incher. And my brother I will be in the camper. I thought you said 70 earlier. Oh, well, I'm, I'm the oh, friend. You had a 10 inch. Yeah. <laughs> you had a 10 I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> Another four. <laughs> I've been on fire. It's been a great last 15 minutes. The last Dude, 15 minutes. Even I though watched Zach drop. This is like my dream. My side hurts. <laughs> on five for five games. <laughs> my side hurts, man. This is your game six clay moment right here. <laughs> yeah, it's it. It's just on like, like that. six dribbles. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I mean, just making things up. Yeah, my 85 is TV. <laughs> People can't help. I was like, yo, it's only 60. Hey, dude, I, I thought it was 70. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I got a joke for you, Monte. <laughs> <laughs> it's a getaway day for me. <laughs> Big pun, by the way. My my favorite caller that's never called him. <laughs> Ever. He called it once. And and he one time. Bob. He, he asked like the four F-bomb. words. Yeah, he got it in four words. Then he did me. He said, hey. I'm sorry, but I can't talk with that job. The, the, oh. the takes he had on OJ. <laughs> I'll just say, I'll just say this. I, I don't even know if I, I'm not going to say it. I don't want to hey, get fired. I'll, I'll kind of be real. The OJ jokes in the group threads are all time. <laughs> none of it's coming to air. No, but none of it. None of it. Two set the gas station <laughs> pumping in the OJ 32 USC jersey. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Who, who's the final thought, somebody? I'll, I'll do my final yeah. thoughts. Um, oh. I'm going to play this real quick. Tom Brady, you're not coming back. Yeah, Stop is. telling yeah, people you're coming back. One day there's a situation, right? Maybe it's the 49ers. Maybe you know, heading to the playoffs. Offense is great. Patriots. Somebody. Could be somebody, somebody. Raiders somebody, could be. You never know. God forbid somebody goes down. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're gonna let me if I become an owner in the NFL team. But I don't know if. Uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape. Always be able to throw the ball. So <laughs> to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back. Um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. One hundred percent. You're 47. He's coming back. Hey, 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 Why? Thirty. You better ball out in the month of September, <laughs> homie. My kids already looking at Tom. Better ball out in the summer. I'm off for Brady this summer. Wait, hey. Brock threw four interceptable passes in the second half. I know you're 14 and three, but if Brady wants to back up on the hey, sideline, I like Brock Purdy. I like Brock Purdy, but boy, you better come out slinging that thing. Monte was opining for Kirk Cousins the entire Green Bay game. <laughs> Happy with Brock Purdy. <laughs> Listen, Rockin' New Harris said next week's ass he's gonna have a whole theater in his cabin. Seriously. Yeah, up in theater. 90 inches. We That's added six stuff. speakers. By the way, before you get your final thought, Chris Haynes last night at TNT was <laughs> oh, Chris God, Haynes. one more. How desperate are you guys to stay out of that play in tournament? Oh, oh, oh. Better question. Ask a better question. Oh. He's having a rough year. Brandon Kaczynski. <laughs> no, he's having a rough week, but he's still getting paid of TNT checks. Guys, believe me. You see the suits he's wearing. Uh, love it. What you got? My final thought is this this show made me really want to go camping. That, that's my final <laughs> oh, thought. Oh, dude. You're, you're the most your likely for me to stay away from if I see you coming out of a camper. The definition of a happy camper. A hundred percent. I'm very happy when I go camping. Punch me in my Xfinity. I held her on to go. You get the faster than that. Internet's all your devices. <laughs> I've laughed so hard. Now, I think uh, I may go to Chick-fil-A right now, too. I mean, I'm meet you up there, Shasky. See you guys. I Have a great weekend. Sorry, Guru next. I want Sack to drop. <laughs> Business. It's
<laughs> go ahead. It's payday, baby. Let's go. I'm going to do a bate. Oh, 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 boy. Baby. And you got new war gear on. You just spent your check already. Is yeah. that salmon? Salmon? What is this? That you look good. <laughs> and you tried to say, hello, guru. Good morning. Like, I've never seen you in that color. Well, you didn't mention the shoes. I have new shoes on, too. I missed the kicks. Yeah, my we call them cleats. My package came from Menlo House. <laughs> look at that. $65 a month. Dude, I might join. They sent me... I got shoes, socks, and this uh, this thing. Look at you. You're fresh. The problem is you can't send it back. And do you pick the colors out? No, they send you See, a dope. preview, and then you can, a preview you can change a little bit. If wow. You, know. you uh, look fresh it's to It's not death. like Stitch Fix where I think you can send it back. That's why this isn't that much money. Stiny. Like salmon. I think mo most of those other places are more <laughs> Salmon. S-A-M-M-O-E. Does that, does that sound right, Spino? Hey, what uh, uh, Warriors? Yeah, scared the hell out of Come us. Come on, Stoney, I was a little nervous. They Why? were down six, late third. Yeah. Curry wasn't hitting, to, and then he got it together. Kaminga, he needs to get with Phil Hand. What about what about to Kaminga? work on the handles? You got to get those handles if you're going to be that guy, guy. But all in all, he was he was working it out, Stoney. They got the dub, and I came in this morning. You said, "Goo, what you feeling?" I said, "I think this is the most important game of the season." Tell me, I'm wrong. I can't. Uh, I can't tell you you're wrong. The uh, Warriors is it. play the Pelicans tonight, and they got to win tonight. They basically. have to. If the Warriors don't win tonight, they're likely going to be the 10th seed. <sighs> if they win tonight, it feels like they're likely going to be the 8th seed. Boy. So, because Sack is hemorrhaging. So you win tonight, and you finish 8th. And then it looks like you'd be going to Phoenix or New Orleans. Bring that on. For the first play-in game. You lose tonight, and the Pelicans have something to play for. Because they want to stay out of the play-in. No doubt. And if they beat the Warriors, and the Suns right now are in, fe are in uh, sack later, tonight? there's a lot going on. Or tomorrow. There's a lot going on. No, I won't. Hit, we won't hit the Phil Collins. Because we're one, uh, we're all, no, we're zero and one with that, Phil no, Collins. Spadone, you know don't even be tempted, buddy. We <laughs> uh, Dublin Marge. It's called Menlo House, Menlo. and uh, it, they send you something once a month, sixty bucks. And, That's pretty uh, dope. It's not bad, not bad. But. I won't rain on your parade, but that's the first one that was eye popping. The color to where I said my boy got something what new. About, what about the yellow one I wore to the Warrior game that one time? Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, Evan and I <laughs> talked about it. Now nah, you look fresh, but the kicks. Can you? Can I see them real quick? Are they? Yeah, sure. Same color as the uh, top. Look at my guy. Swag on one thousand right now, Stan. I'm going to the game tonight. These shoes will be worn. These shoes will be worn about six times, and then they'll be. That's how you do it. Because they're white. Well, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, got to. Um, hey, one thing I was thinking about last night's game, and uh, came up probably in the fourth quarter. Think about all the things we've talked about this year with the Warriors. What do you do with Wiggins? Kaminga. Clay Thompson, what's his future? Who's going to be, you know, we forget. We, have, we completely forgot about Kavon Looney. He was big last night, and I told you. Well, his future's, I guess that's what I'm saying, is we, we've just, we've forgotten about Kavon Looney may not be uh, here right, next right, year. Right, right, You know, I was looking at his contract. He's supposed to make $8 million next year, but it's only partially guaranteed at $3 million. So the Warriors have to make a decision on Kavon Looney uh, this off season, and does he want to remain here with his new role? I, I would, you know? that, but but that's what I was thinking about. If you, if you're going to move forward with Trace Jackson Davis at center, and you still want to play Draymond Green as much as you can at five, I I think you need him still on the team as Draymond gets older and Trace Jackson Davis starts emerging. Like there's he'll. Over the course of a whole season, he's always going to have a role because, you know, Draymond is going to play less and less at the five, and Trace Jackson Davis is still a young player, and you're going to need him on nights like last night if Draymond doesn't play, and you need a backup center. But is that good enough for him when I don't his know. role has changed? Well, I mean, and I got Willard in my head from the cross. Well, it's, not, it's not Looney's decision. Oh. The, the Warriors are going to say to Kevon right. Looney, we want you back next year at $8 million, or we got to let you go 
but you're still guaranteed three million, right. but you're just not going to be on this team. Yeah, no, I got you. So yeah, we'll see. I, I was just going to bring up Willard in the crossover yesterday. I'm still recovering from the drive by when he was like, "What he Why do? can't we all just stay in the moment?" He was so wrong, dude. He, I, that was a, because, he had a biz, uh, Uzi, but because uh, I'm AK, scared of him, brrr, I just let it go. And it was I also two oh eight. Well, look at we actually didn't boy. talk about the postseason hardly or the off season at all yesterday. No. It was all about Kaminga. So last and night then he thought, shows up. Last night he was flat out no, terrible. And you, who I'm was scared of Willard? It's Kaminga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, he but he's no brother working it out. He wasn't terrible. But there's something there. There's something that's going to need to be worked out in the postseason. There, if they if they play, in the, he's going to get a shot. He's going to get a shot. Okay. But, and now it's about trust. Yeah, yeah. I I don't because right now the he shit looked, closed. He looked, he looked. He did not look good last night. Now Kaminga. how much? Okay, let me let me just throw this to you. But he's pressing probably. And there was no Dre and Clay. Or should you say that's when you should yeah. sign more? That's a good question. I was conflicted, but I'm like, all in all, Stiney, they nobody thought they were going to lose that game. It's about tonight, and if they're going to reach the greatest heights of heights this season, Jonathan Kaminga has to be a part. And it's just about, Stiney, I do wonder, his mental mindset, his psyche in regard to, I got to make more with less time. But I just don't think that's etched in stone and... We'll find out, right? We will find out. It's yeah. exciting. This is the most important game, Lubman, of the season tonight. 888-957-9570. I got a million questions. What did you think of Kaminga last night? Uh, who do you want to play? How do you want this thing to shake out? Uh, right now, it looks like if you can win tonight, you're going to Phoenix or you're going to go to New Orleans for a 7-8 game. Wh- where you get not two l- times to lose. Right. Oh, but, my gosh. But, but you win tonight. You finish eight, then you need to win against Phoenix or the Pelicans to avoid the Nuggets, probably. So well, it's not only yeah. getting to seven or eight. I'm sorry, to eight. Then you're gonna. Then if you win that game, then you jump up to the seven seed in the tourney, and then you do get Minnesota or uh, Oklahoma City. Which, I mean, as much as I love the T Wolves and I'm impressed by Oklahoma City. You want to avoid the Nuggets in the first round. I think everybody would agree with that. So everybody wants to know where I'm getting my stuff. I, it's called Dude, shout them out. Well, what am I getting from it? Well, what, what am I getting for shouting out a company that's now going to get 50 new subscribers? See the real Max hey. Diamonds. I thought yeah. I knew. No. That's a hater. When you're, you're selfish. The people want to no, know no. and be a part. It's about them. Help no, your brother it's about, or help your sister. Don't worry about your pockets. Well, then they can go back to the Odyssey app. Wow. And see the name of the company. It's you know, called Menlo I, House. Okay. Menlo House. That's pretty dope. But then that's old stuff. What? No, more of that age. What's old stuff? What, when you do it that way. I like going to Nordstrom's. Get out the car, go in, validate your parking list. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Walk around, go to the dressing room. That's yeah, I don't like doing that. Yeah, I, do. I don't like going shopping for the most part. <laughs> uh, oh, Ken's Mars. Looney is slow. Okay. Well, he was badass that's, yesterday. That's one way to start the show, I guess. Yeah, he helped you last night. Yeah, I don't know if you win that game without uh, Kavon Looney last Eesh. night. Dude, they were without, what, GP2, Clay, and Dre. Yep. Curry, yeah, I, Curry I, closed it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to. Start out negative, but I'd, I'd be worried about Kamek if I were Warrior fans because he he felt I felt like he was pressing last night. I felt like he was a little frustrated. Thought he tried to do too much. Yeah. I, I can't like here's the He's one thing I'm trying to Donnie. Not, well yeah. you need him no doubt like, about it. And he was seven eleven from the field, yeah. six but rebounds plus eight. Yeah. I hear you, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. And and frustrated is the word I would stick with. I mean, the one thing that I'm trying to figure out with Kaminga is. Like, you know how we always talk about uh, the Dallas Mavericks or the Boston Celtics? And it's, oh, they're taking turns. They take turns. Doncic and Kyrie take turns. Or Brown and uh, when it's working, Tatum it's take good. turns. Yeah. Until I kind of feel, feel that way with Kaminga and the Warriors. Like, they play, they play, and then it's like, it's Kaminga's turn. And, like, when it's Kaminga's turn, everybody knows He's going to try to do something. And I'm listen, I'm not, again, I hear you. I'm not saying, well, it's Kaminga's fault because I think the team has something to do with that too. Like they put the ball in his hands at times where they say, go do something. 
and the whole defense is ready, and it just makes it it just makes it hard for him. And you're right, he's got to work on his ball handling for sure. And that's the real quick. But you know, he's Pop, gonna have why to does figure Pods it out. feel different? I know they're two different players, but I think maybe it's because he can navigate with the ball in his hands a lot better. I mean, to me, one's and, a, one's a guard, one's a forward, yeah. and um, Pods just seems to like it. He just his navig his GPS is perfect. Steiny, read the funny stuff. Was there some funny stuff I missed on the uh, chat line? Uh, uh, ch uh, oh, we got a call already. We got a call already from Ben in Oakland. By the way, I, Benny. I may call oh, there's out. There's only one Benny. I may call That's out. Benny Spadoni. I may call out a listener. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna call. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna take. Ben, <laughs> I'm gonna take Ben's call, and then I'm calling out a listener. Because you know, I was don't thinking, disappoint. I was thinking about this. You know, we got to come in here every day and talk about our opinions, and sometimes our opinions aren't quite right, Hi, and we got to show you? up the next day and take the heat. I'm sick of this one guy. Oh, boy. I'm sick of this one guy. And he ain't getting out. Shoots his mouth off, but when the when when the the bullets start to fly, I'm trying to think figuratively. Oh, he's nowhere to be found. So I'm calling this guy out right after I talk to my good friend Ben Benny. in Oakland. What's up, Ben? How you doing? Ben Loke. Hey, I, I'm good, guys. And I think uh, you're lying. See, I think you're lying here, but go ahead. Uh, well, I'm driving. I'm going up to the mountain, so oh, I'm nice. happy. Actually. Yeah, you and Shasky. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Shasky wanted me to DM him, but I don't Instagram. So, uh, uh, all right. Let's see. I want the I, I want the Nuggets in the first round. No, you don't. I, 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 you do not. I I do. Wait, wait, time. I, is our goal to win a championship or get farther in the playoffs? Uh, what what's that going to oh. do? One extra round. The only chance we have to beat the Nuggets is in the first round with the rest because we're going to be killing ourselves with Jokic. So you have to have a different mindset. Uh, when you're trying to win a whole thing as opposed to when you're just trying to win games. So right. I run travel baseball teams. Boop. So if I have a bad team, uh, a bad team that can't win a tournament, I'm just trying to win games. So I use my best pitcher against the worst team. But if I'm trying to win the whole tournament, mm. I save my best pitcher for the last game, even though we might not get huh. there. So if we get – if we get – Denver in the first round with the rest, and that's the only way. There's no way we have home field, so we got to right. go up to the altitude. We have a chance, not a good one, but a chance. But if we get them two or three uh, down the road, we're going to be so tired, we have no chance. So, what, a, what about uh, the path of least of our, resistance? How, what, what What's up with that? I like American that logic. Way. Yeah, path of least resistance. Play Denver later on. He's saying you may, they yeah, may be too worn down by then. Yeah. Exactly. We're old. We're old. The first round has all the gaps, right? We got two days off here, three days off here. And also, uh, Denver could sweep other people. We're not sweeping anybody. So they're going to be way more rested later in the tournament than they are right now. And they've been playing for the one seed, so it's not like they've been just taking their foot off the gas. So if we are going to win the title, again, super low chance, the only chance oh. we do have is to get Denver in the first round. Then we've got action, right? Steiny, every all the national media. Yeah, Stephen if you beat Denver, you've got action. Well, I'll you, give you that. Yeah, I will give you that. If ben. I beat Denver, That's Ben, yeah, you know nah, what? nah, it's not the well, craziest you, idea. But if I beat Denver, I don't want to. Oh, I got to go to the second and third round. I want to be not? able to go. Hey, we're going to the finals. I want Denver as Beggar, late as possible. Beggars can't be choosers, and yeah. the Warriors are still in the play-in begging okay. stage. All right, Mr. Big Shot, you want Denver <laughs> right out to shoot? I'll I let the chips fall where they may. Oh, good God! I don't I don't want one team Spadoni, over another. Help me out! I, I just I just made a statement that I think. Come on, Warrior fans! Nobody wants Denver in the nobody. first round. And Ben called in and said, "Actually, I bet we don't take a call about, like that the rest of the day." Shasky and I have both been on team. Get Denver out of the way early if possible. Really? Because we feel like the Warriors if are possible, both. No, well, they're, old, they're one of the older teams in the in the West. It's them and the Clippers. I feel like yeah. right. They're the two oldest The Warriors teams. are the oldest. Yeah, so I would much rather face Denver now when you have quote-unquote fresher legs, right? But and then no it sounds like you, you're you you're not expecting a run at all. No, well, I don't. Way. I don't. Okay. But if you beat the Nuggets, I don't fear the Mavericks, the Clippers. Well, that's like, true. That's who I would be like, oh, okay, like yeah. we, could, we could trick off. 
some of the road games potentially huh. and then win at home. I know they haven't been a great home team, but you know get what I'm saying. You the know, playoffs, things change. It's the kind of thinking that I always admire. Because I didn't think that way. I would think you just want to avoid Denver. But might be something to it. There might be something to that. I mean, you and I'm not saying last year will be a repeat. I'm not I'm sorry, I'm not saying this year will be a repeat of last year, but yeah, the Warriors ain't beaten the Nuggets if they're like they were against the Lakers in the second round last year. No, they were dead tired. They were much one, better against the Kings, obviously. After, after one round, they were just gassed. Like Steph could give huh. everything. Andrew Wiggins was breaking down in that series. Like he had Moses Moody guarding LeBron in game six, and it was just barbecue chicken there. So yeah, get him out of the way early. Well, you got, I just feel like you guys and Shasky are omitting the fact that it's not just about your fatigue and and, and your freshness. It's about the problems that Denver uh, poses to you. And it starts with Jokic, Jamal Murray, a.k.a. Dwayne Played Wade. Played them tight in all the games this year, right? Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, I, yeah I'm just telling you, I want them later. What uh, what do Warrior fans want? What do you want? Sacramento. First thing you want, I think, first thing you need is a the win games. tonight. Yeah, you do. But the Pelicans have something to play for. And Zion's playing his ass off. Really? Donnie. And he, I looked at their minute. Well, C.J. McCollum played like 40 minutes last night. Zion only played 30, though. Yeah. But they had a bunch of guys who played high minutes, and the Warriors obviously rested some guys. Steph played and uh, f- closed that game. And to be honest, New Orleans is playing for more than the Warriors, in and, a sense. And Ingram's to coming back that Sunday. Box. Is he coming back? Yeah, Ingram's apparently coming back. Why not, not, not today? Because he's not ready. 48 hours. Shout out Nick Nolte. Come uh, on. Yeah, so uh, if you're a Warrior fan, the one team you are rooting for tonight, I would think, are the Phoenix Suns. Yes, sir. If the They'll Phoenix Suns hard. beat the Sacramento Kings tonight and the Warriors win... Then they've leapfrogged the Kings with the win on Sunday against the Jazz. Yeah. So then they finish eight. Sean in Oakland says they can get the seven seed. I, yeah, yeah, I think that I, ship has left the dot. All right, Sean. Exp- I, I guess there might be a path, but go ahead. How do you do? I, how do you, okay, like, here, I didn't even look at the way they would accomplish that. So help us out, buddy. Here it is, fellas. Thanks for taking my call. I think yeah. I really have uh, the crystal ball of the future, what this is going to look like. Okay. So the Dubs went out. They went out tonight. They bring beat the Pales, and then they also went on Sunday. Okay. The Suns beat the Kings tonight, so that locks the Warriors into that eighth spot, assuming they went on Sunday. The Pales also drop uh, against the Lakers on Sunday, so that means that the Pales are going to fall to uh, seven, and the Suns will be at six. And the Lakers are at 9 or 10, depending on the Kings split. So then the Dubs square off against the Pelicans in that 7-8 game. They go to New Orleans. They beat them. So oh, okay. I got on the seven seat. Got yeah. seven yeah. seed. He's not in talking about the, the actual fake playoffs. Yeah. He's I talking got about you. the real eight. No, I, hey, Sean, okay, I, yeah. I misunderstood. Yeah. No, you're right. If they, you're, if they get to the 7-8 game and win, yeah. then they go into the postseason, the playoffs, as a seven right. seed. Which yes. is not the fake I, seven. I, I thought you meant to actually... What the Warriors won't be doing is hosting two play-in games. But, yeah, go ahead. You're right. Correct. And so here's the scenario, because I'm just thinking about money, the NBA, Adam Silver, and everyone else. So you get the Warriors at the seventh spot. The Lakers win their play-in game, the first game, and then they win their second play-in game against New Orleans, and they get the eighth spot. So then we have a Western Conference playoff scenario of a 1-8 matchup of Denver and L.A., a 2-7, the Warriors in Minnesota. You got the Draymond uh, Edwards beef. You got a 3-6 matchup of OKC and Phoenix. Durant goes back to OKC and a 4-5 matchup with the uh, Mavericks and the Clippers. I think the league wants that. Everyone wants that. Sign that's me up. Yeah, that's, that's I want that. that. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate the call. What'd that tell you in the green room, Stein? I, I don't know. I, I didn't want to. said about 8 million things wow. right off the bat. It was wow. a, like a whirlwind. Well, the first thing was about your new merch. But I said I, I, I kind of didn't like that. What? You turned the corner. A new jacket. <laughs> it's it's awesome. new. We Dude, it's right new. You wear it. Actually, you know what? Tried to say jacket. hello, Actually, you know what? but don't he like he wasn't frosted I, something He turns new. the corner. I said, good morning, goo. And he goes, new jacket. Yeah, don't play me like and it's you know just what? a regular Tuesday. Is it My man is clean. I was out and about with it last night. Too. Okay. But he didn't see you last night. Yeah, you know, I would have left that out. But yeah, you're good. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a jacket. It was nice in Oakland last night. Oh, Warm. boy. It's beautiful. I tell you what. Where'd you go? I was out. I got some. Uh, oh boy! I got some nice sun on the face after work. Not, not too much. Not yeah. too much. I tri- I very careful about 
about uh, you don't look like a rod. You, you gotta be careful. Yeah, you do. Older in life, the skin. Yeah. Dude, when I was a kid, I thought as a kid. When I was a grown, you know, yeah. you got. Well, you should put some sunblock on. I usually do. I got when I golf, I sunblock. always do. Yeah, but I do. You know, just about 10, 15 minutes. Just oof, felt so good. Vitamin C. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the difference between the seven and eight seed, though, is going to be big going into the playoffs. See, I, I, I just don't think you want Denver. In the first round. Stiney, say it. Let me come to my side. You, no. You don't want Denver. That's just me. Defend the okay, You're in the minority. Because Shasky and Spadoni want Denver. Those are two of and our you know guys. What? I'm going to speak for Lubman. He wants Denver, too. Now, please. Lubman knows what time it is. And you should be scared because you, your favorite team's the Lakers. You don't want them playing Denver in the first round. I think they got action. Who? Uh, I kind of want the Thunder, not the Nuggets, well, but... You think, uh, okay, here, let's do this. 888-957-9570. Toughest to most wanted. I won't say toughest to easiest. Yeah. Uh, who do you want the least? Who do you want the most? I'm going to assume most people don't want Denver at 888-957-9570. I'm betting on that, Bartlett. Okay, so yeah. now I'll be the man. I'll, 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 you got to beat the man. Let me tell you something <laughs> about Ric Flair, by the way. I didn't know who it was. I just laughed. He's great. But there were many, many wrestlers greater than him, both in the ring and you're doing your with college the basketball thing it's again. True. The women's no, it's true. But let like Rick get his time no, though. It's about well, it's past Rick. his time right now. He's 87 years old. But don't he got it. We but get this, it. And this is what I'm saying. Like I said, I get Ric Flair, great wrestler, great personality. Let him live. But I'll take, I'll take Dusty Rhodes. That's fine. Any day of the week. The dream. The yeah. American dream. Absolutely. But let sun Rick get his vitamin D is the sun, not vitamin C. Vitamin C is like orange juice. Yeah. And so so who, who gave that to you? <laughs> oh, just to everybody on the text line. Oh, please. Uh, uh, not, not get, let, don't get me wrong. I like Ric Flair. <laughs> I find him amusing. I find some of his stories to be offensive, though, and a little bit over the top. Yeah. And I don't know that he could get away with some of the things that he has in the past in today's world. Nevertheless... I do like Ric Flair. I just prefer other wrestlers to him. My favorite Speaking wrestler of, way, yeah, of you're all right. time. Should Mount Rushmore of wrestlers. I only got one because we got a big. Well, I got we yeah, got, got big two. wrestling event tomorrow, right? The UFC three hundred. You're right. <laughs> Somebody sent me something at the work email for an interview. I'm like, wrong, dude. <laughs> I got nothing. But it's Andre supposed to be the best the card they've ever had. Uh, no, they Without wanted to Conor interview McGregor? me. I didn't know what was going on. He, I don't. I don't got nothing on UFC. Well, most of the time you don't. Well, so please. uh the uh okay. Mount Rushmore is uh saying. is Connor McGregor fighting tomorrow? No, he's doing movies I, like Jay Gillen. I know, but just, just do the bit with me. Uh, is uh the biggest horse's ass of all time Strickland fighting? I don't Sean believe Strickland? So. Don't believe Well then so. how can it be the biggest card? You just said it. Well, what about Roy jo uh, no, what about John Roy. John Jones? What's yeah, John Bones Jones. Yeah, what about him? He's done, right? Uh, he's skiing. And he's on the, the greatest slopes. fighter of all time. Yeah, he got a problem with the white horse, though. Who's the, who's the most uh, fresh powder? I I'm not sure you're thinking of the same guy. Yeah, no, John. He, yeah, he absolutely I am. Is. The guy who's the never lost. John. Yeah, he's got well, a problem. He with, some uh, he doesn't have a problem. He's never lost a fight. Well, I wonder why. <laughs> well, exactly. That doesn't sound like much In of a problem. Four. Who's the biggest name on the card tomorrow? Exactly. He's got to go Google it. Oh, boy. All right. You got to Google In it. In fairness, I, too, I don't think and, any and of us hold here on. Are yes, I did say, yes, I did say UFC is wrestling. It was a quick little jab. Andre the Giant, my greatest wrestler of all time. Me and Pops watched it together when he took down Hulk Hogan. Saturday night. Hulk beat him. <laughs> Remember, Hulk body slammed him. He was the first wrestler to ever body slam Andre the Giant. Let so, me remember it the way I remember it. He was smiling. Let, let me guess. I'm a hater for that. I'm a hater <laughs> I'm for saying it. it was Hulk. I think it was part two. Slammed. I've seen part well, one. Maybe there, maybe there was a part two. Well, part two. I don't know. Sounds just, inconceivable. Yeah. Uh, 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, who do you want, Warrior fans? In the play-in and then ideally in the playoffs. 888-957-9570. And on the other side, I, I, you guys know me. I don't do it often. In fact, I almost never do it. But I do have a bone to pick with one of our listeners. And I'll I'll get to it on the other wow. side. That segment sponsored by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still...
Josh, one more. How desperate are you guys to stay out of that play in tournament? Oh, oh, oh. Better question. Ask a better question, man. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, that was there. No, that's what I want. Well, that was Zion Williamson and Chris Haynes. So Chris Haynes said, "How de-, and he said, ask a better question. Gotta ask one more. How desperate are you guys to stay out of that play in tournament? Oh, oh, oh. Better question. Ask a better question. So does that I, mean they're desperate to stay out of the play in? Yeah. Or, I watched it in real time. Zion, I don't think that fit. Ask or is it like a LeBron? You know what? I'll, what's the answer? I should say, but in the eh. in the reality, I don't care. And it wasn't just him. C.J. McCollum was there. He had just so they were Next all. Question. Yeah, it was. They gonna get their ass kicked tonight. This is the most important game of the season for the Dubs, Donnie. Yeah, we had a caller call in. He said he was a travel baseball coach. Did you see that thing online? It's on Instagram. Well, the first caller with Ben in Oakland. Said he coached a traveling baseball team. Did you see that new thing where the guy's like, uh, he, you know, the, he's online and he says, uh, I'm a traveling baseball coach. And he goes, he, he's sitting down. He goes, okay, this is going to be a tough little trip we have here. First game is in Honduras. It's a 49-hour drive, and we play Saturday and Sunday night. And then if we win that game, we got to go to Sweden. All right, now it's going to be a quick turnaround to Sweden, but we'll get there. And if we win in Sweden, then we have to await. You know what I mean? It's, it's, no, there's a whole South Park episode on that when they try funny. to lose because they don't want to keep advancing well, in their baseball tournament. They so they keep trying to lose, but the other teams also don't want to advance, <laughs> so they keep losing too. Yeah, that's called the NBA. <laughs> oh, that's the NBA. I'm getting mixed up with travel baseball. Uh dirt, dirty little yeah, secret. I had nothing for him. Dirty little secret. Chauncey Billups is not a very good coach. I don't think. But uh, Steve Kerr, gr- great coach. Hey, uh, I need you to think about I need you to just just see if you can remember this call we got. Must have been about a month ago. Damn! You know, it was just, just one of our listeners, and he, uh, you know, he was w- one of these guys who will take advantage of a specific moment in time as opposed to looking at the whole season. Remember we were talking about the Warriors? Every day. We were talking about who could they get, players. And you're just spitballing. And I said, you know, one guy, and I mentioned Sabonis. And we just started talking a little bit about the Sacramento Kings. Oh, and I'll be a son of a... Yeah. If the next thing you know, there he is, Javier yeah. from Vacaville. <laughs> Javi! Telling us... Yeah. That we're crazy yep. that the Kings were on their way to 55 wins. That yeah. the Kings Give us a call, were yeah. what's going on. Yeah. That Sabonis <laughs> was so much better than any any other Warrior player. <sighs> that the Kings don't need to make any changes. That the Sacramento Kings were where it's at and they were going to be where it's at. Javi! <laughs> 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 Give us a yeah. Damn, Stoddy, you remembered. Oh, I remembered. Yeah. I remembered. Mr. Steinmetz, Mr. Johnson. And did, yeah, you re- exactly. did you also remember I said, Javi, I'm just, you know, yeah, Warrior yeah. fans are just trying to think of a, you know, a better than average player to get in here. He came yeah. at you, Stoddy. He oh, came he did. at you. He did. I remember. Let me tell you something. If the Golden State, I know they can't do it. If the Golden State Warriors right now were offered Sabonis for Kaminga, Right. I don't think they'd do it. Oh, there's no doubt. Well, that's pretty sad. Yeah. He's too old. And they got a Harrison Barnes problem, too. They've got that's a cool. Sabonis problem. You know, that's the right on the table. The Brought to you by Echo. You're right, man. They got a couple problems. Javi, let's talk King's problems. 888-957-957. Well, we want to be careful. We don't want a fat mouth because they could hook up and then and what? the Warriors could be going to Macramento. Oh, I'm not going to. Shout oh, out El Gro. Sacra- oh, I will, not, I will not take heat for the Kings beating DPH. the Warriors. Yeah. I take enough heat when the Warriors win. I'm not taking heat if they lose. Uh, but no, I, I know what he's going to say. I'm Malik Monk. Nah. I mean, we just Malik yeah. Monk. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Joel in Berkeley. What's up, Joel? How you doing, buddy? Hey, man, first off, before anything, you, you guys both owe uh, Spadoni a five. When you were talking to Andre the Giant yes, and about the body slam thing, and he said, inconceivable, you let that go under the radar, that was hilarious. 
Uh, I don't think I let it I go. I missed it. Still don't. Spadoni. Please the Princess explain. Bride reference. Inconceivable. Andre the Giant. Oh. That was Lubman. Sam Lubman. I know okay. not all white people sound the same, but there you go. Hey, Joel. Spadoni. I appreciate that. I appreciate that because <laughs> I, it was totally over my head. Yeah. You know. Totally it. over my I head. Catch that was my first laugh out loud of the day. Oh, okay. man, you got a five, <laughs> baby. Look at Lubman. Look at Lubman. Yeah. Made my day hearing Joel say this. Right, Sammy Lubman. the Bull. All right. All right. Hopefully you get, four, and, get a anyway, few more Anyway, I just wanted to point out that last, you remember my, my take on uh, who would take the last shot, and I said, I don't, I don't know about the last shot, but give Pods the ball with mm-hmm. six seconds left, and he'll find the guy. Mm-hmm. The, last night was a perfect example. Yeah. We're all floundering, and Pazimski comes in and goes, I don't care. I'm playing hard. If you guys want to play hard, play hard with me. Mm-hmm. Everything changes. The dude is a, is a gamer, man. He does not I care have what else is going on. Yeah. He's going all out. I and, agree. And I mean, you give him the ball with six seconds left, and let him have have Kaminga cut first and and Wiggins cut second, and he'll find the the open dude, and it's a dunk. And, and that's my boy. That's your boy. Put pressure on the lane and finding cutters. Yeah. <laughs> I right, appreciate it, Joe. No, he's been a he's yeah. been a. I'll be a couple a times, terrific Scotty, where rookie for the, the defense, the defender knows what he's doing, and he'll be kind of caught with it, like every player, you know. But more <laughs> often than not, it's what the caller just said. One of the things I like about Pajemski is How can, like man. when he puts him like he puts himself out there, and so at the end of the game you'll be like, you know what he made some mistakes, he got some shots blocked, but all when you all. tally it all up, <laughs> yeah, right. he's plus usually minus on leader. the positive side. He got the and one on the break yesterday and did the I love it the gun things, Donnie. This I love that. What do they do with the arm? I'm not fronting. What's that, Spadoni? I have no idea. When what they you're shoot a about. three and everybody's ice pointing. in your veins. Oh God! D'Angelo Russell started doing it a while ago. Dude, yeah. everybody like. Well, oh. everybody's so clever. Everybody's so clever. Now. I should have known what it is, but I had to ask the devil. Uh, I live good. in Union City. Oh, it's not, it's the Union. Oh, okay. I live in Hayward. Oh, it's the stack. Look, keep going. Oh, I live in. Oh, it's the town. Just call stuff by what it is. What about it's Richmond? What do they call Richmond? Um, hold on. Come on. I don't know. The Ridge. I should have guessed that. <laughs> oh, boy. I should have guessed that because yeah. the reality is people aren't that clever, and that's about I don't all. have one for San Jose. I say San Ho. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sure they call it something. What do they call uh, What do they call uh, Palma? Oh, that's a high school, so <laughs> they don't call it anything. Monterey. Well, they do call it some things, but we, I can't say it all. Oh, there. boy. What do they call Mon- the the Monterey? Yeah, it's yeah. Well, Mon- Pacific I- Grove. Pacific Grove is PG. That's what yeah. they would call. Okay, it. just the initial. Uh, hello, gents. Five one zero. That's why Javi was always calling in to suggest the most hairball crazy warrior trade idea. That's right. That's right. Well, Javi, call, he let's go call today. He let's will. go, Javi. Let's have some fun today. Yeah. You are signing, Mr. You are Javi. Not doing a great job. Don't let that get to you. You fly today. The ratings t- say different, don't they? Hey, uh, well, uh, Fremont, Freakmont, so I done did Freakmont. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my greatest work. Um, who's your Who's on the Mount Rushmore of your uh, of your wrestlers? Uh, the Rock, okay. okay. And uh, Ballers on HBO. I just you didn't ask. It's Friday. I'm feeling good. You can't steal my thunder. Shout out OKC. Okay, <laughs> Uh, I went and watched Ballers on HBO with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's an agent. It's phenomenal. Okay. Okay. So Dwayne Rock Johnson, Junkyard Dog. Okay. Andre the Giant. Okay. And Hulk Hogan. Let me give the Hulkster his due. Okay. Who's yours? It's your list, so there are no <laughs> wrong answers. Well, I, I, didn't least, say the, yeah. I didn't say the best four wrestlers. I said... You're my list. Yeah. That's By what makes way. it... Oh, <laughs> But we, you know what? I'm not. No, here. Do I'm it. not here to litigate the past. Your top ten list. It was a freestyle. Was, Come on, I, I did see it. It was really. Was there no LeBron James? Yeah, no. Spadoni, no, but he had Iverson. There's an and, and he did. This is what he. I get Whitey Gleason, the great Whitey Gleason, <laughs> Kevin Michael Whitey Gleason. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm not telling tales out of school, but I am. Whitey texts me. He goes, "Guru's top ten NBA players list." And he sent the emoji with the guy like he with his hand the on the thing. chin, he, like oh, okay, good. Yeah, he texted me the same good. thing, and I just said, "Yeah, what's why we love goo." There's an addendum and list I, out and there, and then I said, yeah. and then I said, "Vintage goo." What he did came you say? up with his list, and then he said, "Oh, I no, thought no. you meant 
my favorite players yeah, that, to watch. Right, we got it. That's Something why it's like vintage that is you. a project. That's vintage yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. I were on the Johnny Carson show and they said, "Give me your top 10, it then I'd be like, I'd be in the lab, right. and I was just rushing because you, you put me on the spot. I sir, left LeBron sir, off. There were some other omissions. Yeah. Carl Malone, you're off. Too late. <laughs> Come on, Too late. It's in, How it's, can I leave LeBron? It's and on I the internet. Hey, I respect Bron. It is on the internet. Hey, how would you know though? Because you're on it. You're on, on IG now. Yeah. And Facebook. But it didn't get to you IG. Get a lot of videos and stuff on Facebook now. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, my buddy Danny, uh, Danny B, said, uh, "What did, did you get hacked, or are you now into uh, <laughs> oh, boy. dystopian thoughts or something like that?" Yeah, I've been hacked. Steinmetz NBA is no longer. You got it for the no, show I'm in the station. You got to get back. No, on I don't. There. No, I don't. Well, well, you want me to get back we on? We got a show meeting How about Thursday. This? Next How about this? Thursday. You want, me to get, you want me to get back on X? Yeah. Pay me. Well, exactly. Exactly. God, you said like that. And, and, and here's the know. other thing. Pay me. Here's the other thing. We've long passed the time. It was 10 years ago where companies could tell you, hey, we really need you online. Yeah, you need me online. Dude, I don't need you're to be You're barking online. up the wrong tree. No, You'll I'm barking be back up on X by uh, uh, May 1st. Want to bet? <laughs> it's for Donnie. You book it, put it in the cap. For the station how? and the job. People reach out. You know how many things, how many people yeah. are reaching out to me? What's okay. wrong with your partner's Twitter? mstein33 at comcast.net. <laughs> That's my email. Easiest way to reach me. Something happened on X. Somebody got 88 to you. 88 Karen, it's where I work. Come meet me at. Now, if you tell me your mental health is in a better place without Oh, X, it is. Oh, it absolutely You know is. what? I'm going to back off. There you go. But the boss will make you get back on. <laughs> Watch. That, that already, May, he's May, already tried. May t- he's already tried. Honestly? Yeah. Dude, yeah, it's he part said, of let's the- go in and see if we can figure out this account. <laughs> Did he try to? Yeah. And oh, I said, boy, okay. Tim Jordan. And he was over my shoulder, and I said, Steinmetz NBA, and it said, this account <laughs> does not exist. I said, Dude, you night, have night. Hella fo- heck of followers. Night, night. Yep. Night, night. Uh, let's go to uh, Al's in San Francisco. We're still... Still sending out a search party for Javi in Vacaville. <laughs> Update in Javi in Vacaville. Give us a call, buddy. I'll get you right through. What's up, Al? You got a fight back hey, there? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, what up, What's baby? Up, man? Thank you for bringing me on. Hey, I just want to say something about the Warriors are playing in the playoffs. Right. Uh, and as far as playing, I would like to see them maybe go against uh, Sacramento. Mm-hmm. And I know with a Monk and uh, what's the other guy that they're out that they have. Carter. You know, I know they can beat Sacramento. Yeah. And uh, going into the playoffs, I would like them to go against OKC. And I know they can take care of OKC, but I yeah. want to save Denver for the uh, the conference finals so they can beat them in Denver and get their throne back. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Appreciate it, Al. No doubt. How about this? I, I got a reason why you don't want Denver in the first round. <laughs> and I'm dead Go serious. Go ahead. Give it, what's your number one? You you may need an injury if you're the Warriors. You may need an injury don't want it like to, that, to yeah. get around, to, to just get by a round that you maybe not, wouldn't have gotten by. I mean, it's the best star hate, five I, in the game I, right I hate now, to say man. it, but... You know, if Denver Gordon's goes if Denver goes into the playoffs healthy, they are. Well, Murray. Well, we'll see what happens yeah. Sunday, and then we'll see what happens in the first round. And you know how that. I mean, look at Giannis. Look at Giannis. I don't. I don't expect. I can't wait for our playoff preview show, which we'll be able to do uh, after Tuesday. No, after Monday. Well, no, no. When the play-ins are over, we'll be able to go around you, Evan, and I, Spadoni, and uh, you know, give our skinny on the matchups. Oh. Or we could, yeah, you know, we could talk about it now. What they? Well, we don't know the matchup. No, but it's going to be between one or Clippers, two. Clippers, Mavericks. That's the only one we know right now. That's intriguing. Five. How do you man. feel about that one? I'm going Clippers. I know. Uh, where's Lively at? Are we so sure he'll be back game one? Uh yeah, he will be. All right. You know why he will be? Because I haven't heard anything different. Uh Guru uh, four hundred five says he's on Twitter. Somebody else is on Twitter, and they've never been. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're right. People laughing because I, I have a Comcast.net. It's about 18 years old. Uh, the missus has an SBC Global. Oh, no, my goodness gracious. There. Come on, Spadoni. That's like one of those phone notes. You want that. <laughs> SBC. Pops has one norm. I don't want to give right his now, out. Right yeah. now, yeah, email me at mstein33 at Comcast.net. Jesus. And it's guaranteed not to be seen 
because I get about 200 emails a day in there, and they're all spam. Wow. And then two people will use that address, and I always get those. I never see them. Man, oh, Absolutely man. Absolutely never see them. What else jumped out at you uh, from last night? So you, Kaminga. Well, Kaminga jumped out at me I, last he was night trying to get it going in early. a big, big way, and I didn't like what I saw. Now, he was trying, and he had good intentions, but there's something... You can something... still see he's 21, that's all that... Well, we're going into the playoffs, yeah, no, aren't man. we? But he won't be out there featured like that. And that's another thing I'm going to look for. I'm good. You, I'm... Now, I've never been more fascinated by how much he's going to play wow, man. in big games. This is big for him and them. So I, I, I just, you know, he's he's the one guy right now who could be the wild card one way or the other. He yeah. could really help this team by coming off the bench and giving them something consistently, or we were or sloppy not. last night, Stoney, without Clay Dre. I yeah, mean, exactly. That, that was sloppy. I know it was Portland, but I mean, good God, have you seen a worse shooting team? That was embarrassing. Hey, I don't think they're well coached. I, I really, really don't. not a Chauncey fan. I don't know how many. I can just don't like. Them. I don't know. I don't He's probably know. got one more year, man. I'll say this to you: Who do you put on Zion tonight? Who do you start on Zion? I thought you had the, one of the greatest defenders of all time on your team. I mean, he could. Put, I'm sorry, incredible. dude. That's I a freight train. Is Draymond out tonight? No, no. Is he playing? <laughs> Stop Dray- You don't want him to get What's hurt Dray- trying to guard that bull. That's all I'm saying. I'm okay, so hold him out then. Spinal dudes are You're scared train. of Zion Williamson and the Pelicans. No, I'm scared of getting my best defender. Who Would you listen to this? Nah. How can I do a show with a guy like this? Who's a fr- you got the best defender in the league. Well, it's better than the other day. I asked you a question. You're like, I don't want to answer it. I, know. <laughs> I was like, boy. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I don't like, uh, well, you want to clay back or not? I don't Damon know. Damon Chang says, stop biting goo. I didn't steal Yeah, anything. you're on one today. I can tell. No, please. It's a Friday. Well, it's a payday Friday. The- now, why would you ask that question, though? I'm just curious. See, a, who's gonna? Who's gonna? You have Draymond Green. I thought. Yeah. See, when you say stuff like that, who's gonna guard? What it? You're telling on yourself because you're saying, I don't really think Draymond's a great defender. No, Otherwise, I would stopped, never stopped. ask that. We've question. already got past this plateau. I said, who's starting on Zion? Oh, okay. Who's starting on Zion? But those um, days of Draymond guarding and shutting down Jason Tatum and the other team, uh, SGA, we were past that. I mean, I don't know that he ever shut anybody well, down. That's not really who he was, but he has he screwed up a lot of guys. <laughs> you know, Zion, like, the bottom line is Zion's Zion could get 25 right tonight and be very terrible and be terrible. Mm, mm. I mean, Sabonis. You kind of want that. <laughs> Sabonis can get you 22 11 and seven every single night. It doesn't mean he's good. Empty calories. It doesn't mean he played well. Yeah. Um, my Mount Rushmore of wrestlers? Yeah, let's do it. 888-957-9570 if you want to jump in with uh, Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Anybody after doing that in honor of the UFC fights? No, of course not. All right. Uh, Ivan Putski. The Polish, the Polish Hammer. That, the, that remember him? One. Tell the me if Polish, you've ever heard of him. I never, you never I, heard I of Ivan Putski. The, the Polish Sp- Hammer. Spadoni? No. I actually saw him live at the Hamburg Fieldhouse the in Polish Pennsylvania. The Polish Hammer, that's hard. Yeah, Ivan Putski. Okay. He's kind of a precursor to Roddy Piper, but he's from Poland. All right. Uh, Chief J. Strongbow has to, has to be on the list. One of the greatest wrestling rivalries of all time. Chief J. Strongbow with Spiros Arion uh, from Greece. I'm going to ask what was nationality by is, Donnie. Who? Uh, your boy, right? Strongbow. He was a Native American. Okay. All right. Yeah. He and I'm trying to say Again, there's some made. things in wrestling that they used to do back in the day that you really don't do anymore. He but, portrayed a Native American. He was, hey, oh, yeah. he was a. He was hey, a Latvian, the Redskins. You can't do that. You can't. It's called K Fab. No, K Fave. K Fave. K-fab. 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 Hey, Fabe, we don't break those secrets. Oh, boy. He was a Sioux. He was Sioux. I think he was Choctaw. Give us two, yeah. the other two. I uh, didn't know him. I hadn't heard of him either. Absolutely, positively, uh, superstar Billy Graham. Number three. Nothing? 
They don't even register with you guys? You know not. How about me. Freddie Blassie? Now he, he wrestled, Number but then four. he was a manager. He sounds like somebody, a member of the mob. Freddie Blassie? Yeah. Pencil <laughs> neck geek? How about the Grand Wizard of Wrestling? Oh, you Jesus. You need a podcast. Oh, my You're going God. back, back. And then my fourth is going to be a tag team. Professor Taru Tanaka and Mr. Fuji. Wow. They I heard were, of Mr. Fuji. They yes. were, whoo, they were tough to beat. They would throw salt in your eyes. And they were dirty. Wow. So, uh, no, uh, no Dwayne, The Rock Johnson, no. Hulk Hogan. He's not, they're not real. Those guys aren't real. Well, that's what I argued with you when we had the uh, the whole debate about wrestling. I felt like it wasn't real. No, those guys were like, those. my guys are real. Okay. The, the new guys <laughs> oh, are fake. Oh, boy. It's really pretty simple. Now, I have an honorable mention. Antonina Rocca, inventor of the drop kick. Did you know that? No. Okay. I mean, this is going to be school in session today. What do you people. know about Sasha Banks? Nothing. Yeah. Must be a new wrestler. Yeah, female wrestler. Okay. Gorgeous. But what does her suplex look like? <laughs> I just say. Hey. Uh, no George the Animal Steel, huh? You know, now, George the Animal. Breaking all the rules here. You know, he was a, he was a teacher. Really? Yeah, he was a teacher. Of like in, outside of Detroit, Michigan. P.E.? I don't know. Maybe history. I'm not sure. He used to eat the turnbuckle. You know that's the character. I Sh did. Shrek is based off of him. I character. did not Come know on, that. Man. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've never seen Shrek. Is it any good? Yeah, Look at Baby Dibley good. back there. Mike I from Detroit. That. Now, speaking of Detroit. Mike from Detroit. Steiny, I completely agree. Kaminga's pressing too much. Uh, every drive, I yeah. hear him scream like... He is. He's, he's. I saw... But it's just... Well, I hear you, Steiny. Go ahead. I'm cutting you off. Yeah. It's... I, I'm like... Kaminga... But... That was like gotta a get, summer league game to where it was almost for like Kaminga. Yeah, every game's a summer nah, league game for Kaminga. When he was in the zone, it was you know, like I don't expect that Kaminga tonight. Do you expect it, it in the playoffs? See, I'm, that's what no. I'm worried about. If I, uh, ooh, now that, he knows better. He know like we, we got. He's made strides. He knows these are the most important games. It's the name. It's the team in the front. Name on the front of the jersey, okay. not the back. Okay. And he knows the quickest did way you to play himself out night? the rotation. Yes, I did. did the so you don't think way, he was trying to do too much? I, I felt like that was a given at the beginning. I even text Bonte like, "What's going on?" And then he oh. got it together as That's far right. as scoring. But Steiny, I think yesterday was just kind of a different. Like they empowered him to go work it out. <laughs> well, that that's. That's his game, though, and yeah. I'm not sure that yeah. it's going to be effective in the postseason. I'm with you. It is. I'm not scared. Oaktown, yes, eh? As usual. This is the most exciting time of the season. I'm not Don't scared. say I'm scared. Who's going to guard Zion? I say, who starts on him? <laughs> of course, I didn't get an answer. I would imagine Draymond will probably get on, be on him a little bit. I would think. Mm -hmm. He's a big boy. Thanks. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, we'll get into some of the uh, greatest wrestlers of all time. And uh, Javi, <laughs> Javi Vacaville, calling Javi in Vacaville. I'll get you right on. It's like the old Rich Herrera ladies line. I'll put you right in the <laughs> front, the Javi. Rich? He worked in this market for like 10 years. You what might station? have supplanted him. What's the Richard? That segment was sponsored by Robert Half. Javi, let's go. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help our recruiting professionals.
And another turnover for Golden State. It's her ninth. Here's McCollum on the break. Gets it over. Good pump fake on the right side by Murphy. Back outside to McCollum. It's a three ball, and it's up and good. And a timeout for Golden State. 58-33. 8.23 to go. And a shocked chase center. And some booze coming down to the Warriors on the Warriors radio network. And the buzzer finally sounds. Oh, my God. The end of what is one of the most disappointing and frustrating games that we have done maybe ever in this building, but certainly not for a long time with the Warriors. Final score, Pelicans 141, Golden State 105. Ah. This is Tim Roy, and you're listening to Steiny and Boy. Guru on 95.7 The Game. But, Goo, the Warriors were up three in the second quarter of that game. Dude, Did Tim was not win? happy. I, I was nervous. That was that two-game stretch, Toronto and then the Pelicans. I was at the Toronto game. It was just as bad. Remember that two game stretch? Man, he said we're not. I used think that to was this. the two game stretch. Yeah, back where to back. Javi from Vacaville Look called in and started talking about the Kings. Somebody had a good one on the uh, Javi. Oh, Javi, come out and play. Yeah, Four oh eight. That's yeah. pretty damn good. Yeah. What else was I going to say? A lot. A lot. A lot of, let's go to Chris and Berlin game. What's up, Chris? How you doing, man? Hey guys, how you doing? Chris I'm glad Mac. you got to hold me. Because I'm going to lose you. I'm heading to the hills. But anyway, um, I just wanted to say four more years. Four more. <laughs> hey, real quick. Um, uh, Pat Patterson and Rocky Johnson in my era. All right. I like, t- I like Pat Patterson. Hey. Yeah, and Clay Thompson isn't going anywhere. Okay. He's, he's staying with the Warriors because yep. he likes to fish too much out here. What about so, Looney? Just wanted to get- what about Looney? Oh, yeah, Looney too. Yeah, he's he, they're he's the back. same. You can't beat you can't beat the Bay Area weather. You just can't, man. So uh. and Pods is going to be a key player in these playoffs. You watch. The yeah. guy's learned the system well, and he's fast. He's awesome, and you guys are awesome. So you guys have a great day now. Okay? Yeah, you too, Thanks, baby. Chris. Yeah, no it. doubt, Chris. Everybody Appreciate going that. somewhere. He said the heels. It's, by the way, right on the table. Early brought to you by Atco. DeAndre Ayton ain't a problem in Portland. Stanley. He stinks. Nah. I think he stinks. I love his little offensive game. Yeah. That shot he can hit, Stanley. Yeah. He's just so soft. Yeah, wait, wait, wait till they get some better players Didn't around like him. Didn't not one and, shot. And wait till the games get a little more important. Oh, yeah. like, and then judge him. Spadoni, I remember him in Arizona. What, he was guess, bad. That's what you're saying about Sabonis, did too. Did you see what Jokic did to him in that series last year? That was embarrassing. Just yeah. absolutely. It was criminal. Well, Ayton would even get back. He would, he would get something Something's going by the on, rim. though. Him and Monty Williams. Yeah, 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 something went on. It's all the coach's yeah. fault. And I look at the Suns now, Stiney. They need a point guard. I wonder if they regret letting PG3 go. Um, well, Bradley Beal wouldn't be there if Chris was there, I guess. You really want to go to Phoenix? I like. I'm not scared game? of that. You know, I, I thought I. Ooh. I think people would rather go to New Orleans, though, and play the Pelicans. At the Smoothie if it's seven, King eight. Center? If yeah. it's seven versus eight. Hey, uh, you know, I just realized. So I'm, I'm going to be taking my little golf trip in about three weeks. Uh, what day? May 9th or something. How, how long? Uh, just a long weekend. I don't do it like you. So, oh, so you won't be missing time? <laughs> just two days. Oh, let me take the whole week. Go ahead, Stein. You uh, three, I think I'm taking the Monday off after. I don't uh, know. Ask me where I'm flying out of. What? Boy, don't go here. You guys where hear you? this? This, this is great. No, it's not, and you're laughing. Do you, you have no where, idea what I'm I saying. know where you're going. Oh, you Because I've been harboring this for uh, what's bugging you today. I oh, think no. I know. Remember, we, dude, we have moments. Okay, go ahead. The new name of the Oakland Damn Airport. Damn it. I, why would you do that to Oakland? They're I'll losing the what. A's, and now you want to, and then you're going to confuse Damn it. everybody. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you're not. Nothing wrong with the Oakland Airport. I'll where be you're flying, flying out of. of. I'll be flying yes, out of. I can't believe here's it. Here's where I'm flying out of. To Spokane. I'll be flying out of the San Francisco no. Bay Oakland International Airport. Is that SFO? No. Why would you strip Oakland of the Oakland Airport? It's the San Francisco Bay Oakland International Airport. Get out of here. The That's name garbage. Has changed. That is so there we're losing the A's. That's I'm saying SFO we, is so pissed dude, right now. No, they still got to vote on it. I heard the port was voting on it last night and they're a pro for the, Why would you do that to Oakland? And well, they, confuse everybody. Where you at? Oakland Airport actually, or SFO? They're actually doing oh, it. 
They're actually doing it to reduce no, confusion. No, get out of here. Yes, you know, they are. You, come on, you're one of the most sometimes logical dudes I know. That's a that's a two, black re, eye to the city of Oakland. No, it's not. Where are you flying to? Oakland Airport, San Francisco Tucson, Bay, Oakland Raiders. International Airport. Yeah, get out of here. Miss the me bottom with line that. is there's that's, two reasons for the name change. One is give it to me. We got too many people outside of the United States that don't know Oakland's in the Bay. They don't know Oakland is well, in the Bay Shaq Area. The they one. don't know that there's another option. Dude, now they do. Out. So I'll be flying out of the San Francisco Bay, Oakland International Airport. But there's there another reason. There's Sanford's, another reason. Oh, my gosh. Apparently, people were getting confused between Oakland, California, and Auckland, New Zealand. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Where are you getting that so from? The article, they actually are changing the name, they think, to reduce some confusion. Oh, Steiner, you've to never, it, Spadona, you guys have never met somebody. Clear. The common man and woman have never had the common friends man and come from wherever. Fly. Well, dude, I just, we're losing the airport, huh? San Francisco Bay, Oakland International oh, Airport, baby. God. We have hit the big time. I hope it fails. I hope it doesn't pass. I hope it passes it with like flying colors, was... and they add three more words to it. Don't they have like a couple of Dallas airports? Right? Exactly. There's like yeah. Dallas Fort Worth and Dallas like Love or something. Moffitt else? Field. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Moffitt well, in Field. Chicago, they got O'Hare and they oh, got Midway, is... and yeah. they got New York's got three. LaGuardia is the worst. His boy. Oh, Billy's in Oakland. Javi. Hey, Billy, I've noticed Javi's not called yet. So, I wonder <laughs> yeah, if he's got a friend to call him. What's up, baby? Hey, uh, Billy, what's up? Give me your, uh, your favorite wrestlers. Okay, absolutely. i got a couple of wrestlers for you that belong up there. Bruno San Martino and Haystack Calhoun. Oh, Haystack. What a name. Both so, of them. Billy, Haystack. Bruno San Martino was actually a great technical wrestler. He was... He yeah. was he was so good, it was unbelievable. Like, he was legit. And he was the champion for a long time. And then Haystack Calhoun, I used to love his necklace with the, with the horseshoe. Giant, uh, and horseshoe, the overalls. Right? The horseshoe. Yeah, he wore overalls, hey, right? Yeah. Billy, <laughs> Billy, let me, let me test your knowledge, Billy. You ready? <laughs> okay. Who was Bruno Sammartino's protege? He had a protege uh, who was really good and patterned himself after San Martino. It was like his nephew or something, wasn't it? Larry Zabisco. Yeah. Larry yeah. Zabisco. Oh, boy. The names. <laughs> that just Thanks, like Billy. Appreciate it. You MFs out there think I don't belong in the radio when I know this kind of stuff. Bruno on, was now. a big dude, man. Bruno San Martino. There's a great documentary on him, too. He would rip us apart. I would highly recommend, and it's not part of the series, but... If you're, oh, if you're an old-time wrestling fan, you've oh, got to watch Dark Side of the Ring. It's about three or two or three seasons in now. There's about 15 episodes. Just unbelievable stuff. These guys were absolutely... He died at 82. Yeah, he had a good life. He had a good life. So, kept himself. what about shape. the pain factor? All the stuff that I think is fake now. Are you telling me those wrestlers back then, it was real? Like, I don't, I don't want to... We're we're getting into territory here. We should not get into. We, we don't, two inside baseball we, scripted is different a, than than whether they. But actually what about feel the pain? pain though, yes, yes, they, get they pain. absolutely oh, yes. positively feel pain right, and right. get. I'm hurt. in there. I'm gonna check it out. Addicted to painkillers. Exactly. Like right. No. Wow. All right. Yes. I've heard like, some stories. For example, if you take let's just say your average getting hit over the head with a chair, it happens all the time. Yeah. They know it's coming, and the chair will hit the head. Yeah, but they'll cushion it. But good, good luck with that. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Man. Hello, gents. Uh, my vote is Oakland. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter what your vote is. Uh, Oakland Airport. No, Do you no, understand no. why I'm sticking up for San the San Francisco of Bay, Oakland International no, Airport? Not. You can't have two San Francisco airports, and that's what the right on the. No, table this is, is the San Francisco Bay, Oakland. Airport. It's the Oakland it's Airport, right off of 98th yeah. Avenue yeah. in Hagenberger. Now that I know this bothers go. goo. Dude, I read it. <laughs> <I'm, laughs> Economic forecast exceeds all expectations. Just These like are your just job facts. report. These are just facts. Hey, what did Caller mean by four more years?
I said that about Draymond Green after oh, okay. he got suspended. <laughs> Help me out. Uh, Cruiser is in the 209. That'll be the Stockton area. Tracy. What's up, Steiny? What's up, Goof? You Mom, got it, baby. How you been? Hey, Chilling. you know what, Cruiser? Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. I feel like I can tell you're not working today. Is that true? Oh, no, no. I'm working. Oh, you can. I'm working. I'm working from, eh. I'm working from home. It's, fr- okay, it's Friday. Trust me. Ah. I am not in a hurry. I'm yeah. on a contract. It's coming up. It's coming up in June, uh, uh, end of July. They're getting what they get. Deadlines. Right? That's all I'm going to say. All right. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Hey, <laughs> for your, uh, for, for the, for the, um, Mount Rushmore for uh, wrestlers, I will absolutely agree with you. San Martino, superstar Billy Graham, guys like that belong on there. No questions asked, okay? Because yep. their their um, contributions are felt generations later. However, I can't really speak to that because I didn't watch them grow, grow up watching them. Okay, okay? yeah. But I understand. I understand that superstar Billy Graham, Hulk Hogan basically cribbed his whole act. Okay, so so I understand right. that mm. Hogan he's off of the mount because he's a buster. Okay, here's my list: Andre the Giant. Gotta Rick be there. Flair. Gotta be there. Macho man Randy Savage. And this is the fourth spot's kind of flippy. I want to put Mr. Perfect up there because absolutely he was a super gifted technical wrestler, okay? Yes, he was. But if not Mr. Perfect if, if if not Mr. Perfect, that would either be a revolving door to either put Brett Hitman Hart in there, or the one I actually believe deserves to be up there, no matter what, is Bobby Heenan. Oh, the brain. Bobby Heenan is the all time the brain greatest manager ever. Absolutely. Absolutely, Bobby the Brain Heenan is unbelievable. Dude, he, he was is so, so funny, funny he was man. Funny. Two, two, two more things. Two yeah. more things. Three more things. Real quick. Seven. Shout out to the homies on the YouTube chat. Y'all yeah. know who you are. Second, goo. Don't disrespect wrestling, bro. One of these days, I'm going to take you to a lucha show, and you're going to love it. Okay? Hey, you I'm about to watch time, the dude. dark side of the ring. I'm back on wrestling. I'm about to watch that. That's not the same. That's not the same. Uh-oh. Dark side of the ring is actually the the, the, the tragedy behind all the glitz right. and the glam. Goo, you got to watch it. You got to enjoy the good stuff. Okay? okay, I'm going to take you to a show one of these days, and you're gonna you're gonna have a good time despite yourself. And Let's finally, go. Shout out to the most electrifying move in all of sports radio. The Simon's wet blanket. Shout out Uncle Looney. Thanks, fellas. Peace. Nah, he's on the chat. Boy, the, they, they Uncle dubbed Lo- you the wet blanket. No, it, the it's not. The big ticket and the wet blanket. As usual. <laughs> Guru needs, I guess I'm Andy Rooney. Isn't that the guy who says, Dude, and that's, no, it's a Paul Harvey. And that's the rest of the story. You got half of it. Congrats. All right. Uncle Looney said, "My if I were a wrestler, my signature move would be the wet blanket. Oh, okay. So it's even better. So it's with not that your contact. personality. And I took no, it is, but it's a wrestling move. Yeah. We'd have to come up with actually what it is. Yeah. And what I told Looney was, I thought that was a five, but I'm only giving him a four because I'm down on Uncle Looney right what, now. Uncle Looney keeps it real now. That's not always the best thing to do. <laughs> it's not it is. No, it's not. For longevity. You ever see is. Dave Chappelle's when keeping it real goes wrong? I'll give you a two Thank for you. even knowing that. Thank you. I'll tell you one guy that we haven't mentioned in wrestling, and listen, I I tend to go old school with wrestling, but there's a crossover period where I still watched it a little, but I just wasn't as into it. Jimmy Snoo- Jimmy uh Superfly Snooka was an absolute acrobat. Jimmy's, in the squared circle. He got to be a brother. Superfly. He was like from, like a, he was, might have been like from Fiji or something. Correct, or? from Fiji. <laughs> Superfly. <laughs> I mean, did you ever thank somebody for your partner? Did you, have you ever done that? Oh, I've done some other things. Okay. My partner. Oh, that's a good one. What would Steiny and Guru's tag team name be in wrestling? Ooh. Uh, I see Pete Alfonso. I don't see Javi, though. Godless. Yeah. Where are uh, the ladies at? We had the ladies okay. all week. Well, let's see if this is a lady. Kay in San Francisco. Hey, hey Kay. How you doing? Pretty good. Uh, ah, going I by you. Going What's up, buddy? We love you. Going by a wrestler uh, trivia, sure. how many times did Bruno uh, kind of defend his title? Uh-oh. You guys this think? for Stein. I think like three. What? Three? Oh, oh, defend his... I thought you meant win a title, uh, lose a title, win a title, lose a title. Uh, oh, boy, he was a champ for... Boy. He yeah, was, the, he, number, the number will scare you. Yeah, we're well, waiting on Stiney. Right, give it to me. At the end of his longest reign, he defended his title 409 times. 
That's, now that, who would have had the overall That is that? better than Charlie Sheen winning. 409. That's Bruno San Martino winning. Yeah. Anything else, Kay? Th- that is true. So you guys can look it up. No, no I believe, no, we I believe you. Yeah, Good I, knowledge. Yeah, I believe it. I couldn't believe Stan hey, who beat, know it. And then uh, who ended up beating him? Was it Andre? I think Andre beat him once. Oh, he didn't. I think Andre might have beat San Martino. Andre was my dude, man. I, th- he, I want to say Andre held the Superstar title. Superstar Billy Graham. That's right. That's right. And he was he was a great heel. Superstar Billy Graham. Look Out of the, where? Where was he from? Texas. I got a computer the in front south? Of me. He fought. I want to say in the South. Billy Graham. Phoenix is okay. where he was from. Wow. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about muscles on top of muscles. Now, allegedly, he may have done some oh, steroids. Jose Canseco. Actually, he's a guy who has come clean and... Said he was on him. Oh, God. Nothing. If all you those tell guys, him to do it, do it. All those guys tell stories that are pretty scary. So you got actors that can go get hair to pay enhancements of the body and get a role. I, if athletes want to juice, juice. Even in professional sports? Yeah. That, yeah. Would you have a problem with it? Like Sosa McGuire, when I thought about it, bombs, I was all right. Still got to go hit. Yeah, but they're hitting it 800 feet. No, I don't. Yeah, but the hardest part is the hand eye coordination. Stop, talk to me. Which they said some uh, steroids improved that. So that wouldn't be fair. Allegedly. Yeah. Well, just tell, I mean. Could yeah. you hit baseball? Little, no, I, you know. Table set. It's a, a table set. I so you'd <laughs> single. I'm trying to picture you at the <laughs> play. No speed. <laughs> You're built for money ball. Get on base, right? Yeah, no, I had no speed. I, I was like the Giants. So what would you put yourself in the order? I'm back I was like third or first fourth. or second. I was like huh? second. It's second a lot. Well, you had to have some speed then. Yeah, I didn't. We had a slow. Maybe team, more like seventh or eighth. Tiny, okay. nothing wrong with it. You know, we played. Uh, we played small ball. You Put know, a run over. Chris Matarazzo would get on. I'd bunt him over. Hopefully, Rick, <laughs> hopefully Rick oh, Slayman man, could drive him home. Me, man. Uh, Jackson Pacifica. What's up, Jack? How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Jackie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing great. Dynamite. Uh, hey, uh, can I interest you in a Kenny Omega? Now, who's he? That one doesn't ring a he, bell. Uh, he's a new wrestler. He he uh, founded AEW with the Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes before Cody Rhodes jumped back to WWE. He's got the most uh, five-star matches on the Meltzer rating. He's broken the Meltzer rating before. He's got six-star matches. Oh, wow. He's got Jeez. the highest-rated uh, singles and tag team match, and he used to be the leader of the Bullet Club. Hey, you know who I don't like, Jack? In fact, I can't uh, stand him. The Tribal Chief, Roman uh, Reigns. Yeah, yeah, he grew what, up a, years. what a horse is behind. But that means he, he's He great. only defended 31 times in four years. Who, uh, the tribal chief? Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah. And th- is he your yeah. greatest wrestler That's of all like- time? Who's your favorite of all time to you? Oh, Sting. Sting. I hadn't yeah. even heard that. He just retired recently, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he's Yeah, new. the Stinger Splash, the Scorpion Death Drop, the Scorpion Death Lock, all sure. of it. What's your favorite wrestling yeah. move? Ooh, probably Kenny Omega's finisher, the one winged angel. Gotcha. You know what? I'll tell you what. The, one of the moves. It, and we start. We used to always try the moves. Yeah. Oh, you have to, dude. They work if you can give you the the Boston Crab, but yep. not in the street oh, fight. Oh my no, god, sorry. you'll break a guy's back. Yep. <laughs> Sharpshooter. Oh my god, the Boston Crab. Don't. I'll try this at home, kids. <laughs> oh, I was always boy. the one hanging out with my older brothers, so they would try the moves on oh, me because I wanted to play and hang out with my big brothers. Right. I'd get choke slammed left and right. So there you go. <laughs> um. I tell you, I'm uh, flying out of San Francisco Bay, Oakland International Airport in a couple weeks. Oakland Airport. Yes, sir. I'll never call it that. You know what I think I'm going to do? It is a little bit long. I think I'm going to go SF Bay. I'm flying out of the SF Bay, Oakland International Airport. So your hip's feeling good if you're making this trip. To go golf and get on the plane, go up. Yeah. You're back. I'd, you're I back, went, back. Back, 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 so Berman. Since, back, back, back. Since my surgery, I went to Vegas on a fl- flight with you and then i flew back east for my dad's funeral which 
is a cross country flight. Yeah, but last flight, week you so said you wasn't pain, but you like. I was back about six no, weeks you did ago. Come back early. You like Brock Lesnar? Brock, he's yeah. kind of a persona non grata at the moment. We're missing Under one. Why I like him? We're missing yeah, one big guy. He's like the Rock. Mia loves him. I forget his name. Blonde hair dude. Me. He, he's uh, in the movies still right now. What's my guy's name? Come on, say it again. Say blonde, John. Big, you think of John Cena? John, there he is. Blonde, Pretty good guy. actor. Yeah. yeah, I like Cena. Pete's in Oakland. What's up, Pete? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I got some old school stuff for you, Matt. Thank you. Very old school. We're talking early 60s. Let's now, go. I know you guys already Antonina talked about Bruno Rocca. San Martino. Yeah. Yeah, you already talked about Bruno San Martino. Yes, we did. He's my, he's my number he's four. He's uh, <laughs> Now, Matt, Matt, I have a question. Did Bruno San Martino have the figure four? That was somebody Yeah, yeah no, that they, was. I think that was Bruno. The, the, figure four the, leg the lock. Holds. Yeah, he would you know, that twist one, that, that thing like a corkscrew. Right. Right, that was one of the greatest things about that old wrestling was everybody had their own trademark submission hold, and I love that. Now, now my, my number three up there, to sleeper, Hans the Great Mortier. I'm just wondering yeah. if anybody remembers this guy. That one I don't. He, he wore a mask, kind of like a precursor to a Mexican wrestling mask, and I think the dude was from Belgium. Huh. He was about 6'6", six, six, big dude, dressed in black. Hans the Great Mortier. He was hilarious. Okay. And my number two on Rushmore is the legendary Bobo Brazil. Oh, Bobo. Bobo Brazil! <laughs> Do you remember him, Guru? No, I just love the name. I'll tell you what, he was very, he had some athleticism, Bobo. He did. He was, you know, he kind of resembled uh, that character from the movie Major League. You know, the guy with the homers and struck out a lot. Serrano. Yeah. Serrano. He kind of <laughs> resembled Serrano, but Bobo Brazil... He had a wonderful submission hold. It was the cocoa butt. He'd hit you really hard in the head with his head. It's like the classic headbutt move, man. When he when he whipped you with that cocoa butt, you were down for the count, I'm telling you, man. But the guy that I put on the very apogee, the top of Mount Rushmore, has got to be my all-time guy. He was the big daddy of them all. He tipped him at about 620 at his peak, 620 gotta pounds. Be Jesus. And, of course, it was the stacks. You got it, Matt. I mean... Yeah. Man, you know, you do not want anybody to sit on you, especially his ex Calhoun. No. But his his submission hold was he would sit on you. He would just sit on and you. And it would be all over. You night, know, night. Dude, what's that? <laughs> That's what and, and here's the thing that most Warrior fans don't know about Haystack, Cal Hay Haystack Calhoun. He would sit on you. That would be the submission. And he was the original with the night, night. Oh, right. Actually, he wasn't, but somebody did it before Curry. The chef. Don't know who it is? Yep. Uh, so it's wrestling popular now than it's ever been, or I think so. in that era? I, I think so. Was, all right. Well, I mean, it's, there's definitely more people to watch because it's on more mainstream television now. God, I feel like the attitude, the attitude era in the early 2000s, it peaked pretty hard with like the Macho Man Randy Savage and those guys. No, more with The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, okay. Triple H, Undertaker. Man. I feel like that was one kind of a peak. But then again, that's my heyday, so maybe I'm just saying that. Gotcha. Uh 888-957-9570 talking about the Warriors, talking about Bruno San Martino. We'll bring it all together right here on 957 yeah. the game and we're still looking for Javi, the Kings fan. Miss I you know what? I'm going to call him Mr. Javier. Because he always addresses us, Mr. Steinmetz and Mr. Johnson. He is respectful. I He's like very him. respectful. Yeah. And I'd love to have a respectful conversation with him. i got to read uh, the text on the other side, too. So okay. I send me a text. A personal text? Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll read it. Okay. Guru's okay. got a personal text to read yep. on the other side. Kind of bother me. Uh, we'll also get into tonight's game against the Pelicans. How important is it for each team? That segment brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. When people have a craving to explore new and traditional Asian cuisines, they head to P.F. Chang's, where scratch-made dishes come from the 2000...
on 95.7 The Game. No, Goo, it's simple. It's stay out of my effing business. No, no doubt. I Our. Mean. Yeah. Effing business. Everything's rolling oh, right are now. are we on? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Steiny Guru, 95.7 yeah. The Game. We're having fun today. Warriors, they won in Portland 192. They didn't cover Goo. Uh, I didn't mess with it, but mm. you're right. They didn't. didn't. You? Oh. Ah. And then the night before, Hate it was 12 and a half against, uh, Utah. I messed with it. When they played Utah, it was 12 and a half. Utah covered. They lost by 12. I messed with yesterday's Warrior game. Ah, oh, man. That's why you're mad at Kaminga. I had Portland. Oh, boy. They were getting 13. <laughs> you did not tell. You I did took say Portland. it. They were, take, they were getting 13 points, and the Warriors were missing three of their top yeah, seven rotation Now, that's guys. a fact. Now, I... I still even thought they won should the blow bet, them out. Yeah. Even though I won the bet, I did fail to realize how much Portland does, in fact, stink. They, they if stink. If you're in the NBA, you got to be able to yeah. shoot, damn it. Not necessarily. And what's my guy uh, with the goggles? Boots Henderson? No, yeah, with Boots Henderson. It's not he missed me. Scoot, Scoot I know it. Anyway. Hey, let's get, you know what? Uh, we got Jeremy in North Oakland. No Javi yet, huh? No, no Javi yeah. yet. And and Javi, yet. I've, Maybe by uh, lunchtime. Javi, I, I do need to say this because we're looking, we, we, got we want Javier and, Va- yeah. and Vacaville to call in. Um, it's good natured, Javi. <laughs> I don't need to start no beef. We're having fun here. Yeah. I heard about, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I heard Javi may have had some issues with a morning show that were less. Yeah. yeah. He may games. he may or may not be on a list. Okay, I've you're, been banned as a caller. Javi, you're I know still like. you're still on our good side. We're having yep. fun. Have uh, you ever threatened the producers though, Guru? Dude, I could. I, we'll talk to him. We'll make him apologize. Uh, Jeremy's in North Oakland, the town. What's up, Jeremy? How you doing? Uh, what's up, uh, guys? I love the show. I listen every day. Uh, right. I got a non-sports related topic that you guys brought up. Yeah, uh, perfect. Show. I don't like this name change at all. Like it, it's just going to confuse people and frustrate people. Um, I live in Alameda, and I exclusively fly out of SFO. I'll take the the train ride all the way over there. It takes forty five minutes to get there. There's more flight options, more airlines, more amenities. It, it's just, it's frankly just a better airport if we're being honest. Like I, I honestly want to be there at the gate when they land the plane and the flight is say, Oh, welcome to Oakland. We just landed. And it's wow. like, wait a minute, we're supposed to be in San Francisco. Like, no, you're, oh. not, you're in Oakland. I really want to be there because they're going to ask the, the flight attendant, like, like, so I don't get it. That, that's my point. I just, it's, it's, it's just stupid name change. We got enough problems here in the Bay. Let's yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Let's work it. on the crime. Get turned that around and leave the damn names alone. Steiny is bigger than just. It's really going to be tough for to the, the town, man. Oakland Aviation Committee to address crime in North Oakland. Do you know when this starts? It started here. Is already. I told you I'm flying out of San Francisco oh Bay, Oakland International I, Airport. Oh. Well, you know what's you know what we're talking the about. They've changed the name. Hey, why don't you? Co- we're an hour and, and a half into the show. Yeah. We've gotten texts about you guys are talking about wrestling and the Warriors have the biggest game. So why don't you tell people you came in today and said, "Hey, Steiny, why don't we talk about this?" I and said, I this said being, "You know what? Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, let's throw that one out there. I think that's good." So go yeah, ahead. It was. Th- this is the most important Warrior game of the season. I mean, there were times to me I thought they. That's not it. Like you're not, we we're, There's no debate here. It's the, I'll get, it's the biggest game of the year. It was the other th- topic. But that came out of my mouth. Tell the people, right? But okay. this was this was maybe a better topic. Oh, if you were Steve Kerr, who Thank do you, you trust? Who do you trust the most? I I feel like we already have those answers. But I guess Donnie, the 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 rat on the table brought to you by Atco, and don't forget this text I'm going to read. I got yeah. um is who. Who concerns you the most going into the playoffs? And I think we kind of discussed him right now just because of his injury and his play last night. And that can all evaporate tonight. But, Stani, that is a big deal if this team is going to go on what we deem a run. Jonathan I mean, Kaminga's injury kind of threw him off, too. The thing, I think it's a fair question because I think there's going to be three issues. Not issues, but three instances where that question is going to be a- answered. Who do you, if you're Steve Kerr, who do you trust in terms of this team and this rotation? And I think, I think, to me, the choices are like, who do you trust, Gary Payton II or Moody? 
I think he's going with Gary Payton the second. I think Gary, and that's and what that's he the right one to me too. What, uh, would I think, you say the same? So yeah, I okay. mean Payton's ahead right no now. Doubt. Moody in the rotation. Got you. I think the other one that that the two other ones that we're going to find out about are obviously Kaminga and Wiggins. I think maybe he may have to make a choice with one or the other there, and then we find out who he trusts more. And I think the answer is Wiggins. But then there's a third one that oh. And, it might, and I get it. Trace Jackson Davis is going to start. But is there any circumstance in which he leans toward Looney? No doubt. Once the playoffs start, we get into big games. They're playing Draymond at five more. And he looks down the bench and sees Looney and Trace Jackson Davis. And he just goes, hey, Looney. I don't know. Well, and, the, and the, I'm not going to make this about me or victory lap in that. Stani, Kavon Looney has three rings. He's he's done a lot. What would be your victory lap? That I said Looney is not done when everybody was like, oh, he can't play or whatever. And Steve Kerr, to his credit, has said, you know, even a couple of weeks ago, Looney's not playing, but right. that doesn't mean he won't be an option come go time. Well, he you are about like he, to face some big. He'll be an option, but he'll be the third option. Well, okay. And so if, but if everything JD were to get in two fine, yeah. quick fouls, yes. which, you know. Then he'll play four oh, minutes. No doubt. But, but, but if. Unless there's a monkey wrench thrown in. Well, do you in, trust Kevon Looney? I do. With everything I have. The question is, have. do you trust him more than Trace Jackson Davis? That's the question. It's We all trust Looney. The question is, if you start Trace Jackson Davis, and then Draymond plays five when Trace Jackson Davis goes off the floor, is there a time with eight minutes to go in the game, you realize, you know what, We for whatever reason, we can't play Draymond at five right now. Maybe Jokic is in the game or somebody like that. Do you think that he might lean on Looney I'm a in a high yes leverage that. situation? I'm say yes to that. Because he seemed, I, listen, when I went to the Bulls game, after they beat the Bucks, I asked Steve Kerr about Looney. And he said, and I said, you, I know, you, said, Looney, you said Looney wasn't going to play much, but he played, you know, he played last night or right. he played tonight. And he said, that's because Trace Jackson Davis got into early foul trouble and he wanted. He knew that he was going to need a player for six minutes, and that's why he went to Looney off the bench. But ordinarily, if that doesn't happen, Looney's not going to get. If under normal circumstances, Looney will not get in the game unless Trace Jackson Davis is not effective or, foul or in trouble. foul trouble. Yeah. So like he's kind of like the only reason he played last night was because Draymond didn't play. So the question is. You think he would rely on Looney in in high leverage situations? Well, like what, that's yeah. There's I a mean, part of it that says Stani he has no choice, but I'm I'm totally with you. No, like I mean if you get in that foul trouble, Looney's got to go out there. And no, but there's I'm saying, what if there's no foul trouble? I still think we see some of Looney. Equal. Stani, I, okay, I really what about think. you got seven minutes left in a game, and you're in game two against any team? Okay. Pick a team in the playoffs. D Denver. All I'm wondering about is. When Steve Kerr looks down the bench and says, okay, I got a choice between Looney and Trace Jackson Davis, will the pull of the past kind of man. make him go to Looney in, in a really high leverage situation? I, I got I'm I'm being so real with you, partner. I gotta believe yes. Yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't like that, though. I, I wouldn't, because I think I think this I think this season has taken on a bigger picture. And if you do find your way into a seven-game series, then I got to have Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis getting as much experience yeah. in that series as possible. And they both have earned that. And I just want to stop there with Trace Jackson Davis, Donnie, because I'm ready to tell the world, I believe one of the biggest differences in this Warrior team and my confidence level, he had four last night. I don't remember a guy, I don't want to call it stefferless or effortless, but it's just a part of his game, the ability to block shots. And when Looney's down there, it's like he has C-men in his shoes and, and getting up ain't his thing. So if there's another big or guard coming in there, they were they were either going to miss the shot, but the shot was going to get off. Now all of a sudden, Stani, it's not every time I'm watching a Warrior game where I feel like it's JaVale McGee or Bogan on a good day. There's rim protection. And... I, I I don't think J Jackson Davis is getting his just due for his ability to block shots. What about his ability to guard your favorite player, DeAndre Ayton, who had 
How many you have last night? Twenty five. Yeah, twenty seven. I believe. Oh boy. Yeah, and no, I, and I'm not. See, you're taking it somewhere else. I'm. I'm just saying. When I see guards flying through there, oh, it's the Warriors blue jersey. I'm gonna score if I'm a guard. Ah, now all of a sudden it's like get it out of here, and that just does wonders. And last night again, another ho hum night for TJD, but four blocks, Donnie. Yeah. So we didn't get that from Looney. Is all that I'm saying. I, I will say this about last night's game. Give it to him. That game. I it's hated the farthest it. Farthest thing from a playoff game no that you'll about. ever see in no. your entire life. You think the Warriors were flat? You think, you think they like? And I get it. They didn't play three guys, yeah. but I still think you they think were Kaminga flat. can play that way in a postseason. If he oh, plays no, that way in the postseason, no. he that, would like he would have gotten yanked I, I got, in a playoff game last night. Yeah, I, there's Curl no doubt made about an it. effort to give him those minutes. He got 34, but you are right. Mona's Early on, it was off. It was off. Mona is in uh, Pacifica. What's hey. up, Mona? How you doing? Hey guys, how are you? All right. Good. I, I listened to people talk about um, the, you know, some of the wrestlers. Yeah. And the ones that I didn't hear, uh, yeah. which one, my favorite, was Junkyard Dog. Nice. That's Roddy my Roddy favorite. I said you missed it. Junkyard Dog was my favorite. Did I miss it? Yeah. Okay. Those are, those are my two favorites. I just wanted to chime in. And Goo, I'm with you. Changing the name to the Oakland Airport to San Francisco is stupid. Oh, man. If they want to do anything, change it to Oakland A's. Give the Oakland folks something to reminisce yeah, about. I'm, I'm with you. It's just, and you know what? I, great call. Stiney, I think of, I'm not a politician, you, wait, what but I'm being. the Oakland? Yeah, she said A's or, you know, because Oakland Airport. Oh, yeah, the but, Oakland A? You, what about the people around the world? Well, that's why they're uh, doing Oakland's it. Oakland's forgotten I'm now. Just tell, listen, now you're gonna. I'm going to. What's the name? I get Oakland, San Francisco. I get. I get. You want to rant and rave? No, I'm serious. I'm tired I'm, of Oakland losing. Right. It's not necessarily losing. Like I, I Oakland agree. Airport okay. to whatever this cockamamie. Why do we got to add Sanford? Why do you have I, to add San Francisco into you. something that's Oakland and it's been Oakland forever? And Oakland's losing in and out. It's losing Hayes. It's losing the Warriors and everything. And you got to take the airport. How about not kick us when we're down? I was born in the town. This is just, it's a tragedy. And I got friends that are Lars Shorman that, that hate this name change. When is it going to stop? Their rationale, whether you agree with it or not, and you clearly don't, and I actually don't laugh at me. I, I actually don't think I it, care, man. I, I think it's kind of dumb, also. Okay, right, but they gave reasons why. Now you can the the re everything you're arguing against is their reason why they're doing it. What they're saying is that if you're an international airport and you're in Oakland, they have a, a plethora of travelers that don't understand that Oakland is a Did you buy that? I'm, just, I'm sorry, Stanley. Go ahead. People in America don't. Hunter Renfro, when it's, he was drafted to the Oakland Raiders, uh, didn't know where Oakland, uh, California uh, was. I'm, uh, okay. So Stanley, the, reason, I'm the reason they're doing it is because there are a lot of travelers that want to come to San Francisco, and they have no idea that Oakland is an airport 10 miles away that they could fly into as an option. So they, they're thinking, not me, their thought process is <laughs> if we call it the San Francisco Stop. Bay Oakland International uh, Airport, Stop it. There will, they will be able to corral more people who realize, oh, we have another option to get to San Francisco. Right. It's in Oakland, 10 miles away. So they're actually, they say, they think yeah. they are clearing up some confusion because people have no idea that Oakland is a viable option to fly into San Francisco. And then secondly, gotcha. in another effort to clear up confusion, they say that there's been some confusion between Oakland, California, and I guess it's Auckland, New Zealand. And this will... Help alleviate that yeah. confusion. And SFO is salty because they think that with this name change, Oakland's going to get a lot more visitors, a lot more tickets bought, all that sort of stuff. Right. right? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And that, yeah. It just. So, like, hey, they I hear thought you. it out. Yeah. All, they just but, may have thought it out right. in a way and, and that and you Oakland didn't Airport has agree. Been the Oakland oh, Airport what? forever. And what Spadoni just said is probably why. They change names of stadiums all the time. Yeah. yeah. 
I again, I, I'm not I'm not the big ticket. I'm not the big clientele. But Stani, this thing, the Oakland Airport has been the same name since I was born before I was here. You and I'm still, just saying, you can still all of a sudden that. now, if you want to do the analytics, this is Oakland or whoever's running the Oakland Airport. They want San Francisco a part of their their branding. And what Spadoni just said is to me 100% behind this. But as far as the regular man and woman, I've never had a person or person say the confusion was with Oakland and d- d- lounge, whatever, man. It's just... Uh, Oakland's losing again. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I don't know. They're not losing if they double their if they double their passenger yeah, sales. But you're losing the soul. At, at what cost? I don't think anyone in the future is going to be calling it the San Francisco Airport, though. Go okay. like if that matters right. to you, like they're going to be still calling it the Oakland okay. Airport. All right, I, they're I, not going to. I'm not saying I'm flying now. into you know San what? Francisco. I feel better. Are you really now. that upset? About no, me? I really am. I, no, I get it. No, I get where you're no, coming from. Though, take Gil. a ride through the town, Stani. It, it's I live bigger there. than just the I live airport. In yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying it's and a get, lot of I stuff. Get the difference. And I hate this. What is, like, what does that have to do with anything? Well, I don't get all it. these all these businesses are leaving. And but what does that have to do with changing the name of an airport? No, it, it was just something that was that belonged to Oakland and the residents, and now you're changing it and you're throwing in San Francisco in it. When you can give me the analytics, but miss me. It's like you're trying to distance yourself from Oakland. Yeah, the airport's still there, but now you want to name it. I, hey, Stani, I could go on an hour f- for this, man. I know you could be like, come on, man. But just every time you look up, something or some entity is leaving the city of Oakland, except the crime. You don't like capitalism, do you? This is, well, yeah, a, this is an before. entity that is trying to grow its business and thinks this is a way to grow its business. Hey, uh... <laughs> I'm afraid. To, I had a couple things on my list that were kind of a little, you know, yeah, I don't want to say do controversial. It. No, I'm afraid now. Well, a lot of I mean, people agree hot. with me. No. Oh, I know. There's. Yeah. Oh, I think more people agree with you than don't. Perhaps not as adamantly. But if you think that was a something worth, I I don't even want to bring up the other one. And I maybe I should. <laughs> no, Loveman. Hey, Loveman, how long are you working today? How? Because this one you need to be in on. About another ten minutes. Oh I'm boy, we got to sit, give, oh, give it to him. Are you now. going somewhere? Or are you just going to take a nap? Dude's Usually up and, when people say jetting out of here, they're taking a little vacation, maybe to. I mean, a nap is like a so vacation. jetting to your apartment. Yeah, gotcha. like a one hour long vacation. Give it to him quick. We've got an issue, and I'll, let me see if Loveman's up on the Giants. What are you guys a podcast? Garlic fries and guys. What do you think about baseball guys? What do you think? What's, <laughs> what do you think, think about what's going on? Love you, Joe. With the Giants and their mascot. Oh, with the uh, the new Lucille they got Thank going on. Thank you. There? Yeah, a new Loveman would know. I, I'm not sure why this new Lucille is <laughs> roaming around here. Um, yeah. The the word on the street is that. Uh, the current Lucille will be staying around, though, so yeah. he's not going anywhere. So he got the uh, the vote of confidence there. We all know how well the vote of confidence goes over the these story days. Too, so, um, yeah, as far as I, I do not know of any plans to uh, have a switch of the Lucille, though. But right. if I hear any whispers of it, I will. Uh, I'll let you guys know. Oh, I, and I got the uh, I got the whole lowdown on it. Oh, well, through okay. that story, show me. So okay. Lucille, the Giants mascot, because you only can have one. Been around, well, been around for a while. <laughs> apparently, over the weekend. There's a costumed Lucille in a costume. Okay. I'm familiar. But now they've got the inflatable Lucille. It's a blow up doll. It okay. is essentially, and you've seen these mascots too. It's this big blow up doll where somebody's inside it and they can make this thing do crazy stuff like oh. stand on its head. And so over the weekend, they unveiled uh, the, uh, what do they call it? The inflatable Lucille. So you can't see the inflatable Lucille and the real Lucille at the same time. So they're using the inflatable Lucille periodically as opposed to the costumed Lucille. 888-957-9570. I like that. Are we doing Lucille, the costumed Lucille, wrong? Are we doing? Oh, I... Well, if you have a the giant. Giants have Lucille. Bro, we got to know Lucille. But now they, they want to go and change it. Yeah, no, just like the on. name of the Oakland no, Airport. They didn't change Lucille to to um but it's Lindsay. Not, but it's, it's not the, the same. same name. Yeah, but it's, it's the same brand. It's, it's just a different, a different ca- version. It's a different character. Yeah, but entirely. still, everybody gets a little run, 
and is still called, at so, the end of the day, Lucille. Okay, I'm just telling you. They're limiting Lucille's well, minutes. I'll give you that. I'll give they're, that they're basically saying to the original Lucille, the costume Lucille, you are now our Kavon Looney. I, 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 We're hey. going to use you in three-minute stretches when the game's out I, of line. I'll give you that. Okay. Yeah, but that is totally different than no, I changing don't think so. the name. I don't. So when we have the inflatable Lucille yeah. out at Oracle I'm Park, excited. that means... We will not have the costume, Lucille, in the stands playing with the kids. You're okay with that. And I because think the, the original inflatable, Lucille is okay with the that. The inflatable can't really go in the stands oh, okay. right. and do stuff. Well, that's why it's you get big. double duty. No, seriously. Stand there is no double it. duty. Yeah, you get the Yeah, you won't get that okay. interaction with the kids when the blow up. Imagine taking little Daryl to a Giants I, game totally when he was it. nine years old. And I have. And you go out and you say they got one of the best mascots going, Lucille in a costume. Yeah, gotcha. You get out there and there's no Lucille. It's an inflatable doll. But then I would educate little D mm. that we got two options. You I, might get the inflatable, or you might get the original. KFC, I just the original. have no idea what's going to get this guy going. No, right. <laughs> I'm now, see that that would no, be worth a real. rant to I, me. I, I, no, sir, I'm I'm okay, and I understand that. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero. Who do you think Steve Kerr is going to trust most going into the playoffs? When it comes to Trace Jackson Davis, when it comes to Looney, what about Peyton the second and Moody? What about Kaminga and Wiggins? And then how much? And I guess we could even go a fourth one with Pajemski and Chris Paul. Yeah. Do you think he'll start to lean toward the veterans as the games get more important? Uh, let's go to uh, Sean's at Hayward. What's up, Sean? How you doing, man? Hey, how's it going this morning, guys? Going well. Hey, hey. just wanted good, good. Just wanted to chime in a little bit about the whole uh, wrestling thing. Oh, sure. uh, so I was a bit, so I was a big fan of the Road Warriors back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were they they were tough. Uh, Hawk and Animal with uh, uh, who's uh, uh, their manager was Precious Paul Ellerou. Oh, yeah, yeah. The road, but the Road Warriors. It, it was like nobody could stop them, you know. And this was that was, that was back when I was in junior high. And uh, oh, those were the days. Like, when, oh yeah, and I heard you talking also about like how popular it is now. If you go back. Before the mid '80s, a lot of wrestling was 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 regional, and when yes. Vince McMahon came along, he started buying up all those regional yep. uh, wrestling organizations, and so he was like the first one to really go big time national. No doubt, no doubt. Good knowledge, Sean. Appreciate it. Yeah, some wrestlers would only fight out of the South. Some wrestlers would only wrestle out of like the Southwest in Texas. We had our Northeast region. So like they couldn't. We had Chief J Strongbow and Spiros Arion, but they wouldn't. They How much wouldn't do you wrestle. think they were making? Not a lot. They had to keep another job. I mean, no, no, no. It was their job, but their job. They fought three hundred and thirty days a year. Yeah, Dude like they'd be in Hamburg, then they go to four hundred six times. Yeah. He defended his title. All right, eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. Warriors Pelicans tonight. Uh, Guru's calling it the biggest game of the year. It's hard to argue with him. If the Warriors win tonight. They got a shot at eight in the play-in, which could theoretically get him to seven in the actual tournament. 888-957-9570 is the number. We got the play-in around the corner. Who do you think Steve Kerr is trusting most on this team right now? And who do you think he may be wavering on as we head into the postseason? When push comes to shove, who's he going with? Which player over which player? It is a Warriors game day presented by Xfinity. At home or on the go, you'll get the fastest internet to all your devices. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Good afternoon. Whatever you do, don't repeat Steiny and Guru. You don't need to do that. A real host wouldn't do that. Woo! You got anything you want to get in? Yeah. So earlier I asked you, did you uh, play baseball? Where would you put yourself or where did they put you in the order? Yeah. And you see me throw a bowling ball and you know I'm pretty strong. And, uh, you know, I'm a third, fourth place hitter. So my little brother, like my little brother, Stoney, my boy Phil Squirt, Pete Stark, sends me a text trying to steal my thunder and says, you're more like the fifth or sixth hole. That's, like I'm going to go yourself? third or fourth. That's still the strong. Six. I see his <laughs> But he said it with the intent to knock me off my horse. I know what I am. I'm starting your boy. I'm Steve Balboni at the plate. Yeah, he hit six. <laughs> but when he hit it, it went far. Yeah. Yeah. Why they always send put him down in the order because he, he didn't hit for average? To change their mood is the greater point. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't, don't write anything. You ever get a text? I'll to- see you later. Oh, I'll see you later. <laughs> well, yeah. No, it's everything's going fine. So don't everything's you. great. No, yeah. Everything's great. You're a cleanup hitter. Kaminga's going to be uh, eleven time All Star. Steph's the greatest <laughs> player of all time. He's got Clay's four getting rings. forty <laughs> in the off season. Uh, what uh, else? Yeah, uh, Wiggins, Wiggins is going to reemerge for the rest of his career. No, I mean it's great. And the Oakland Airport will remain the same name. Yeah, everything's great. Uh, who do you think Steve Steve Kerr's trusting? As we head into the playoffs, because I'm going put the guy from Santa Clara, Stoney. Yeah. Odds, he's earned it, and that plus minus thing. I know we got into it a little bit yesterday. Is real, uh, and I just don't know what about that game again without Clay and Dre, where he was like baby Draymond in regard to he just has a mechanism, Stoney, to where the caller alluded to it earlier when the shot clock's going down. I won't even call it panic. But it's a pedigree to know I can keep my dribble, and if I stop, I can wait for Stani or Spadoni to cut at the last possible second, and we get a basket. And he did that to TJD a couple times. Kaminga, dude's smart. He's got some Chris Paul in him. How about that? Let's see if uh, it. Let's see how right, it. I got you. Let's see how that works. And that in the playoffs. If that, if they that make adds the playoffs. to the excitement of the of the play in. You're right. Uh, let's go out to Paula. Paula's in San Francisco. Hey. Hey, Paula. Hey. 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 Um, so I, I just wanted to give um, you a little bit of sympathy. Uh, the reason is... Um, me or, me or Daryl? As far as the Warriors do. What? Who, who, who are you giving the sympathy to? Uh, Guru? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I just... Yeah. The reason is... Um, you know, this is what happened to Pleasant Hill, California. Um, you know, they took away the Dome Theater. They took away the historic places. And actually, Pleasant Hill is going down because of it. And, mm. I mean, I understand the reasons why they want to change the airport to that name. But um, also, Oakland lost the Warriors, and they have been with me. And so, you know, a lot of times I don't agree with you, but I think he does need some sympathy. And his town probably doesn't want to go down. Yeah. I Thank you so much. Appreciate it, uh, Paula. Sometimes, you know, she, she yeah, sometimes I, she you know, sometimes I, I, I guess I come down too hard. You know, no, right. no, no, you're right. You, she's right. right. Oakland means a she's lot right. to you, I mean, And I know it's your home. <laughs> I just, well. Yeah. And there, I got some info. Uh, SFO looks like they're going to be suing. Uh, Oakland Airport, if they get that name for no. a name infringement, yeah. yeah, you hate to see it. Yeah. I hope they no, win. really you do. You hate to see uh, cities at odds. Yeah, uh, olive oil in olive oil, Matt. Oh wow, in Napa. Oh man, do I have a question for him? He wants to talk about the Warriors and a couple wrestlers. Perfect. Hey guys, um, thanks for taking my call. First time caller. I appreciate all you guys on the game because I used to listen at other station and to until 2016 nice. when it got too political and yeah. you never they never listened to the fans by the That's way who are you I voting for you this year I'm um, kidding. That, that I'm was kidding. A go ahead I, I, go ahead I there four. you go that's but, a four but anyway my four four wrestlers you guys haven't mentioned i used to watch it back on channel 40 in the early 70s coffee a saturday nights at five was ray stevens 
Pat Patterson, Rocky Johnson, and the great Mr. Saito. I remember him. Oh, wow. And with the announcer, Hank Renner. (laughs) I don't remember Hank Renner. Hey, I got a question for you, Olive Oil. Before I, and I'll let you yeah. get I'll let you get your Warriors take in. So I take it you're called. Right, the, I take it you're called the Warriors. No, no, hold on, I think hold. The guy that has, <laughs> Stop him. Olive oil. Hold on one sec. I'm gonna let you give your Warriors take, but I have a question all for right. you. All right, you ready? Sure. All right. I assume you're called Olive Oil Matt in Napa because you've got something going on with olives. Yes, I produce um, okay. award-winning olive oil in okay. my wife in, in um, Napa. Okay, that's tight. This I have never been more serious in my life. So <laughs> I have I'm going to play a golf course in June, and it's a uh-huh. very exclusive golf course. So I want to get the guy who's who's taking me a gift, but I don't know him. All right. So I asked his friend. I'm like, hey, what's J O uh, John John? What's John? Uh, what, what's he into? Like, what? what, what he? And he goes, yeah, call me crazy. But he loves olives. He loves olives, and he loves olives in his martini. And so oh, wow. I started thinking, do we have anything like an olive olive oil gift basket of some kind, or is there some way I can say thank you, knowing that he loves olives? I could make you up a basket with our olive oil and our balsamics, and I could get a couple really good stuffed olives and regular olives for you. Can wow. you Can you do me a serious favor and give me your number uh, or give it to Joe Spadoni, our, our producer, when you hang up? Don't hang up All is right. what I'm saying. Because I'm, I'm, That's I'm, love, I'm, baby. I'm dead serious on this one. All right. Uh, I, I, warrior I, take. I appreciate that. And then warrior uh, Warriors. Okay, the guy that uh, we can't really trust, we love the loon dog. But he's just, I don't know, he's just a little bit slower and he doesn't contest. You know, Kerr's got to play Pods and TJD, the Young Bucks, because that's the reason why they are where we are. And Clay got to keep on shooting. I love Clay. He's my best player. You got to keep on shooting the lights out, yep. you know. And for what the season is, how it ends is how it ends. You know, it's like we want them to go far, but they've, they've, they've did their thing and we cannot trade the young bucks to get a number two to help 36 year old Curry. Cause I love Curry, but if we do that and he gets hurt, or somebody gets hurt, they're going to be in shovels for years. I, I like what they're doing now. I just need to bring a few players and just play it out. Uh, appreciate it. Olive oil. And if you could give me that information, I'd, That's I'd really appreciate time. it. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, for all you, um, I was trying to think of an insulting word, but I won't. This is not a freeloading thing, Mr. Irrelevant, on oh, the YouTube don't let chat. It get to you. I'll open your business. There's no freeloading. I I'll understand. Pay, I'll pay for the gift basket. How you get down? Don't it's let them get to you. Of course I'll pay for a gift basket. Yeah, That's the... Yeah. yeah. So, so wait a minute. Know. So Come wait on. a minute. They I'm, know. This guy's taking me to golf. I want to get yeah. him... I want to make a nice gesture. Yeah, I hear you. And people actually think I'm... Hey. No, they don't. They're give them something for free. Yeah. They're messing with you. for it. They're I'll, messing I'll with you. I absolutely pay for it. We, I know how you get down. Well, you owe me something today at I the don't. cafeteria. How do you figure? The 25 road wins. Okay, you won that bet. Yeah. And you lost the Kings bet. Ah, oh, I forgot. <laughs> it's called a split. It's called a split. So, hey, I can see the drinks, Madoni, but the Kings let me down. And by the way, uh, what happened? Don't let them get to you. By the way, let me also share some information with our listeners about those two bets which you're conveniently omitting but i don't and that is we made two bets you said the kings would win 49 games i said they wouldn't they're not going to i win that bet yeah we made another bet guru said the warriors were going to win 25 road games yeah however what you forgot is that earlier in the season you said 24 road wins and I just didn't want to deal with it. So I said, whatever. And then you went back to 25. Yeah. And what did I say to you before the game last night? Oh, yeah, you night? said, Goo, you got to win. I said, Goo, Evan, you've won Evan the bet. In. Yeah, I appreciate Even that. if the Warriors lose tonight and their final road record is 24-17, yeah. and 17, I'm conceding we're calling the bet a split. But that was that's, a nice gesture. That's the story. Yeah, but there's yeah. something you don't know about it. My side. Okay. I was not going to take that win had they not won last night. 
Because I, I, you You're were not going extreme- to take the win. Had they got stuck at twenty four, I know you would have counted it as a as a win. I wouldn't have because I did say twenty five. Oh, you would have paid the bet. Yeah, I would have. So then, I would have owed you a drink, two drinks. Yeah, you two would drinks. Owe me. Yeah, but that won't happen. It's so. payday. I, and I'm I, going to see the the Warriors. I five one zero on the Xfinity Mobile text line. You are absolutely positively right, and. This has been an issue. He says, hello, please stop saying playoffs. Oh, boy. Playoffs, playoffs, all right, all playoffs. Right, I give you that. We still need to win the play-in. You are all getting carried away. Right. I'd like to apologize for I can my give part him that, in that. No doubt. I'm getting caught up. We all are. But it's the play-in. That's the only thing about this, the inception of the play-in we don't know where the points go. They don't count towards the regular season total. If Steph were to go for 50, I it finally, just, Spadoni, that is so bothersome. Well, nobody knows where. We asked Raymond it's, Ritter this. It's not like, bothersome. Like, where does it go? It's actually not bothersome at all to me. It makes perfect sense. Like, if I asked you, and you're going to. So I you know really you're, care. Like, you're okay. going to give me a. Hey, real hey, quick, goo, goo, you're going to give me a Steph. Who's the special? leading score of all time in play in right, game? I was oh, just going, oh, who's got God. the highest average? Who gives a rat's behind? Who gives one? And what team has played in the most uh, playing? You like that one. I saw you. I don't up. care. But that's a stat. It's irrelevant. I don't think the NBA knows. I know the Warriors play two of them. The stuff that bothers you. No, no I'm with the call that says it's not the playoffs. I'll give you that. It technically is not. I know. It's not. But it's a game seven feel, win or go home. How you Lakers about- for sure played in the most, I'm guaranteed. Hold on. You might be. Under. I think they might. Have yeah, they beat like, the. They played like three of them. And they beat the uh, Warriors two years ago. Correct. Spadoni. How you feeling about tonight's game? Pelicans need it to and, stay out of the play-in, and Zion made it clear last night with Chris Haynes. But you, yeah, you they did. They want it. But you went over the uh, minutes that they played the Pelicans. I know they're young. How did Steph play last night? I got it right Yikes. here. If you had to guess, Donnie, how many would you say? I'm looking at it 30. right now. 36. <laughs> I don't like that. You're laughing. Uh-oh. 36. He's too old. Have, Kaminga, have, 34. He, hey, I got some bad news for the Warriors. Did you see this? This is stinking from the head. Up. <laughs> Where's he at? <laughs> That is one of the good. One more time you for see, Tony. This fish is stinking from the head up. Did you you see who's back? It's a for the, wrap. You see who's back for the Pelicans? A uh, Sunday though. Who? Uh, Ingram. Oh, I'm not talking about Ingram. Who you t- I'm talking about the biggest oh, Alvarado pest in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, Alvarado. What, give me your Mount Pestmore. I would say Alvarado and TJ McConnell. What? Who's going to get six man of the year? Those what about two. Pat Bev? Yeah, he's up okay. There. Yeah, uh, he's, he, he might be the leader. He's, he's on Mount. We Pest need one more. more. I'll tell you who's getting there. Pajemski, Schroeder, <laughs> Dennis Schroeder's up there. Yeah, that's yeah, not Schroeder. a bad call. Yeah. I'll tell you Pest what, Pat, last year. Pajemski might be second team all Pestmore. And for those that don't get it, it's a compliment. There's no doubt about it. Who's the ultimate pe- Dennis Rodman for me? Yeah, he's up there. I mean. Draymond can be a pest. Ron Artest. Oh, you mun- Dr- that's a great. I, you know what? Those I think, are two but great But that's ones. a different kind. Like, pest is someone that's like you flick off. You don't flick off yeah, uh, Draymond. Ron Artest. Well, that's why when I think of pests in the NBA, I think of guards. Yeah, smaller. Uh, like smaller right, guards. Right. Rajon uh, Rondo's another one. Hey, uh, his name came up uh, with a Kentucky job, but he didn't get it. Mark Pope got it. And yeah, Pope from is from where? BYU? BYU? Yeah. Yeah, he went to Kentucky. Yeah, the bluegrass. Uh, Big D. Big D's in the hospital. He's usually eating lunch. What, what you we call today? it the lunch special. Hey, what's up, Big D? Hey, what are you eating Chili today? Cheesesteak. Chili oh. cheesesteak from the Visadero. Oh nice. my goodness. goodness! You got bell peppers on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You got bell peppers on Everything. it. Everything. Oh my! Sweet goodness. peppers, bell peppers, cheese, ah. ranch. You name it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I won two in a row. I took the points in Portland yesterday. I knew the Warriors were going to win by not by that much, though. But so now I'm putting it all in. All in on the Warriors tonight. This shows the grit right here in the Bay Area. And just like I said, they would make it to the play-in. But you know what? If they look sorry at this game, they're going to get kicked out on the first round. I hate to say it. Hey, wow. PD with the ski, Pogs. 
hey, he looks promising for next year and Kaminga. And you know what? Hey, Curry and his Splash Brothers will still be there. Hey, that's all I got to say, fellas, man. I hate to say it, but you know it's true. Bye-bye. Look that's at Big it. D in the hospital. He's becoming a staple. Yeah, I like him. And I'll we say could get this. get a Staples sponsorship. Now that would they be still big. around? Yeah. Apparently they couldn't pony, it up, pony up enough for... Uh, it's Keep true. the rights at uh, the L.A. arena. God, Crypto.com is such an ugly name, too. Do you think it's worse than Crypto, the San just, Francisco Bay Oakland not, International it's not Airport? Yet. It's it's a They're done voting deal. May 8th. This is one of those done deals. But oh, you're smiling. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for Dibs to come in. He'll understand. Yeah. Just tired of him. Stick of it. Hey, this is not for today. But I am so fired up about the youngsters and where the Warriors are at as a whole. I'm going to give you their win total. Put this in the caps, Madoni. I think it's coming out in Vegas when the season's all said and done, no matter what happens, at 49. Yeah, That'll what, be their win total. That's what it was this year, year essentially. <laughs> so you picking the same number? Yeah, probably have the same team. Madoni, it wasn't the same, but anyway. What was it, 48 and a half? <laughs> what was the win total? Yeah, the, no, or 40, this year was 47 and a half. Yeah. 47 I'm and a half. 49. You got to fire Steve Kerr. They didn't hit their win total. I uh, had a better it. season than last year. Yeah, but yeah. not yeah. according to Vegas. I and it's not. It's bigger than just uh, Golden State. I am so ready to find out because I believe Cat comes back tonight. How OKC in Minnesota Don't are they just the them. same? Don't worry about them. When they you ain't got the them playoffs. yet. No, you ain't got I, but them I'm, yet. I'm a watch as a fan. You know what, a fan, I'm watching. You haven't earned you know, the right it's to not talk about, about Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, it's not Denver, about a angle. or Minnesota. It's a basketball yeah. angle. Are they going to just roll the ball? Don't worry about Spadoni it. Don't worry and play about it. Freely like they have. Let it's me just say, Don't worry about Boston those teams. Too. The Celtics. Are you? Spadone. You're going to get tight shooting those three. Playing fans, stop talking about playoff teams. Now that was Is that cold. the Steiner you want? Yeah, now that's cold. Is that the Steiner you want? No, this is a basketball discussion. Yeah, don't worry about it. Bruh, bruh. Yeah, don't worry about it. I am. Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. Just like you shouldn't worry about the name change. Doesn't affect <laughs> you. It don't does. let it don't let it affect your mood. Yeah. I'll tell you, okay. You to, hey, you won the bet? You you got it today? The, we split two bets. Oh you want a bet? God. I want to call I you a bet. old ass man. Sit down and listen. Your warrior bet you won. You talk too much. What warrior bet are you talking about? The Portland side. Of oh, the that bet. one. So you got some ducats. Man, I keep you it in a fund, though. Oh, I don't Spadone. access those funds. I, have a, I call you on it. I have, I have a bag that Look I just at, go into oh, occasionally. Man, you one of those I am dudes, on a little uh, hot streak, I will say that. Yeah, we'll you know see. what? This is where you're a bad influence on me. Robert Cray. You never guess. Dude, you don't do you know, know who know he is. what do you know about him? You don't, don't talk about Robert Cray like that. And the know. what band? Robert Cray in the blank band. Just hold on. Oh, okay. All right? I know what it is. Band. It's just not at the tip of my tongue. <laughs> okay. Okay, Go. where's he from? I want to say uh, Louisiana. Wrong. <laughs> where, where Robert Cray. Don't tell me, please. I didn't get it, please. Robert Cray and the... <laughs> oh! Does Spadoni know it? He won't know it. Spadoni's white. How's he going to know? He's Italian. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I'm yeah, Italian. You, Thank you. Uh, what is it called again? I forget. I'll give you one more guess. I'm looking at. Give me a little hint. Yes, but Donnie's black. Uh, you don't, it's no, oh, I do. Okay. Uh, a bucket. Robert They're in a, a lot of them are in a bucket. Crab, something. I give up. Starship. It is. That's what I thought it was. What are you talking? Are you thinking of the Jefferson airplane that changed their name to Jefferson Starship? Oh boy. <laughs> No, Robert Cray's from Seattle. And the Starship an, Man. Maybe. You might be right. It just didn't ring a bell. No. I want to make it clear. I didn't say you're wrong. I said, huh, that just doesn't ring a bell. That's all. You might be right. No, I'm thinking about your winning bet, and you ain't getting this. <laughs> Ben's in Oakland. It's a different Ben. Hey, Ben. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. I'm over we got here, nothing else to do. I'm over here driving, delivering, making deliveries all day long. What I do you, the radio show. Thanks for taking my call. What do you, do, uh, what do you deliver, uh, Ben? I'm d delivering the good cannabis. I work for Kraft Cannabis. Yeah. Hey, can you stay on the line <laughs> uh, and give your number to Spadone? <laughs> hit me, letters. <laughs> BayAreaCraft.com. I'm here doing deliveries all, day, all over the Bay Area. Nice. 
Uh, you gotta love I'm America. Mexico, I mean, been, Guru doesn't. I but... live in Oakland now. I'm, okay. I'm from a Frisco. But I just want to talk about the pests out here, man, because you know uh, I think Trey Jackson is becoming one of the bigger pests in the league, man. Oh, interesting. That guy is a problem out there. And, and historically, I was watching a video of, of, of believe it or not, Kobe, Kobe Bryant, just top ten player, down full court. That guy, that's one of the best pests of all time, too. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Uh, drive safely. Don't drive high. Yeah, get a DUI. No doubt. That is what. Safe. Whoever did that bar? There are there. Uh, what is it? The other one. Uh, the seat Don't get one. high in your own no, supply. The, uh, That's from Scarface. <laughs> one of the, the greatest Robert movies Craig of all Pants, time. Donnie, there is no. I think it's the Memphis something. Nah. Robert Crane. I don't know. Yeah. So you click it or get a ticket. Were you wrong or what? There, yeah, Does there was, he have a, a... He has a band. It's the Robert Cray band. Yeah. I was thinking of something else. What do you think you were thinking about? Bobby Blue Bland. That's my dad. One of gotcha. my dad's favorite. Yeah. He's a he's a legend. By the way, can you, you, you know what always bothers me? When me? people cite the guy from Major League. Serrano. Yeah. There's, <laughs> he's, he's not... He's, so, he's, he's so not rare. the original Serrano. The original Serrano is Jimmy Serrano from Midnight Run. Serrano's got the discs. Serrano's got the discs. Yeah, but not on the baseball diamond, though. You ever see that movie, Spadone? That's one of the greatest movies of all. That's the one of the original Serrano. Is on is yeah. the Serrano Pepper? Oh, shiny. well, fair enough. Fair enough. I was, and I was thinking the was George thinking Clinton's people. band, the Starship band, is George. Oh. yeah, the Robert Cray band. You, so you didn't get anything wrong. But I people want to know: Are you going to share at the shit? I usually don't. You're going to share. Am at I going to share at the shit? Yeah, you're winning. Let me tell you what. Yeah, not when I'm six it's been a while. When I'm six feet under, it's been a while. And they great have my funeral. HBO. Great show on HBO back in the day. You realize how many bartenders are going to come out of the woodwork? Oh, you're a good dude. Yeah, exactly. But how many patrons will be there? <laughs> you know, you used to spin. Well. <laughs> Where's Rick Tittle when you need him? Do we have any? That's my guy. Do we have any? Uh, yeah, Serrano's got the discs. One of the greatest lines. That, that, to me, is one of the greatest comedy movies of all time. Better than Cannonball Run? That's a great Midnight movie. Run is... It's I'm not just a, saying. It's not like a flat-out comedy. Oh, okay. But it is funny as hell. All right. Uh, Charles Grodin, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro, well, a very unusual What about Burt Reynolds? I can take you one up on Cannonball Run. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Burt Reynolds. Are you kidding me? Lonnie yeah. Anderson? You asked me about Burt Reynolds. He used to go with Lonnie. I know, but he, you asked me if I... He was a... I'm just So saying. you're a fan of Burt Reynolds because he married Lonnie Anderson? No, he, he, he was the first uh, James Bond to me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sam Malone, um, Sam Malone second. Gotcha. All right, eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the numbers uh, is the number here. And uh, geez, if you're a Warrior fan, what do you would you make a Kaminga's performance last night? You know, I I I said something uh, earlier, and somebody commented on the on the YouTube chat, and maybe I was strong about it, but you know, I think if last night's kind of a playoff game, I think Steve Kerr's got to take him out. But I hear you. But it wasn't. Started. You're right. It wasn't. And I think he but he cannot that. play like that. Yeah. You said frustrated is the game. word. That was interesting. All right, we got to go on 957 again. Now at Big O Tires, get up to $120 instant savings on four select in stock tires with installation purchase. Visit BigOtires.com for cash saving offers on brakes, alignment.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, people say I'm, I try to stir things up. My guy Mark Grandy now in the uh, in studio. I love working Grandy. the board. And you know what happened? You, Go ahead. You want to know the first question he asked me? See, I, I don't know if Grandy knows you're unplugged. Sometimes people have conversations with you. I know Grandy, Grandy, Grandy now for years. Air with I just want to I want to prep Grandy and let him know that Grandy you got to you got to be careful, Grandy. Well, what you is, tell this guy? Okay, this is he'll this, out you. And this is vintage, vintage right here. He asked a question that in and of itself is neutral. We had a convo. The question is, he said, Steiny, what'd you think of Kaminga last night? He did. Okay. Warrior fans, 888-957-9570. What did you think of Kaminga last night? I get it was just one game, but what did you think of Kaminga last night? And I just, it, I told Grandy. It, it, it looked like he really was struggling last night. Struggling fitting in. Struggling trying to do a little too much. Thought he was really frustrated yeah. at times. And then, I'll be honest with you, I thought there were other times where it almost felt like he wasn't taking it seriously enough. Do they need him? Oh, you better believe they need him. But he can't be that player from this point on. And uh, he's listed tonight actually as questionable. He fell hard, though, under the stanchion. I, I remember that. Did you see? Yeah. So Draymond and Clay are probable, and Kaminga is questionable with a pelvis injury because he fell on oh, it last wow. night in, in the game. And uh, GP2 is doubtful as well. GP2 Damn. doubtful. Uh, let's go to B in San Jose. Not good. Hey, B, how you doing? Steinmetz and Guru, you both are doing a great job. Thanks, Oh, buddy. thank you. I got a, uh, a hashtag random for you, Goose, since you guys have been going off on Robert Cray and Mount Pestmore. So here's another thing to just put in the hopper. So, Goo, you listen to the, the Warriors game sometimes on the uh, broadcast, the radio broadcast with Tim Roy, right? Yeah, he got it! <laughs> so I don't know if this bothers you, but sometimes it bothers me. You know, the popular commercial they run when there's timeouts is this Kia Telluride commercial that says the Telluride reminds people of Draymond Green. And then they have this voice, but it's not Draymond's voice doing all these money green coming through and IQ on a trillion. That bothers me that he's wow. trying to get in all the, you know, raking in the royalties. And yet it's not his voice on there. Who did they get to do this voiceover? I'm out on that. I'll tell Your you thoughts? what. Today is what's bugging you brought to, at, brought to you by Adco. You just let us know what's bugging you, Stiney. That is what's bugging, man. Wow. They can't be, man. They can't be doing this commercial with a, you know, a subpar, seamless Draymond Green voice. Wow. Appreciate it, B. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Boss is down south. He doesn't know what's going on. Why don't we just do this today? I talked to him. It's the, I'm sure you do. Uh, it's called the What's Bugging You segment, sponsored by Atco Pest Control. I don't see any reason why on a day like today... We can't throw it out to the listeners. No, now, what beautiful. I will do is say, let's keep it sports-related, this particular... Because Dim said he's turned us off four times coming in today. He's never said mm. that. <laughs> See, he didn't say three. He said four. Oh, he's not a wrestling fan. <laughs> I said, well, damn, Dim's four times he said he turned us off. So a couple things. What's what's your sport take? Sponsored by Atco Pest what's Control. Bugging you? What's bugging you sports-wise? Or You know what? We can even... We can even uh, Keep it just to the Warriors because they're the they're the hottest team right now in terms of where they're at. And the bottom line is we have a segment with Atco Pest Control. What's bugging you? Coming we'll be up doing two. that at two o'clock. But eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven. Let's start with Grandy. Anything well, bugging may, you about the well, Warriors? He, he may not have one off the top of his head. But I'm, I'm like do you, you just put him no, on the spot. Well, just like you did with my top ten, then he put it out, and that's how I get uh, Whitey Gleason t texting me a call. Anything bothering you about the Warriors? Ah, the Kaminga thing was just one thing, right? He d it just seemed a little disjointed. He, he, there's no doubt, night. and he's twenty. Look at the box score. I mean, it looked like Seven he had a nice 11. game, nineteen yeah. points plus eight. But uh, there was a, the moment early in the third quarter. He committed two fouls. One where he was just needlessly over pressing yeah. on the ball, and he caught got called for a foul. And then he looked astonished that he got called for a foul. And then away from the ball, he put a forearm into the back of Aiton. And Aiton got pushed out of his spot, got called for a foul, and he seems surprised. 
and he started to walk to the bench because that was his fourth foul, and Steve Kerr was like, no, J.K., stay in the game. Mm-hmm. Kind of head down, walking back out onto the court. I, and him I and Jamari Maybe I'm, Parker they, almost got into a Walker got it to the co- Like, that ain't Kaminga starting. Maybe I'm looking too much into nah, it. But. Something to monitor. Nah, I don't think it wasn't his finest game last yeah. night. That's for sure. Um, and they'd rather you do that then than in these games moving forward, Stein. Right. The the good news for Warrior fans is he ain't going to be able to play like that. How many minutes did Kaminga play last night? 30. Yeah, he ain't playing 30 if that's what he's playing. 34. Yeah. Like, he, he had a 36. long leash last night. Yeah, he did. Uh, 718 says Kaminga's a totally different player with Draymond Green. He doesn't have to think that much when Draymond sets him up. Yeah. Okay? It's not a bad one. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Um, when you said Dre is probable for tonight, huh? Man. Uh, Draymond and Claire probably. Okay. They're playing. Yeah. They're playing. I mean, they're playing for something. The team. Man, this is the most important game of the year. We're still uh, we're still waiting. Hopefully, we're going to hear from uh, our good friend Javier in Vacaville. You've been calling them out. We like to check in. Uh, I'm sorry. Javi likes to check in uh, frequently when the Kings are, are playing well. So, we're, we're trying to get Javi to call in. You know, King's struggling a little bit because he, he's been on cloud nine for much of the season and he hasn't been afraid to. And I don't dislike this at all. He's been sticking at the Warrior fans. So we're just uh, we're trying to effort Javi, yeah. see where his head's at with two games to go. Um, let's go to Hunter. Hunter's in New York. Let's talk about Kaminga. Hey, Hunter, how you doing, man? What's going on? Uh, uh, how you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Um. I just think everybody's overreacting with Kaminga. Uh, he's only a year three player right now. He still has a lot of stuff to learn. And especially with his stat line this season, everybody is looking up to him a lot more than they usually do. So whether he is expressing that to everybody else or not, I think there's definitely a lot more mental pressure on him to step up. And now that we are going into the postseason and even making this push for the eighth seed like we are right now, I think he just tried to step it up a little too much in that first half last night. But then when he realized his foot was on the gas a little too much, you know, he mm. he shaped everything up for the second half. And I, I think everybody's overreacting with him. I definitely yeah. think he is a uh, future of this team and – Everybody should just calm down a little bit hey, and let him settle into his role. Let me let me throw this at you, Hunter, because I everything you said I agree one hundred percent with, and I would tack it on a step further that I do think people expect too much from him too early, and he's still only twenty one. So how do you how do you kind of if you're Steve Kerr, how do you approach using him um, this point on when the games are like super duper important? So. I don't know exactly. I think starting him may give him too much confidence, but I've never spoken to him personally, so I I don't know. He might need to come off of the bench and just play similar minutes coming off of the bench. I don't know if he gains too much confidence in in the starting lineup, but I definitely think going into the postseason that we need to be relying on him more so than we do Wiggins. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Thanks, Hunter. Appreciate the call. Because as it stands now, yeah, it looks like know, Wiggins though. is going to be in that starting lineup over Kaminga. The one thing I always like to do as the playoffs approach is you start talking about minutes, who's going to play more, and who's going to play less. So Steph Curry this year averaged 32.7 minutes a game. Right. All right. He's probably going to play more. You would think, you'd think of the playoffs. All things being equal, assuming there's that... I would hope. blow out I every it. game. Yeah. He's probably going to get up to, let's say, 34, 35. All right, Clay Thompson, averaging 29.7 minutes. I'm saying more. I'm saying, if yeah, have, if maybe a little window, more. Okay. Maybe you bump him up to 32. All right, Andrew Wiggins. Now, this is 20, where... He's only averaging 27 minutes a game. Does Wiggins play more or less... Let's say if the Warriors have seven to ten more games left. I, see, that's one I don't think is etched in stone. You might be right. And I, I really do. And for the Warriors to to re, reach their peak, Stani, that number has to go up to 34, and it only goes up to 34 if we're getting the good 
active Andrew Wiggins. And I don't just mean are all his shots falling, but just active. And he's been that here lately. But to be honest, if I was in a <clears> window and I had to bet one or the other, I might I might bet under on that. Under Wiggins 27, minutes. yeah. Because Kaminga will be the beneficiary of right. and nobody nobody wants it to be that. But I'm just telling you, Andrew, it looks like he's getting the first crack at it. And if you know, somehow, let's just say he's not pl- he's not effective. Kaminga could take that and run with it. That's how I feel. Vi- like they're attached. This is a, this is a hard thing for me to say, but I but at this point of their careers, I, I think it's true, and that is whether you like it or not. If Wiggins goes out there and plays to his ability, and Kaminga goes out there and plays to his ability, the Warriors are a better team. When Wiggins does that, right. as opposed to Kaminga, a better team. They've won a championship, like and that. so that, like, that's kind of at the crux of all this stuff. As we head into the play-in and maybe the playoffs, yeah. is I'm not mad. Right, at that. Twenty-seven minutes for because if you're right, see, to me, Wiggins has first crack at everything. And if you're telling me play 27, 28 minutes a game, but he if he plays like he's been playing the last three weeks, I think you're right. He's going up to 33, 34. No, no. Well, if you've noticed, now, we what do they call it? Robin Peter to pay Paul? Yeah. We've got to feed. Okay. I, I, if Wiggins is playing more than that, it means Kaminga's minutes are probably going to take a hit. But that's fine uh, in terms of the for this discussion. Uh, Draymond Green, 27 minutes a game. Uh, more. More. All right. That's an, uh, easy. Okay, so here's what I'm getting at. So I am worried that he's still two, probable. Go ahead, Stone. Clay, two. Yeah. Let's say Wiggins. Whew, Wiggins, let's say six. And Draymond Green, three. So that's 13 extra minutes you're getting starters. All right. Give me Pods. Right. Pods is averaging 26.7 minutes per game. I think he's got to go down. Now, that's interesting. I, mean, I almost want to say I, again. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying because could we see him closing a game? I think he'll probably drop to 22 ish, mm-hmm. which isn't a dramatic drop. Uh, Kaminga, 26.4 minutes a game. Now that's skewed, and the reason it's skewed is because half the season he was playing 18 to 20. So the second half of the season, Kaminga's been let's just say 30 minutes a night, but for the 26 minutes a night. In other words, you can't keep playing guys more. Somebody's going to have to pay the price. And I'm just wondering if it might be Kaminga. And and again, we're not Michael Jackson, want to be starting something. But if you were to pose this question two or three weeks ago, Stani, I believe Kaminga would be in the starting lineup and we were talking about Wiggins coming off the bench and would he be able to master that role? And the tendonitis in both knees, the bilateral tendonitis in both knees for Kaminga, to me, has come at the most inopportune time. And that's why I believe last night he was kind of fighting himself in it. But I just need to know who the matchup is. And I believe Andrew Wiggins is more basketball mature in the mind to adapt to coming off the bench knowing, oh, they need me. Or if I want to even be out here in closing time, I got a ball. I I prefer Wiggins to have to take that task on than a young Jonathan Kaminga. You say what to that? Because I think Kaminga well, last night, we just like Randy said, ah, oh, Stani, it was nothing, but we all saw it. But I'm wondering how. But he started last night. But I'm thinking he's still thinking about when it's all ready to go. He's going to be doing it from the coming off the bench. That's real. So you know both my. Parents were English teachers. Mary. So I'm a very literal person. So you said something that is very uh, agreeable. I I think most people totally would agree with it. But I always look at things the other way. And you said, man, Kaminga's injury came at the worst time. Maybe it came at the best time. And maybe it came at the best time because you finally realized. Wow. Wow. That to be the best version of the Golden State Warriors, the best team version, you've you've realized it's taken you all season, but you realize that Wiggins has to be one, wow. and Kaminga's got to be one A. I've been or, saying or, that all year, two. man. 
And I'm not talking about options. Yeah. I'm talking about Priorities. maybe Wiggins plays yeah. 34 minutes a night and Kaminga plays 16. So, yes, am I just messing with semantics? Yeah, but I you can make a case that the Warriors have found something at the perfect time. It's just unfortunate for Kaminga, but it's fortunate for the Warriors. That's what I was going to say. Maybe it's bad for him personally because no he's trying to get you know big money this offseason potentially. No doubt. But maybe it's not the worst thing for the Warriors. Yeah. So it's the right thing because it's about the team more so than the See, like if, if, Kaminga, if Kaminga played, let's just 20 minutes a night, let's say they make the playoffs and they play, let's give them two rounds, another wow. 13 games. That's what they played last year. And I looked at Kaminga's numbers last year in the playoffs. He, he did not play much at all. I think if we, I think if Kaminga gets 18, 20 minutes a night in the postseason, like that's not a failure. Like that's not, uh oh, or that's not, you're a hater. He's still 21 years right. old. And believe it or not, I look at a 21 year old getting 20 minutes a night in the postseason as that's pretty darn good, regardless of what it looks like. Yes. What do you mean what it looks like? Like what if, what if he didn't have his best outing? Well, I expect him to struggle. Like, I expect Kaminga and Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis to have some tough times if they get into the postseason. Wow, man. That, that's completely understandable. And that scares me about them winning a the series, then. That, that's fair. And then maybe that's where you start thinking, well, now we got to lean on the veterans more. But you have to worry about diminishing returns there. Uh, let's go to Amy. Amy's in Pacifica. Hey, Amy, how are you? Hey. Hey, how are you guys doing? Doing well. I'm enjoying this conversation. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. Thank hey, you for listening. I just wanted to give my my two cents here about Wiggins and Kaminga. I think Steve's going with Wiggs. And I think it really, what it comes down to, is it comes down to the emotional intelligence. Champions. Champions are able to keep their egos in check. And Kaminga... I mean, he's got everything going on, but he's still young. His ego's still tripping him out a little bit. He's got this injury, you know, and it came at a really bad time. You're right. I think it came at a really bad time. But in the same moment, Wiggins, Wiggins has gotten over something in his life. Wiggins came over a hump. I think he's he's been great since he came back, and you see this. I don't know. There's something about him that's like resurrected and he's out there and he knows what he's doing. He's, he's, it seems like he's got his ego in check right now. So I think Steve's going to go with wigs and I think Kaminga's going to learn something. And I think he's, his emotional intelligence is going to grow. And especially if we get into the playoffs and he gets to go through this with these amazing veterans. Well said. Good call. Yeah. Well said. And you know what? I want to add this because I don't want people to misconstrue. It's, it's, there's, I'm not addressing Kaminga's attitude or his demeanor or anything like that. I just have always thought when you're a young player in the league and you're trying to establish yourself, the, the most important thing is to, to develop your game. It's to figure out how to play in the NBA. It's figuring out what you do well. It's only after a longer period of time, a lot of times, where you, are able to fit that game into a successful team. And I, when I look at Kaminga, I think a guy, I think he's still more consumed with his individual game than surprise, surprise, Curry, Draymond, Wiggins, and Clay Thompson. Mm. And of course that's the case because they've been in the league ten to fifteen years each. So you have to balance how Kaminga wants to develop individually at this time of year. And it's no fault of his. It's it's not his fault. He's just a younger player, and he's going into games with higher stakes. And knowing Steve Kerr like we know him, he may lean more heavily on Wiggins than Kaminga in the postseason. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And that's no indictment on Kaminga. Like, I mean, he's 21. He didn't play college. He's still in a great spot overall career-wise. But, but it, we might be expecting too much from him <clears throat> too soon. And I don't disagree with anything you're saying, and we could be off the mark. Wouldn't be the first time. But the Kaminga, I think I know the basketball player, Steiny. 
I believe what we saw, including Grandy last night, was a guy fighting himself. Now, it was just a game against Portland, but it was a game that the Warriors needed. And I just hope for his sake, the fact that maybe he's trying to, right before the play-in, with the Game 7 finale feel to it, I just don't like that test for him if we are right to where now, let's just call it what it is, right on the table, a reduced role going into said game, and maybe that becomes bigger than him just going out there and letting it all fly like he was when he was playing his ass off before he got hurt. So again, I'm being redundant, but the truth is, for the team, if you're right, Stoney, it came at the best time for them to find something out as a whole, but maybe for him, it didn't come at the best time when you talk about minute allocation. It's yep. just something to really watch. Individual He's going to be the first one off the bench. Team. Okay. So there's no doubt in your mind, Come you and Grandy, come next Wednesday, hell or high water, Kaminga's coming off the bench. Yes. Okay. I, There's I, no assuming everyone's available. Yes, sir. I, I, I think. Like I think to, said, take I mean, that to the bank. I I, th I think you can. Maybe, maybe I mean I don't. I, I'd be surprised if he put Kaminga back into I, the starting lineup right now if they're whole. Man, I, I'd be very wow. surprised. Now this is interesting. We got uh well let's go to Keenan. Keenan's in uh, SD. San Diego, Evan, South Dakota. Oh. <laughs> Where we got Keenan? Hey, what's up, fellas? Um, I wanted to comment on the uh, the Kaminga thing. So, yep. I, I, my my thought process is if he thought defense uh, defense first, no doubt. it would unlock Wiggins like back to you know well possibly twenty twenty two. Uh, Wiggins, I think he has all the tools to be yeah. as good, if not better, defender than Wiggins. And if you got those two defending at a high level, I think everything else take care of itself. But I know it's hard trying to get you know a twenty one year old to wrap his mind around that. But yeah. I truly believe if he thought defense first, I don't know two better wing defenders on another team that would be better than Wiggins and Kamiga. And then you got Draymond on the backside. So if he could just wrap his mind around that, if you listen to Kaminga, I really think you guys could make a run. Outside of that, I don't see it happening, though. Appreciate it, Keenan. I, I'm going to give you this. I'm saying that forever. Him. Yeah, but there are two players. Just defend I've and him. rebound, and you'll play. No doubt. Period. You added the rebound, but he picked up Luka and LeBron. It was a couple years ago, Stoney. Right. 94 feet, and it was like, right. dude, you could do that in your sleep. But that's the other issue. That's the other subtle, nuanced issue. You know who else does that? Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Like, that's the thing. Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga are both really good at picking a guy yeah, up 94 man. feet right. like Luca, right. but they're not. They're both subpar when it comes to team defense and help. Well, now, wow. maybe you say we got two lockdown. Well, I, I can't call either of them lockdown defenders, but they both are better on the ball, and then maybe that frees Draymond up. But there is a, there is some overlap. Uh, with, with those two guys. Hey, every Friday for the rest of the season, we bring you the Big Three Unplugged. Check out our social media platforms every Friday as our very own Whitley Sandretto gets the Big Three talking about the non-basketball topics like, and I swear to God, I will listen to this because this interests me. What's your favorite karaoke song? It's the Big Three Unplugged, brought to you by Alameda County Probation Department. Are you ready to make a lasting impact in your community? Visit joinacpd.org to start your journey today. Together, let's make a difference. Your community needs you. 888-957-9570. Talking Warriors on 95.7 The Game. Americans pay about $5 billion to control termites and repair their damage every year. Many people underestimate exactly how much damage...
This is Tim Roy, and you're listening to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Grandy just figured it Thank out. You, Tim. We were talking about wrestling earlier, Grandy. Somebody mm. said, what would Goo and Steiny's tag team name be? Want to be starting something. Yeah, that's not why I, I chose this song because last segment you're talking about Kaminga and you said I don't want to be starting something, no, I'm MJ. Loving. But where my mind was at is you like that Stiney tag team? Want to be starting something? I oh boy, I just don't see that as the name of a of a of a. I think it more of a start of a sentence than the. Well, give me a name or some, a somebody tag suggested team. the Natural Disasters. <laughs> <laughs> Guru and my tag team yeah. would be the natural disasters. That's not bad. Um, okay, see, sometimes this happens, and I, I try not to fall into the trap. So we've got Austin in San Jose. Our guy. And usually they put a comment next to the caller indicating a little more specificity in terms of what He's coming for me. the conversation is about. And it says Austin in San Jose wants to talk about not buying all the drama. I, there's no drama being created here. Go well, ahead. It could be Kaminga versus Kaminga drama if we're... Yeah, well, let's hear. But I don't necessarily... I don't think uh, it's drama. Let's hear. So I don't like to be misconstrued, but Austin, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey. No. Hey, Stani, don't need to be defensive. It's not, no, not that, misconstruing that's my anything nature. you said. It's uh, my I nature. Know you, I know you're a man of nuance and, <laughs> and all that, but this isn't about uh, that today, Stani. No, uh, I was thinking about the drama on the team. I'm saying that I don't want to hear any more about, you know, mm. who needs to play, whose feelings mm. are going to be heard if they don't play. Uh, Clay, JK, it doesn't matter, man. You, you, you're you the 10th seed. Give me the best eight guys that you can win with right now. Steve's no been doubt. messing around for the whole year. We're trying to find the right chemistry, Steiny. And now we're worried about whether some guy is upset when you're a 10th seed. I mean, listen, he, here's, where, here's where it matters, though. Here's what I'll say. The counter to that is talking about JK, and I love Kaminga, man. Last night was not one of his best nights, right. but here's the problem for the Warriors. If you're telling me, Guru, that you're going to relegate uh, Mr. JK to the bench now and come off the bench, what does that say about next year? Because if you're if you're JK, let's be honest, yeah. man. Yeah. You're in a bar. The coaches aren't around. You're talking honestly. He thinks he's playing with a bunch of old dudes, man, that he's thinking, I can do anything. I'm the guy on this team right now. I get now. that. He's Go thinking, ahead. I'm the best guy on this team. Come on, man. So let's stop with this. Oh, he needs to go along. He's going to figure it out. He needs to be grown. Steiny, I know you said that he's still young. He's right. got a lot to learn. But in his mind, no doubt. he's saying, dude, respond. I'm already a yeah. star. I want to get paid next year. I'm not, I don't want to sit on the bench and wait for, watch a bunch of old guys who, by the way, we're still talking about 10th seed. We're not talking about five yeah. through six or one through four. I we're appreciate talking what about you're old saying. guys, yeah. like you said, stuff that are, that are diminishing in skills. So, J.K., yeah, you got to play him because you got to find out about next year. Who's your number two next year, Guru? Okay, don't tell no me, doubt. Don't tell me it's uh, – and don't tell me it's the guy with the light-skinned guy that shoots, that shoots jumpers. It's no. not him. What if okay? I tell you it's – real quick, I hear everything you're saying, but don't hang up. What if it's Andrew Wiggins? What if they decide, you know what, we could – Use Kaminga to get something else we need if they chose to go that route because him and Wiggins can't coexist. To me, now more than ever, Austin, that's on the bingo card. I could be totally wrong. I agree with what you're saying, but what I want to ask you on this payday Friday is, I know how you feel about this team as a whole, but here I go. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. But Austin, if they go on a run or win a couple series, you got to then call us back. Not say you were wrong. But you got to understand that might change the mindset and outset of ownership and what they try to do if that means dangling Kaminga. Well, here, here's real quick. So winning, going and finishing the season is important. Let's see what happens. All right. But next year, it doesn't change my it doesn't change my idea of restructuring the team next okay. year. And I've okay. said that they need that they've got to go younger. They've got to invest in somebody younger. Now I go priest on you. Priest is right. They need to, they need to figure out which young guy yeah. they can invest in. Pay the man and let him be part of the core. Let's stop running the core in the ground. That's over with, man. We got to move on. That's all I got, guys. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. it, Austin. Yeah. No, and I want to be clear. I've, and I've tried to emphasize this a half a dozen times. It's This has, to me, nothing to do with, well, what if Kaminga's upset? Well, I don't even know Jonathan Kaminga, but I'll bet he's kind of upset. 
I bet he wants to I'll be to right start. behind you. Okay. Yeah. So, but we of course talking he's going to be upset from that vantage point. and disappointed. Yeah. Like, but I'm not saying he's going to be an attitude problem. Yeah. That's that's the furthest thing from what I'm saying. I'm all I'm saying is that where the team is right now, he's got to figure out how to get back his playing time if if that if 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 that's what you know, if that's what he wants to do. But can you help me? Austin talks like Jonathan Kaminga is ready to be the best player on this team. He's a one-handed dribbler. He needs to work on his no. handle, Steiny. So I'm just telling Austin, I understand the greatness that we see and the potential from Jonathan Kaminga, but I hope you don't dare think he's ready to take over the mantle. Well, like, we were calling him the second best player on the team two months did, ago. No doubt about it. I mean, we were. And, I mean, and let me let me make it clear. If Kaminga gets, let's say they make the playoffs and Kaminga gets squeezed, let's just call it squeezed, it doesn't necessarily impact my long-term thinking for Jonathan Kaminga. But what about his to this organization? Well, he has no choice. Well, He's yeah, under contract yeah, right. for but you two know what more I'm years. You no, can cause I, a stink. Actually, no, He's caused actually, a stink before. Well, he didn't really because nothing happened. Wow. He just played and then he Couple stopped times. playing. Yeah. And, but, I'm just saying at the end of last year and this year. I mean... Like I'm with all like in a way, who the hell's Kaminga? Well But I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if he only if he gets squeezed in the postseason, I'm not necessarily gonna think, well, they gotta lose this guy. He's still twenty one like again, I'm gonna say it again. If he averages twenty minutes a night in the postseason, let's say they have a playoff series, twenty to twenty two minutes a night, but it's clear Wiggins is playing thirty two or thirty three and Kaminga's gotten squeezed. That's not like I get you. He's still tw I he's still you. averaging more minutes per game than his age. But I was like saying he is to you, on track. Yeah, I was just saying to you is it takes two to tango, and we were would he be okay? Like I, I, that that, that's that is I, okay. I'll be honest that's with you. Where there. I was coming from that part of it, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care about that, right? Like if but if, he may. Well, I don't the player. Well, well, again, yeah, that's what Austin's saying. This is about the team. Yeah. Jonathan Kaminga is one of nine guys. That's all he yeah, is right we, now. Yeah, no doubt. But we I see mean, some stuff from him right. after the season. During, you but, know. but I am not going to let a 21-year-old kid. I'm not lobbying for who that. Who doesn't know how to play basketball like the veterans that he's on the team with dictate what we're going to do because I, he's a little unhappy because he doesn't understand that he needs to do more of the things the team needs him to do and less of what he wants to do. And all this can be said and say, oh, Kaminga's still the biggest part of the future. Right. Because he is right now. Because let me tell you what can really F up a team is giving a guy like Kaminga or a young player who hasn't earned it more playing time than he deserves. That's how you get a player who doesn't dot his I's, doesn't cross his T's, and now you got to worry about him in big games mm. because he's never really cleaned things up. You've never made him clean up his game. Kaminga is fine, and if he doesn't play 25 minutes a night in the postseason, it doesn't derail my thinking about how important he is in the future. Yeah. Zicky uh, 01, Stani asks, who else on the dubs can do what Jonathan Kaminga can do? He well, said can no he one do? Really. What can he do? What is it? What is it? What does he hang his hat on? Going to the rim with reckless ability. In half in the half court or full court? Okay, right. He's really good on the wing in transition. Yeah. That I'm not my, gotcha. He's not great at it in the half court. Yeah. No doubt. I, not unless he's got a side clear. I, I understand. He's got Okay, well that that's what I mean. I mean like he's got he doesn't rebound for his size. That's important. That's why Pajemski plays, because Pajemski rebounds. He's not a great help defender. He loses focus. These are all things that are important in the postseason. That's all I'm saying. Uh, oh, this ought to be good. Coach in Vallejo. The coach. Says we're both totally wrong about Kaminga. All right. All right. What do we What do we got wrong? Hey, got okay, first of all, and hear me out. Stiney, you've never said anything good about Kaminga his whole career. Okay, oh, so let's start there. You're crazy. Guru? You are crazy. Let him finish that. Let him finish Coach, that. you're crazy. I will, uh, but you're crazy. All right. Go ahead, Coach. Guru? What you got for me? Okay. You give in too easy, and you fall in love too quick. Okay. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here's the thing. Look at it this way. Would you want to play against Jonathan Kaminga? 
okay? Jonathan Kaminga, like you said, Guru, all the time and stick with it. He does things that no other warrior can do. What? What? Last night. What? I'll tell you what he does. What? Okay? Easily. Draw fouls. Fair. Number one. Okay. Collapse the deep. Collapse the defense. He That's right. He collapses the defense defenses. because he can't shoot threes consistently and they leave him open. Wait a Neither can Pajewski and he tipped in two incredible tippies last night to help turn the game, okay, off a missed shot. No other warrior can pogo like that. Jonathan Kaminga blocks shots. No, he doesn't. He Coach, he doesn't block he does shots. Not. And listen, Jonathan Kaminga on ball defense for a man this size, he, tie, he put John ja Morant in knots. He gave Luka Doncic problems. Well, then why do they Jonathan put Wiggins Kaminga, on him? Why do they put Wiggins on Doncic? Because Wiggins can do it also. They both can, so one doesn't cancel out the other. Number two, guys, and I don't want to take up all your time, I want to see one day, and I listen to you guys a lot, and you know it, and I love you both, but why don't you guys talk about the shortcomings of Brandon Pajemski, and why is he getting 30 minutes a game? He has no right hand. He can't jump. Kaminga has no left hand. <laughs> coach, you're <laughs> you killing know, me. Kaminga, and me. I love you, too. Yeah. No, I love you. We, we love Coach. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go. Go. Fin- no, 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 Coach. Let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish, Coach. Okay, okay. thank you, Goo. Uh, you know, Kaminga's left hand going to the hoop is incredible. He has a great spin mood. He put it on last night. He displayed that. Kaminga's shooting free throws at 74%. Yeah, he's Pajewski making free like throws. 60%, it's a 60% free throw shooter. Jonathan Kaminga's rebounding is up to about six rebounds a game. And remember, last of all, guys, they wouldn't even be in this position right now that they are for the play-in if it wasn't for Jonathan Kaminga stepping in when Draymond was suspended. Jonathan Kaminga saved the Warriors this year. I want you to give him credit for that. All right, Coach, I want to, and, and we hear everything, but I just got to leave you with this, man. If I had a dollar for every one of my friends or family that had come down Pod's Road uh, and they come down the road because Moody's not playing in JK, you look at Pod's, you look at his speed. If he had what Kaminga had, if it, it, the mindset, I got to be careful here, just the basketball IQ right now, it would it would be incredible. So to me, I've appreciated Pods because he's picked up the system. In no world, Coach, no world, you know this, should Pods be out-rebounding one Jonathan Kaminga. But it happens nightly. And I love Kaminga. I'm not bashing him. But don't tell me his handles are ready for him to be the man. The one-handed, he he needs to get in the lab. So when I look at Kaminga, I understand the greatness, but he's leaving a lot of meat on the bone where Pajemski is is, is giving you more drumsticks. You got to give Pods his credit because he's getting more out of what his skill set is than Kaminga, who has more gifts. Well, we lost him. I mean... And the pods, like, hate, just, it ha- just to it's pick just, up on what you yeah. said, like, you know, there's meat on the bone. Like, I, I don't fault Kaminga for there being meat on the bone. He's 21. He did not play organized basketball until he was, what, 15? That's the, you know what? That's the beauty of Kaminga. He does still have a ton of meat on the bone because he started late. And, like, I do take offense to, you've never said anything. I'm the guy who said, you better be real careful if you move Kaminga. You got to be real careful if you think you want to move Kaminga. It's a lot. I, there's a lot to like about Kaminga. No doubt. But he's 21, and now you're heading into high, high leverage basketball games. And him coming off an injury that took him pretty much out the starting lineup. Let me clear one thing up. Coach, he does not... Block shots. Block yeah. shots. He does not block shots. And he's a below average rebounder. He can work on those things. Uh, Lee's in Fairfield. What's up, Lee? Sign your guru. What's up, baby? Hey, hey man. Hey, what's going on? Talk yeah. Here's hey, here again last night. For me, last night, Domingo got to do 35. There's nights where you could see Harden was going to be special. You could see Jalen Brunson was going to be special 
when they played with the Mavericks, I'm still waiting for I'm still waiting for Kaminga to be like, bam, mm. 35, 9, 4. Yeah. He's still dead. 19, 15, 15, 19. And then you look at him sometimes and he looks poor. He looks unfocused. He looks like he's disappointed. He's sad. And that's and real. Again, he got a rebound, man. But this is sitting me out rebounding this guy. When you say athleticism, you should also say rebounding. Athleticism, rebounding. Yeah. When you think about Dennis Rodman, kind of athletic, he could rebound, could jump. If you can do all these things, you got to be giving me a. Has he ever had double figure rebounds, guys? Has he ever? Here's the last thing. If 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 JK is willing to take that deal that Steph took when he was hurt when he had the ankle issues, he took that four year, four to five million dollar extension, he can stay. But we cannot break the bank for a guy who we can see right now is not gonna be leading the water Warriors in five years. He is not gonna be leading the Warriors in five years. Mm. He's not. It's interesting. I, I mean, hear you. League. Uh, league to come it over. Uh, I mean, you feel how you feel, Coach. I hear you, but Lee, I hear you too. But I, I'm with you, Stoney. The Jonathan Kaminga, real quick, the block shots. That's not a thing. He's right now, and here, here's I think what Lee's saying. And and right, I get right now, saying. I would agree with him. Kaminga is far too limited to be your best player. He's far too limited to be your best player. Is that hate? Now, can he be that in five years? Lee doesn't think so. I'm I'm open to it, but you got to pay him like you think that exactly. coming up. And I, hey, I love Coach, but Coach cannot call without just throw, doing a drive by on pods, man. <laughs> but you're right. Steve. You know, what? okay. You know why? Yeah. You know, rebound is will. Rebound in his will and want to. I, I I, say, that's just me. Here's what I would say yeah. to Coach. And we love you. Want you. Pajemski to play less? Tell your boy Kaminga to pick I, up his that, play. Man. Then Pajemski won't play as much. And and I'll give the coach, when you ask him what does he do, he, he's his mastered. I won't even say mastered. He's great at getting the foul calls. But, Stani, that's when he's coming down like a locomotive. There's when, another when thing. It's free, there, when it's open, <laughs> you know, it's open gym. There's there's another thing here, too. And and if you want to, like, the one thing I've tried to avoid is talking about Kaminga in extremes. Because I think there's room for him to play 20 minutes a night in the postseason, continue to grow, and then next year be even better than this. I think that's very possible. I think I think he's got a chance to be a really good player. But if you're telling me that Jonathan Kaminga is going to pout and get upset and demand and can't believe it and, and not be effective in this new role, well, then he's answering the questions that you need to ask before you ever give a guy a $30 million Plus, yeah. he hasn't done contract. that yet, and this is new, but he hasn't done that yet. But again, Stiney, if people think I'm being unfair, oh, be it. But at the end of the day, you know how the season ended, and I still think he should have been a part of the rotation last year, and he wasn't. He said what he had to say, and he got it off his chest through his people. And then this year, if you want to call, telling the reporter, I got to give the ball to the O. Like, what did uh, Austin and San Jose say, say Stiney? Do you think there's any merit to Kaminga? And what's around them is older. I don't buy that. That should make your well, job what, that much easier. No, it, or you learn from the wisdom. What Austin I, was saying was that Kaminga, this is the way Kami, he thinks, this is the way Kaminga thinks of things. That he, that Kaminga, yeah. Kaminga would think this. You telling me that I'm having trouble getting on the court <sighs> with this older team and with this, with, with, with his older team, and we're a 10 seed. We're a 10 seed, and I can't play for it. That's what that's what uh, Austin was saying about what he thinks Kaminga's uh, mindset okay. is. Okay. And I... We don't I, know that, but no, I would but think I that's get that. the wrong... I, I that think would Kaminga, be the worst mindset to have. I, I think believe. Kaminga does think he's better than he is. Okay, then... I do. Then, all right, I got you. I, I do. And then, I to Kaminga's credits, Donnie, he doesn't say... He doesn't stay quiet-lipped when he feels like he's something ain't going right. As far as how he's being utilized, that we know. We learned that. And we came in here one day and I was like, oh my God, is Kaminga's future in jeopardy? I didn't want it to be. But when you say I got to give the ball to the OGs, insinuating, you know, I can't be the best I can be because what's around, like, young fella, you ain't there yet. You got some stuff and super potential, 
But it will be interesting. And for the Warriors to be uh, a problem moving forward starting today, Stani, Jonathan Kaminga has to master what it looks like might be his new role going into the playing game. It may not. We may come in here next Wednesday. I doubt if he's back in there. But I do wonder. Because you don't want to lose him. I'm sorry. But if if, if it's mentally. I, I can't think of one reason why Steve Kerr at this point would go back to Kaminga, Wiggins, Draymond right, Green right. as a starting unit. I mean, you want to talk about opening yourself up for criticism. That, that to me, would right. be, that that doesn't make sense. How can you be playing your best basketball of the season and you're going to make a change yeah. right after the change you made was the one that may have right. been leading right. to you playing the best basketball of the season? Uh, James Dean, Kaminga's numbers are better than, than Wiggins. Yeah. It's not about that. It really isn't. It's about how the Warriors can be their best. How can they reach their full potential and make a run? That's that's all that should matter right now. 888-957-9570. Chris A. Uh, on the YouTube chat. Um, somebody's like, you worried about losing him mentally? Wouldn't that kind of show you? Doesn't that prove to you well, then that we the got umbrella. an issue? Yeah, with the guy? No, and no. I'm not saying he's, he's no. not. That's not what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing a guy who's lost mentally. I'm seeing a guy who's a little frustrated. Right. That's and, all. And that was my fear that it gets there to where, like last night, you're kind of wondering, you know, where's this guy's headspace at? It could have just been a natural bad game. But I do wonder. Now all of a sudden he's mastering this new role, and if I'm pissed off, Stein, it's kind of hard to focus. And sometimes you get in your own way. That's all I'm saying. It was one game. We'll see tonight. He might go for 30. But I think this is the role. He might not play. Well, you're right there. He He's questionable tonight. Yeah. Uh, Kaminga questionable. Clay Thompson and Draymond Green probable. And GP2 uh, doubtful. GP2 doubtful. GP2, come on. Relax. No, I'm just saying. just getting him ready. No, but GP2, is is he injured a lot, Stiney? He's injured. Always. I'm walking back to the bench then. I was like, this dude's going to, yeah, just, I love the guy when he's out there, but yeah. I mean, he. Injury prone. He gets nicked up. Yeah, there you go. He gets nicked That's up. That's all. I love him. You like him because he gets nicked up a lot? No, I love you too, man. Save it. Uh, what's coming up next <laughs> is brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromise. Navian tankless water heaters, the proven leader in condensing technology. Request a Navian.
This is Moses Moody, and you are listening to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Moody! Real quick for a couple of uh, our friends uh, on the time. YouTube chat, Mitchell and Ness and Uncle Looney, they're expressing uh, displeasure because they feel like we're pitting players against each other. Oh, I, I must have missed that. Take it up with Steve Kerr. He's uh, the one who time. called Kaminga and Wiggins redundant. Not me. Nobody's pitting anybody against anybody. Yeah, don't We're figuring out way. the best combination for the Golden State Warriors going into the playoffs and all things being equal, how much guys are going to play. And here's the other thing I need to clear up. Stop saying Pajemski can't make threes. He's almost shooting 39% from the... Did coach say that? Everybody goes, Pajemski can't coach make a coach three. Coach is hard on them. Yeah, made th yeah. Might be shooting a higher percentage than Clay this year. Yeah, he's losing the lead. 38%. He was 38.7 uh, going into last night's game. Uh, hurry up. So I got a quick question for I'm you. I'm done. So this is how much I love you. I think about <laughs> you. The Masters is upon us. And I thought to myself, you guys don't know this. Grandy, write this down. We are going to be a part and we're going to be broadcasting for the Atco Pest Control Golf Tournament. And yours truly has been uh, designated to hit the first shot. So I've been in the lab working on my shot so I don't disappoint. Mm. So that will be my greatest golf moment to lead off a tournament and have the honor of doing that. And because it's Masters Week, I thought to myself, I should know this, but I don't. How would Stani answer what's his greatest golfing moment? And if Grandy, you have oh, one, boy. think about it. But do you I do not. <laughs> oh, okay. I appreciate the you honesty. Know, you know who else doesn't? Evan. No, oh, he would not. He, he, that video was not. Evan sent us a video. Of, he went to the driving <laughs> Oh, I didn't yesterday. hear this critique. Evan, of course, our great producers yeah. in uh, Retro Cucamonga. Uh, he's got Walker Bueller's uh, rehab hey, start. Hey, I'm That's tight. All right. Uh, today for the Stockton Port. Stay all right. Um, Bawa. Yeah. You feel like as a baseball guy, Evan would have a decent golf swing, but no? Yeah. Actually, I I didn't see the video. Uh, no, oh. it looked pretty good. Yeah. It, it looked fun. Oh, he bent in the hip there. Hey, hurry up. What's your moment? It's hot. Well, do you have one? one? Yeah. Oh, you I, got a hole in one. Well, I've, got, I've got two hole in ones. Well, then that has. But you to know be what? It. I think I. I think my. I. Your moment. A seventy nine. I think I'd rather have a seventy nine than a hole in one. And I'm with you. That's breaking eighty, which yeah. is not. I've, I've broken eighty one time in my life, or once or twice. So, I think I'd rather. I'd rather shoot a seventy nine than have a hole in one. So I guess my finest moment was a 79. But how did you feel when you got uh, that, uh, oh, that hole in one that some people never experienced? Like, so, well, were you like, holy, holy, you know what? Yeah, it's like hitting a buzzer beater, but it might only be a buzzer beater at the end of the second quarter. Right. Yeah, you, know, you have a hole in one on hole seven, you still got to finish up. Like when I had my two hole in ones, I did not shoot a 79. I think one I had an 84. So you've one. never, you and Dibs take, I believe for Dwayne Dibley, the uh, invitational. Had you won a tournament like that, would that supersede breaking under 80? Like if you, yeah, I think if you, you won had, a tournament never, like yeah. that. Okay, yeah. right. No, I never won a tournament like that. Wow. Yeah. Tommy's in Atlanta. ATL. Hey, Tommy, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How you, you guys doing? What's doing up, well? T? Um, I, you know, this is like deja vu all over again um, with, with Kaminga. And uh, we went down this road last year. Mm. When Kaminga played, uh, he was instrumental in getting the Warriors to the playoffs. When the playoffs started, there was no Kaminga. They, they had him on the bench. I'm afraid the same thing is going to happen again this year when they play the Lakers. They're going to have Kaminga on the bench, and they're going to get, Lakers going to clean their clock, and we'll be talking about this next week. You know, this kid is 21 years old. He's the most underappreciated young potential star I've ever seen. And I'm from Atlanta. Follow me, and not follow the Warriors, but the negativity toward this kid is just mind blowing. Um, that's all I have to say. Yeah, I, is T there? God, I try to, I try to. Now, what do you think he meant by negativity? He, like, I look this at conversation's it. Conversation's not negative. Like everything he said about him being young is. Oh, Tommy's still there. Tommy, you still there? Tommy, not there. Yeah. I, I think I think he's got Austin and San Jose was pro JK. I like, think he's got a great future ahead of him, Kaminga. No I doubt. really do. But is that here? 
Well, I, I, I'm not even got. Yes, it's here. Right. It's here. Kaminga's part of the future. Absolutely. He should be. Better be careful if you want to move him. But unfortunately, right now, he's 21, and, and Kerr's leaning toward Wiggins because he didn't put Kaminga back in the starting lineup. But, okay, like, if I'm Kerr, I, I'm saying to Kaminga, it's not you. Well, but right, when you okay. were gone, right. we found a better combination involving Trace Jackson Dave. Has nothing to do with you. I mean, will that help? Probably not. But that's the truth. Yeah, it's not really Kaminga. It's maybe they went all season and they were playing B, you know, if you give the Warriors a grade, up until Kaminga got hurt, they were playing B, you know, they grade they were would doing be a better B. still, yeah. Okay, well, they've Why discovered not? something that at least for ten games or whatever, eight, ten games, they're an A. Mm. He, listen, I, I'm not giving up on Kaminga, but I'm also not saying he's got to play 35 minutes a night. And I haven't given up. Because he's in between, quite uh, frankly. Whatever they play and who they play in the play in, guys, I mean this, Tiny. If he wasn't if if he wasn't back in the start lineup somehow, that wouldn't floor me. Well, I that, you know what I mean? Like would, I'm ready for uh, it would floor maybe me if Clay he, goes back out because TJD is a mainstay. Why, why would you do that? No, I, it's not I would. I just I really believe if Steve Kerr changes the starting lineup right now. It, not out of necessity. Okay. Right. I, hear you. I think that would be absolutely positive. I guess, positively I guess crazy. what you're saying to me is I'm I'm so worried about a player's my, a psyche that I would do something detrimental to the team when it was working. I mean, I'll just be honest with you. That when you said you think Kaminga will go back into the starting lineup, I'm like, you got to be kidding. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I am kind of like, if all things are equal, I mean, to me, that would be. Of all the things Steve Kerr's gotten hit for. Now, uh, who, uh, Tommy in Atlanta, I do want to say one thing. The one thing that you're right on the money about is, I know you're and doing. it's not nothing, but the reality of the situation is Wiggins came back during the playoffs yes, last year and went right back into the starting yeah, line. That happened. And Kaminga took the brunt After of it. he was playing his ass off. Does it look like Kaminga could possibly take the brunt of something again? Maybe. Wow. Let's 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 see how it plays out. What else? No, I'm what's just your fun. karaoke go to song? Oh, come on, this hurts. Marvin Gaye. Let's get it's my ringtone. Let's get it on. Who doesn't like that song? Well, it's let's every, get it on. It says it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get but, it. More of my God, I wish we had karaoke but, right now. Uh, it's too. We don't have enough time to get in. Yeah, it. but. What's you, yours? You shouldn't pick a song like that. Wow. Because it's so iconic. It just invites unbelievable butchering of the song. That's it's what like karaoke's pick, for. No, you you want to put you want to give it an effort. Oh, I That's hope too, you're not one too, of those. No, I failed iconic. at singing, no. so I'm a treat nope. karaoke over drinks nope. like I'm at the improv. Nope. Guess what? You failed. You're not a pro singer, and let us have Do fun. Do yourself a That's favor. That's what it's about. Do you're yourself a favor, and everybody who's listening, pick a new song. You can't do Marvin Gaye's is, Let's Get It On. What? It's, it's too big. It's, it's like doing the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, it's so full. It, eh, pick another song. Nah. Yeah. What's your go-to? Bad, bad Leroy Brown. <laughs> right. Jim Croce. Mm-hmm. Do you have your readers on when you're reading the teleprompter? Well, I told you. I forgot the words the last time <laughs> I said it. That is part of town. There you know. Oh, boy. Where's Randy, of course, talking about the south side of Chicago. Of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Boy. That's the yeah. baddest part of town. All right. Uh, let me see. We got uh, uh, the crossover. Cro no crossover. Yeah, crossover today, baby. Yeah, we got crossover. And then we've Special got Special uh, guest on the crossover. What's who? Uh, that's the tease, people. Oh, what's bugging you uh, <laughs> is also coming up at 2 o'clock. And um, it's all brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. <laughs> Say hello to spring at the California Academy of Sciences Spring in the Garden. See the massive animatronic insects, catch a puppet show, or make your own boat with Riveropolis all in one.
Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right. Let's welcome in Dan Dibley and Larry Kruger. Yeah. It is the crossover. And coming up in 10 minutes, we've got What's Bugging You, sponsored by Atco Pest Control. What's bugging you, Larry? Yeah, I'll start with Larry. Uh, Warriors going to make a run here? We haven't seen you in forever, so it's a new question you for look you. Good. I think they. Uh-oh. Hold on, hold on. You gotta usually turn it uh, on. Clean up on aisle, Larry. <laughs> yeah, it starts with no. on. There you go. You, you okay. should be good now. All right. Oh, there hey, 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 Take Thank the you. muff, yeah. Thank you. Catch. I got you. Thank you for that. Thanks for sharing your muff. No problem. I got an extra. You know, yeah. <laughs> I'm that guy. I'm rolling with uh, with dual muffs and one at home. I think the Warriors are already making a run. What I mean, come on, yeah, well, yeah, good they're call. they're killing it on the road. Man, I mean, and uh, <clears throat> you know, last night was kind of interesting. The Laker game was about as good as they can play. But yeah, Warriors are making a run. Yeah. I, you, if you're, are we getting into the what's bugging us right now? No, uh, two, two o'clock. o'clock. Yeah, two o'clock. Oh, Larry's we're ready. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do your homework, Larry. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, relax, yeah. Larry. Speaking yeah. of road wins, did you win that yeah, bet? Yeah, 25 25? Games. Yep. And so you got the win? Yeah, I got the win. But I also Man. got the L. I had Sacramento, Sacramento. Larry out doing their win total last year, which was 49. And, uh, oh, shout you needed out, 50? Yeah, no, I needed 48. You needed, I needed 49. You needed 49. And when they lost Monk, that was over. They're struggling, and I... Path the least resistance. Wow. Who? What warrior fan does not want the Kings first, Larry? Oh, without Monk, you gotta <laughs> yeah, right. you gotta demand the Kings. I can't. I, I, I'm that. sending a town Man. car for the entire Kings team. Two months ago, I would have thought that you would have won the Kings bet and lost the Warrior Road. We, win we were bet. talking I, I, about no doubt about it. That's almost Warriors. a bad beat for you on the split. I think the Warriors you know, went seventeen and three on the road their last twenty. Wow, is that man. is that a fact? Something, Something crazy. like that. Wow. Yeah, seventeen and four. I think in the yeah. last twenty one on the road. Actually, yeah. that's you know what's funny is that's one I can take. Like I can yeah, take that. I got you. Like in a weird way, it's like are you kidding? The, the bet was such a lock that dude. Once they got to, two, of course, he got the numbers confused halfway through the year. And he started, we made the bet initially, it was 24. I was here well, for that, yeah. The, actually, the, the original bet was 25, and then Goo does what he always does. He said, no, 24. And I was like, fine, 24, I don't care. It's still, But it had to be over 24. I, I think it was during the crossover, and we agreed that 24 and a half would be the number. But they are 17 and 4 yeah. in their last 21. Man, the Jeez, then miss. halfway through the year, Guru inexplicably... <laughs> Started saying, yeah, I don't know if they're going to get to 25. And I remember looking at Evan like, he doesn't oh, even know. Boy, you guys. I said 24. And so we went 25 for the last two months. And then before last night's game, yeah, I said, I, get a text. I concede. Yeah. Even if they lose tonight, you you, you win the bet. Because it was originally yeah. 24. And in the spirit of the bet, you won the bet. Yeah. Right. You right. won the bet. All right. I want to ask Larry and Dibs this. God, I hate that. I'm going to go Dr. Phil on both of you. <laughs> okay. and, and if I can get out of here, Larry, on a payday Friday with your Dr. Phil before we leave. Can you give it to me now, sir? You know, you know no, no, that's my Trent Balky. You're a disgusting fat pig, and you got to push away from the table. I'm, don't be counting calories and asking about carbohydrates. Push that's away from the table. <laughs> I didn't know you had that, that in is, you. I heard that, that man. So boy, funny. that boy is talented. Like that? <laughs> about could, the home I, record. I could go into uh, my Trent Bulky if I... If I need to, I'll go into my trip. And Guru can get into his mock rivers. Well, hey, is that my... Yeah, oh, boy. No, that was great. No, that has been. What's wrong with your bucks over there, Mock? I just beat the Celts. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm nervous. I can't top that after Cut the lead Dr. to 14. Phil. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, after no, yeah. Dr. Phil, I yeah. have nothing. But are we so sure? Here I go. We want that play-in game. At Chase, with whatever reason why they're at home, no. record is kind of funky. No. Re regular season playoffs, totally different. I mean, as far as I'm concerned. It's awesome what they're doing on the road, and the, what they've done on the road this year. What is it? Fifth or sixth best road record in the history of the franchise. Awesome. <laughs> but come on. That was a talking playoff, point last night. Playoff basketball you want. Okay, know, all right. Right? Come on. But yeah. you want the eight so that you can have the, oh, the, the cushion. Two bites of the apple, lines. as Steve Kerr yeah. was saying. So there's a chance you get the eight. You win both these games, and the Kings can have a hiccup. The Kings have, what, Phoenix, right? Yeah. Among the two opponents, and Phoenix is still playing 
to secure the six. So so is New Orleans, Dibs. They're going to come in there hungry. They are scary, too. And Larry and I will get more into this. We're, we're doing preview radio today because we oh, yeah. all kind of agree that this game is the biggest game of the no year. It's game it. 81, the penultimate game, as Steiny will uh, want to, to declare. The second to last is what penultimate means for those of you who scored poorly on the SAT so many years ago. Look, at you can learn by this show. You can li- you listen to Dibs, you can learn. You really learn I try to something. craft a little bit with the vocab when I can. Uh, you know, when I'm in the big chair, when I'm driving the bus like I will be today. But New Orleans scares me, not only because of last night, but when you look at what they did last night without Ingram, and no they doubt. won't have Ingram again, but... The team is dangerous. And Zion's playing the best basketball I, he's ever played. I, I do think that because the Warriors have gone, what is it, 9 of 10? Yeah. They've won. Because they've gone on that run, now you have the right to start thinking about, can we avoid Denver? Because that, to That's me, the is route. the next oh my gosh. step. Shoot. If you get to 8, it gives you a shot at getting into the tourney at 7. Right. Which would avoid Denver. If you get into the, just to, a lot of people... Still don't understand how this works because it's a little different. Um, but if, you know, obviously if the Warriors lose like at Phoenix or at New Orleans in the first play in, that means they've got to win to get eight. And that's dim. So if they lose their first play in, assuming they get to eight, then they will not avoid the Denver Nuggets. They will, assuming the Nuggets finish first. And then they're going home. They're going home against Denver. They're but, so good. Well, we asked but, Bobby Fitz yesterday. Uh, yeah, yeah, I missed it. Hey, uh, hey, Bob, uh, anybody beating Denver? And he goes, no. I mean, wow. it's one word, Bobby Fitz. And this from a guy who's so really he's right. He's smart. Well, yeah. but he always he normally would see the glass half full yeah. when it comes to everything. But he kept it a buck, Denver. as the kids would say. Nobody's beating Denver. I got to go down in the out. West. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Get you avoid you know you know what's interesting to me is that Kerr has done an incredible sell job to his players. You can hear it every time they're interviewed, whether it be a sideline thing or a radio interview. He's sold them that they are good enough and can make a run. Um, but I think we all agree they got to miss Denver. They got to somehow not face Denver. Although couple guys on the on the show Shasky and and were they were suggest- it was interesting oh, yeah. it was an and interesting another call caller was that watching how you know they looked gassed against the Lakers do they have a better shot right off the bat against Denver because the playoffs will have just been starting my feeling is if that's what you're worried about you're done you're probably not going to win after Denver it ain't about stamina Larry it's about Jokic well, I, and, I, and Jordan. also wouldn't you be as an older team more gassed, exactly. knowing that you've had to play everybody. Steph exactly. and Larry and I talked about this in the green room, as Goo would say. Steph is looking a little fatigued. Oh, there's no Even doubt. he had the game off an 8-22 of last night. Nope. And <sighs> he's not, I mean, he's trying hard, but he doesn't have that same freshness. And I'm hoping he gets it by next week, or do you think? We got in the fourth quarter. Well, he did. You got to give that. him that. Yeah. A couple of splashes, but, but, but Portland that that was a, that was a f- offensive offense. Yeah, like good God, these guys can't hit the side of a bar. Terrible. How many air balls? And yet, Port, you know, six minutes to go, Portland's up three, and I'm watching it, oh. watching it on my phone because uh, the wife supper had command of the uh, of the big oh, screen. So I'm, I'm fine. I'm on the phone and I'm watching. I'm going, oh, I, I'm oh my God, this yes. is like this is an uncomfortable watch right now. What'd you make of Kaminga? I thought he played a little out of control. And Larry and I are going to talk yeah, about Kaminga. I, I love the way Kaminga's playing. I love it. I mean, absolutely. I could not envision that Kaminga could be playing this way, where he's attacking and making the right basketball play and still staying aggressive, but still looking for you know the best shot. The drives to the hoop with the quick dump off. Um, instead of take you know getting an offensive foul or just you know because his handles it. aren't a one you know what I mean it's like right but his energy and his speed going to the hole is unparalleled and then if he can find Trace Jackson Davis or whomever for a little bunny I mean that's uh, to me that's that's what I want. I thought last night he was going to the hole a little bit out of control. Oh, man, as I go, Doctor Seuss on you to the hole out of control uh, too many times, especially in that fourth quarter where I was looking for him to maybe allow Steph to be a part of the offense, and then Steph started to initiate a couple of great dive cuts from Kevon Looney that I thought changed the uh, the tenor of that game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Steiny used the word uh, like he was frustrated. I want to speak for you, but I felt that. Uh, Something was up, and he's probable tonight because he took a fall. Questionable. Questionable, yeah. Coming yeah. is. Okay, GP wow. Yeah. Yeah. He fell on his pelvis last night. Yeah. He, t- he, t- 
he did take a hard yeah. fall um, on the pelvis. Yes, the one. Yeah, the one thing I was thinking about last night, it, watch watching the game is like all year we've talked about is Clay coming back, or would they ever think of moving Kaminga, or what do you do with Wiggins? And we never got around to Looney. Like his future is very much in doubt. And after you see him play a game like last night, where he oh, clearly he helps, helps you win. So so he's under contract next year for eight million. Correct, Looney. But they can waive him. He's still guaranteed three. I thought it was two, but yeah, three so, sounds right. So if he comes back, he's coming back at eight million dollars. And you wonder. I mean, I get it. You'd say, why wouldn't you bring him back? But if you get into an off season where you're really looking at the cap and you're starting to look at Gary Payton the second making nine and Looney making eight and Kaminga making seven and Moody making six all bets are kind of off with Looney in terms of moving forward with his team. And it's just like, man, vintage Looney, like nobody thought about the fact that his future's in doubt too, because he's just Kavon Looney. Right? Oh, yeah. And it's just a yeah. cap thing. You know what I mean? No it's doubt. like, yeah. if it wasn't a cap thing, it wouldn't even be a thing. I, I, I to what, what jumped out to me was last night was what can the Warriors get out of their combo five going forward? Because if they can get, Anything close to what they got last night, that's going to be a major, Man. major thing. And who, when you say combo, uh, TJD and and Looney. I mean, the problem is Looney. green. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be green. Yeah. Looney's not that's really in the I, rotation right, right. except out of necessity. For. And I've been saying for for weeks or months, Tiny, that I didn't think that Looney would be back because not only because the number, but the game has kind of passed him by. And I mean that literally in terms of the speed of all mm -hmm. these players, the way he plays doesn't fit often enough with the current NBA, but just hearing you talk about the $3 million guarantee, I could see him waving Kavan and saying, you know, if you want to go out there and find a better offer, please do. If not, we'll give you 3 and, and 12. And, we'll yeah. get you, you know, or maybe it's 3 and 15. We'll get you 4, 5, and 6, and that third year will be, again, not fully guaranteed, but... Because Kavon's the kind of guy you want to have around as no your doubt. 10th man, 11th man. But if he still thinks well, he can give more, no shade of TJD because he's taken off. If I'm loony and my pride kicks in, I'm like, hey, Joe, let me go see if I can continue what I used to do for you all. I'm not ready to sit here and watch this youngster take my my minutes. You're well, listening, to, real quick, yeah. you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First North Cal Credit. He's a, he's a warrior, you know, a home homegrown warrior yeah. out of UCLA, and Though it was bad to see him get take one off the noggin last night without looking, and that was that was kind it of was a, almost a turnover. That was the best part. I mean, I mean that dude, was not a, that never was a good look. Game. But the day, and I get it. He's if he, let's just call him your third center right now. The other, but the reason why it's tricky is because okay, you're you're planning on moving forward with Trace Jackson Davis. Yeah. That's fine. Still a young player, and as Draymond gets older, you probably want him to play less and less five. So I think there's unless always, he can be that three point sniper. Well, that he was I, in the, the first other night. half. I'm they just all saying, were like, hilarious. as yeah. far as third centers go, like Looney's great because he's perfect on a night like last night. No Dray and you know no Draymond. Yeah, and so now he becomes your backup center, and he's just solid. Like he, I get it. He he's not he might not be the player he was, but he still does not hurt you when he's, he's out 28 there. Twenty eight years old, Stanley. he knows. But How he's attractive an, he's is an that? Old, Third he's an center. Old okay, he just is. Uh, he is. Body's yeah. old, yeah. but he also gives you insurance against Green going off the deep end. Exactly, yeah. you know, exactly. Which right. seemingly happens all the time. What if that yeah. wouldn't have happened? What would the Warriors' win total be at now? Just what it could have should have there. Well, and not only that, look at the Warriors. Worse. Look at the Warriors' record in games decided by under four. Yeah. It's not good. No. It's like 4-10 and 10 or 4-12 or it's something. It's about like to that. get good, y'all. All right, uh, let's get into it. It's uh, the What's Bugging You segment sponsored by Atco Pest Control for all your uh, exterminating needs and then some. I'll start. All right, go ahead. Uh, my mom has a, a saying. Maddie. She calls me Maddie sometimes. You're really painting a nice picture here. You're, she lovely woman. I'm good. Mary. How are things going? I don't know, man. Maddie. You're exactly where you need to be. Mm. Stay where your feet are. Yeah, and that kinda, that kinda Warrior makes. fans, Jonathan Kaminga is exactly where he needs to be. He's 21 years old. He's playing 20 minutes a night for a team that's got championship aspirations. 
He's going to be a really good player down the line. Let's not rush. Let's not give him too much. Let's not anoint him a superstar. He's got a lot of potential. Got a chance to be a real good player. But he's got to be given more time. Stop just saying Kaminga 30, 35 Mm. minutes a game. Because that might not be right now what's best for the war. He's exactly where he needs to be. If he plays the way they want him to play, he will have an important role in this team the rest of the season. It may be off the bench, but it'll still be an important role that they really, really need. So let's just well, take our time with Jonathan Kaminga. So who's bugging you? The Warrior fans who are clamoring for the 35 Uncle Looney minutes? on the uh, 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 YouTube Okay, good. Yeah. No, 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 just... Just I, uh, the it's ones the that fans it's the who fan, are thank you, the fans yeah, the who fan. are clamoring yeah, yeah. for the fa- fans who are clamoring. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. All right, we hear you. There it is. Good. I'll go second. Let's go, Larry. What's bugging you, Larry? I can't. St- I can't listen to one more freaking minute of these know-it-all idiots who Kerr can't coach. Kerr's an idiot. Kerr. He's one of the most accomplished right. coaches. Coaching in the NBA is not about X's and O's. It's about bringing a group of of highly paid, maybe egotistical in some cases, guys who are getting gassed up by their friends every night in their ear and bringing that group from Halloween to nearly the 4th of July and keeping the thing together. Here we are. It's April. How many people are like, Kerr sucks. Kerr's got to go. Kerr's not doing it. Kerr, 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 Kerr. Here we are. It's April 12th. Playoffs are about to start. Clay's Clay's revved up. Draymond's ready. If Curry's rested, he we know Curry's ready. Kuminga's moving. You know, I mean that they've got he's got options. He's brought the whole group along. The vibe is really really good. I can't listen anymore to Curry's an idiot. I'm with I'll you. I'll second that. Yeah. I'll third that. Plus we it, gave him an A minus yesterday. I yeah, mean, we, we referenced the, the A minus. Yeah. And uh, I, think I what, questioned him at times, Larry, this season. <gasps> it's fine but, to question. Yeah, it's no a long doubt, year. You wouldn't man, be doing your job if man. you didn't question. That's what we do here. Yeah. We talk about it and stir it up a little bit. But come on. Yeah. At some point you gotta you gotta hit the brakes and <laughs> give the guy <laughs> his resume. Yeah. And just understand that ba- as, NBA basketball is not all about X's and O's. Right. It's about managing the group and managing the egos. And they're ready. They're primed. It's probably the least about X's and O's in the major three sports. I mean, baseball, you don't have as much X's and O's. Truly, each individual has to have his own game plan at the plate. But football is pure X's and O's. And yeah, you manage egos, but you've got the position coaches who do that as much, if not more, than Kyle Shanahan. And the way you laid that out, Larry, was perfect because you go from October to almost the 4th of July, and you've got to navigate this day in and day out, playing time, touches, shots, and all the rest of it. It's different. Draymond yeah. Green, roundhouses on Nurkic, and all yeah. kinds of What about yeah. Coach I mean, uh, Dennis' death? You had a death in the family. I mean, I that, mean think about that. That's another thing, Just yeah. The group. I mean, it's about it's a small traveling party, and let's be honest, the Warriors won the last title over the Celtics partly because... Other teams fractured nah. along the way. Yeah. No the doubt. Warrior, what year under Kerr's regime had the Warriors fractured? Maybe you could argue the final KD year, but for the most part, they stay well, they together. Yeah. I think Start last year they fractured. Yeah. Thought they fractured last year? They fractured. Jordan Poole went into me I, mode because yeah. he got his face caved in by a teammate. Almost fractured. Andrew Wiggins went on a 41-game sabbatical for personal reasons, yep. serious reasons, but... That didn't go a long way toward uh, engendering a lot of support from his teammates. Last year, I think, was fractured. Clay was hunting a shot and hunting a contract. A couple uh, team meetings. Steph threw his Kurt, mouthpiece. Kurt kind of admitted it right at the end of the yeah. year. Not yeah, that yeah. they fractured, but that he could have been better. Yeah, yeah for sure. Go. Um, I mean this, and I'm like a stick you, shift. You're going to use the one from earlier, right? No, I'm not. No. This is just this is a real one. So take my Warrior Alliance away. I am as neutral on this take as I've ever been in anything in sports. And I've talked to myself a lot, and it's been a great conversation. But if you guys, you basketball heads, do not know the fact that the referees are swallowing the whistle, and James Harden doesn't need me to defend him, but he's been a total failure in the playoffs in years past. And the biggest reason is the refs trick him. Or they say, you know what, we're, we're not doing what we used to do when you score all day uh, in the regular season. 
I'm telling you all, the basketball I'm watching, it is up for grabs with the amount of non-calls they're not calling, and it's bugging me because some of these fouls are egregious, and to everybody's credit, they're, they're still playing. It's odd and weird, but it's equalized the playing field, the court to me. If you're going to continue this, it's become like prison ball, and Curry never gets a whistle. That's just me. I feel like he gives the Warriors a chance. Larry, they are letting everything go. We might see some upsets here to where Luka, oh, I can get to the line. I got the ref. He'll fall. They're not calling that stuff, and I just want to know now, and I won't, if it's going to continue start next Wednesday. It's it not, has changed. Yeah, it's about consistency for me. I can I can ref it any way you want. Just be consistent. But I I, I totally am with you on the, the Curry does. For a mega star, oh, the star that you listed for, for a for of a course. star like this to not get the kinds of calls that the other elite stars get is baffling. It is baffling to me. I, I and we see it regularly. Yeah. Pretty understandable. I'll let you it's completely you understandable the way he, the few times, the infrequency with which he goes to the hoop and the way he attacks the basket. He attacks it away from contact wow. using the teardrop, the flip. The scoop, the baby hook. He doesn't go so in and take like the body. So it's not like Kyrie, you're saying? No, it's not like a lot of these superstars. And all, I don't want to get all of the yeah. dub nation down my road, but all y'all are a bunch of crybabies, including the two guys I'm looking at right now. Well, what about my is and this for the radio your, uh, audience? I'm not looking what about at my, is this your take? what's bugging no, you? No, it's uh, not. Yeah, what's go ahead, get me. to it because I think this is going to affect the playoffs if they okay. continue to. I like the way they're officiating it yeah, because just, enough of the free throw and enough of guys like Harden and Luka uh, with the pump and chuck and throw it at the rim, play basketball. Uh, you know what's bugging me, guys, what? is all of these D-bags and <laughs> D-bagettes on their motorized scooters oh. and their oh, e-bikes boy. on the sidewalk. What's going on with that? Get your ass in the street. I don't know. We have I've a brand new series of bike lanes yes, here I've in San Francisco it. in the city and county of San Francisco as the late, well, I don't think he's late, but as the great Willie Brown would say, you don't belong on the sidewalk. It's illegal for you to be on the sidewalk with your little e-scooter and your e-bike. Memo to door dasher and food delivery guy right. on your big brawny motorcycle look and e-bike, get in the street. Wow. You don't belong on the sidewalk. And I'll tell you what, we should be allowed to throw a high elbow <laughs> 1970s hockey style and knock these fools off their scooter when I'm trying to walk as a pedestrian wow. on the sidewalk. Well, I know how big of a wrestling fan you are. You know what would work great on it would be Talk a Stan me. the Lariat Hansen clothesline. Who the hell is that, there Larry? You go. Stand I have no Larry. idea. He used to put, I, he used to I put, love that you would do it. He used to put silver yeah. dollars right here, and he would, yeah. Dibs, you, isn't that a little bit of an old man take? So you're being terrorized no, by no, no, no. people oh, who are not being terrorized. I, you know, if I see somebody whiz by me on the street, I'm like, hey, way, way to go, man. Way to go. <laughs> wow, I don't care if you're on the sidewalk. I don't care if you're doing wheelies. I mean, do, do you really? Oh. Does that really bug you? It bugs I mean, me. That's a little because, bit of an old man take. No, no, no. It's wow. not an old man take at all. Larry. If it was an old man take, I'd take my cane and I would stick it out in front of him. But are you being terrorized by, by these no, people? I'm being annoyed, Larry. Oh, I'm being okay. annoyed. Right. It's right. the what's bugging you segment. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, wow. they, they certainly is should. it downtown? Because it's not. I don't. It's, it's not right. It's out, not it's neighborhood. Right here. It's oh, all it's downtown. Walk down Kearney Street. Yeah, walk. Yeah, I agree. I was always on the street when I do it. I've actually noticed that too. Yeah. Remember I, I was riding. I and was it, on the street. Really, it's the uh, the food delivery guy on the. Uh, it's basically a motorcycle. These souped up e bikes with their big giant cooler on the back. Wow. Get in the street. Well, Damn, in the street. Larry I'm said, not. "Old man, take." I mean, oh, I mean, I, mean, I, like, I, mean oh. I like a guy who's going fast on the street. You <laughs> know, what I mean, Larry. This guy hasn't left Walnut Creek since I mean, 2020. I mean, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a little. It makes it a little more dicey as you're walking down the street. I kind of like it. I don't we got need dicey on the YouTube. walking down the street. D. All. Lou said Uncle Looney's getting too much run. So we got who is uh, Uncle Looney today? Oh, okay. D. Who Lou. said that? He uh, D. Lou. Oh, yeah, a little jealous. Well, he's not the boss. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, we'll be listening. Biggest game of the year tonight, and these guys have it all for you on 95.7 The Game. I love the young people. 
their longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be brighter days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you stink. It's Willard and Dibs <laughs> on 95.7 The Game. All right, uh, last minute salutations from Guru. I, I guess four hours isn't enough, Goo. Uh, yeah, Goo's got bonus takes. Uh, the guy does a four hour show and he still has takes, Larry, that he didn't uh, get a chance to get off his chest. It's Dan Dibley in with Larry Kruger today. Willard and Dibs. Mark is on a little bit of a three day taking care of uh, mom's birthday down in LA. Hopefully, uh, Mark's trip went well. He was hoping to leave early this morning and Get on up and over the grapevine before you hit that L.A. traffic. Happy and, uh, birthday to Mama Willard. Yes, Ellen Willard. Her birthday actually isn't for another week or so, but they wanted to celebrate this weekend because next weekend is looking like a huge weekend for the Golden State Warriors. Much like tonight, Larry, a huge game for Golden State. Game 81, and for me, biggest game of the year for the Warriors is tonight. No doubt, and they get a, a Pelicans team. You said we're not getting Brandon Ingram, or we are? I think he's out. I was looking at the ESPN report. He is right? out. And That's huge. Out until uh, Feb 14, which would be their final game Sunday. And depending on their need in that game, he may not even play on Sunday. Well, I love what I'm seeing from Golden State. I, and if you had told me a month and a half ago, let's say, that Golden State was going to circle the wagons, play great D, rebound, everybody was going to be feeling good, Kerr's going to have his rotation down, and they're just going to be rampaging. I never would have bought it. Never would have bought it. But that's why I got to give Kerr a little credit because, you know, I've heard so many interviews, Dibs, where they're, where the players are like, you know what? Um, we believe in each other. We're primed. We know we have, you know, our three Hall of Famers, and we got a young core, and we got a deep bench, and we're playing D. So, I mean, they feel good. Warriors... Warriors are feeling good, and if you're a Warrior fan, you got to be feeling good. I'm optimistic about tonight. Yeah, I'm optimistic, but I'm also cautiously pessimistic, if that makes sense, based on what I saw last night from New Orleans. 135-123 over a depleted Sacramento, admittedly. But watching New Orleans, even without Brandon Ingram, who won't play tonight, they've got a way to beat you in three or four different ways. Zion Williamson, finally healthy in the association, and he's playing as well as he has going back his days at Duke and CJ McCollum is fitting great with that team. They've got Valanchunas, a big who can pose problems against any team. Certainly Golden State can have to match up with TJD. I'm a little worried about New Orleans and just how well they've been playing. Yeah, no, I mean, they've got length and, and athleticism and youth and you know, that team's really, really, I mean, the closer you look at that team, you're like, wow, they got a lot of talent on that team. Um, so yeah, it'll be a challenge, but no Ingram, Second half of a back-to-back -back on the road. Um, you know, what, what, did I hear Fitz say last night the Warriors played the most back-to-backs of any team in the league? That sounds about right. And um, I, I think they have a fantastic record. I, I want to say this will be their 17th back-to-back -back on the year. And they, I think they are, are they 11-5, and five, Grandy, in the second half of back-to-backs? It's a good record. I will find the exact number Okay, because I had it so. before a few back-to-backs ago, and they were on the order of, like, 10 and 5 or 9 and 5. They had a great record in the second half of back to backs. But as far as tonight goes and the difficulty of the back to backs, because both teams has it, their, New Orleans's might be a little bit easier having just gone from Sacramento to, to Golden State. I would imagine they, they drove. Or would you, would you take that 28 minute flight? I mean, you've got your plane there. <laughs> it's a Greyhound. It's I a guess, gray, it's, a, it's a luxury Greyhound. You've trip. got your plane there. You know, you got your New Orleans charter already there, so I guess you would fly, or would you fly it empty and have the guys just take a bus ride, which is a little bit easier on the body? Yeah, I think you drive. I don't think you. I don't think you fly. But either way, because the plane's got to get Gold, here no matter what. Golden State's got to bring. Like last night, they're going up against a Blazers team that was two and thirteen in their last fifteen, right? And still, that was anybody's ball game in the fourth. You know, so and then Golden State spurted, and that was it. 
I don't. I, they can't rely on that tonight. They can't rely on oh, we'll just you know we're just going to throw our jocks out there, run around for three quarters, and spurt at the end and and pull away. It, if they don't bring a better energy off the tip, this game could get away from them before yeah. the fourth quarter. The 17th news, set yeah. of back-to-backs, really yep. quick. 17th set ends tonight. The Warriors are 13-4 and four in the first games of back-to-backs and 10-6 and in and the six. second Thank game. Thank you, Grant. That's pretty good. 10-6 and six is not Well, bad. I mean, yeah, 13-4 and four is also really good. That, that shows that they're probably going for it most of the time. Last night, notwithstanding, because last night you, you rested a couple of guys, Clay. And Draymond, GP2, we don't know yet if he'll be able to give it a go tonight or not. But to be 10-6 and six on the second half of a back-to-back with an older team and a lot of these coming on the road, that to me is one of the more impressive stats for this team all year. Yeah, the thing that I love about Golden State right now, it's the blend. It's the blend of the youth with Pajemski and Kuminga and TJD with, you know, Draymond's playing well. Clay's playing incredibly well. And, and it's amazing that we're kind of asking about Steph because Steph is obviously the fulcrum of the whole franchise. But if he could somehow, he looks a little um, weary, you know, and it's like it would be, it, it would be nice. I know there's more playoff rest and that kind of thing, but how do you get him rested um, and still make a run? I'd feel a little bit better if he looked a little fresher, but maybe he's got a level he can get to. Yeah, hopefully they can get to it soon because uh, two games left to go. You need them both if you're going to try to climb up to get into the eight seed. You would need two wins and at least one Sacramento loss in order to secure the eight. You no longer can climb up to the seven. If you're the Golden State Warriors, you could be eight, nine, or ten. Obviously, if you can wind up tied with the Lakers then you would get the nine. If you wind up tied with the Kings, then you fall behind Sacramento and you'd be the nine. You really want to win both and maybe have Sacramento get a hiccup against Phoenix, climb over the Kings and wind up as the eight seed. If you wind up as the 10, I don't think it's that much more of a difficult road. You, you still are going to have to go through Denver. You'd have to win two playing games on the road and then you'd have to face Denver in the first round. If you're the eight, you have a little bit of a cushion, and you could possibly avoid Denver if you won that first play-in game. You would be the seventh seed, and thereby avoiding Denver. It looks like Denver's going to be number one overall. They have two easy games to wrap up their year. They've got San Antonio and Memphis, and they've got a one-game lead on OKC and Minnesota. Yeah, the way Denver plays Golden State makes you feel like Golden State has no chance against Denver. So... I don't know they have a great chance against anybody else, but they really don't have a chance against Denver. Denver's entire team's in their prime. Jokic just does what he wants. Um, it just seems like Denver has their number, and that's the bad matchup. If they can avoid Denver, I, I could see them pulling a, a first-round upset. I really could, and it sounds crazy, but they've got a lot of experience on their side, and they've brought their young players along this year. I mean, whoever thought that TJD, 57th pick in the draft, three picks before the end of the draft, would be better than James Wiseman. And that's what he is. He's better right. than James Wiseman. He had four blocks last night. He knows knows how to play. Uh, he knows how to position. He can pick and roll. I mean, the guy, it, it's amazing to me what, what TJD is. And I, I'm still shocked that he fell all the way to 57. He played in the Big Ten. Yeah. His dad's Dale Davis. The guy can pass. He can block shots. He can rebound. He averaged 20 a game in the Big Ten, and he went 57th. I mean, it's just it's mystical. It, to me, it's a total mysterious uh, question why he fell that far. Well, it was a bit of an inside job if you uh, look uh, deep inside the draft. because With his agent, you mean? His agent being uh, Mike Dunleavy's brother, and the agent let it be known that they were not going to accept a deal that was not fully guaranteed in that first year. So, you know, as other teams were looking at him as a second-round possible pick, you don't want to guarantee fully a guy that late in the draft, that late in the second round, and the Warriors were willing to do so, and therefore he's, he was able to slide all the way down to Golden State with Mike Dunleavy's brother being the representative and him obviously liking the player as well, and... There you have it. Golden State's got a 24-year-old big. And that's another thing for me as to why 
you could look at him as better than James Wiseman. He's older than James Wiseman, and he's played more high-level basketball than James Wiseman. So for me, it's not that surprising that he's better than Wiseman. The shock for me is that Wiseman's not better than he was when he was 18. Well, it shows you got to love ball. You know, I, I, yeah. I kind of question whether James Wiseman really loves ball. You know, yeah. I mean, I think he's dying to get home. You know, he's he's not working on his game. I mean, no, he's he's had a better year, but I mean, TJD understands, you know, positioning. Um, I thought he did a nice job. I know Aiton had some good numbers last night, but I thought he did a nice job on Aiton. Um, he just makes the right basketball play. And how many big man rookies can you depend on at this time of the year in a, in a playoff type squad? Um, I love what they've gotten out of him. And then Pajemski. I mean, Pajemski, you know, the old saying is if you rebound, you stay on the floor, whether it be CYO, high school, college. That's what he does, man. He rebounds the basketball and he stays on the floor. And he makes smart plays and he takes charges and he does the little things that a lot of times rookies don't do. And I think it was you, Larry, who was tabbing pods as the Warriors pick uh, long before the draft. Bill Duffy is a good buddy of mine. He's his agent. He got him on the show. And uh, and you Let's know he was just whopping him. He was just he was just telling me, man, this guy's real. But the thing about it is, the one thing that I've known for a long time is that rebounding it's like sack production in in college football. That's the thing that translates to the pros. What translates to the pros in basketball? It's rebounding. You have to. That's why they always say, well, the guy's got a knack as a rebounder. Well, this kid's this kid goes to the glass and rebounds in the trees every night. Yeah. So I mean, to me, that's it's been fun to watch him kind of adapt, and because you know we all watched him in the summer league, and how many passes did he get picked off? How many passes where somebody got a hand on it, and it was just like maybe the length of NBA players and the, the speed, speed yeah, yeah. of the game was going to be too much. But then came camp, you know, back to training camp, it was clearly he had made the adjustment, and he's been great all year you can't teach the moxie and the the desire that he plays with as far as what you're saying the rebounding taking charges those are things that are mostly innate it's hard to coax a guy into becoming a really voracious active rebounder and you're seeing it with jonathan kaminga where year three and he's just now starting to assert himself on the glass like you'd like triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy is the number we want to hear from warrior fans today my question is, what's your emotion going into tonight? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Is there trepidation about New Orleans? Are you feeling like this Warrior team has got a good run in them to get to the eight seed? For me, Larry, you've got to be the eight in order to have a chance to, quote, go on a run. You need to be the eight. That way you can win the 7-8 game and avoid Denver. That, for me, is the job at all costs. I think whoever winds up as the eight seed is in a heap of trouble. Because Denver's a team playing great right now. What's your feeling going into tonight? Triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. I'll say I'm excited, Larry, for sure. Biggest game of the year, but my prevailing feeling is uh, I'm nervous after watching uh, New Orleans last night, going back and forth between those games. Um, I think the, I think Golden State has got a little bit of a swagger. I mean, it's considering the year they've had and how things have looked. I didn't think, I really didn't think we'd be sitting here second week in April with a Warrior team that has swagger. Right. But they have swagger. And amazing, 19th pick, 57th pick, and they found two rookies yep. that can be in their rotation. I mean, that that right there, I mean, uh, if you're Mike Dunleavy, you got to feel pretty good about that. Both could be all rookie selections. There's 10 players who get all rookie first team and or second team, and that uh, will be determined here down the road. 888-957-9570. Line them up. We want to hear from you, Dub Nation, in advance of the big game tonight at home against New Orleans. We are sponsored by Prize Picks. Larry's in for Willard today. It's Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Cash in on basketball's biggest moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code GURU957 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy.
Henderson looking around, lofts it in, and it's stolen by Looney. Cleaned up by Steph. A run out the other way. He'll keep it himself, bouncing it off. But Fajemski, he's hacked in the act, and he scores. E uno para pods, 94-86. Warriors starting to edge away from the Blazers. Dub Nation, this is Brandon Pajemski, and you're listening to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. And Kevin Dan of the call right here on 95-7 The Game. Pods with a little and one there. He wound up with nine points. And, yeah, Kevin, your emotion exactly mirrored what I was feeling as the dubs finally, Larry, started to pull away, beating Portland 100-92, setting up the biggest game of the year tonight. The New Orleans Pelicans in town. Game 81, the dream of the eight seed, lives for another day. We're going to go to the phones in a minute, 888 957 What are you feeling heading into tonight's game? Larry is in for Mark Willard today. It's Willard and Dibs. Don't turn it over. I mean, I know that sounds overly simplistic, but, I mean, they started last night. It was like five turnovers immediately. Right. You know what I mean? And it just, if, if Golden State, with their firepower, the way they're playing defense, the way the whole thing, the depth of the, the, the roster, I mean, Steve's going to have some real tough questions as far as his rotation uh, goes going forward when everybody's healthy. Don't turn it over. As long as they can avoid mass turnovers, I like their chances. 16 last night and, uh, you know, a couple of unseemly ones late in the game, but they were able to get some good quality possessions down the stretch. Steph Curry with a couple of triples. And uh, Kavon Looney, nice dives to the hoop. He ended up with nine points. Two big buckets in that fourth quarter on screen rolls. And, you know, the the Portland Trailblazers just chose not to guard him on those rolls. Instead, jumping out to double Steph, and Steph made the great pass to a cutting Kavon Looney. We're streaming live on Twitch and YouTube. Head to twitch.tv slash 957thegame. YouTube.com slash 957thegame. Watch us live. If anyone swears, you'll get to hear it. Subscribe to the channel for all 957 The Game content on Twitch and YouTube. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button on YouTube if you like it. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. And you can now download the free Odyssey app by scanning the QR code in the bottom right corner of our Twitch and YouTube streams with your smartphone. 888-957-9570 is the phone number. We want to take your calls today. Engage your excitement level. Big one tonight with New Orleans in town. Tim Roy going to join us coming up at 315 right here on 95.7 The Game. Let's go to Robin in San Francisco. What's going on, Robin? You're on with Larry and Dibs today. Hey, Sugar. How you doing? Good, Robin. How are you? I'm all right. Let me tell you something, Dibs, about them e-bikes, though. They equally bad on the street, too, especially when you're going um, on Fell Street. (laughs) I'll be saying to myself, get out the street before somebody hits you, and then you're holding up traffic, and then on them little motorcycles, and they have two on it, which is illegal. I swear to God, them and the bikers, I'm sorry if you ride bikes, Dad. I can't stand y'all, okay? I'm trying to get to where I got to go, and y'all just holding up the, y'all just holding up the game. Anyway, <laughs> I want to say this. What inspired me to call was Larry. I'm with you, Larry, about, you know, Curtis, Curtis. You know what we call them in my hood? Hood, What's that? hood coaches, like, like hood, hood coaches from the peanut gallery, okay? That's what my daughter called when I was trying to diagnose my knee. She said, oh, my God, the hood diagnosis. Go to the damn doctor, <laughs> mama. So that's what we call it. <laughs> it's great, it's great to have an opinion, but when you start <laughs> stating it like, you know, with total certainty that Kerr is like a when when he's the head coach of the Olympic team, the guy clearly knows his 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 ball, and also it's so much about bringing the personalities along. And here we are, and everybody. I mean, they've got a good vibe about them right now. Beyond the way they're playing, they got a great vibe, and that's a lot. I, I credit Steve with that. Yeah, see, but the problem is you don't have people that think beyond other than what's in front of them. So I just want to say this because I know I, I got a lot, I, I got more time than most. Okay, you're absolutely right about the team, but here's the deal: you actually need talent. 
right? Talent, like we don't have money. It all the root of everything starts with money. So you and they're talking about rotations. He been trying to figure out rotations all year simply because you don't have the level of talent that you had before. So you know you got to give, you know. Some, you know, something to the coach. And, and everybody's looking for the next superstar. So there's no superstar coming, okay? And the superstar we had, you ran him off. And Day Day ran him off, too. So, I mean, they don't look at things in totality, and that's what pisses me off. In terms of how I feel tonight, it is what it is. If they lose, they lose. If, am I nervous? I'm all of the above. But it's how they play. Last thing I want to say, they keep blaming Curb for the vets. But you know what? I don't want to play the youngsters, but, and, and, and he likes vets, but you got to look, realize something. The vets had something to do with the uh, youngsters not playing until they realized they needed them. Peace out, guys. Thanks, Robin. Appreciate the phone call, as always. Have a great weekend. And, uh, you know, I, I think that Steve kind of both benefited and didn't benefit from the injuries this year because he was kind of forced to play the young guys more than he otherwise might have if it wasn't for the Draymond suspension and the Wiggins' brief absence, which led to Jonathan Kaminga getting more run. Pods popped early while Clay was kind of struggling. So the veterans, in their own way, gave life to Steve Kerr and gave license, rather, for him to be able to play them more because they weren't holding it down. I never fell into that, you know, October, November trap of, you know, what's, what are we going to do with, uh, you know, this guy and that guy? Because you have an older team. Right. And there was, you knew there was good. Now, we didn't know Draymond was going to miss 25 games, but you had an older team and you knew that there was going to be plenty of minutes for the young guys. The question I would have for you. Is it as simple as Mooney uh, or Moody and and Looney? As far as when Clay, when uh, when Clay and Draymond come back, those guys' minutes are just gone. They're just yeah. they're just out of the rotation completely. I think so. And uh, we talked to Steve Kerr about that earlier in the week. And uh, you know he of course is always applauding Moses Moody for being ready and staying ready. And you know Kavon's minutes are the ones that are probably going to go away. I look at that Laker game and the nine man rotation that he went with which was Pods and GP2 off the bench along with CP3 and Kaminga. And I think that's going to probably be his base nine. He did mention, though, if you know the matchup is right, then Moody could get some additional minutes or Kavon Looney could come in depending on you know the size of the opponent and what they might bring. We don't know about Gary Payton the second tonight and his availability. If he's unable to go, I think Moses Moody would get his minutes like... He kind of did last night getting those 21, but feels to me like the Laker game is when Steve really started to figure out what he wanted to do when everyone's available. The w only thing I would, I would, you know, if Steve were sitting here and we were actually, and we weren't necessarily on the radio, we're just sitting here, we're just chopping it up. I would have said, I would say to Steve, man, it's too bad that you couldn't get Moses going for any consistent amount of time. If there's only, if there's one thing that I haven't it does it's kind of doesn't sit well with me is it just seems like the Warriors can't really rely on Andrew Wiggins and then every time he comes back, he comes back in front of Moses Moody. And and it always costs Moody minutes and 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 time on the floor. Yeah. And it's like I really think that you know Moses Moody is good enough to have a regular rotation spot. There's only so many guys you can have in your rotation. I know it's difficult because you're paying Wiggins a mint. Right. And, and he has some great nights, but... It's the Brokeback Mountain thing. It's like you're... M Wiggins is inconsistent, and Moody doesn't get enough time to ever build an right. inconsistency. I wish I knew how to quit you, is what, uh, what Steve is essentially saying to Andrew Wiggins and the team is because you, when Andrew plays well, he's way better than Moses Moody... Probably will ever be. Moses Moody's much more consistent, but Andrew's upside is far higher. But your point is well taken. Andrew so often, or up until the last couple of weeks, he's been much more consistent. But all year, it's been on again, off again, which is maddening. But I would have liked to have seen the Warriors move Wiggins for a future one yeah. at the deadline. I don't know if you would have gotten a future one for him. Really? You don't yeah, think so? I think that the, the league is down on Andrew Wiggins. Even a Wiggins. late one? Well... And I, I mean, he's got a big he's got a big contract. You're you know right. that, that three works more years against too. It. But I mean, if you could have found that team that would have given you a first, 
Man, I would have loved to have gone with Moody yeah. and seen what it looked like. I think they shopped him, and I would imagine they shopped him pretty heavy, but they didn't like what they were hearing back. It will be interesting in the offseason what they do, how they wind up maybe affects what they'll think about in terms of Andrew Wiggins and others, but Mark and I made a, a vow, a radio vow, that we weren't going to talk about the offseason. We're going to stay in the moment. You know, I've been driving around the Bay the last couple of days, and I've heard you reference that many times. Yeah. You, you've broken that vow. We have. It's hard. Yeah. And, like, just right there, when you talk about Andrew Wiggins, it's hard not to skip ahead to what comes next. But I'm really trying to drill down on tonight, Larry. Game 81, game of the year, and the excitement level that I'm feeling. Let's go to Terrence and Berkeley, who wants to weigh in on tonight and vibes. What's going on, Terrence? You're on with Willard and Dibbs. Larry in for Mark. Hey, um, nice to talk to you guys, uh, man. Um, my situation is the vibe at the Chase Center. It's kind of taking a different vibe from last year to this year and the enthusiasm level. I don't know if it's the PA announcer, our cheerleading guy, or just the fans in general. I was over at um, Golden 1 last night for the um, Kings and the uh, Pelicans game, and they got a vibe. They got a vibe there. I mean, I don't want to get cowbells, but just something to kind of spark. Uh, we're nothing in the arena where we were out in uh, Oakland. That's a different, whole different stadium. But the Warriors get more uh, enthusiasm on the road versus seems like a chasing or something. Are you going at my man, Franco Finn? Uh, not so hard, but I think he can do a better <laughs> I'm just job. Joking. I mean, it's like, it's like at uh, Golden One, they have like a chant. Keegan, then the fan says Murray, or just we need something to kind of get us going there as, you know, the sixth person on the court. Yeah. Thank you, Terrence. I, I think it's uh it's a little bit of an uphill battle and comparisons to Oakland are unfair because it is a little bit of a different demographic, not only Peninsula versus East Bay, but the amount of money that is needed to get into Chase Center is more than what was needed in Oakland. And I I don't mean to go all W.E.B. Du Bois on you and talk about uh, demographics and uh, historical ramifications. People but that are well-heeled can't cheer. Is not that can't, saying? but won't. Rich people don't cheer as loudly as people without means. And this is something that is just a theory of mine. I've not, not compared decibels, decibel ratings to you know tax brackets, but it feels to me like more well-heeled people are less inclined to wear the free shirt and also less inclined to get on their feet and chant, let's go Warriors 20 minutes before tip. Are you saying poor people cheer louder than rich people? Yes. Yeah. And it's because I, I, it, it matters to them more. I don't know about that, but I think Sacramento, just from going to school up there for college and just that vibe, it, it has kind of a little bit of a college vibe. It's got, it's got a college town vibe. Well, plus for, they have that hunger, Larry, because they've never, they've never done it. Yeah. They've, they have zero NBA Finals appearances let alone rings. Yeah. They got a cute little purple beam and, you know, some chance, which is great. I'm happy for them. Yeah. They, they get a nice arena. That's a, that's I have been there. Yeah, it oh, looks it's nice. A, it's a nice arena. It's no Arco, um, but. I, I like, and they got a nice little whatever outside mall area, dining area. It's cool. It's, it's They've kind of renovated the whole K Street downtown thing. But, um, yeah, I just think it's a. I think it's always been like that. I think Sacramento Warrior Warrior fans has always been a little little. I mean, oh, it rocked at the at Oracle. Oracle, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, it rocked. But um, but I think I think there's a college kind of like I don't want to say it's hokey, but it's there's a college vibe to the Kings in right. Sacramento, and I'm I'm I'll be eager to see if uh, that carries over to the A's. When they go their three, you know, do their three year run up there. I bet it will. I bet it will. It'll be yeah. loud, it'll be raucous. And I'm gonna people just be pretend you didn't mention that team on this show. I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> it uh, it makes my stomach turn a little bit, to be honest. We gotta go up there in a in, in a year and, and have a few beers and, and watch some uh watch some ball. At I, an old Rayleigh Field. Yeah, why not? I mean, Which night is now uh it's Sutter Sutter Sutter, Health. Sutter, Sutter Health. Health. Thank you, Grant. But uh, you know what? Nighttime weather and sack. It's nice in the summertime. It's beautiful. Let's go to L in Pacifica. We're getting hyped not about uh, the A's in Sacramento, but about the Warriors hosting New Orleans tonight. L, how you feeling about the Warriors heading into these last couple of games in the regular year? Hey, uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call, guys. Uh, I just want to, first of all, I just want to say uh, we've won so many championships at this point that we're not going to be cheering for a win. You know what I mean? We're going to be cheering for a winning season and a chance to be a champion. So it's uh 
the reason we don't chase that chase arena is almost like, you know, going to a, a, a symphony to first time and you're like, and this happened to me. Oh my God. Like he's so good. Let's clap it up. And nobody around you is clapping because <laughs> they've been there so many times. And then you have, you know, a couple glasses of champagne, you go to a couple more shows and you're like, Oh yeah, he's really good. But, uh, don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. Keep it up. Uh, so that's, that's really where we're at right now. We won so many championships that to get the team and to get the fans up cheering and excited about it, it's got to be championship. Uh, and as far as how I feel about the Warriors right now, guys, I think uh, we might just be the most dangerous team in the playing in the playoffs. Uh, we're the only team that can probably say we're 50-50. They can go all the way or just, you know, losing the first round because of how hot this team can get. No other team can say that. They, there's teams that, you know, are really good, but they have some matchup problems. So I think for the Warriors, uh, they play their best when they don't have a lot to prove. Even the years that they won championships, when they're up, when they're ahead, when they're having fun, that's when they're the most dangerous. And because they have nothing to lose, they're already going to win the game. So I, I would watch out for the Warriors, guys. They're, if Steph, Clay, and Draymond catch fire during these playoffs, which they're looking like they might do it, I, I'd be careful playing the Warriors, and I should be very, very excited. Uh, win or bust, that, they, I mean, they did everything they could, given the circumstances. Thanks, Al. Uh, we're losing you a little bit there. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, dangerous. I 50-50 go all the way or get knocked out. In the play-in, I'm not sure if I'm willing to no, buy it's not, into it's not that. Fifty uh, fifty. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pie in the sky. But I hear what he's saying. Yeah, I mean, uh, the guy that I fear tonight, and I, you've already brought up McCollum. To me, it's Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy is six nine. He's nearly a forty percent three point shooter. He had twenty seven last night against Sacramento. Trey Murphy is a guy that you really have to extend on because he's a 6'9 three-point sniper. I mean, if you're 6'9, you got to get out there on a guy. It's Remember Matt Bullard with the uh, Rockets yeah. way, way back? Yeah, yeah. He was a 6'10 three-point shooter. If you're 6'9 and you can hit threes, man, you got to close way out on that guy. And to me, that's the guy that worries me tonight. If he, they can keep Trey Murphy closer to 17 instead of 27, I love Golden State's chances tonight. But if Trey Murphy, you know, goes for 30 and he's hitting all these open threes, to me, that's going to make it a tough, tough battle tonight. Yeah, 27, you mentioned it last night, 6 of 12 from three. McCollum, 9 of 12 from distance as a New Orleans shot 55% from behind the line, 22 of 40. And that game was not much in doubt from start to finish. New Orleans jumped on the Kings and they handled it uh, out there at Golden 1, and putting the Kings, Lakers, and Warriors into a three-way tie for the 8, 9, and 10 seeds. Kings hold the tiebreaker over both. Warriors hold the tiebreaker over the Lakers, so Sacramento would need to lose one. If the Warriors win two, they can still capture the 8 seed. 888 We're getting excited for tonight's game. Larry is in for Mark Willard. We're taking your calls all the way up until Warriors Live. We're going to take a brief break at 3.15. Tim Roy going to join us nice. as uh, Tim gets back behind the microphone tonight at home. He's been totally dialed in on all these Warrior games, the Laker game, and certainly last night's Portland game. So we'll get Tim's thoughts and we'll gauge his excitement level as we head toward tip time tonight at Chase Center. John's in the Yoon, and John's feeling good right now. What's going on, John? You're on with Willard and Dibbs. Larry in for Mark. Hey, guys. How are you guys doing this afternoon? Good, John. How are you? I'm good. Good. Thank you. Uh, listen, I'm not really worried about the, the game tonight. You know, I, I've enjoyed the season. I, I really, really enjoyed watching the young guys play. Uh, so, you know, win or lose, you know, I'll, I'll take either or. I mean, I'd rather have them win, but I think it's been a really, really uh, memorable season, to say the least, everything that's happened to them. And for them to be where they're at now, you know, you got to tip your hat out to, to Coach Kerr and all the fellas. And one, one more thing, too. Uh, they were talking about Jonathan Kaminga, about, you know, his minutes uh, will probably go down during the playoffs uh, because of, uh, of how he played last night. If he played badly and he scored 19 points with eight rebounds, you know what? I'll take that every day. So I'm sure he's going to start playing better. So, you know, they got to lay off Jonathan. I think the young man's going to be a terrific ball player, which I think he already is, and he's only going to uh, get better. 
And I think the future for the Warriors to see all these young fellas, I think uh, I think we're headed to the right direction. And uh, let's go, Dubs. Let's, let's, let's take care of business. Thank you, fellas. Right on, John. I appreciate the call. And I don't think we're going too hard on Jonathan Kaminga. Yes, 19-6 and six last night. The four turnovers for me is an area where he will continue to get better. I just thought that there were times, especially late in that game, fourth quarter, he was playing a little bit out of control for my tastes. I just love the way he's playing. I, to me, that was isolated. I, the, you look at him the last you know, 15 games, he's, he understands the spacing. He understands the shot clock. He understands you know, when to take it to the hole, when to find somebody. He's making the right basketball play. Even last night, look at the efficiency. You know, he took two threes, he made one. He went to the free throw line four times, he made all four. He's not taking a lot of bad shots. He's not piling up tons and tons of turnovers. The last night he did have four. But I overall, I love what I'm seeing from Kuminga because how many guys can go to the hole with the kind of speed and ferocity that he can and still find, you know, somebody for a higher percentage shot in the in the in the past, he would have taken it all the way to the hole, tried to flush it on somebody, draw an offensive foul, just try to do too much. Now it's like his vision of the floor on his drives is so much better than it used to be. And he'll find guys in the perimeter. He'll find guys for lobs. He'll find guys, you know, cutting to the hoop. I love the way Kuminga's playing. If he just, I would just try to encourage him. And if he has a rough moment in a pressure filled situation, Kerr just needs to pat, you know, maybe take him out, but just, you know, put him right back in right. and show that confidence. Because last year in the playoffs, he didn't play great. They yanked him, and yeah. all of a sudden, it was just like, it was like he was totally he lost was his confidence. Absolutely, and well, he he deserved to get yanked because he was playing tentatively, and he was a, a net minus for the team. And I think he spent time this summer working on not only his game but his mentals, and he's come back. And made that classic third year leap. Triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy is the phone number. We want to hear from you, Dub Nation. How excited are you? Are you nervous? What are your feelings going into tonight's huge game at home against New Orleans? We are presented by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises. Your calls and Tim Roy coming up at three fifteen. Larry's in for Willard. It's Willard and Dibs on ninety five seven. The game business. It's all the things that keep this world turning. And behind every one of these companies is a partner helping to keep it all.
Looney right baseline, 15 to shoot, posting up pods, right baseline, feeding the Cuddy Kaminga, who soars and slams. 31-30, Golden State takes the lead, Kaminga with 11. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. Kevin Dana with the call. Tim Roy back behind the microphone tonight as the Warriors take on the New Orleans Pelicans second half of their final. Back-to-back, you'll hear it all right here on 95.7 The Game. Mark Grandy with Warriors Live immediately following this program. It's Willard and Dibbs. Larry Kruger in for Mark Willard today. We're going to talk to Tim Roy coming up here in about... 10 minutes and get his thoughts of the last couple of games and also gauge his excitement level on tonight's game. Game 81 of 82, and it's not a must win, but if you still want to be the eight seed, it is about as close to a must win as you could possibly want. Maybe the most underrated broadcaster in the Bay right now. Tim Roy. The great Tim Roy. Oh, yeah. Although I don't know if he's underrated anymore. California Sportscaster of the Year. He's getting his accolades. He's getting his propers. Well, you know what though? I mean, I think he's that kid. I think he's I think he's been great for years and uh we go back to the CFL. We won't bring it up on the show, but Oh, yes, we will. Tim and I sitting sitting poolside in uh Winnipeg in the mid 90s. In the peg? In the peg. Were you which on- is not a not a not the hottest, you know, not, right. the, not the most fun city in America or in uh, in Canada. You're probably the two hottest bachelors on the pool deck, I'd imagine. Just sitting there, you know, just thinking about the rouge. Gotcha. The single, as yeah, they yeah. call it. Were you scouting back then? Yes, and yeah, coaching and scouting. Okay. And Tim was the voice of the Sacramento gold miners. Gotcha. There back, you go. Tim see, is versatile. Keep Tim, it Tim, Tim had versatility. It still does. It still yeah. does. Tim yes. did a little baseball as well, and... Uh, I, I, I love Tim because Tim, you know Tim, uh, you know Tim and Tom to me have so much fun and play off each other like an announcing crew that's been together for like twenty five years. Yeah. And I, I just think Tom makes Tim, Tim makes Tom. It's good stuff. A little bit like a buddy comedy with those two. There's they will crack each other up, which is what I like. Like Tim, Tim, if 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 he's going solo, is not going to yuck it up. But when he's got somebody there who's funny with him, he can be very, very funny. No doubt. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just think Tim's very underrated. Yeah, and a big one tonight. And uh, Tim is on his way, I'm sure, to the arena, if not already there. So we will talk to the elevated one, Tim Roy, coming up here at 315. We want to gauge your excitement level for tonight. 888-957-9570. And I've already said that I'm nervous. And I'm, I'm nervous because... I think that the Warriors' path to a deep run, and for me, Larry, what I said two months ago was if the Warriors can just win a series, if they can just get through the Western Conference quarters, get to the Western Conference semis, and whatever happens then, I'm fine with. For me, winning one series makes this a successful year. And I said a similar thing with the 49ers. My take was get, get to the Super Bowl for the Niners. I said, if you get to the Super Bowl, even if you lose the Super Bowl, I felt like that would be a successful year. And I said it at the start of the year, and I kept that thread alive because they were good enough to be one of the best teams in football. So you had to go out there and prove it. You had to go out there, if you were healthy, get through the regular year, get through the playoffs. You get to the Super Bowl, and that game's kind of a coin flip. You know, It's a two-week break, and you had your chance to win it, and you didn't. I still felt like the Niner year was a big success. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. I'm with you. I thought you meant like if the Niners had won one series. No. You were, I thought you were drawing that comparison. No, if they would have won just the wild card and then lost in the divisional, that to me would have been a disappointment. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, Jed said, hey, it would have been a great year, but it wouldn't have been a great year if they had lost at home right. to the Lions in the NFC Championship game. That's not a great year. And I think with this Warrior team, already they're sitting at the nine seed. And. Odds are that they're going to wind up as the nine unless you win both and Sacramento has a hiccup and you find your way to get to the eight. I think you need to get to the eight and then win that eight seven game, which will be against either Phoenix or New Orleans. It'd be a New Orleans rematch, perhaps. And, you know, if you beat New Orleans tonight and Phoenix wins, they're in a tie. I think New Orleans still holds the tiebreaker over Phoenix, but I think you need to get into that eight seven play in game to have a chance to get the seven and avoid Denver. If you wind up in the 10-9 game, you'd have to win twice just to get the 8, 
and then you face Denver, that to me is very daunting, much more daunting than being the seven and facing either OKC or Minnesota. Okay, so your barometer for success this year is to just just to get out of the play in, win a series, or beat Minnesota or OKC in the or first even round. Denver. Yeah, I to wanna, get to the conference semis. Correct. That for Which me, is what they did last year. Yes, and last year I thought that that was a success, especially when you looked at everything that took place. Now, I was a little bit bummed that they didn't beat the Lakers because it's the Lakers, yeah. but you took L.A. to six, and after everything they went through last year, you know you beat Sacramento in seven. That, to me, validated the year enough. Okay. And this I, year I, I kind of feel the same way. I this year, For me, I, I, I want to see them get out of the play-in and beat somebody in the first round minnesota okc yeah. preferably last year i wasn't as satisfied with that simply because um i didn't like the way green played i didn't like the contrast in his ferocity between sacramento where he looked like he was out to kill demontis sabonis and the laker game the Lakers series where he looked like he was about to join the lakers <laughs> and it just seemed like he was totally neutered in that Lakers series, and the good usage of the, the, the ferocity of Draymond Green, just where the hell was it against the Lakers last year? He looked like he wanted to be LeBron and AD's buddy. As long I don't it, to me, it's how it happens too. But last year bothered me for the contrast in the way he played those two series. And great use of neutered, and I'm looking at uh, the log right now, and he had six points in game one. He had a deuce in game three. He had the Ocho in game four, and I know Draymond's about more than just scoring, but the rebounding was there. I agree with you, though, in terms of the ferocity. It didn't feel like he had that same edge. Oh, he wanted to crush Sabonis. Sabonis' face was like... He actually did crush him. He stomped he, on his chest. Right. And, and he but, got suspended for a game. But didn't... I mean, Sabonis had all kinds of facial scars, yeah. you know, at the end of that series. He was... I love Draymond. He's my favorite player. He was helping Laker players off the floor in that second round series. Yeah, that's th there was no helping anybody off the floor in that Sacramento series. If he had just played it a little bit more to the death, like he normally goes in that Laker series, that would have made me happier. But whatever, it was a, last year was kind of a rough year all the way around. Yeah, triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. Where are your feelings going into tonight's game? Your emotions. We want to. Talk to Warrior fans today. Dub Nation, where are you? Tim Roy going to join us in 10 minutes. But first, Telmo in San Francisco wants to weigh in. What's going on, Telmo? You're on with Larry and Dibs on Willard and Dibs. Larry, Dibs on Willard and Dibs. Uh, nice to chat with you on a Friday. So I, I've been listening, and for the last, you know, two, three days, and, and even Larry today saying, you know, he, he loves Kaminga, I, I think... I think a lot of people love the idea of Kaminga and, and what he can be because um, he has so much raw potential and his athleticism is insane and, and he'll jump anybody out of the gym. But what, what I've seen time and time from him, <clears throat> excuse me, and I don't Hang know if it's, if it's just this and if it's this idea of, of him, how athletic he was and who he played against in earlier years that he, he was always told how good and dominant he was, and that's the idea he has in his head. And he's I feel like he's more of a me guy than a team guy. But what I see from him is this, is this you know, his body and his travels and, and works faster than his brain does. And, and my, my problem is, is he ever actually ever going to develop into the player that everybody thinks he can be? It's kind of like a, a, a you know, two birds in the bush and one in the hand kind of idea with him. Because what I've seen the last two games is just poor decision-making. It wasn't just the, fir the, the four turnovers yesterday. He had two bad unnecessary fouls back-to-back. -back. It was the poor decision-making on the turnovers. There was a shot at the end of a quarter where you had Chris Paul on the floor, and instead of Kaminga giving him the ball, uh, the point got, and letting him make the decisions and maybe get in a position where he could go to the hoop and get an alley-oop or a better position, he ended up, you know, just making a bad decision with yeah. the ball. Yeah, Tell me, I remember the sequence. I, I hate to cut you off, but we are up against it. And uh, Tim Roy joining us here in moments. We do have to remember, Larry, that Kaminga is 21 and a half right. years old. 
That's and, not exactly what I was going to say. He's yeah. 21. Yeah. And he has already made such great strides this year, and you could only imagine that he's going to get even better heading into year four. Well, let's step aside because Tim Roy is going to join us coming up on the other side. Can't wait to get his thoughts and his feelings heading into game 81. It's a big one tonight. Warriors hosting the Pelicans out at Chase Center. Of course, we'll have it here. Tip time at 7. Mark Grandy will have Warriors live at 6 o'clock right here on 95.7 The Game. We are sponsored by Safeway. Larry's in for Mark. It's Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. This week at Safeway, get more savings when you buy more with your Safeway membership. Buy one, get one free on mix and match berries. When you buy
Paul to Thompson, curling off the screen, but good recovery. He'll shoot it anyway. Over Baisley, it's up and good at the three. He's unconscious right now. 20 points, 7 of 10 shooting, 4 of 6 beyond the arc. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. The voice of the Warriors, Tim Roy, on the call. Appropriate call to come back with. And Grandy also, the more, like, big trumpet music we can have today, the better. Because, <laughs> Larry, that's firing me up a little bit because this game is trumpet worthy. It's game 81, the Pelicans in town to take on the Golden State Warriors, which is why we had to reach out to the man, the voice, the legend, Tim Roy, who joins Larry and Dibbs here on 95.7 The Game. Tim, how excited are you for tonight's game with the Pels in town? I'm, I'm really pumped, Dibbs. It, it, this, is, this is really what you live for as an announcer to have these type of weekends, these type of games. I think Friday and Sunday are going to be absolutely bonkers in the association you know, and it you know, literally could come down to the final game of the weekend. And, and um, I just think it's great. I think it's great. That, and I think it's one, it's a nice testament to the, the league for, for instituting the play-in because that's what has everybody so excited right now. It's everybody jockeying for these positions. And, you know, the Western play-in bracket is kind of like a playoff bracket of maybe 20 years ago. You got all these great players, you know, separated by only a game or two. Timmy, good to talk to you, buddy. Uh, Clay Thompson, um, to me, has been the intriguing guy all season. And I really loved listening to Clay with Draymond, talking to Draymond about how he feels when Draymond gets ejected. But to me, it's just this: the evolution of Clay this year has just been one of the most interesting subplots around this team. You know the man and have seen his whole career how would you describe the year that Clay has had? Well, first of all, Larry, it's April. Shouldn't you be calculating the amount of yak yards <laughs> college wide receivers are going to be doing? Shouldn't you be telling me which running back's going to hit the A gap quicker? I mean, come on. I am. I, I did. I did tell Dibs at the com- at the commercial break that Michael Hall from Ohio State's working out for the Niners, and all. And we got into a. We got into. We went in deep dive on Michael Hall. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, no, I, I think I think Clay is um, – he had a, a year of discovery. You know, he's discovering who he is at this point of his life as a basketball player, and I think this whole year was him coming to terms with that and, and, to, and to having peace about it. I, I think he's in a really good spot right now. I think he feels really good about who he is, where he is, and what he's doing, and I think he's just kind of – uh, taking away the anxiety, you know, as players get older, I think that there is that, that, that meeting that where the mind hits the body and, and the body says, no, we're not that guy from 10 years ago. And so how players deal with that, I think really puts a tone on the second half of their careers. And I think the second half of Clay's career, I think is really looking great now for him in the future because because I think he's come to terms of who he is and, and how he can be most effective, and I think it's showing with his level of play. I think he's very confident and very relaxed right now. Yeah, in the second half of his year, really the last uh, handful of games, 21.80 a game over the last eight all-starts with uh, Clay going from the bench back into the lineup. He's been fantastic. Also on the rise, Tim, Andrew Wiggins. What has led in your opinion, to this late-season renaissance for Andrew Wiggins? Well, I think Wiggins, uh, there's a couple of things. I think one is that uh, I, I think he also had, you know, some issues going on. He had to miss a few games. And so I think, you know, in a, in a headspace, that, that kind of takes you a while to get back into it. And I also think he kind of benefited from when Kaminga sat out because I think at times Andrew's not the most demonstrative player you've ever seen i think at times he's okay deferring to other players because he's a nice guy and i think with kaminga out they needed him to score they needed him to rebound a little bit more and so it, i think it got him going a little bit and so now i think he feels like he's back in a groove again so i think he took that time when kaminga was sidelined and turned it into his own and now you know he's starting to look like the wiggins of 2022 and that's the you know 
that's a huge key for Golden State when they get that guy back because not only can he get you points in different ways at the at one end, you know, on a post up, uh, catch and shoot three, but then he's also using his length at the other end most nights to guard the other team's best offensive player. We we have had a lengthy discussion about Kuminga, and I love where Kuminga's at. Uh, he he's attacking the hole, but then he's looking to pass if somebody prevents him from getting all the way to the rim. Um, how would you describe the evolution of of Jonathan Kuminga? I think he's kind of like, um, and I have no reference for this or any talent or base for this, but it's kind of like watching someone sculpt something out of uh, a block. And, and I think what we're, we're seeing is the, the player emerging, you know, as the statue emerges from the, the block, whether it be a rock or, or the guys who do it with trees and things like that. And so I, I think, you know, you're seeing that player kind of come forward and, you know, he's only 21. So you got to remember that you know, we're, we, we, I think we judge young players as if they should be 10 year veterans sometimes and they're not. And I think the other part is, that he's a young 21 in basketball terms because he didn't have you know the basketball background that a lot of the other players have had coming into this league. So he's still relatively you know a, a newbie, if you will, uh, you know playing NBA basketball. So I think the best is still far ahead of him, and I think as he gets better with his decision making, reading the play, it's already starting to slow, really slow down for him. He sees the floor a lot better than he did at this time a year ago. I think that's the exciting part is that I think he still has a long way to go. Had he gone the college route, he'd be in his senior season. Uh, all things considered with this being his third year uh, pro-wise with Golden State. Tim Roy, voice of the Warriors, joining us here on 95.7 The Game. Trace Jackson Davis, Tim, has obviously come on and played great since he's been inserted in the starting lineup, and his emergence has been key in unlocking everyone else defensively. How do you think he fares tonight going up against a couple of bigs, most likely Jonas Valanciunas? Well, I think it's going to be important for him not to get into early foul trouble, uh, and that's easier said than done when you're trying to, you know, get in the way of, of Zion. And, and Valanciunas, I was just talking to someone before I, I came out with you guys, another basketball person, and we were talking about how underrated we think Valanciunas is. Yeah, he's got good hands. He can score around the basket. He's huge. He, you know, he's a good rebounder. Um, and so that's going to be a tall order for no pun intended for Jackson Davis tonight. And I think it's it's good for his education. But they're going to need him to give them vertical spacing on the offensive end, and as you mentioned, a little rim protection because it's really you know he fills this hole that the Warriors have, and I think they've discovered now at this point of the, uh, this season that they're really good when he's out there as a five and Draymond as a four. And I think that's one of their keys to their defense becoming so much better here in the, in the latter stages of the season. You know, Zion's really amazing. Um, and, and yet Draymond Green's one of the great defenders uh, in this era. What, what do you think of that matchup tonight? And, and how do you feel about it? I think now I may be biased here, but I think Draymond's one of the best defenders of all time. Um, I don't think you're going to find too many guys in the history of this league who are as smart and as as you know talented defensively as Draymond is. But uh, be that as it may, I think Draymond's uh, got you know he's got the the hands full with the the youth and the size and the, and the quickness of Zion. But I think Draymond also has the veteran you know uh, guile, and I think he's a veteran knowledge. So I think it's going to be a great matchup. And I think, you know, the Warriors, you know, they know how important this game is. And, and you know, they could make their lives a little bit easier if, we, if they can get a win tonight, maybe get some help, and, and maybe get into a, uh, an eighth position, which would put on the road, which has not been a problem this year. But it gives you two games to make the playoffs instead of one. And that's, that's always better. And thinking about that, Tim, and, you know, getting to the eight and potentially winning the eight-seven game and, having a crack to take on Minnesota or OKC, which team in the in the first round of the playoffs potentially do you think gives them the best chance to possibly pull off an upset in advance? Boy, that's a, you know, I think, you know, the Warriors have played some really good games against Denver, but I don't think you want to see Jokic in the first round. 
You know, I think you want to see him later on if you can. Um, but, you know, Oklahoma City and Minnesota, they're both really talented teams. Uh, the Warriors had some crazy tight games against OKC this year. So maybe that's a better matchup for them than, than Minnesota. Minnesota has length, and they've got Ant-Man, and they've got, you know, uh, you know, I think the Warriors know how to play against Rudy Gobert in a playoff series, but I don't think they or – just about everybody else has figured out how to slow down Nas Reed. He's on the all warrior opponent team for sure. Oh, I know. He just he and he just looks like a three point sniper too. I mean, it's amazing at that size. Tim, I mean, there's so many different things we could talk about, but seventeen and four in the last twenty one on the road. You travel with his team. You're on the planes. You're eating meals with these guys. What? It, why are they seventeen and four in the last twenty-one on the road? What's the key to that? I think, well, one, their defense has been so much better, and then of the twenty-one last twenty-one road games, a big Draymond's played in just about all of them, and that's been a huge key. Getting him back from suspension is when this team started to play, you know, better basketball, and their defense got a lot better, and so that that's part of it. And I think that the having you know the core with you know, Steph Clay and, and Dre, and then you add Chris Paul, now you got four guys who don't mind, in fact, probably relish the chance to walk into the another arena. And if you go back to the old you know Western movie, and, uh, uh, I guess, the matchup, you know, the, the good guys always wore the home team, always wore the white hats, the road team wore the black hats, right? You know, the, the, the villain always had the black hat on. So I think, I think they have four guys that don't mind wearing that black hat and look forward to the silencing crowd. So I think that's that's a big part of it. Is I think they have they have four you know future Hall of Famers, all of whom love to silence crowds on the road. So I don't think a, a crowd being noisy at all really affects that. Chris Paul is a pro's pro. We've all been watching him for darn near two decades. Yet there was some thought that maybe he wouldn't gel with his team because of the old I don't know about feud, but just a tense relationship. With Draymond Green, are you even more impressed than you thought you'd be at just how well he's fit with this team? I, I think the the fact that he uh, remember the the big story in the summer. Oh, he, is he going to start? Is he going to start? And the fact that he just said, you know, okay, fine, I'll come off the bench. Never made a, a stink about it. Said, okay, let's do this. I, I think it just shows you two things. One, how you know professional he is. That is hard. He is a pro basketball player who understands, you know, where he is and at what point of his career he's at. And also, too, I think he realized that him coming off the bench was the best thing for this team to win. And so even though it didn't show at times because of a variety of reasons, including Chris Paul getting hurt, uh, I think what it, you know, it, it shows that he's willing to do whatever it is to win. And I would love to see the Warriors get a, a nice run going just to see, get Chris Paul that, that, that hunger and chance, you know, that maybe the Warriors could pull off a couple of upsets here and, and make things really interesting. Are you surprised, Tim, that Kerr has been able to keep this thing together? Um, you know, the, the the Draymond hit on Nurkic and all the different things that happened this year and, you know, trying to work two rookies into the rotation and develop guys and Wiggins has missed time and Clay's had, you know, this catharsis kind of, you know, come to grips moment in his career. Are you surprised that Kerr's been able to, you know, get to here we are second week in April and the thing's feeling good and the players are all feeling good? Does that surprise you at all? No, I'm not surprised because, you know, everybody, you know, wants to criticize rotations in minutes and they all want their favorite five to play 48 minutes. And, you know, they want these guys, this guy to start, but they don't really tell you who want, who they want on the bench. And then, but, but they all over... They, they kind of underestimate what Steve is, is, and that's he's a, he's a former pro basketball player who's the head coach. So he's been with the situation of anxiety. He communicates well with his team, and that's why they're able to overcome you know, the situation with Draymond. That's why they're overcome the situation with Clay this year, where Clay was a little anxious about things. And that's why he's able to convince guys like Chris Paul and Clay Thompson and Andre Iguodala, stars in this league, that coming off the bench is the right thing to do. And that's because he's a great communicator and because, 
you know, the players really respect him when what he has to say. He's not phony. You know, he goes to them and tells them exactly what's on his mind and what he thinks is going to happen. And so uh, there's a value in that. And, and so I, I think he, he is a tremendous NBA head coach. We see he's been able to do this not only with this team, but he did it during the Durant years. That's really hard on a coach when you have to juggle all those personalities and egos. And I think Steve does it as well as, as anybody that you know, we've seen in the modern era. Tim, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you sharing some of your excitement, and we look forward to hearing you on the call tonight with the Pelicans taking on the Warriors at 7 o'clock. Larry, who's got the best feet of an offensive lineman coming in the draft? You know, it's probably Mason McCormick of the um, South Dakota Jackrabbits, but I'll, I'll double-check that and I'll text you later. <laughs> Good to talk to you, bro. You knew hey. you'd have an answer, Tim. Sorry, man. All yeah. right. So you great. Guys. See you. Thank you, Tim. And don't miss uh, Larry's uh, Dream Niner draft board coming up. That's right. Uh, 605, actually. We're going to take that oh, one straight okay. to video. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, we'll maybe catch that one uh, offline. Tim Roy, uh, glad to have him back behind the mic. And uh, he is as excited as we are, if not more excited, Larry, for what you can only size up as a huge game tonight out of Chase Center. I always love it when Tim goes, and he was fouled. Oh, yeah. Fouled. <laughs> just the way he says just that. Just the way he says fouled. It's fantastic. That's awesome stuff. Uh, you can uh, catch us on Twitch and YouTube. Head to twitch.tv slash 957thegame. YouTube.com slash 957thegame. Watch us live. If anyone swears, you get to hear it. What? Yeah, and it's happened. Believe I'll me. I swear. I have. I've sworn before. It was uh, it was foolish, but I did it. Oh, you oh. Yeah, there it was. Oh, there you go. Grandy dumped it, but uh, the YouTube and Twitch audience. I'll swear at Grandy, maybe for a little extra coin. Do, I, do, do you get any bonuses with the extra swearing? No. No, and, actually the opposite. Oh, yeah. really? Oh. Well, it's funny because uh, Fines. Fines. the boss is uh, out of town, so you might actually get away with it, although the uh, boss behind the boss is right behind the glass, Lucas Alexander. And he... Uh, I've sworn at Lucas for many a time. Fist. I think you got to be careful. I swore at him earlier. Uh, subscribe to the channel... On YouTube for all 957 The Game content. You can subscribe on Twitch and YouTube. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button on YouTube when you like the show. It's powered by First NorCal Credit Union. And download the free Odyssey app by scanning the QR code in the bottom right corner of our Twitch and YouTube streams with your smartphone. Thanks again to Tim Roy for taking a few moments out of his drive into the arena to talk to us. And yeah, setting the stage, Larry, for a big one tonight against the Pelicans. Can't wait. It's going to be good. And, you know, all I would say is I hope Golden State, you know, you know, brings it from the beginning. Yeah. Because if it's, it's Portland was sitting around last night waiting to get beat. It's a bunch of young pieces that don't fit together. They were two and 13 in their last 15. And, you know, Golden State could just kind of, throw, you know, just kind of run up and down. And then, okay, seven minutes left in the game. Let's buckle down. And then sure enough, they did, yeah. and Golden State got the win. That same scenario will not be successful tonight. No, against a Pelicans team that is coming off an explosive game over Sacramento. And they actually beat the Kings five times this year, which is very strange when you only play a team four times based on the schedule. But that uh, play-in tournament allowed them to play a fifth time, and uh, New Orleans won that game as well. Interesting what you say. Larry's in for Mark today. It's Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. The Warriors had a little bit of a tough time last night. So says Steve Kerr. Yeah, it was a tough uh, night for us. We, we did not uh, execute very well. But, um, you know, these are tricky games. We were obviously uh, resting, you know, Clay and, and uh, Draymond, who, who were, you know, banged up. And with the back-to-back, -back, we're, you know, we're hoping to take care of business tonight. And Portland, I give them a lot of credit. They played really hard, and they made things uh, much more difficult on us. But we, uh, we pulled through in the end. Shouldn't be a problem tonight as far as uh, getting up for the game. And, you know, they rested Clay last night, they rested Draymond. GP2 was unavailable. We don't know about his status yet for tonight, but it's tough when you play these bottom feeder teams as the game before the game. It's human nature, right, Larry, to kind of let your guard down a little bit. Well, I thought it was interesting listening to, this, to um, Tim Roy talk about he thought the key to their success on the road was the fact that Green played all those games, and now Draymond back in there tonight should give the Warriors... You know, a little bit more on the defensive end, a little bit more just connectivity. Um, 
I would love it if Peyton played. I mean, Peyton's becoming my favorite player. Did you see the uh, the other night when they had a bunch of little girls out there singing the national anthem, and he, he's shaking hands with all of them, and he says to one of them, I really like your hair. Did you see no, that? No, I didn't see that. I and mean, GP2 is just, I mean, he's just a golden personality, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, and then you saw him against the Lakers where Will Ferrell is standing behind him, and Will's got his dad's jersey, and Will's like kind of posing for pictures with Will in the background, and then... Will see Steph and he goes over and daps him up and GP2 is kind of sheepishly just grinning and enjoying the moment. He's a guy who you can tell is cherishing every moment that he's out there as an NBA player. I did not like the trade that sent Wiseman to Port, you know, to uh, the Detroit Pistons and brought or right was it yeah, it was Pistons, right? And Yeah, five second rounders and GP2 came back in that right. deal. But I just love having GP2 back because, I mean, you just you, you get the feeling that he, there's going to be sequences in the playoffs and he's going to be uniquely, you know, positioned to either. He's actually kind of a finisher inside. I mean, you know, you don't think of a 6'4 guard right. as a finisher in the lane, but he is kind of a finisher in the lane and we know what he can do defensively. So. Well, he provides on-ball defense better than anyone else on your team. And yeah. if you look at the Warriors' defensive deficiencies – that's what it is because Clay doesn't have the same lateral movement. He said so on the Draymond podcast. He he doesn't have the same ability to guard like he used to. Steph is not the same on ball defender that he once was, and he was never a lockdown defender. Wiggins is pretty good at it, but he can't really stick with the super quick guards. But GP two with that singular mindset defensively and great length, he's the kind of guy you need to have out there in these tough games. So hopefully he'll be able to give it a go tonight because they need his on-ball defense badly. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the NBA has a, a, a handful of guys. I think of him. I think of like Josh Hart, a couple other guys around the league that, you you know, they're way, way, way more valuable than the average fan thinks. Yeah. Especially when you look at a team that has championship aspirations, a team that has won championships. You need... To have a glue guy, because we know when it comes to buckets, they've got the best bucket getter in the association. And Steve Kerr talked about how the chef came through clutch again last night. Yeah, I mean, the chef's done that a million times, so it, it never surprises you. Um, obviously, wasn't his best shooting night, but uh, made made some big ones down the stretch and competed really well. And, you know, we played him more than we wanted to, but, you know, we got it done, and now we've got a chance to, you know, play New Orleans tomorrow and get a win and put ourselves in a pretty good spot. 36 minutes and 22 seconds for the chef, and uh, Steve talked about the big shots he made. Eight points in the fourth quarter, including uh, two big three balls that one staved off a little bit of a Portland rally, and the last one kind of staked the Warriors to that last bit of a lead that they were able to hold on to and got a much-needed win over Portland. But all eyes on tonight, 888 we got time to take your phone calls about your excitement level heading into tonight's game against the Pelicans. A win keeps the eight-seed dream Alive for another day. Of course, the season ends on Sunday. Where are you at, Dub Nation? Are you excited? I myself am nervous about tonight's game. We'd love to hear from you. 888 A New Orleans color commentator, Antonio Daniels, joins us at 415. Time for your calls next. We are presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. It's Willard and Dibs with Larry in for Mark on 95.7 The Game. I'm with you, Michael.
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Well, not exactly the uh, heavy trumpeted pomp and circumstance rejoin I was hoping for, but Billy Idol, I'm not mad at it. A white wedding. Which, uh, did you ever go see Billy Idol in concert back in the day? No, but if uh, there were dueling concerts, uh, Billy Idol versus Billy Eilish, it's an easy no-brainer. It's Billy Idol 10 times and 11 times on Sunday. There you go. Not a huge fan of Billy Eilish, as I call her. No. I can do, I do remember a Billy Idol concert back in like the seventh grade. Yeah? Oh, yeah. What? It's a long time ago. <laughs> Where was in it? Con- far, Concord far Pavilion? Away. Where was that? I, it was in the, uh, it was in the city. I forget where it was. All right. Look at you. Billy Idol. Seventh grade. Flexing on some Billy Idol. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Warriors Live starts at 6 o'clock tonight with Mark Grandy live from Ballast Point on 16th Street, just a few blocks west of Chase Center. Interesting, because I'm looking to my right right now, and I see Mark Grandy. Hardest working guy in the business. And he's right not at Ballast Point, and he's got two hours and ten minutes to make his Plenty way. Of time. What's the game plan, Grandy? How long do we have you before you uh, make your exit? I'll be taking off in about an hour. Will you get a yeah. scooter and be riding it on the sidewalk? Uh, I will not be riding it on the sidewalk. I might take a scooter, but probably not. I'll probably go public transport to get over. Oh, there. you're not even gonna walk? No, that's just... that's a. I could, I could, but that's how a many blocks walk. is it? It's probably from here about a mile and three quarters. I would say you're gonna lean on Muni to get there. I know my way around the city. Look, we'll be fine. Oh, look at this guy. Yeah. He knows He's the city. OG. He lives in the city. So. Where are you from? Where are you from, Grandy? Where, where are you from, Punk? <laughs> where am I from totally or where am I living currently? Where are you from? Sonoma County. Sonoma Windsor. County. Okay. He's a Win- Windsor oh, kid. Windsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Windsor. Yeah. Nice. Lovely town. Oh, it's a beautiful, very underrated yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're heading to the game or in There's the area of tonight. There's a lot of vineyards over there. And a good golf course mm. at uh, How did Windsor. he escape the mean streets of Windsor? Oh, huh? so mean. You get up to, you go to Eugene, Oregon, and then you make your way down here to the city. There you go. And you craft a little bit of a career. If you are headed to the game or in the area tonight, stop by for a drink and a burger. Say hi to the, the Grandy Man, who can and does, and get ready for Dubs versus Pelicans. That's tonight. Warriors Live at 6 o'clock. Mark Grandy holding it down from Ballast Point on 16th Street, just a few blocks west of Chase Center. Larry's in for Mark today. It's Willard and Dibs. 888-957-9570 is your phone number. We want to hear from Warrior fans about your excitement level heading into tonight and also who you want. Who do you want a piece of in the play-in game? Because you're not going to make it to the sixth seed and you're going to be in the play-in. Do you want a piece of New Orleans? Do you want a New Orleans rematch? Do you want Phoenix if they make it there? Sacramento or the Lakers? Come on, you want Sacramento. You definitely want Sacramento. Because they're wounded. Well, I mean, Herder's done for the year. Malik Monk done for the year. They're just kind of reeling. Uh, you definitely want Sacramento. Sacramento has no confidence against Golden State. They lost the decide- decisive game last year on their home floor. Yeah. Um, Sacramento is, without Malik Monk, DOA. They're yeah. Good. They're cooked. They sure looked like they were on. Uh, Struggling last night a little bit. New Orleans came in and put a buck thirty-five on him. Harrison Barnes, former dub with twenty-two in the loss. De'Aaron Fox continues to show that he's one of the 15, 12 best players in the association, but they just don't have enough outside shooting without Monk and Herder, I think. Yeah, I mean Monk was to me, Monk was the guy that I always feared when the Warriors played them, just because he can he he can get hot in an instant. And carry a team for a quarter, quarter and a half. Without him and no herder, their firepower is not great. And, you know, Barnes has been disappointing all year. I just feel like Sacramento's limping towards the finish line. No doubt. And uh, they're in danger of falling out of the eight seed right now. They're in a three way tie with the Lakers and the Golden State Warriors. If the Kings can win out and Warriors, Lakers, and Kings each have two games left to go, Sacramento's got. Uh, Phoenix tonight at home, and then Portland, which I guess we can't look past Portland anymore after the scare they gave the Warriors last night. But I think uh, tonight's the night, Larry. You've got Kings and Suns at 7.30, Warriors and Pelicans at 7 o'clock. So you'll have an idea by about 10 o'clock tonight whether or not the 
the eight seed is still viable. If the Warriors lose to New Orleans and Sacramento wins, well, then you're officially eliminated from the eight seed. Well, and Portland's been circling the drain, but they, you know, you got one thing you got to remember about last night: no Jeremy Grant, no Anthony Simons, yep. no Matisse Tybel. They, I mean, they were shorthanded too last night. Yeah, they they were, and yet they gave the Warriors a real scare, and it's in part because no Clay and no Draymond, but also the Warriors, I thought, kind of went into that in second gear, and we were talking about the human nature aspect of that. It's hard to really get up for Portland in that spot. Now, Sacramento, if they win tonight over Phoenix, they're going to go into that game knowing that it's a win and in for the eight seed situation. Situation. So maybe the motivation's a little bit easier for Sacramento tomorrow than it was for the Dubs last night. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I just think, give me Sacramento. Of the choices that you presented, give me Sacramento for sure. I mean, yeah. wouldn't you agree with that? No Is, doubt. Yeah. No I mean, doubt. And who would be the second team you'd want to play if it wasn't Sacramento? Well, I think the Lakers would be the emotional pick just because that would be such a fun game to watch. And... You know, matchup wise, though the Lakers do pose a problem for Golden State, so and there will be Anthony Davis this time. Yes, and LeBron. You would imagine they both would be up and ready to go. For me, it would probably be if it's not Sacramento, it would be Phoenix if they found a way to fall down. And I don't know if they can fall down to the to the nine. They can't. So if you get up to the eight, then you'd be hoping that you get a chance to take on Phoenix. Maybe New Orleans rises to the six, and you get a chance to. To take on the Suns, I don't think there is a good answer on the second team you'd want to face. Yeah, Phoenix is a is a weird team because they they do right. have enormous talent. Um, they have high end talent. At times when you watch them, they play with swagger, and they've had some some of the worst losses in the last month. So it's hard to kind of gauge what 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 Phoenix team you'd really be getting. Yeah, and they've had bad losses throughout the course of the year, really, and that's been. The thing about Phoenix, and I looked yesterday at their uh, preseason over-under, and it was at 50 and a half. Right. And so they've been woefully disappointing. The Warriors, for their part, their over-under was 48, so they're going to fall short of that mark. But they've at least shown signs of life over the second half, and certainly since Draymond got back from his suspension. But you mentioned Sacramento being the team you'd want to play. They've lost four of five, and they've lost six of nine. So... A lot of those games have come since they lost Malik and Herder, but it's been a team that is absolutely on the ropes. Yeah, they and they feel like they're just hanging by a thread. You know, like the Warriors have so much more momentum going right now than Sacramento does. I would welcome that series. Absolutely welcome. And I, I actually loved it when the Warriors played uh, Sacramento last year. I thought it energized NorCal. I think it's great to see... These teams that are within, what, 100 miles of each other, locking horns. Um, you know, and, and it's funny because, you know, doing the YouTube show, I've got Giants fans, Niners fans, and then I'm a Warrior fan, but there's a lot of Giants, Niners, Kings fans. Right, right. Because it's kind of the Bay Area adjunct market, you know, so. Uh, so it creates a little extra juice. Right, because if you're in Sacramento and you don't have a football team... and The Niners, yeah. You're right. A Niner fan, you're a Giant fan, but basketball time, you know... Oh, you're a Kings fan. And I wonder how much of that goes back... I guess older fans, like fans our age, would be Niner fans by default because of the old Rockland days when the Niners would well, they're all, decamp in Rockland, yeah, right? Yeah, but they're all Niner fans, even to this minute. But it, what really is interesting is the basketball fan in Sacramento that's you know predated uh, the Kings so you know what I'm, I'm a, you know I'm a big warrior fan even though I live in whatever you know I live in El Dorado Hills um, there's a lot of that because you know obviously the Kings didn't get to Sacramento until like 88 right right so I mean if you were an NBA fan before 1988 and that's you know there's an awful lot of good basketball in there in the 70s Warriors won a title with Rick Barry and this and that. Even if you're in that next generation with Run TMC, you're a Warrior fan. We're, now, some of them jumped, I'm sure, to Kings fans, but a lot of them, um, you know, and then now you can get the NBA package. It's like you, you can be anywhere and watch any team and that kind of thing. So they made it hard for a while, though. They've kind of force-fed um, Kings basketball to you for a while up there.
Well, they were dreadful for so long, and then they had a great run with uh, you know Peja and Vlade and the boys. And, Weber. And since then, they've kind of recessed back, but a nice renaissance for Sacramento. And you know, you hate to see any team suffer that kind of an injury down the stretch. But then, if you're a Warrior fan, you, you do you do have to lick your chops a little bit at the prospect of maybe facing Sacramento in the play in Sacramento with Phoenix tonight at home, seven thirty, as mentioned. That's on NBA TV if you're looking to what's, toggle between ball games. What's the spread in that thing? What would you say? Is, you think Phoenix is favored? By four and a half. Yeah, I just looked. Oh, four and a half. Okay. Yeah, at Sacramento. So uh, Kings playing uh, second game in a row at home. And you know Phoenix playing to try to stay out of the play in themselves. So definitely motivation on both sides. Phoenix needs a win. They need a couple of wins and a couple of New Orleans losses in order to get themselves out of the play-in and up to the sixth seed. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but hopefully one of those New Orleans losses is tonight. Yeah, that's, that's what we're hoping for. And, I, you know, I, I think tonight's going to be interesting from the standpoint of um, how does Golden State start? You know, how do they start? And and the one thing that Kerr, you know, mentioned is that they played, they played Steph a few extra minutes you know, does yeah, how, much, how much juice does Steph have on what the seventeenth back to back on a grueling season in a game that I'm sure Golden State would much rather have been able to be in a rest mode. Instead, they're trying to get their their guy to play probably big minutes tonight. So it's, you know, it's going to be that to me is going to be really interesting. How how bouncy is Steph tonight? Yeah, he sat out against Utah, which was uh, five days ago, and then he played 32 minutes against the Lakers, and he turned around last night 36 minutes and 22 seconds, and he had to dig deep in that fourth quarter to help carry the Warriors to the victory. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM in HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union, Upgrade your savings dividend. Open a first NorCal first class money market today. Larry's in for Mark Willard. It's Willard and Dibs here on 95.7 The Game. We're counting you down to Warriors Live tonight at 6 o'clock with Mark Grandy live from Ballast Point down on 16th Street. We want to hear from you, Warrior fans. What's your emotional level like going into tonight's game? My emotion that I'm feeling first and foremost is nerves. I'm nervous about this game against the Pelicans. I see the need for the Warriors to get into that 8 seed. That way they can play the 7-8 play-in game and maybe avoid Denver in the first round if they can make it out of the play-in. I do not want to have the Warriors wind up as the 9 or the 10, needing to win two play-in games just to get the 8 seed, just to draw Denver. So I look at tonight, and I see this as a huge game for Golden State. And just looking it up, Larry... The Pelicans actually hold the tiebreaker. They actually don't own the tiebreaker against Phoenix. So a Phoenix win combined with a Pelicans loss, the Pelicans would be down at seven, and Phoenix would jump up and be the six. Didn't the Pelicans beat Golden State last time out? Yeah, it's been interesting, the two matchups. And uh, we'll get to your calls in just a second. 888-957-9570. The Warriors and Pelicans have played twice so far and I want to get the exact margins correct, but the first time the Warriors beat them by, I think it was 30? Uh, by 28. And then they got run the second yes, time. Yes, they huh? did. 130-102. They beat New Orleans in game four of the season. It was an absolute beatdown of a game in New Orleans. And then the turnaround game, January 10th, Warriors lose 141-105. Yeah, I saw that game. And that was a shellacking. I mean, I mean that yes. game might not. I mean that was, and and this this Pelicans team in some ways is a bad matchup. There's some young players there. There's some incredible length. Zion's a um, just a powerhouse that you have to be able to to contend with. So I mean, there this is no easy matchup for Golden State on paper. You know, I feel much better without Ingram because I think Ingram's that good of a player, right? And he just adds to their overall length, and they already have that kind of length edge. Um, but I'm I'm really eager to see what the rest of that cast look like. If they can slow down Murphy and not let him go off, I I, I like their chances. McCollum's a pro; he's going to get his. The Warriors' height and length usually bothers him. 
Um, you know, with Draymond and TJD, I feel they'll bat they'll battle inside with Valanciunas. William um, Zion Zion. You got you know, but you got Draymond Green countering him. But it's Murphy, who's six nine, can shoot the three, athletic, um, young, you know, lots of energy. He's playing well. He's the guy that makes me a little nervous. Yeah, last time out, or yeah, last time out when the Pelicans dominated Golden State, he had sixteen, and that was a weird game. That was a Draymond list game. He was uh, in the midst of his suspension, and you had not much going on from the Warriors. Steph was four of thirteen. Clay five of ten. Uh, he had 13 points. Steph had 15 points. Moses Moody led the way with 21 off the bench. It was a game that uh, kind of got away from Golden State early. They gave up 46 first quarter points to New Orleans. So that kind of plays into what you're saying, Larry, about avoiding a slow start tonight. New Orleans came in and absolutely blitzkrieged the Warriors here at Chase Center, winning by 36. Where are your feelings, Golden State Warrior fans? We want to hear from you. Triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. Let's get in touch with your emotions in advance of game eighty one. Nick is in San Jose and he wants to weigh in. What's going on, Nick? How you doing? Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? You know what? Um, speaking about my emotions, I was a lot more nervous prior to tonight's game because the thought of just two games on the road if we played nine or ten seed, let's say the ten seed. That made me nervous because it's a one-and-done situation, and I just had no idea what we were. But I feel like tonight is a little bit of house money. I, get, I think we're going to get a sneak peek of what exactly we can be in the playoffs um, because, make no mistake, tonight's a playoff game. We're about to find – we're playing a playoff-caliber team, so we're about to find out what we're really made of when we're on all cylinders and when we want it just as bad. So – I'll let you know tomorrow how I'm really feeling, but honestly, if they don't come through tonight, <laughs> then let's look forward to next year, which, by the way, I'm excited about next year because the whole Draymond situation, you know, really was kind of tough this year. I really do think we're a top three, four team in the West when we're running on all cylinders and there's no drama and none of that. And next year when you get, you know, Trace and, and Paws, another year under their belt, Kaminga, maybe Moody, I just think we'll be in a lot better shape next year as well. But I really do. I, I do believe that we're a scary team this year. I want no part of the Warriors if I'm another team. It's, we're a tough out in seven games. But one and done, oh, anything can happen. Thanks for taking my call. Right on, Nick. Thank you. Have a great weekend. And, uh, yeah, it does feel like a playoff game in many ways, Larry. And you look at what else is going on in the association. You've got the Lakers taking on Memphis tonight. And uh, the Lakers will end up with this very New Orleans Pelicans team. So Lakers favored by 15 and a half tonight. You would imagine the Lakers are going to beat the Grizzlies on the road at Memphis. And if Sacramento were to upset Phoenix and they're four and a half point dogs at home, Lakers win, Kings win, Warriors lose. Well, now you are stuck at 10 needing a win and help on Sunday to just avoid having to go to the crypt for the play-in game next Wednesday. And, you know, one other factor to, to keep in mind tonight, if you look at last night's game, Jose Alvarado, who? Yeah, Jose Alvarado and Dyson Daniels combined for 24 off the bench for New Orleans. I mean, that that kind of thing gets you beat. You know, when two guys, two relatively nondescript young players come off the bench and go for 24 on a team that has... Trey Murphy, right. CJ McCollum, uh, you know, obviously Zion, Herb Jones. I mean, you can't let them get 24 off the bench from two of their young players. And that's what happened last night against Sacramento. That was just one of those games where they were lights out. They shot 57% from the floor, 55 from three. New Orleans had everything humming in Sacramento last night. We had Bob Fitzgerald on the show yesterday. And you, know, you and I have been going back and forth about the play-in, and what do we think would be the best possible scenario? Well, Bob weighed in yesterday on what he thinks is the ideal path for the Dubs. I think you'd want Sacramento at home in the 9-10 game, and I think you'd probably want to go to New Orleans 
if they had lost a game to the Lakers or Phoenix, you know, some, something along those lines. It it sucks to try to have to win two games, but you know that that's really what the Warriors have foisted upon themselves with about five games they should have won earlier in the year. You know, and we talked about it at the time and throughout the season that you know the West is so good that you you know you have four or five missteps that were completely avoidable. It would come back to bite you. Well, here comes the bite. So <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's not that right now they're playing their best basketball, and since January. 30th, they essentially have the best record in the NBA. So that's that's not a small sample size, but, you know, f- not fouling up three, the two games they lost to OKC, blowing 24-point leads to Sack and the Clippers. I mean, these are the games they just should have had, yep. and they didn't. And, you know, they're going to have hopefully 47 wins. It probably should have been a 52-win season and, and the seed accordingly, but it's not going to be, and a lot of those wounds are self-inflicted. Yeah, it's uh, Bob Fitzgerald from yesterday talking a lot about what you were saying, Larry, the ideal scenario if you're going to wind up in that 9-10 would be to have Sacramento be there and take out a wounded Kings team, and then you take your chances with the loser of the 7-8 play-in game. Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. Yeah, the the Probably the most surprising thing to me about this season is that you added Chris Paul, who was a notorious finisher, right? He's so good in that mid-range at, at helping you get to the finish line. And yet Golden State this year was 4-11, in games decided by three points or less. Right. And I think that's kind of what Fitz is referring to there. If you would ask me, what kind of record is Golden State going to wind up uh, with in those really tightly contested games? I would have flipped it. I would have said probably, you know, 10 right. and 5, 11 and 4, 4 and 11 in those games. And that's kind of where, why they are in this spot now where. You know, the, the the last two games of the regular season are vital. Yeah, with that championship pedigree and a 38-year-old point god and, you know, Steph and Clay and all the rest of it, good free-throw shooting team, and yet in those tight games, you were unable to uh, to get it done. They gave away so many of those early in the year. It seemed like they couldn't, they couldn't stop blowing big leads and losing close games. We're going to talk to Antonio Daniels coming up here in 10 minutes. He is the Pelicans TV analyst, so we'll go... Behind enemy lines, Larry, and get the the Pelican view. It'll be a Pelican brief with Antonio Daniels, who's right. always high energy. He's an always a high. He was a high energy player. Yeah. He was a Bowling Green. Yep, Bowling no, Green, number four pick, gigantic point guard. But he's a very high energy guest. So we're, I'm looking forward to it. Without a doubt, it's uh, time for the Captain Clay report. Brought to you by City Cruises. Plan a birthday, anniversary, or company party on a spectacular dining cruise at CityCruises.com. Clay didn't play last night. He was out with right knee tendonitis, but it was just a rest day for him. He's expected to play tonight as the Warriors play their most important game of the year, hosting the Pelicans at 7 p.m. What do you look for from Clay tonight, Larry, coming off a rest night, considering how well he's been playing? I, I love the way he's playing. I did not envision this. I was in the what are they going to do with Clay you know, mode, and now it's like he's recreated himself. And you know what I love, Dibs, is that he's been so honest about the whole thing. You know, it's like he admitted, hey, you know what? It took until like my fourth conversation with Steve before I really kind of bought into the fact that I just need to enjoy myself and I need to, you know, enjoy the the twilight of my of my Hall of Fame career. And uh, I'm I, I think this is this to me is one of Steve's great accomplishments this year is to get Clay, who's such a he 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 comes across as just hang loose, everything's cool. But in reality, he was such a powerful force on this team because he just was such a downer. Yeah. It was such a downer watching him chase his like glory years. And the fact now that he's beyond that, he's yeah. ha- he's playing with joy again. It's amazing the different vibe that this team has when he was kind of Chasing past glory and unhappy with himself versus yeah. now when he's he seems joyful again. Yeah, he's averaging twenty one point eight over the last eight games when he returned to the starting lineup, and they are seven and one in those games. We're going to go behind enemy lines next. Larry talk to Antonio Daniels, get his insights on the Pelicans, and gauge his excitement level for a huge game tonight at Chase Center. We are sponsored by the Alameda County Probation. Department. Larry Kruger, cousin Larry, is in for Mark Willard today. It's Willard and Dibs on 95 7 The Game. Want a career with purpose, great pay, outstanding benefits, and a promising future?
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Well, counting it down and getting excited. We are ever closer to the big one, Pelicans and Warriors at Chase Center. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to Willard and Dibs on the free Odyssey app or wherever you find your podcasts. And while you're there, you can check out how both the Morning Roast and Steiny and Guru reacted to a good night in the NBA for the Warriors. And, of course, you can weigh in on how we all have been getting ready for the big game tonight. And with that, we bring in our next guest. He is a host on Sirius XM for NBA Radio, and he's also the television analyst for the New Orleans Pelicans, former NBA player Antonio Daniels here on 95.7 The Game. Thanks for joining us, Antonio. How you doing tonight? Antonio, do we have you there? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I am truly blessed, fellas. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, no problem. So, thing. Let, let's, let's discuss this. Come on now. Let's get to it. Let's discuss this. Well, let's get into it because uh, I feel like the Pelicans done shot their wad last night. 57% from the floor. You put a buck 35 on the Wounded Kings. Is that all you've got, Antonio? Oh, it remains to be seen. We shall see. I'm not, I'm not much of a trash talker, Dave. That's not really my thing. That's not really my thing. But, but we, shall, we shall definitely see. The thing that you've seen about this Pelicans team throughout the course of this season is it's a better road team, similar to the Golden State Warriors. They're a better road team than they are at home, which is weird for a young team because generally young teams and role players tend to play better at home. But for some strange reason this year, the Pelicans have excelled in a uh, in hostile environment. And, you know, tonight will be another one of those environments. So we'll see what happens. Pelicans have played some really good offensive teams, and they're second in the league defensively since the break. What's been the key to their D? They have really good – okay, I'll say this first and foremost. With the Stars, they bought in. Zion and B.I. have bought in defensively. And I'm not talking about the highlights. You know, like you saw the other day against the Phoenix Suns where Zion's getting violent blocks. Not that. I'm talking about the buy-in to be willing to sit down and move your feet defensively. They bought in. But – with that being said, they also have really good point-of-attack defenders. What I mean by that, Herb Jones is first-team all defense. Dyson D- Daniels is a heck of a defender. Jose Alvarado is a heck of a defender. Najee Marshall is a heck of a defender. Think about what the stats that you just said. You're second in defense since the, bur- since the All-Star break. Think about it. You're second in defense with zero rim protection. So that says a lot about your perimeter defense and your point-of-attack defenders on this roster. They have no rim protection whatsoever. It's not like you got Chet Holmgren back there or Jared Allen back there or Victor Wembanyama back there. Their centers are anchored. Larry is an undersized center. Kobe Zeller is anchored. Jonas Valanciunas is anchored. But they have excellent point-of-attack defenders. That's why their defense has been so, so good. Antonio Daniels here on 95.7 The Game, the Pelicans TV analyst for their broadcast, also with Sirius XM and NBA radio, what's been the key for Zion to have such a great bounce back healthy year this year? Um, the, the training staff took a different approach. Tom Maystadt, Amy, they've been fantastic with him in the, in the beginning of the year. They did this the right way. Like, I, I know fans hated the whole, he's not playing in back to backs and all this stuff in the beginning of the season. And used to hear all the grumblings, oh, here we go again. And, Blah, blah, blah. But you know what? They had a plan, and they stayed to their plan. They had a plan and stuck to it. And now here you are. The most important thing this time of the year is health. There's nothing more important than being healthy this time of the year. And to have Zion being healthy, confident, in a great physical and mental space, as a Pelicans fan and a part of this organization, that is all you can ask for. Because he looks fantastic right now. I love Trey Murphy at UVA, and he's continued that success in the NBA. I was hoping the Warriors would get him in the draft. Instead, uh, New Orleans has him, and he had 27 last night against Sacramento. Talk to us uh, a little bit about about Murphy and and how he's contributing and how he's flourishing. You guys know the way the, the league is structured now. If you look at some of the top teams in the league, you have one or two really good players, and you surround those players with the guys whose skill set complement the stars. Trey Murphy, <coughs> excuse me, is a perfect complement to Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram because he gives them space. And by space, I mean space. He's not 
standing on the three-point line. He's four or five feet beyond the three-point line. Similar to Steph Curry. There are a few guys in this league that you have to, the moment that they step in the arena, they're in range. Steph Curry's that way. Always has been. Clay Thompson <clears throat> is that way. Always has been. Trey Murphy is that way. So now you have him in his, in, in the perfect situation for him. So you put him alongside Zion, you put him along B.I., and he's 6'10". That's what, that's what people don't forget. He's not like a small little shooter. He is a 6'9", 6'10", shooter. He is one guy in this league that has the skill set and potential and athleticism to win the dunk contest and the three-point shootout all in the same night. You can't say that about a lot of guys. Now, it's impressive. And when you think about New Orleans, a lot of times, and we don't follow them as closely as you do, obviously, but you don't get that deep in the roster, but this team has really come together under Willie mm-hmm. Green. What's been the key for Willie to get all these different parts so cohesive late in the year? And for me, the thing that stood out about Willie Green is not is the adverse times. It's times when things haven't been going well. If you go back to his first year here, this team started out 3-16. and And we forget that. But then they ended up making the playoffs. Last year, they went on like a 10-game losing streak. And it was a time of struggle throughout the course of this season. For me, it's not when things are great. It's the way that Willie Green responds to adversity. Like, when they were 3-16, and 16, I remember going into shoot-around, and that shoot-around was so full of joy. And I told Joe Myers, my broadcast partner, I've never seen a shoot-around like this with a team that's struggling like this. Usually you have guys whose heads are hanging and, like, it's almost like they're ready to give up already. But Willie does a fantastic job at instilling confidence and hope in this roster, no matter what, no matter the circumstances. Again, when things are great, everybody's happy. But Willie is constantly talking about staying diligent, staying prayerful, and the amount of hope that he has instilled in these guys and confidence. It really shows up for me during adverse times, and it's a reflection of this team because they persevered. They have persevered throughout the course of this season. This is a, this is a bounce back team. They just went one and five on the toughest homestand that this team has had all year long. And they've responded in these two road games going to Portland and winning that game. And then last night in Sacramento, this is a very, very, um, strong, mentally strong, young basketball team. And it's, it's a blessing to cover this team because of the way that they respond when things aren't going their way. Antonio, you were a high energy player and, and uh, golden state right now is, you know, rebounding the ball really well. How do you see the battle mm-hmm. on the glass tonight? Golden state is, has been really good on the defensive glass. Um, I, you know, I'm not that, that's the, that's the biggest thing for me because to me, Trey Jackson Davis has changed things for, for golden state completely changed things for Golden State. Because now with that five spot, as good as Kevon Looney is, Kevon Looney's very anchored. So he's not fast, he's slow a foot, and he's not very athletic. Not a rim threat. Not a lob threat. Chase De- Trace Jackson Davis is everything Kevon Looney isn't. Right? He's young, he's active, he's fast, and he's a lob threat. And he gives you some semblance of rim protection. So I feel like the presence of Jackson Davis has changed the whole dynamic of the Golden State Warriors. Because now you don't have to worry about going small and putting Draymond Green at the five. Because you have someone like Jackson Davis that has a live body that brings something different. But with that being said, the Golden State Warriors are a small basketball team on one hand. But on the other hand, they lead the, the league in rebounding, which is different, which is very different. So that's my big thing tonight. I want to see how this game plays itself out from the foul line and below not from the three-point line and out. Yeah, it's fascinating when you think about what that will do defensively matchup-wise. It's going to mean Draymond Green's going to be free to guard Zion Williamson a lot. Do you think Mm -hmm. that Draymond might be the most equipped player in the league to guard Zion Williamson? To be honest, I I haven't seen one player be able to do that. A lot of times what you're seeing is there are schemes that teams are putting in <clears throat> where, like, if it's Draymond Green is on Zion, you're leading him straight to Jackson Davis. And the thing about Draymond, I feel it's underrated. Anytime you talk about basketball IQ, that's generally 
You were generally talking about the offensive side of the basketball. But with Draymond Green, he is so cerebral defensively. He does his homework. He understands. Like, he is the definition of a better. He does his research. He does his due diligence. He knows strengths and weaknesses. And he does a really good job at his size at position defense and also understands how to get under your skin. You know, I was doing an interview with another um, Golden State um, station earlier. And that, this is my big thing to watch. I want to see how Draymond guards Zion on one hand. And the other hand, I want to see how Zion attacks Draymond on the other hand. Ingram's a huge talent. Uh, how, yeah. are they, how are the Pelicans different with and without Ingram? Well, I think the biggest thing, and you see this all the time in today's NBA, your second best player, your second leading scorer, should I say, is so incredibly important. You know, you look at the Dallas Mavericks who are 11-11 without Kyrie. The Milwaukee Bucks were 1-7 without Dame Lillard. You know, the, prior to this week, the New York Knicks were 16-15 without Julius Randle. It's very, very tough. We saw what the Lakers did a couple of days ago without Anthony Davis versus you guys. It's tough to win without your second best player because when your leading scorer goes out the game, the offense generally runs through that second guy. So your non-Zion minutes, you know, your, your, your non-Luka minutes, your non-Jalen Brunson minutes, your non-LeBron um, James minutes, that, that's the most important time of the game. And with Brandon Ingram's ability to score, he leads this team in assists, and the gravity that he has along with him, it's a huge loss. It is a huge loss for this 12 games that he's been sidelined. I mean, you, you make up for it in, in certain areas, but you can't replace that. You can't replace 21 points a game, six assists per game, and the amount of gravity that comes along with your second-best player. Pelicans analyst Antonio Daniels here on 95.7 The Game. We've had the debate here about who the Warriors' number two is, and it used to be Clay, but he's been up and down, and Wiggins has been missing at times, and Jonathan Kaminga has actually emerged yeah. as that player yeah. a lot. Agreed. What do you make of the improvement that he's made here in year three, Antonio? Like, the thing that people don't grasp about this league is how important confidence is. Like, you don't get here by accident. You get here because you deserve to be here. But if you're not playing with that same confidence, and I'm speaking from experience, you're not the same player that, that you were that got you here. The toughest thing to translate from college or high school or whatever it may be to the pros is your confidence. That's the toughest thing to take with you. And I felt like this year, Jonathan Kaminga finally feels like Steve Kerr trusted. He finally feels like he's trusted. And by trusted, I mean he's able to play through mistakes. He's able to make a mistake and not look to the sideline, am I coming out? He's able to take a bad shot and not look to the sideline, am I coming out? So I feel like, especially with younger players, once that trust is built, it gives them a bigger and better opportunity to blossom. And I think you're seeing it. I think you're seeing it. I think Jonathan Kaminga is special. I oh. think he is special. Uh, I, I, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And we're seeing him improve dramatically. You mentioned Herb Jones before. I got to think one of the major keys to tonight's game is – keeping Herb Jones off the offensive glass, keeping Herb Jones from scoring in transition. Uh, if Golden State can bottle him up in transition, I like their chances. He, he, he seems like when he scores in transition, the Pelicans really go. Well, the thing is, right now, you know, before he's going through a rough stretch of shooting the ball over his last three or four games or so, but prior to, he was on the cusp of the 50-40-90 season. That says a lot. And the biggest improvement in Herb Jones is that exactly what you just referenced, his ability to get out in transition and Euro step, finish with either hand, get to the foul line. But then also now he is a 40% three-point shooter because what teams have been doing in the past is saying, well, you know what, we're going to leave Herb Jones and whoever is guarding Herb Jones is going to be the secondary defender on Zion. So they're going to spy on Zion like a linebacker on Lamar Jackson. Okay, now you can't do that anymore. And this is what makes the Pelicans' um, offense so potentially dangerous, is you can put Zion out there and surround him with numerous guys. C.J. McCollum, who had nine three-point shots yesterday. Trey Murphy, who we've already referenced. Um, Herb Jones, who's a 40% three-point shooter. You can surround him with shooting and really good point-of-attack defenders. It's going to be fun to watch tonight. Antonio Daniels, TV analyst for the New Orleans Pelicans. Antonio 
thanks for joining us. Enjoy the call tonight, and uh, maybe we'll talk soon in the play-in if these two teams tangle again. I hope we don't. I hope I don't <laughs> talk to you guys again, especially not in the play-in. God yeah. bless you guys. Thank you. Yeah, you too, Antonio. Thanks, Thank Antonio. you so much. Antonio Daniels, the uh, television analyst for the Pelicans. He also has a show on Sirius XM on the NBA radio channel. And he got me thinking more and more about Zion and Draymond tonight. What a matchup that's going to be. And, you know, just watching how Zion goes about trying to attack him and watching Draymond and what he can do to try and keep Zion in front of him. You know, it's, in New Orleans has, you know, obviously Zion's one of the big names in the league. They have some of the more underrated players in the league. You know, if you say, if you say Herb Jones... To the average NBA fan, they know him, but they're not like, oh, my goodness, he's special. He is pretty damn good. Trey Murphy, really good player. I mean, they, they have two or three. He mentioned Alvarado's playing well. They have some, they have like four or five under really underrated players that if they're playing their game, uh, make this a very deep and talented uh, Pelican roster. Yeah, and it comes down to uh, bench depth, and the Warriors should have more bench depth tonight. No official word on GP2 yet. Gary Payton the second, but Clay coming back, Draymond coming back, which uh, will allow you to have a little bit more depth coming in off of the Golden State bench as opposed to last night where they made it by with uh, really just eight players. They played Sharich for just a small handful of minutes, but... Otherwise, you went with uh, basically eight guys, Pods and Moody and Kavan off the bench, and that was it. Yeah, and we said Ingram's not going, right? Right. It, so, I mean, th to me, that's the huge break because they're fivesome of Valanchunas, Zion, Ingram, Jones, and McCollum were just wiping the floor. I think they were like 13-5 and five or something like that as a group this year, somewhere in that neighborhood. And um, so that's a break. That's a major break for Golden State. Yeah, he's a problem. And uh, Antonio was mentioning how he leads the team in assists, and he absolutely fills up the stat sheet. And when you look at New Orleans as a team, they've got a number of different weapons and the top-line guys who can beat you. But then you were just mentioning the underrated nature of the rest of the roster. you got, you know, Murphy's averaging almost 15. Jones is averaging 11. Zion hits you for 23. McCollum gets you 20. Ingram's got 21. This Warrior team is so much more top-heavy from an offensive production standpoint. New Orleans has got a number of different guys who can who can rise up and hit you for 20 on a given night. Yeah, and, and, and Antonio mentioned that Murphy's not the kind of guy that just camps right at the line. He'll go well beyond the line, and at 6'9", and with that kind of a stroke, um, you know, that's that's a very, very difficult player to defend. So, you know, they've got they've got heft inside with Valanchunas and, and Williamson. They've got skill and they can stretch the floor. And then McCollum's a phenomenal player in the mid range or at the three point line. Uh, you know, it's gonna be this is gonna be a huge challenge. And and Golden State, you know, knows it. They, you know, they kind of play up or down to their competition. I felt like they played a little down to Portland last Absolutely. night. Absolutely. And and my big question is how much juice, hopefully the crowd can get into it early and, you know, help carry Golden State through. Because, you know, for, for the young guys, for Trace Jackson Davis, for a Podjemski, the back-to-backs aren't probably that, that big a deal. But for the older guys, Steph in particular, um, this late in the year, the back-to-backs are a big deal, and we'll see how much energy he can bring tonight. Yeah, Steph coming off of 36 minutes last night at Portland, and he had to dig deep in that fourth quarter when they, they needed some big buckets, and Steph delivered. He had uh, eight of his 22 in that fourth quarter, just 32 minutes against the Lakers, which was uh, on Tuesday night. He did get rest against Utah, but you know Steve had talked before. Mark Grandy and I were hosting together, and after the uh, game where he had 29 minutes and 51 seconds and in a loss to Minnesota and people were outraged that he couldn't get in there two minutes earlier. And Steve Kerr talked about wanting to keep him at about 32 minutes for the most part down the stretch. And, you know, he's been able to do that in most games, but he played 35 against Dallas in a loss. And as mentioned, 36 last night in a win. So you're going to need more of a supplemental effort from the other guys tonight to help Steph out, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, they, and, and they have, the, the Warriors are one of, right now especially, they're one of the deepest teams in the league. And so you got to take advantage of your depth and 
and don't maybe you don't lean on Steph early in the game for scoring. Maybe you you lean on on some of your other guys and see if Steph can give you some big minutes in the fourth quarter. But you know we're at that point in Steph's career where managing his workload is a big part of Steve's job description. No doubt. And last night they needed uh, Steph Curry and. They leaned on Steph Curry, and Steve Kerr said, thank God Steph played as well as he did in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, Steph's done that a million times, so it, it never surprises you. Um, obviously, it wasn't his best shooting night, but uh, made made some big ones down the stretch and competed really well. And, you know, we played him more than we wanted to, but, you know, we got it done, and now we've got a chance to, you know, play New Orleans tomorrow and get a win and put ourselves in a pretty good spot. A chance to beat New Orleans and maybe get help from Phoenix, which takes on Sacramento at 7.30. The Lakers and Memphis will get going at the top of the hour. We'll keep an eye on that scoreboard and all of the other action around the association. We've got the Sixers leading the Magic right now. Wizards, look at the Jordan Pools taking care of Chicago. That's uh, early on here, first quarter. Wizards already with 33 points, but we'll keep a close eye on the Western Conference games of import, starting with Lakers Grizzlies at the top of the hour. You know, it's funny. I when I first heard the concept of the play in tournament and that I hated it. I thought, oh God, this is so contrived and do we really need this? And already sixteen teams are making the playoffs. Do so we need to give more teams? But it's not really about the number of teams making the playoffs. It's about the excitement of the final week to 10 days or so of the regular season and I think it's been a it's I think it's been genius really for the NBA it it um it get, it's like a precursor to the playoffs that gets people kind of engaged and it creates more rele- not relevant but more uh impactful Import, yeah. yeah more important games down the stretch and I think it just kind of reminds people that hey look you know there's a there's a battle going on as opposed to just hey look Eight best teams in the West, eight best teams in the East. You know, 16, 53% of all the teams in the league are making the playoffs. Right. You know, that is a high number. But I, I think the overall feel, I don't know how, where you're at, but I kind of, I didn't love the wild card in baseball. I like it now. I didn't like the play in, in in the NBA, but I like it now. I think it's a mixed bag because in the East, nobody is talking about the, the play in and all the machinations because you've got Atlanta at 36 and 44 as the 10 seed. I mentioned Chicago. They're the nine. They're getting hammered right now by Washington. I think the Eastern Conference is an example of why the play-in sucks. And I don't like the play-in tournament. But then you look at the West and you think about what would be Sacramento, Golden State, and the Lakers all with 45 wins. They're probably going to all end with 47. And two of those three would be out if it wasn't for the play-in. So this year in the West is an example of why the play-in works when you have good teams who are going to be in the play-in we're excited about it and we can't wait to see these games but in the east honestly atlanta and chicago in the 9 10 game i think we could all do without that well i mean you could make a compelling argument that you could eliminate the entire first round there really haven't been that many upsets in the course of history in the first round of the playoffs in the four or five there's yeah. some but i mean you know, eight eight's beaten one what once or more than that. Tw- I thought well, there was once or twice. Uh, Golden I think State, it's thrice. Uh, Denver over Seattle, with, Matumbo, with Matumbo, and that was back when it was best but, I mean, of five. But we're talking about over twenty five. It's years. few and far between. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty without rare. a doubt. So you could eliminate the first round of the playoffs altogether if you wanted to. Um, but I kind of like engaging more more cities. I think it's good for the league. Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you my fix on the other side as to uh, how you could fix. This play-in game, but uh, tonight it's the Warriors hosting the Pelicans, which means Warriors live with Mark Grandy starting at 6 p.m. Mark Grandy's getting his bag on his shoulder. He's about to head on out of here. Public transportation, Grandy. Yep. Warriors live mm-hmm. with Mark Grandy starts at 6, presented by Xfinity. At home or on the go, you'll get the fastest internet to all your devices, and we are presented by Fremont Bank. Full-service banking, no compromises. Larry Kruger is in for Mark Willard it's Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. And while I have you here.
Now, back to Will and Dibby on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, we're back here. Larry Kruger is in for Mark Willard. Having a good time, man. No, we're having a great time. And as we get uh, closer and closer, I'm getting more and more excited about tonight. And every Friday, by the way, Larry, for the rest of the season, we bring you the big three unplugged. I don't know if you've seen this on the socials, but it's pretty cool. It's on our social media platforms every Friday and our very own Whitley Sandretto. Yes, I know You know, know Whitley. Yeah, very, very talented. Very talented. She gets the big three, Steph, Clay, and Dre, talking about the non-basketball topics like who is the most person you have in your phone. It's kind of who's a, the most famous. You mean? Yeah. Who's the? Is that what I said? Who's the most I think famous you, person? You, you left out famous. You said the most person. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Good, I, knew, I knew what you meant. Good real time correction. Yeah. I'm I'm struggling a little bit here. All these dang reads. I'm like a, I, I love know, them all. I'm like the, great. I'm like the safety net underneath yes. there. So topics like who is the most person? No. Who's the most famous person you have? In your phone. It's the Big Three Unplugged, brought to you by Alameda County Probation Department. Are you ready to make a lasting impact in your community? Visit joinacpd.org to start your journey today. Together, let's make a difference. Your community needs you. Who is the most famous person that you have in your phone? It's a great question. Boy, that's a great question. Uh, I'd have to really go through it and see, but... And this is kind of a random one, but do you know who Ronnie Two K is? Yeah, yeah. The the uh, from he didn't he do the announcement of the Niners draft choice at. Uh, if you have to ask, do you know who this person is? I don't think that's the answer to the I question. I didn't know if Larry is a guy who knows he's about Ronnie Two K. He's a gamer. Yeah, he's the spokesperson for the mustache, right? Two K. He's got a beard, but yeah. yeah, I know who he is. I mean, yeah. I don't know who he, he is. He was but. in my summer camp uh, back in the day in Ross when I was a camp counselor. That's your most famous. You've been in media forever. I don't do a lot of uh, like calling these uh, these really? people who I have contacts with. No, I'm a private guy, Larry. It doesn't matter if you call them. You just have who's in your phone. Yeah, nobody's ever given you their phone. All right, Larry, you clearly have some good ones. Let's hear them. I, seriously, get the Steve whoop. Young. And, uh, for sure. and, I've got Steve Young in here. Yeah, I do have whoop. Steve Young. Uh, Dennis Brown. Does that matter? Does that? Does I mean, that count? somewhat. I'm just scrolling through my phone here to see uh, the great Howard Bryant. That's good. Eric that's a good one. Eric Bernsey. Bernsey. I got Bernsey in there. Yeah, I got Sarah from Sarah and Vinny. Uh, that from is the huge. Alice Morning Show. Yeah. She's pretty famous. Carmichael Dave. Barry Tompkins. Famous in Sacramento. Carmichael Dave. I'll the, allow it. The big three from this week, boys, is a really fun one where Whitley asked the guys, all three of them, what their worst phobia is, what they're most afraid of. Okay. That's the one that came out today. Yeah. Uh, you're going to want to hear what Draymond's is. It's actually very funny. Would okay. you? Okay, so I got Buddy Biancalana in my. Yeah, uh, my I got phone. Roger Craig. I see your Buddy Biancalana. Biancalana. Which Roger Rock, Craig? Not the hum baby. He's no longer with us. R.I.P. I, I would not be. You know, he would not be answering. But okay. Roger Craig, who belongs in the Hall of Fame, sure does. There you go. I've got uh, Nick Allegretti, who played for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. All right. I can go all day. I got. Uh, I've got VP of uh, John Dickinson. <laughs> no, 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 don't talk about that. <laughs> That's no, you're not going to. No, you kind of killing the bit. All right, killed. You kind of killing the bit a little. All right, bit sorry about that. Jim Duquette, the great Jim Duquette, not bad. Uh, Doug Sovereign, KCBS oh, uh, political I, reporter. There you go. That's I a good one. Doug in my in my phone. That's a good one. My phone is uh, bereft. Jeff Garcia of yeah, we uh, we're looking forward to talking to him soon. Jeff Garcia, yeah, <laughs> friend of the program. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good ones. I got there. Evan Giddings in my phone. He's big. Doing some uh, Stockton Ports games. I got FP. Merton I got nobody. Hanks. Merton Hanks. I got Merton Hanks. And the chicken in there. dance. Look at that. All right. We're only in the H's. I, I killed about three minutes. <laughs> that <laughs> that was a whole freaking day. That was good. I've I looked at my phone now. I've got to update this. There's there's definitely some people that are no longer with yeah, us. Yeah, and you could have uh, whooped him a bunch in there, but uh, yeah. Lucas in for Grandy. Grandy's on his way down to Ballast Point as we are getting set for Pelicans and Warriors. Mark Grandy with Warriors Live, six o'clock. Tim Roy. And the network pregame at 6.30 and then tip time right about 7 o'clock from Chase Center. If you're heading out there, give us a call, 888 If you're excited about this one, what are your feelings? We'd love to hear from you, Dub Nation. We've got about an hour left in the program, about an hour left in the week. And Larry and I collectively 
are even more excited now than we were when we came on the air at 145. And that's to say I'm super excited about this one. Can't wait to race home and pop it on for the wife and my baby girl. Who uh, is the wife a sports fan? Wife is a sports fan, and she especially likes the big games. And so, you know, this is one that I'll probably have to upsell her on a little bit because she has not been too dialed in with the play-in scenarios. But I mean, how big of a sports fan? I mean, like when you walk in, would she be like, "Hey, I got a two-team teaser no, on no, no, the no, line, not quite that big." And I'm dropping a dime, and uh, you know, one of our earlier dates though was a Giants game, and she's a big Giants fan, less so the. Uh, the Warriors, and uh, she did. We did watch the Super Bowl together. She was dialed in on the Super Bowl. She was concerned about my well being, though, as that game uh, got into overtime and she could see the Chiefs marching down the field. Did she, she want actually turned Kyle, to me and said, Are you going to be okay? Did she want Kyle to take the ball in overtime? She did. Or was she playing for the third possession like Kyle was? Exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to get into that because we're so dialed in on this Warrior game. What but a nightmare that The whole was. third possession thing. We it's, wanted to have the third possession, yes. It, nonsense. <laughs> I, thought, I don't uh, think that he fully grasped the way uh, it was supposed to go. I, but. When we got the live mic of the Chiefs special teams coach going, guys, we got exactly what we wanted. That was not a good moment. Well, when Travis Kelsey is skipping off the field saying, they want the ball, they want <laughs> the ball, That's, that gave you a strong indication that uh, – the two teams were of different minds. The, li the live mic from the Super Bowl didn't do the Niners any good because you had Armstead, Husechek going, we didn't ever talk about that right. rule. And then you got George Kittle going, hey, how are you, George Karloftis? As Karloftis recovers the fumble. Yeah. Hey, George, yeah. I'm also George. I mean, I was sick watching that game. But when I saw the live mic, I was just, oh, my God, never going to watch this again. Yeah. Jeez. Was bitterness. Bitterness no. at a high level. But that's the beauty of sport. You get big games, big moments, and every, every little minor thing is magnified in a big game. Yeah. And if this is just NBA game number whatever. 81. Then, you know, it's nothing. But because it, there's something on the line, then there's juice. This is what, this is what all sports fans live for. That, that little extra that makes the game... Um, kind of a must see, a must see deal, no doubt. And it's uh, it's must see tonight, not only because of the ramifications of the playoffs, but something about Zion Williamson, Larry. Just knowing that Zion is playing this well, he's healthy, and he's a factor. And New Orleans is a team that last time they were in here, they absolutely took the Warriors apart. They took them to task, and it was a long time back when the Warriors went to New Orleans and beat. The Pelicans, so this is the rubber game, and this time it counts. No doubt. Um, I was concerned that Zion's career was just going to be gone, you know, because he just, you know, he 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 just, the the foot issues, the weight that he was playing at, and I don't know if, does is he still, is he playing in pain, or is he over the foot issues? Because it just seems like he's still a big, big, big man out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But... He's been able to play. He's been able to stay healthy. So, um, you know, I was concerned. I, I thought there was a chance they were going to trade him about a year ago. I thought, you know what? They're, he's damaged goods. He's got perennial foot problems, plantar fasciitis on a guy on a guy who weighs two ninety. Yeah, on a six seven frame, that's no good. But either he's beyond it, or he's doing stretching, or he's playing with pain, or whatever. But he's he's had a, an incredible year this year. Yeah, played in 68 games, started all 68 that he's played, and the games that he's missed were, as Antonio Daniels told us earlier, they were prescribed, they were load management days. He wasn't playing back-to-backs early in the year, and they've given him a good amount of rest. He's playing 31 and a half minutes a night, averaging 23 a game, but adding to that six boards and five assists, he's been really, really strong this year. And, you know, it, you, you can't help but think that if he's able to keep his weight at this number or maybe a little bit lower as he gets into his adult body and his grown man strength, the guy is a very difficult cover. And he's also really fun to watch because he's such a big body, yet he does things that a shooting guard would do. Well, and we get to see Draymond on him, you know, which is going to be great. Zion's quite the scorer. Draymond's an incredible defender. You heard Tim Royce say he's maybe the greatest defender. 
Um, that was another concern a couple of years ago, looking at Draymond and his lower body and would he be able to kind of keep his legs in shape as his career has progressed. And yeah, he continues to have, you know, problems where he's, you know, getting technicals and, and getting himself ejected and that kind of thing. And that's probably always going to be an issue. But the issue of are his legs in shape? Or is he going to keep his legs in shape so he can get up and down? He's done a really good job at keeping extra weight off, keeping his legs in shape. Um, I'm impressed because I thought there were two years ago, I thought, mm, I'm not sure if this is going to happen. Here. Absolutely. And he's really, I don't know what he's done. I, that's one thing I'd love to hear him talk about is what he's done to keep his legs in shape because he's in shape. Antonio Daniels, who joined us, the Pelicans analyst, gave a lot of credit to the training staff who's done so well in working with his body and also been smart about when to play him and when to rest him. We're going to the phones in just a moment. We see all your calls up there as we are getting excited for tonight's game, Pelicans and Warriors. But you are listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and in HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Oh, yeah, there it is. How about we run one more back? Oh, yeah. Love that sound because it means it's Friday at 5 o'clock. The 5 o'clock pop brought to you by Farmers Brewing Company. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, join us as we get ready for the weekend, the final one of the NBA regular season. We'll be sipping on their hazy IPA called Garage Dweller. It's got sweet, tropical, and citrus aromas. Delicious. Go grab a six-pack from Farmers Brewing at your nearest grocery store and enjoy the game with us and the beer here on 95.7 The Game. You getting ready, Larry? I already shotgun mine at the commercial break. Yeah, uh, you did. So I'm, I'm, I'm already digesting, and it was really, really good. Yeah, set your clock for thirsty. Larry Kruger, throw it down, big man. There you go. Well, as I get into my it's only one first, way to do it. Yeah, and I'm going to get into my first Farmers Brew of the weekend and in the meantime we're going to Cade in San Francisco. Cade, welcome to the show. Fill some time while I start drinking. He's gonna beer bong. He's gonna he, 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 you gonna go beer bong. Funnel, Larry. <laughs> Cade, what's going on, buddy? How are you guys doing? Doing, doing great. good. Doing good. All right. I I actually have a comment. I think our run this season is gonna depend on clay, pods, wigs, mainly these three guys. If these three guys play well, we're going to go very far into the season. Uh, that's what I think. I think these three guys are going to be key. I think that's a good call, especially Wiggs, I think, because um, he's the guy that can he can he can absolutely drift and do nothing, and you're sitting there going, what is he getting accomplished out there? And then when he shows up, it's like, the Warriors have a chance to get to that next level. And we saw it the other night against the Lakers. He showed up. He had an incredible night. Um, and everybody else was doing their thing. And the Warriors played one, maybe the best game of the year. So I, I definitely like those three, but I would say heavy emphasis on Wiggins. It's always Wiggins for me. And, you know, when Wiggins plays the way he did in the NBA Finals a couple of years ago, there's a reason why you won all those games. And he was an all-star, I know, but there was a K-pop star who basically elevated him through the fan voting into the all-star game. Not that he wasn't somewhat worthy, but it's the way he played down the stretch in that year that was so impactful. And I did a little case study uh, a couple of weeks ago with Andrew Wiggins, and I was looking at the games where Andrew Wiggins is a plus in the plus-minus and what that does for the team. And this year, there have been 30 games where Andrew has been a plus in plus minus. They're 22 and eight. And I went back to the championship year and did that same thing. Right. And I think that year they were like 37 and three. And I know it's a little bit of chicken or the egg because if he's in the positive, that means the team is in the positive, right? Because he plays a lot of minutes. But it feels to me like when Andrew Wiggins is impactful, and he plays well, and the minutes that he plays are winning minutes, 
the team is more likely to win basketball games. Well, first of all, he's six eight, super long, super willowy, good defender. Willowy, uh, I like that. Yeah, I mean, he's got he can get to the front of the rim anytime he wants. If I was if I was running Golden State, I'd I'd absolutely get some somebody in their locker room to just punch him in the chest at the beginning of the game. Oh, they they have a guy who could do that. Yeah, maybe Draymond punch him in the chest and just say attack the rim and try to jam everything. And if he just attacks the rim with ferocity, he's gonna play D. And the the you know the rebounding. If you could get him into that rebounding mode that he was in a couple of years ago against the Celtics when they won the finals. Um, to me, if he rebounds the ball and just attacks the rim with aggression and plays with like, he just doesn't play. And I don't know. This is, I'm reading nonverbal here, Dibs. So maybe I'm wrong, but it, it's, it appears at times like he doesn't play with this tremendous fire and he doesn't play. He's very, he seems like a real nice guy who's kind of takes it as he goes. I mean, I don't know if it's the $200 million that he's got in the bank from playing all these years, but if he just put it on the deck and just said, I am attacking the rim and I'm going to try to jam everything, I think the Warriors would be a, a better team for it. I really do. They don't have enough guys who are going to the rim off the dribble, and he would give them that, and then there's uh, you know guys open on the perimeter. Um, I just I would love to see that. Uh, to me, I think if he didn't get in that mode, they they are going to be a really really tough team to beat. It just feels to me like he's one of those guys who maybe doesn't love ball as much as as other people. And you know, you look at Draymond Green, and he probably loves it too much, and he has a hard time containing his emotions because he wants it so badly. He wants to win. He grinds so hard that. Sometimes it gets the better of him. Clay does it in his own way. Clay's very competitive. He's maybe not outwardly as emotive as Draymond, but you know he wants to win. And Steph Curry, he plays with such joy and such passion, he's never called into question. But you get to Wiggins, and sometimes it feels like he's just out there because it's his job. You know, it's like. And some guys are like that. Hey, I'm just, I'm not super passionate. I'm just good at this. You know, I mean, I'm not a super passionate baseball player, football player. I'm just good at it, and I'm out here. But if he really has that ferocity and attacks the rim, I think Golden State is such a be- so so much of a better team, no doubt, at that point because they don't really have Kuminga can be that player, but Wiggins has more cr- more um, control over the basketball on his attacks of the rim. And I just think he can he can maintain that dribble. He's six eight. Yeah. He's got long arms. He can get to the front of the rim. And if you just said, "Hey, I'll give you a grand every time you jam it on somebody," <laughs> and just see what it looked like, I, I I really think they'd be tough to beat in that scenario because they got perimeter shooting and they got other guys that can play off of that. And I think that's part of Wiggins' key to success. Also, is that. He's not a ball hog kind of guy, so he does fit in well. Yeah. He fits in well on this team where there's so many other offensive options. But, man, in certain scenarios, I would just love to see him attack a little bit more. But because he's not a ball hog, and you're you're right about that, he does tend to blend into the woodwork. And, you know, when Kaminga's in there, Kaminga's much more assertive about getting his shots and being aggressive and making an imprint on the game. And you know Clay's going to get his... Steph and, and Draymond are very forceful when they're on the floor. And so sometimes when Andrew's out there, he blends into the woodwork. He started the last 15 games after a brief stint on the bench, and that was after his four-game absence. In those 15 games, he's averaging 15 a night, and he's shooting at 40% from three. What's he rebounding? 45% from the floor, and he's getting six rebounds a night. Okay. And that's you'll take. What did that. he get in the championship year though? He was getting like eight. He nine. had double digits in a few of those games, and, and his teammates couldn't believe that he was, you know, making that much of an impact. What are you feeling tonight going into the game? Triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. I'm nervous. Larry's excited. Larry's eager to get this thing started. Let's go to the phones. Dre and Lee Moore is on with Willard and Dibbs. Larry. The is home in of the Mark, the home of the great Low Neil. What's Lone going Neil, on, Dre? Same, same church, same pew. And you're sitting on my lap. What's up, Dre? <laughs> What's hey, going on? <laughs> hey, Gary. Um, I, I heard you guys asking earlier who would you rather play, who do you want to play. Yeah. 
And uh, Gary, you said the right answer. It's the Kings right now. They're wounded, and they are to be got. And I have one special reason for playing them. Last year when we played against them, I said, uh, it looked to me like HB had fire in his eyes, like he was still butthurt about getting cut or having to leave. But I'm still mad about him not being able to hit the, the side of a barn that whole series. I mean, all he had to do was score a few points, and that series is one. He's a nice guy, and I can't stand HP. He's kind of like Roger Craig. Ever since he fumbled on the three peat, wow, I don't Are, have nothing to do with him. You sound like a you sound like more like a disgruntled Kings fan. Are you a Kings fan? Oh, not at all. Oh, okay, just no, more. no. Well, I I just I I'm HP. I'm talking about when, when he was a warrior and we were leading Cleveland three. Right, the NBA finals. Forget about Draymond getting suspended. You're you're going to blame HB for not being able to hit the three ball. I'm blaming the Black Falcon for not scoring just his usual amount. He couldn't hit a shot. He could, they should have put in Barbosa way earlier. HB blew that series. I like to call him the Senator personally. Yeah, I, thank I like you, the, Dre. I like the Jim Barnett nickname of uh of of Harrison Barnes, there might not, might might not be a better dude actually that I've met yes. than Harrison Barnes. Is he in your phone? Uh, he follows me on Twitter. <laughs> That's okay. But I like HB. He he was in studio with his with his little sister when uh, when he first came to to uh, to the Warriors, and I think we all went to a Giants game and all sat together. He's just a he's just a class act, man. He's just a solid dude. Yeah. I mean now now he's in he was totally invisible. In the series before he left the Warriors, which is what part of the reason I think most people were content with him leaving the Warriors. And then he had the moment. It was that Sunday game against the Warriors. He had an open look at a three. He could have put the dagger in Golden State, and he rimmed out. So, um, great guy. I don't know if he's the best guy under pressure, but he, he's a hell of a guy. Yeah, and Sacramento is a team that is uh, clearly wounded right now, and they're... They're a team that you definitely would want to play, and we talked about it before as far as how you would want this to go. Ideally, you get to the 8, and then you let Sacramento play L.A. in the 9-10, and you take your chances against Phoenix or New Orleans, depending on how that shakes out. And as I mentioned last hour, Phoenix holds the tiebreaker over New Orleans. So if things go tonight according to plan, Phoenix being favored over Sacramento and the Warriors being favored over New Orleans... Warriors beat the Pels, and Phoenix beats the Kings. While Phoenix jumps up to the six, the Warriors would jump temporarily. They would still actually would be the nine, if I'm not mistaken. No, they, they would jump ahead of Sacramento. I apologize. They'd be the eight. Right. And so it would set up a rematch, New Orleans and Golden State, if form held, and that would be next Tuesday. So you could end up having Pelicans-Warriors twice over the span of just five days. And that second game is probably going to include Ingram, right? You know, and it would be in New Orleans. Right. Well, and that's. But at least you'd have the cushion as the eight seed of, you know, right. if you go to New Orleans and lose in the 7 8 game, then you would play the winner of Sacramento, LA, and that'd be at Chase Center next Friday. Yeah. And you got to feel good about that, that opportunity. The Sacramento right now feels like Golden State's little brother. You know, they don't feel like the kind of team. It was funny. Mark was doing all this, you know. They're adorable. Yeah, last yeah. Year, remember that? Infuriating. He just, and you know, upsetting the people up there. But it, it does feel like Sacramento's got an inferiority complex against Golden State. A little bit, and you know, last year would have been the year for them to vanquish that as the three seed in the three six matchup. But uh, they're unable to get that done. Triple eight nine five seven ninety five seventy. It's your phone number if you're heading to the game. And you're listening, give us a call and let's talk about how excited you are to be going out there. Or if you're watching it from home, let us know how you're going to approach it. I'm uh, already. Do you have superstitions? Have you seen that commercial where, are you the superstitious yeah, sports yeah, yeah. fan? I mean, the guy just knocks over the guy's popcorn and you didn't sit there last time. And, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't. Do you, do you have I'm any superstitious? superstitious? Do you have any? Do you have any like Golden State garb that you wear? Like no. a Golden State hat? I, don't. I can see you with like a Golden State scarf, possibly. No, I've got some garb, but none of it feels to me like it's good luck. It's funny because I'd like to know if maybe people want to dial in with their superstitions. Do you have a warrior superstition that is undefeated that you could go to tonight? Yeah, you know, would you use it tonight though? Because this one is—I mean, it still is just a regular season game. It's not do or die. It's not a must-win. 
But it is a big game. Well, it's about setting yourself up for the right path. So I, I kind of think these are a little bit more important than we're making it sound. Right. Because it does the path to to uh, the playoffs is absolutely huge. And if you can get the win tonight, um, that makes your path quite a bit easier, in my opinion. But I'd love to know if anybody's got a a true Golden State, you know, uh, superstition. And, you know, the players have them. Uh, you know, I'll have to go up to some of the yeah. Niner players and be like, hey, do you have a pregame this or that? And they're like, yeah, man, I listen to the, you know, Colton McKivitz. I only eat a plate of buttered noodles and two steaks before every game. Um, some guys listen to the same song, uh, you know, at their locker every game. So what is your Warriors got to have it superstition if you have one? 888 If you have a superstition, one of the jerseys I do have is the same jersey that you famously were photographed in. It's the uh, <laughs> Warrior sleeved jersey. I got the same jersey the same time you did. We were working for different stations. Well, I was working for this station. You were working for a different station. And it was just the unbelievably snug. tightest jersey so of all snug. time. And I looked over at Ratty, and he's like, put it on. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to for sure. I don't think I don't think I should have done that, Dibs. <laughs> um, that picture's still out there. <laughs> it's still out there. If I ever make any comment about anybody's conditioning or if anybody's trying to ever get back at me and, you know, I'll stick it to Kruger. I'm going to stick it to him. I'll see that picture and I'm smiling and it's just as tight as heck. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it looks good on, it looked good on Harrison Barnes. Let's right. Just say that. It right. didn't look quite look good on me. And, or me. I don't know if there's a picture of me in that jersey out there, but I have the same jersey as you. It's in my closet at home and uh, I haven't put it on. I could probably wear it now a little bit better, down 17 oh, pounds. Well, of course, because but, of your commercial yes. uh, spot there that you've lost huge amounts of weight. It's uh, a fact. AbundantLifeWeightLoss.com. So you can wear... Uh, the jersey, when I lifted it out of the bag, it was like big shoulders, but the body of it was oh, yeah. just... It looked... felt. I mean, it was seriously really, really small, and I'm like, I got to put this on, man. Yeah. Probably a mistake. Probably a mistake. <laughs> In hindsight. And it's a Raymond Ritter special where... When the Warriors were not very good, they would come to the local radio stations and, you know, promote the product and come by and bring you gear and bring yeah. you all kinds of stuff. I mean, he's still very good. Oh, he's the best. And they're Ray. still very helpful. And, you know, we're thankful for the relationship. But when they stunk, he would go even further to help you want to promote the team. Yeah. Uh, Ray, I have assigned Patrick O'Brien basketball uh, at home somewhere. <laughs> because that was during the uh, the click and roll time where, hey, it's time to meet the rookies. And so he brought Patrick O'Brien by. Back when I was working at the station that you were working at, when you were in Sacramento, this is probably 2009. Or I forget the point guard the Warriors had that just was the worst interview of all time. It was years ago. Years and years ago. Jacob Evans? or No, it was before that. Slight point guard. And he's Ray's like, yeah, he'll be great. He'll be great. And he was like, cooking and talking to somebody <laughs> i think he put me on he's like hold on a second i got a, i got somebody on the other line he gave me the other line on live radio uh wow you know, speedy claxton speedy claxton. oh man you're going way back speedy claxton yeah speedy claxton it wasn't it wasn't an epic interview it wasn't as bad as my patrick marlowe interview when he was a rookie and barely spoke any english uh that was that was bad too but speedy claxton cooking and then telling me, hold on, I've got another call coming in on a, on a live radio uh, deal. That that was that was Speedy not Speedy Claxton. Speedy Claxton. Whoa, that you took me way back with that one. And I, think, I, I think it was like the Brian Cardinal, the custodian era. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm looking. Patrick O'Brien was uh, 2006. Patrick uh, O'Brien, the big seven footer. Yeah, who turned out to uh, not be. Much. I'm looking for Speedy Claxton. I'm not seeing it here. The Warriors one times drafted Todd Fuller over Kobe Bryant. Uh, that's really all you need to know. Yeah, it was a bit there of was a... Some, there were some lean days there. There were some, you know... Yeah. I, I can remember high-fiving a guy when the Warriors got Larry Hughes. Yes! Yes! That was a trade, right? We got Larry Hughes. You know, give, yeah. me, the, give me the high-five. How times have changed. Yeah. Boy, some lean years there. Uh, Anthony Randolph, and then 2009. Anthony they, Randolph went for 44 
In the summer in the league. summer league, yeah, so that was after Marco her. Bellinelli went for forty four in the summer league. That's right. That told me right there. Don't pay attention to the summer league. Pretty much, uh, Richard Hendricks out of Alabama, which was uh, the year of Anthony Randolph, and then two thousand nine with the seventh pick, Stephen Curry. What what a difference one pick can make. Forget twenty ten when they took Ekpe Udo with the number six overall pick. Well, you know what though, if you think about it, that was the 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 Steph pick was the crossroads for the franchise. Steph and Dell said, "Don't pick me. I don't want to play there. I don't want to be there. Don't draft us." And Don Nelson said, "You know what? Heck with them." And Larry Riley, yeah, Larry Riley. But ne- I talked to Larry Riley several t- several times. Whoop. He was taking his his marching orders from Nelly. He Nelly had watched all the film on the guy that went to Sacramento and all the different guards, um, Tyreek Evans and all yep. the different guards that were in Ricky that draft. Ricky Rubio went before. Ricky Rubio, Johnny, Johnny Flynn. Flynn yep, of course. And Nelly looked at all those films, and Larry Riley told me that Nelly came to him and said, this is the guy. So, yes, Larry Riley deserves the credit. He was the reigning GM. But let's not pretend that Don Nelson didn't have a whole lot to do with that. Nelly, of course, drafted Mitch Richmond, Spreewell, right. Sidney Moncrief. Terry Cummings, he, 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 he came away in the same off season that they drafted Dirk Nowitzki with Steve Nash. How about that for an? How about that for a, a, a draft day? Steve Nash and Dirk Nowitzki, not bad. Nelly, new talent, yeah, without a doubt. And you know, Dirk Nowitzki it took him uh, what a year or two to get him over from Germany, and the rest was history. Mark and I were talking last week about uh, the idea of the big three: Steph, Clay, and Dre all finishing as Warriors and how incredibly rare that would be. And I was actually thinking about was listening to that, that in terms of like legendary players and how few of them are actually one None. team wonders. And we Hardly went through any. the top 10 all time in NBA in scoring. And the only ones on the list who were one team only were Kobe Bryant and Dirk Nowitzki. Right. I mean, go through the greatest Warriors of all time. Then none of them went start to finish with the Warriors for the most part. Almost all of their best players uh, wound up somewhere else, and that's just kind of the way it is. And that's the thing, and you guys made the point, it's going to be very interesting to see if the Warriors can go start to finish with all three guys because of the financial implications right. of the whole thing. And it just kind of almost almost forces you to part ways with one. Yeah. They're, we know they're, well, I, don't, I don't know if we know anything really, but we suspect they're going to start to finish with Steph. And I'd love to see him go start to finish with all three. I think there is a chance, but it's slim. It's it's a slim chance. Yeah, and I wonder about this upcoming year. But uh, we're trying to stay in the moment. And we're gearing. We're up not for, talking off season. We're not. We're we're talking about uh, game eighty one with New Orleans in town tonight. The Pelicans and the Warriors. Uh, Lucas with a health update here in sixty seconds. But just to uh, close the loop on this. Uh, Conversation. I'm looking at Steph's draft class. Right. It turns out to be a very good draft class. Uh, Blake Griffin, number one. Jumped to Kia. Played for more, more than one team. James Harden went number three. Niner fan James Harden. By played the way. for more than one team. Uh, Ricky Rubio went five. And I'm looking at just the guys who played a long time in the draft class. DeMar DeRozan went nine in that class. He's played for three teams. James Johnson Went 16. He played 15 years. Drew Holiday went 17. Just he, signed for big money. He's played for multiple teams, obviously. Uh, all the way down to Taj Gibson and even Danny Green, a second rounder, and Patty Mills. These guys all were in the same draft class, and none of them played for one team other than the chef. Who was, I, you know, I heard you guys' discussion, but then I think I took a phone call. Who was, who were the top 10 players of all time that did play for one team? Bird. Right? Do you remember who, who it was? Well, we did it based on scoring. Yeah, the top, the 10, top scores. 10 scores. Was Bird on your list? Cause the, the list is LeBron, obviously more than one team. Kareem played for two. Carl Malone is third. He played for the Lakers. Right. Kobe was is fourth. He played for only one team. Then it's Michael, Dirk, one team only. Wilt, KD, Shaq, and Carmelo Anthony. That's your top 10 all-time and in points. All those guys played for multiple teams. Except for Dirk Except for and Dirk. Kobe. Yeah. And even if you go down, you have to get down to uh, Hakeem Olajuwon at 13 to find the next guy 
who was uh oh no he's he wasn't one team only i apologize yeah he played orlando or toronto or toronto toronto damn yeah i just it's really it, really really rare yeah it's very rare that i mean a, that even the greatest players in the history of the league all, right and that's um, i mean th- these are the greatest scores in the history of the league and elvin hayes is 12 and he was multiple teams and Moses Malone was multiple teams. Did Oscar Sidney Robertson was multiple teams. Sidney Moncrief play for just the Bucks, maybe? I'd have to look, but he's way further down the list. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, he's a great player, but not at all time. And even Dominique. And you think, oh, yeah, Atlanta only. Clippers, Boston, Spurs, and Magic. He played for five teams. Yeah, you think of Hawks only, but you're right. Yeah, Tim Duncan would, would be the next one on the list. Uh, all-time points. He's 16th. And he played for just the one team. Anyway. Very rare. Yep. Very, very, very rare. Before we go to the phones, we go live to the other room. Lucas with an injury update. Who's only played for one team in this one market. One radio so station. One radio station, Lucas, I believe. Well, one professional radio station. The others are just minor league teams. We Appreciate don't need to talk that. about that. Don't talk about that. Anyways, Please don't talk about that. Speaking of speaking, Steve Kerr just addressed the media before tonight's game. Two big pieces of news. Jonathan Kaminga and GP2 both out tonight. Kaminga banged his tailbone, as we mentioned earlier in the show last night. Uh, the quote from Steve Kerr is, he's, quote, in a lot of pain. Uh, and uh, GP2 has calf tightness. The Warriors are just being cautious there. So two big rotational pieces out tonight for the Okay. Warriors. Thank you, Lucas. So no Kaminga tailbone, and you've got no GP2 with the calf tightness. The Warriors are so deep at this point. Do you think that that helps Golden State to have one or two guys out of their rotation? Obviously, it doesn't help if Steph's out, but it just seems like there's too many players, and this is the challenge for Kerr. He his I mean you could make an argument that he would have a ten or eleven man rotation. Nobody has a ten or eleven man rotation. Right. When you have a couple guys out, it kind of fits more comfortably into a regular rotation. It does. It gives him clarity, and so now he doesn't have to worry about you know the conversation with Moses about yeah hey Moses thanks for last night but uh, keep your sweats on. Don't think we'll be needing you now with Kaminga out. And GP two out, Moses, you're you're back in the nine man rotation, and I think Steve wants it to be a nine man rotation, ideally. So now you you've got Clay and Steph and Pods, you've got Wiggins, TJD, and Draymond, you've got CP three, and then you'll go to probably Kavon and Moses, right? Yeah. No, I mean I I think it gives them like they it takes their. They're unnat, you know. They're kind of clumsy, right? Ten man rotation and makes it a nice, comfortable eight man rotation or whatever. You know, it just seems like they're they're. I don't want to say they're too deep for their own good because it's an eternity, right? The whole thing's a grind. You're playing for months on end. You want as much depth as possible. But Golden State's testing that. I mean, they really are. They have tremendous depth. I, I mean, I, if you say what what do you feel best about about Golden State? I feel so good about the bench that they can put out there on any given night. Given night, dibs. I just, I just feel like Kerr's got as talented and as useful a bench as almost any team in the league on any given night. Depending on who's available and how he uses it, and that's where Steve's biggest challenge will be going into the playoffs: is knowing if you've got eleven or twelve healthy bodies who you'd like to play. How do you figure out who's going to fit best with this matchup and who's playing well at the same time? Yeah, but I mean, it's a challenge, but it, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, now Kaminga, bo- it bothers me they're not going to have Kaminga because Kaminga is playing, I think, really tremendous basketball, and I love the way he's creating for others, and he kind of gives you, a, both those guys, I mean, GP2 and Kaminga give you that impact defensive length, and they're pests, you know, right. they're, they're not the kind of guy you want to... GP2, you could be dribbling it with your right hand. He could approach you on the left side, and he can reach across and pick you um, out of your right hand. I mean, that's there's only a handful of guys in the league that yeah. can do that. Six and one without Kaminga this year, so uh, all is not lost. Okay, with, I didn't you know, know that number. That's a good number. Well, and a lot of those games were of late when they were really starting to roll, and uh, they lost against Dallas the first time they lost without Kaminga. I'm not saying that they can be successful long term without him, but they've been well. That's proof, pretty though. good without him. Yeah, you know, uh, and part of that was this win streak at Orlando, at Charlotte, at San Antonio games where you can play without certain people and still 
get by with it. Let's go to Eric and San Mateo real quick, Larry. He yeah. wants to uh, weigh in on our warrior conversation about some of the greats of yesteryear. What's going on, Eric? Eric, you there? Hey, man. Yeah, I'm right here. Talk to me, Eric. Um, yeah. Well, Kruger's on, and I appreciate both of you. Um, I kind of switched over from the other channel uh, years ago, so congratulations. So, Larry, thanks. Well, you made it. You're a why You're a very wise man. Continue on. Vontigo <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cummings. Vontigo Cummings. Your thoughts? Yes. And I see your Vontigo Cummings, to... and I raise you a Chris Porter. Thank you. Um, Alexander. V Big, Big Vic. Vic. Big Vic. I love Big Vic. He was a very so skilled, I just, I never, I, maybe a little heavy. But I'll very see your skilled. Big Vic and raise you an Ike Diagu. I see your Ike Diagu, I, and I say Chris Gatling, who had a barber shop and <laughs> um, may have lived in a home that he didn't own. Yeah, but Ice Cube, I mentioned the Gatling. We're doing the Gatling. Chris and Gatling had a good back to the basket game. Um, so I've never called a radio show before, but I just wanted to call in because I wanted to know from Larry if he knows where Von Tigo is. I have a memory. Um, at his press conference when he got drafted, um, somebody asked him, what does your name mean? And he said, it's my mom's favorite car. A Von Tigo. No follow-up. <laughs> no follow-up <laughs> necessary. No follow-up, yeah. Uh, what, where is Von Tigo coming? So, well, it wasn't my turn to watch him. Uh, but <laughs> I will, I will, I will Wikipedia him and tell you that um, he had a successful career in Europe. He played in several countries. So, can you name me what what a Vontigo car is? I'm not really a car guy, but um, Dibs Vontigo. Is it an American no, made? No follow up question. They just say just walked away. <laughs> Anyway, that's the story I wanted to share. Just a memory. And uh, Kruger, when are we going to get your um, your three stages of the draft? <laughs> Not before a vital Warrior game, but maybe soon. All right, go Dubs. There Thanks. you go. Yeah, thank you, Eric. Thank you for your uh, your contribution. Your Vontigo Cummings. Yes, I and found a Montego, a Mercury Montego, not a Vontigo. Yeah, there you go. There, there you, you go. go. And he last played in uh, Puerto Rico. And his middle name, it was Vontigo Marfik. Yes, yeah. Marfik. There you go. Family name, no doubt. He was a talented guy. I will say that. He was a 6'3 point guard, pretty out, really athletic, 26 pick by the Pacers in the 99 draft. And then uh, came to the Warriors for Jeff Foster. Remember that? The infamous Cummings for Foster. Dude. He has a blockbuster, as I recall it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Just some of the trades with... Uh, you know, it seems like they've traded with the Pacers a lot. That's which, right. Uh, well, Molly, Molly for uh, Eric Dampier. Also, the Dunleavy, uh, Stephen Jackson trade. Al Harrington and right. all those cats. Yeah, that was a great which, trade. You know, gave uh, rise to the We Believe team. I miss Stack Jack. He was he was really good. I mean, that was a phenomenal trade, by the way. Um, it was. That really was. I mean that 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 trade kind of lit. That kind of created that team. With Harrington right. and and Stackjack, and I guess they didn't trade. No, they traded Monte to Milwaukee for uh, Andrew Bogut, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and um, it's funny how people kind of rewrite history on that. It's like, are we supposed to believe that Steph Curry wouldn't and and Clay Thompson would not have emerged? If Mon if uh, you know if Monte hadn't been dealt, you know that's like one of those right kind of bogus storylines. It's like Steph Curry was going to be great, whether Monte right. Ellis was on the team or not. Yes, he created more minutes and this and that, but don't tell me that Steph never would have become Steph if they didn't trade Monte. And I feel the same way about the Wiseman uh, Halliburton discussion because they. They could have drafted Tyrese Halliburton, but instead they took James Wiseman. And many people say, well, if they had Halliburton, he wouldn't have become Halliburton because he would have been playing behind Steph and Clay. No. It's like he would have found his way to Halliburton it up. Right. In the minutes he had, he would have Halliburtoned all over people, and you would have been like, man, how about this Halliburton? But right. instead they took Wiseman, and the rest is uh, 
a two timeline history. Like, let's just give guys credit for being who they are. It's not like Dan Dibley wouldn't have been Dan Dibley unless he got paired with Mark Willard. Dan Dibley, damn it, was Dan Dibley. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's easier to say would Dan Dibley be Dan Dibley without Gary Radnich, which uh, well, and in that know, case, you'd still be you know spinning records at the bone. If uh, you know, come on, we'd be doing traffic on the eights right now, Larry. <laughs> we got problems on the Nimitz South Eight Eighty and Hesperian. Uh, there's something in the roadway um, uh, on Five Eighty South. We got a three uh, car conundrum on One Hundred One. Those are good days. Uh, yeah, the, those you were, were great You were days. a happy young man. Though. The you greatest very... days, and we're going to go back to the phones momentarily, and we appreciate all you calling here. It's Larry in for Mark. It's Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. The best days were the days uh, doing helicopter traffic for in a real for... In a real or fake oh, yeah, helicopter? Oh, no, real, dude. I was up in the sky. Really? Every morning. 6 a.m. What was that like? It was incredible. Where, where did you take Where did you take off Took from? Took off from Hayward. So I was living in Oakland, and I would get to the uh, the airfield at 5.59. And you're seriously binoculars up there in the... You know, I had a look. camera. So I was doing TV traffic. So I'm, I'm doing the camera, and I also had an interior camera, so I would switch. And the anchor would say, I think it was... Uh, what the hell did that cost? Uh, it would cost a pretty a penny. A pretty penny, it was man. back in 2000, and uh, this was before I got latched onto that other station. Somebody's signing off on thousands of dollars of helicopter oh, bills. Yeah. To, so Jet you can, fuel's not cheap. So you can say, yes, it's crowded on, on the freeway. Uh, on the 880, yeah. We go live to uh, Chopper Dan. What do you see? Oh, we got a backup here, southbound 880. I'm trying to remember. It was Mark Dannon and uh, the anchor who's still there at Cron. Uh, I cannot remember I, her name I in the morning. That. Whatever, I, I, Chopper Dan. One year it wasn't my turn to watch Cron of helicopter traffic. It was uh, it was the good life. I do watch Cron on New Year's Eve. There you go. I, okay, you know, I just got to see <laughs> that man. I got to see them toast the uh, you know, the, the midnight uh, the midnight toast. And your guy Ratty's not doing it anymore. No, he's no. no longer doing the New Year. No, he's 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 moved on to a. To a new, there's a new couple doing the new year. But That's right. It's still a hell of a show. I though. bet it's a hell of. A, and now let's see uh, fireworks from Dusseldorf. You know? If you are watching fireworks on TV on New Year's, Seriously. you are officially old. You're old. You're and old. Believe me, I I watch it, and if I can stay up that late, especially if you're like toasting like apple cider, you know, if it's like Martinelli's apple cider because you don't want to drink too much. That's also a bad sign. Yeah. 888-957-9570 is your phone number. One more chance to get in here before we turn it over to Grandy. Speaking of drinking, he's live at Ballast Point down on uh, 16th Street just outside of Chase Center. Is he throwing him back? Is is Grandy the kind of guy that would throw him back at, down at uh, no, down there? Not, he would not throw one back uh, during the time that he has to broadcast. Or even, he won't even have one during the game, I would bet, because he has to do post-game. And he's a pro. He's a pro's pro. There you go. Well, so he's going to definitely good to know. the line. Good to know. Yeah, I don't know about his uh, non-on-air tendencies or his predilections, so to speak, as it pertains to uh, throwing one back. We won't judge it one way or another. How about that? Exactly. There you go. Exactly. He's new in the business, so you get to be a little bit more of a salty vet. You can kind of, you know, pick and choose your maneuvers accordingly. So if you just joined us, the news is out. Uh, there'll be no Jonathan Kaminga tonight. And no GP2 either. GP2 out with a calf issue, calf tightness. And Jonathan Kaminga with a bit of a tailbone issue. So neither one of them will be on the floor tonight as the Warriors have a big game against New Orleans. And the, the, the concern I would have on that front is just that I think this is like the third time this year that GP2 has battled some serious calf issues. Didn't he pull up lame about a month ago, and, yep. and it looked like he was in a lot of pain? Well, even before so, that, he was out. Remember, he came back, and he got hurt almost immediately, and he was out again. Yeah, so that's a recurring kind of type thing, and hopefully they're just you know being extra careful. Because to me, you say GP2, and you think, well, role player, this and that. I think he is a vital, vital cog for them when we get to you know playoff time. So... Do whatever you got to do to make sure you protect him because you don't want him, you don't want him missing. You want he's a defensive shutdown kind of player. He's one of the best on the ball defenders in the entire league, no doubt, and certainly the best on ball defender for the Golden State Warriors. So they're going to need him when uh, you get to the real high leverage games, which are not here yet. This is a big game tonight against New Orleans, but it's not make or break. If you lose, then you're still in the play in. 
And if you happen to have a hiccup against Utah, you're still in the play-in. These are not must-win games just yet. So get Kaminga and GP2 right for when you do have those games that are true elimination games. One quick look at the scoreboard before we bounce for just a moment. It's Lakers 34, Memphis 26 at the end of one from Memphis. And remember, L.A. and Sacramento and Golden State are in a three-way tie right now for the eight seed. The Lakers hold no tiebreakers, so they need to win and get help if they're going to climb out of the 10. But just to uh, keep an eye on the Lakers as they get things going, both Anthony Davis and LeBron James are in action tonight in Memphis. Yeah, and the only downside there is that Memphis is not playing for a whole lot, right? I mean, they're, they're, there's no, they have no skin in the game, really. No, and they have no uh, strong players in the game either. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, they're being led by uh, Jay Goodwin. Jordan Goodwin with 11 right now. G.G. Jackson, the bane of the Warriors' existence uh, some time ago. He's got five. Memphis down eight after one quarter in a meaningless game for the woeful Grizzlies. Mm, okay. And then tonight, Sacramento, Phoenix, and what time? That's the 7? 7, 7.30. 7.30 yep. tip. So Warriors, Pelicans at 7.00. And by the time that game gets underway, we should know about the Laker game. And it looks like the Lakers are comfortably in front in Memphis, as expected. But all eyes on the Sacramento-Phoenix game, which tips off a half an hour later. We are sponsored by the Alameda County Probation Department. One more chance for you to get your voice in as we lead up to Pelicans and Warriors. How excited are you for tonight's game number 81 at Chase Center, 888 9570. Larry's in for Mark. It's Willard and Dibs on 957 The Game. Want a career with purpose?
Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Yeah, we're back in it here, and the camera's back on me right where it belongs. It is Willard and Dibs, my good friend Larry Kruger, filling in here for Mark Willard. Final segment as we're getting everybody ready for the Warriors and the Pelicans coming up with Mark Grandy live from Ballast Point at the top of the hour with Warriors Live. Should be a big night. Should be a big night, and um, you know it's an. Ex- I love this this time of the sports calendar. You got the NFL draft coming up. Yep, baseball's underway. NBA's just getting juicy. NHL, if you're a hockey fan, getting juicy. Uh, Giants have scored one run tonight no, in no, no. Tampa. I'm pointing to the other TV. We don't talk about that. We're talking oh. about hello, friends. The Masters. Oh yeah, baby. Well, the Masters is awesome. I you know I the, I don't tape a lot of golf tournaments, but I like tape the first two rounds of the Masters. Tape. That's so hilarious. You pop a tape in your well, VCR. Not a tape, you know what I mean. I hit the button or whatever for yeah. Yeah, yeah, Xfinity. Yeah. But I watch it because I love watching Augusta National. Yeah. You Have know? you been? No, I've never been. Oh, let me tell you, Larry. It's a lot hillier than you would think. It looks amazingly lush and wonderful. It is so amazingly lush and wonderful. And the things that you realize when you go there is the attention to detail makes Disneyland look like a sloppy arrangement. And Disneyland is phenomenal when it comes to attention to detail. They have crosswalks, right, for every golf course where the pedestrians can cross one fairway to get to another one. Mm -hmm. You can't see it on TV because it... Hello, friends. The entire crosswalk is covered by small green pebbles. They paint the pebbles green so that it blends in perfectly with the fairway so you can't tell as a viewer where the crosswalks are. Hello, friends. Really? We take you out to 13. It just, it just everything's Scotty so Sheffler lush and for green. Who, do you, have, you're <laughs> wagering on this, right? I'm wagering, Larry, in a number of different fashions. <laughs> Stop. I'm in a fantasy golf pool. I've got Scotty Scheffler. Fantasy golf is actually more fun than you would think. It's actually a lot more fun than you sh- than you think. Shout out Rob Scott and the great membership at Blackhawk Country Club, of which I'm not a member, but they treat me like one when I go out to Inner Danville. There you go. Uh, hello, friends. My picks this week, Scotty Scheffler tied for the lead, and Rory McIlroy, who did to the course today what my daughter often does to the diaper, Around eleven o'clock in the morning, I'm which, going, which is to say, I'm, I'm, it a, wasn't I'm, pretty. A, I'm a Colin Moore, more a cow fan. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the cow bear. I'm in a couple of other pools uh, in which I have uh, such Europeans as Nikolai Hoygaard and Lucas Auberg at the Masters. Hello, Who, friends. who's your who's your pick now? Uh, my pick is Scotty Scheffler still. Scheffler tied with uh, Max Homa. And, you know, I <laughs> I hate to brag, but uh, it's what we do here. I golfed with Max Homa. Did you? Yeah, it was Lowe and I and uh, Max Homa. Back when Max was just a web.com, a nationwide minor league golfer, which is now the Corn Ferry. It used to be the web.com. They, they paired Lowe and I up with a golfer for the Pro-Am out at uh, TPC Stonebrae. In Hayward. I have played there. Uh, I was playing with Max Homa. And but obviously, you didn't have enough good enough dialogue to get him in your phone. I, I think I have Homa, and uh, he follows me on Twitter, so we, we're more okay. of a DM buddies. Gotcha. gotcha. I might actually have him in my phone. He would be the most famous one. I bet you Lowe is powerful off the tee. Uh, Lowe is incredible. Not always accurate, but... Uh, when he hits the golf ball, you hear a scream, and it's the actually it's the golf. <laughs> it's ball. the golf ball crying. He thing. crushes Stop. the ball. Oh, I know. You I played tell. with him one day uh, at Presidio. It was uh, Lo and I and Kalena Azabuki. Oh, nice. And Kalena was learning the game. Kalena's a good golfer. Kalena's a great guy, and we're having fun. And Lo gets up to the 18th hole at Presidio, par five, slight dog leg right. He's got a uh, little underrated course. I, I, I definitely very like good course. Presidio. Yeah, shout out Baltimore Joe was the starter there. But Lowe's got about 243. He pulls out a five wood and proceeds to hit this towering fade over 17 stands of trees to like 14 feet. I don't Rolls even have a five eagle, wood in this my guy. Do you even have a five wood in your bag? Uh yeah. I got two three woods and a five wood. You really you hit I play a, old you hit a five wood? Yeah. Oh yeah. I got a persimmon five wood. Oh my god. Yeah. My game is 
My game's a little un, un I was going to uh, say, man, unwieldy, but I, I, I can get it around. I'm about a 14 right I now. I mean, do you play bingo after you use your five wood? Totally. I go for a dinner. B49. B19. It's, B is only one through 15, Larry. Oh, sorry. If you're going to do the bit, get it right. G47. That works. Blackout. Actually, a 40. Yeah, 47 is a G. Look at you. Because yeah. the ends only go to 45. So this is my. I can draw back in my days of working at the Heritage Home in uh, in the marina. Before we get you ready for the game, it's time for the defensive play of the week. It's brought to you by the East Bay Law Practice. When you need the best defense, you call the Bay Area's top criminal defense attorney. Visit eastbaylawpractice.com today. Let's go back, back, back to Tuesday. Dubs in L.A. against the Lakers. You win and you keep hope for the 8 or 9 alive. You lose and you're likely locked into the 10 seed. Dubs are pulling away late, but the game wasn't 100% over just yet until GP2 denied Hachimura, leading to a clay three-pointer at the other end. Gucci! Spencer Dinwiddie, length of the court pass to LeBron, feeds a cutting Hachimura and blocked by Payne. Oh, man, he stares back out of the fans. What a foul. They don't get it. Rui gets denied. Step into the corner. Payton to Draymond to Clay. Catch and shoot left wing. Three! It's good. Timeout, Lakers. This one is very nearly over now. 127-110. The fans are booing. They're up in arms, but it doesn't matter. Kevin Dana here on 95-7 wow. the game. It <laughs> just doesn't matter, Larry, as the I, Warriors. I like the matter. Oh, yeah, it's so many uh, so many Dana calls. He yep. gets his money's worth. Very uh, very juiced up there. Very excited. Very passionate, very Kevin passionate. Dana. Very passionate. Which is, it's always great to hear. And uh, Kevin Dana. Totally. It doesn't the, uh, matter. The defensive play of the week brought to you by East Bay Law Practice. East Bay Law Practice knows how to go the distance for you by providing the best defense you need to help reduce or eliminate your penalties. Visit eastbaylawpractice.com today. I was watching the first round of the Masters, and um, Will's, uh, Will Zalatoris, said it? Yeah. Will Zalatoris, using the belly putter. It's just a, it's just a, it's a bad look. It, it's a Agreed. Weird, it's a weird Especially looking... Especially for a younger man. It's just... It, it, <laughs> explain. The broomstick. It... Takes a little bit of the uh, the yips out of it because your right hand holds the broomstick at the top, and then your left hand does the moving, and so it allows you to anchor. You're not allowed to anchor it to your body anymore, but allows your right hand to be basically stationary, and your left hand does the work. Have you played golf with anybody who busted out the belly butter? No, I have not. I've never seen that either. I would walk off. That would be unacceptable. But I mean, no, you could be out there. You could be you and a buddy. It could be you know you, gr- gr- you know, join another twosome. You no, nobody's ever that you you play a lot I of golf. I don't think so. I don't play so much anymore. Oh, okay, I got a baby. I thought you were Larry. like Steiny. I thought you played all the time. I've played three times this calendar year. All right. I I mean, I'm asking the wrong guy. I'll right. ask Steiny next time. I change diapers. How often? And I pull a wagon. <laughs> how frequent? That's what I do. How frequent would you see the belly putter? Uh, it just it's just a it's just a. I don't know. It's just a. It's a weird, bad look. It's a bad Agreed. look. Agreed. It's it's the elbows are out. Oh and yeah. it's, it's just bad. It Larry, looks, I could do this with you all day and all night, but unfortunately, we have other appointments. Oh, that's true. And it's uh, coming up. What's coming up on the game is brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. It's Warriors Live with Mark Grandy ahead of Warriors and the Pelicans. Mark Grandy is live from Ballast Point on 16th Street. Just west of Chase Center. Larry, that was super fun, dude. It's good to see you. Hey, and if you're out there on 16th Street and you see Grandy, give a honk. You know, yeah. give a honk, uh, you know, for 95.7 Grandy. I love that. Well, Larry, thank you for coming yeah, in. Yeah, good seeing you, man. Always fun. For my partner, Mark Willard, travel safe. For Lucas, great job. Grandy, enjoy Warriors Live. Sterling, thank you for pinch hitting. I am Dan Dibley. It was my pleasure to be here with you, and we'll see you all on Monday, hopefully celebrating the Warriors as an eight seed. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen.